a small state in eastern Nigeria. He used to say that the society that we abuse today will take its revenge. When he was just a governor of Anambra state, a small state in eastern Nigeria, he used to say that the society that we abuse today will take its revenge on our children. He used the first four years as governor to stabilize Anambra state. It was only in his second term that he began to gain the attention of a few people outside the state. As the only APCA governor and a close ally of Chukwe Mecca Odume Gojuku, he strolled along the treacherous political arena of the southeast with dignified ease. By the time that he made a speech at the platform in 2016, a speech that is equivalent to the one Barack Obama made in Boston at the Democratic Party's convention in 2004, his name, Peter Obi, had been catapulted into national prominence and a household name amongst the young and educated elite in Nigeria. When he stood before his kinsmen to declare his intention to run for president in March 2022, nothing could have prepared him for the ride he would have, while the rest of Nigeria warmed up to him and cheerfully carried him on their heads and shoulders, the people of Anambra already knew him. <laughs> He was Okute, the former governor whom all the 177 traditional rulers in Anambra state unanimously confer the title Okute. His name is Peter Gregory Omobuasi Obi. Obi was born on the 19th of July 1961 in the business city of Onicha, where he continues to live and work till date. He attended Christ the King College, Onicha, where he completed his secondary school education. He was admitted to the University of Nigeria in 1980, graduated with a BA Honours in Philosophy in 1984. Peter Obi attended Lagos Business School, where he completed the Chief Executive Programme, Harvard Business School, the London School of Economics, Columbia Business School, and the International Institute for Management Development, where he received certificates in the Senior Executive Programme and the Chief Executive Officer Programme. He also attended the Kellogg School of Management and Northwestern University, the Business School of Oxford University, and the George Business School of Cambridge University. He describes himself as a mere trader. Senior brother is even more intelligent because he's a professor, I'm a trader, so he knows more, so he will be able to do things better than I'm doing it. You know, I've done my little one as a trader. Now the professor is there. This is despite his exploits from boardrooms to politics where he left a trail of verifiable track records to which he always referred his opponents to with his Go and Verify anthem. Being a businessman, resilience was second nature to him, but in 2003, his political resilience was tested when Chris Ngige was declared winner of the gubernatorial election. Obi went to court and in 2006, the election of Chris Ngige was nullified and Obi was declared winner of the 2003 election. He assumed office in March 2006. He was impeached in November the same year by the Anambra State House of Assembly. However, his impeachment was overturned and he returned to office in February 2007. He was removed again after the 2007 Anambra State gubernatorial election, but the judiciary again intervened by ruling that he should be allowed to complete a full four-year term. In 2010, he was re-elected to a second term and this time, he served full term. In this current dispensation, it was uniquely refreshing that in the Nigerian political arena full of certificate forgers, ex and current criminals, and men and women with an opaque past, the only talking points that Peter Obi's opponents could hold on to was that his statistics were sometimes off, that he said he had only one pair of shoes and one watch, and they found two, and that he called a church leader and canvassed for votes in the infamous, illegally obtained and leaked Yes Daddy audio. In 2023, 20 years after his first election appeal, 
Obi went back in court to challenge the process of the presidential election he said he won. Let me read and I assure you that good people of Nigeria that will explore all legal and peaceful action to reclaim our mandate. The case was dismissed by the Supreme Court, but the support he received has continued. In rejecting the ruling of the Supreme Court, Peter Obi argued that the court had failed the people of Nigeria this time. We won the election and we'll prove it to Nigeria. The former governor vowed to stay around and be the opposition to the government in power, which he considered illegitimate. As he used to say as governor, when the premise of an argument is wrong, the conclusion is also wrong. The conclusion of Mr. Peter Obi's first attempt at the presidency is that he has just started. His fight against what he calls the structure of criminality has only begun. For taking a party that got only 5,000 votes in 2019 to 6 million votes in 2023, he had done something that no politician has been able to do in Nigeria. His enduring mantra says, go and verify, irrespective of what the future holds for him. If he does not personally move Nigeria from consumption to production, someone else will have to do so. And someone else has to cut the cost of governance that he once legendarily did in Anambra State for eight years, after which he saved millions of dollars for the state. And until these ideals that Peter Obi based his 2023 campaign becomes the norm, even his fervent opponents would agree that Nigeria would continue to flounder. Even those critics of his who say Peter Obi would never be president find out as soon as they say so that there is a thing hanging around their neck. All right, welcome to a special edition of Javier Se 247. My name is Rudolph Okonkwo. Uh, today's show is special because we have uh, former Governor Peter B and former presidential candidates of the Labour Party joining us later on the show. Um, but we're going to have a regular show, which is Javier Se 247. And some of the issues we are going to talk about today are uh, the following uh, David Omahe, the Labour um minister minister for works uh, works here uh, he is um constructing a highway from lagos to across river state that will cost nigeria a lot of money we want to talk about the cost of that highway and uh, whether the comparison to other highways across africa uh something that we should pay attention to we're also going to talk about the proposed tour on the highway and uh, we are going to talk about the death of O.J. Simpson and the death of uh, one now, a former governor of, um, I think, uh, former governor who was a minister under Buhari. And uh, one now, no died, um, yes, on Thursday. Uh, also, talking about deaths, we have a junior pope, the Nollywood actor who died uh, at the scene where they were shooting uh, on um Anam River, uh, the boat capsized and he died with other people. We are going to talk about what happened and um, how to prevent that from happening again. And of course, um, Airpiece, Alan Oyama has um, shaken the air industry, airline uh, industry in Nigeria. Uh, what is going on with Airpiece and uh, conspiracies and the theories about things happening? And um, the final thing that we will then welcome on the show, uh, Peter B, that will be at 4.30 p.m. New York time, uh, about um, 9.30 p.m. in Nigeria. Uh, along the way, we are also going to connect to, uh, we have our crack reporter who is at Harvard University uh, covering the event that Peter B is uh, attending today at Harvard. So uh, if we connect with him, we'll bring him on the show. In the meantime, uh, we are going to start our regular show and then get people uh, involved uh, when we get Peter B to join us. So let me bring in people who are here already to um, introduce themselves. Ikalola, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Dr. Damages. It's good to be here once again on a good Saturday. Thank you. Mr. James, welcome to the show. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Tone, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, if you're in the studio and you want to join us, please turn on your camera and then we will bring you in. And the flagship, welcome to the show. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Welcome to the show. Uh, Jim, I can see your camera on, but if you want to join us tonight. Right. Um, Jim, I can see you. Um, so I can like, see you. I'm in. You're in. Okay. Can anybody see Jim? Maybe he's fine. Right. Yeah. In. You guys can see him. I can't see you, Chim, but anyway, uh, we, we figured out. Uh, thank you. I can't see Chim. Okay, so Chim, it's not, I'm not the only one. So thank you, everybody. Um, I think unless there's a major, major story, I haven't looked at the news in the last 24 hours. If there's a major, major story uh, that, that we must add, let me know. Otherwise, I think we should go ahead and begin to have our conversations. Then we will... Um, there is a point that we have to talk about when Peter becomes. So I will, I will discuss that with everybody. Uh, what will happen? Let's do things in a little bit different way today, so that uh, we will be able to have a more organized. So James, you want to say something? R Rudolph, there's a background noise. I'm not sure if it's coming from you. Uh, no, no, it's not from me. I think I'm here to that too. Uh, let me see. Okay. So we, we meet Chim and eventually Chim. We have to. Someone is outside. Uh, Revolution, are you outside? I'm I, think it's, I think it's Ike. Ike. Check Ike. Okay. Ike. Ike. Okay. Maybe it's your fan. It could be something as simple as your fan. But I think it's Ike. Yeah. All right. So anybody has anything that he wants to add to what we are? No. Mr. James, let me meet you. There's still a noise from somewhere. Okay, I think it's I'm, it's Mr. I'm, James. I'm inside. I'm inside. I'm not outside. It's not from me. I know. I know. It's not from you. I think it's from Mr. James. All right. Um, let's. let's... It's so weird. I don't know. Ovia wants to have it. Do you guys believe it? Ovia. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> can you guys hear me? I forget yeah. my earpiece. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Um, actually, I just got out of the first section. There are people coming out. There. Let me go to the excluded place. Oh, uh, well, well, there's a lot going on. I didn't know they have up to like, uh, sorry, they have over almost 50 speakers. So, so far, speakers from uh, the section we just had is about uh, healthcare, healthcare system in, uh, in Africa. And I think uh, the few takeaway there is uh, how to collaborate in order for us to innovate. I think what's standard for me is that I think is what. It's one thing that we always complain about and on, on, uh, have your say about how we are not together, how we don't work together. Not just the back home, and, but even those professionals who are here. And I think that's one thing that they drive a lot, that for us to actually catch up in terms of AK innovation, there's a need for us to trust one another. Not just trusting your brother, your cousin, your wife, or your husband, but you have to trust across the board. Not just your own countryman, but other uh, African uh, African uh, 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 Africans that you can work with. So people that I speak, let me just uh, mention him. I think I want uh, Dr. Inena. I don't know if you know him, Dr. Damage. It's, uh, she's a, uh... sorry, this is a, uh, this is a, uh, he from 2 I think that Dr. Damage should. Uh, All right, if you're not ready, if you're not ready, we can come back to you later. <laughs> yes, but, uh, I, I can go live, but I can't talk. You guys can only hear when will be when will be comes on when will be section is on. I will go live, but you guys can just listen. I would there will there will not be feedback from me, but you guys can hear. Him. How about that? All right, all right. That's that's yeah, that, 
that will be much later in the day, as this, uh, the uh, section is not up yet. Okay. Let me see I'm trying to go and make a connection, but I will get some numbers and hopefully get some people to come and talk with us. Register, <laughs> register for political science course there while you are there. All right. Okay, I'm, trying to get it, I'm trying to get a PhD in theology. All right. So come and start church. All right. Thank you, Obie. We'll, we'll come back. <laughs> to All right. So um, we will periodically go to Obie. Um, uh, Peter B is uh, and the uh, former, former president of Liberia. I know uh, the two people I know that are speaking in that conference. There are other people who are participating. Uh, but after the conference, he will now come and join us. Uh, for about an hour and because he has another event um, after uh, our own session with him. So let's begin and uh, talk about, I think the first topic I want us to discuss is um, this uh, road from Lagos to Cross River State. Um, why is it important? How is it important? What, what happened? Where did we pick it up from and we are ready to spend trillion? On this road, um, I'll start with you, Kolola. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Damidis. Hello, everyone. It's good to see you all today on a good Saturday. Um, I don't know. I read the story myself, and uh, the inflation on the price of the road. Well, I I don't know the reason for um, the construction, but I mean. Uh, no facility for me is bad facility as long as it serves a purpose and it gives an alternative but the the price at which it was uh being said it will be done is sounds a bit ridiculous but have we really um we can't just compare to say oh this uh, the comparison was about a road that was built from i think ethiopia to egypt you know which um which costs less but we can't just make that comparison because if you're building a road you have to consider if you are going to go through mountains if you are going to go around mountains if you're going to build bridges so we don't know what uh, the obstacles they'll be meeting is but um even at that you could still ask why is it 10 times what's uh Ethiopia, Egypt road costs. So uh, I don't think uh, we could immediately say it's it's another act of corruption if we don't have the details. Thank you. Uh, Mr. James. Can you hear me clearly? Yeah. Good. Um, the construction of that road has been long overdue. But my worry is, I have absolutely no confidence in this administration. Uh, why is it that it is now? In fact, in the electionary campaign, I'm sure they never mentioned anything about the road. Why are they coming up with it now? That's number one. Then number two, why did they not follow normal standard procedures? Did they follow the procurement rules and regulations before they arrive at that figure? The answer is no. So this is another national report. Although the construction of the road is long overdue, but the rest assured that the country will pay very dearly for it if it will ever be constructed. I have no absolute confidence in this administration. Yes. Not even a grain or an outer of confidence. Mm -hmm. They are very unreliable. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. James. Uh, Tone, you're next. Tone, you unmute yourself. I'll call you back. Hi, hi. Sorry, sorry, people. I just got a, um, a phone call. Okay, All right. Um, hi. Uh, greetings, everybody. Uh, good to see. Um everybody again. Uh, Mr. James, good to see you back. I checked on you some time ago. You kept ignoring my calls and uh, all my messages. It's all good anyway. Right. Um, the road that is being proposed, I find that very strange because if you were to commit uh, that kind of money, if Nigeria really had that kind of money to uh, for uh, 
for that kind of project, if they should be committing that money into uh, the economy uh, to in order to help the economy to uh, to uh, to recover naturally, rather than the padding that we see uh, that is going on, it will make more sense. I mean, cause constructing that road, if the climb was okay, you know, it, that would have been excellent. But right now, it's not what we need at this point in time. Um, some blind people might say, okay, we have started hitting on Tinubu again. I know that it's not about hate, it's about wrong priority. It's the priority is wrong. That kind of money should be transferred into agriculture, into manufacturing, in order to stimulate the, uh, the, 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 the country back. So building a road, even, uh, we're not even talking about, we have not even come to talk about how much that road, the, the costs that they, they told us that the road will be, uh, will be. That, that, that is even another discussion. So it, it doesn't make sense at all. It, it doesn't just sit right that makes sense at all. Like uh, Ikula uh, did say, maybe that's another another um, uh, another um, avenue for corruption because this 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 country is all about corruption all through and through. The uh, the the administration rather is all about corruption all through and through. So that's my submission. Yeah. Now. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Ton. Uh, Marze Prince. What do you make up the road? Yeah, Dr. Dr. Damages, good morning. And uh, good morning, other panelists. Um, pretty much, uh, just like every other person has said, um, first, you know, let me start with Ikolala. Ikolala, yes, it's, it is very much, uh, uh, how would I put it, in as much as you want to say, oh, it's not corruption. It is corruption. Why would I say so? Um, Mr. James said it from procurement. Okay, um, it's in Nigerian law that when things are to be done, the government is supposed to advertise for the bidding. You know, let everybody, you know, let every other person be for it. But in this sense, they never did that. And their excuse is that, oh, yeah, that the government can give any company that they didn't fit uh, uh, the job to do, and that the company which they, that they gave it to, which is high tech, high tech is the same company that been doing uh, uh, Atlantic you know, City in Lagos that they've not finished for how many years? Going to 20 years. They've never, they've not finished that, you know? And then apart from that, my question, if I have an opportunity, I will look in the camera right now and I will ask Tinubu. Tinubu, what is Chagori Chagori doing in Nigeria? What is Chagori Chagori doing in Nigeria? This is the same Chagori that is being despised in America. It's the same man that claimed to be a businessman that is bringing a Lebanese. Despite the fact some people who say, oh, he was born in Nigeria. Can somebody tell me that in as much as, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, whatever it is that you're American, coming from Nigerian descent, that you will go probably, they will give you a contract of, say, to build, uh, 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 to rebuild the White House. It cannot happen. Why are we having the same man in different aspects of our life? And it all ends in corruption. And then look at the, look, 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 look at the amount, for Christ's sake. And then all of a sudden, let's talk about the funding because like if we if, uh let me not make it equal like please I, when i call your name it's just because i'm used to it okay look at the funding first they said is ppp public uh, uh, private public uh, 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 partnership but they have 
giving 1.7 trillion to the same person. Where did that money come from? From the budget. And what is the duration? Eight years. You see that? So that by the time it's eight years, Tidu is out of office. And guess what? There will be variations in the amount. Now they're saying it's about 15 point, I think it's 15.8 trillion. By the time you add the variations, it will be more than that. For Christ's sake. And ask yourself, what is the importance of that road? They said it's a coastal road from Lagos, from, from Lagos to Cal uh, Calabar. Interesting. Interesting. Is it they're making it because of commerce? Or they're making it because, you know, so to make uh, transportation easier for people? What about the other roads? What about the maintenance? So for eight years, people will wait. It's just so shocking that we these men do these things with all impunity. And nobody's calling them. I don't even know the National Assembly. I don't know. I don't know what they are. I think National Assembly should be abolished in Nigeria because I don't see I don't see their usefulness. That's all I can say for now. Thank you. All right. For, for those who may not know what we are talking about, let's listen a little bit to um, Omahi speaking to the the guys at Arise TV. Um, listen a little bit. No, they have a project. No, which is let's talk about project. No, I want to tell you. No, let's let's no, let's let's look. Please, let me ask a question. Okay, let's just start. This is just for the spread out road. This is not for the real, real component, component of the road. Of the road. How, How much, much the real real component, component of the road cost? Not cost. You not cost that. So what you just, just, just made that allotment? allotment. Yes. yes. For the real component of the road. For the real component of the road. Another thing, I would like to ask you is this: Please, 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 uh, what's, uh, what's it called? 4.5 4. 4. 5 billion. 4.39 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. billion. billion. Yeah. Yeah. So, so per kilometer. Per yes. yes. It is standard, 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 standard So you are, so you are iterating, iterating by 47 kilometers for the first phase. Or is your calculation, your calculation going to be iterating, iterating this, this standard, standard spread for 700 kilometers? Because if you say 4.3 times 700 billion, that's over 3 trillion. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're going to come back, come down, down to? to? Yeah, I don't get into the figures right. right. No, no. You, you said, said per kilometer, you have to know the cost. What, what is, is that 4.329 billion? What, what is it for? It is for a standard gauge mm. of 11.55. Mm. And we have 5.16 multiples of a standard gauge. Yeah. So multiply this by 5.167. So I will now multiply these 3 billion yeah, by times 5. Uh, uh, multiplied by 5.16. 16. Yes. So, so it will go about 15 trillion, plus or minus. And, and if, you, trillion, yes. Yes, if you multiply the 8.59. Oh, okay, five, nine, okay. No, can we leave mathematics? No, can we leave mathematics? No, it's the cost. Uh, you, the, the two cost. of you are scientists, so, uh, engineering, uh, science, so, so this and about all of that. Trillion. Can we talk about the, the other cost is going to cost you about 40 trillion. The total cost is how many trillion? No, it's not going to the total be. cost of the Look, project. Minister, you people can go and sort out the calculations outside. We ordinary Nigerians, we are interested in policy issues. Yeah. And I would like you to address some of the policy okay. issues. I raise the question of landmark. Okay. What is the truth about the matter? And then secondly, you are very enthusiastic about uh, Ted Menon Bridge. You've done a good job with Ted Menon Bridge. I've written a piece about it. I went on the road. I like it. Thank you. Both uh, above water and under water. I don't know what. You let's end it here uh, for now, um, and let's continue the conversation. But that's the minister defending uh, the project. Uh, questions about the cost. Questions about um, the parity. Let's go to the flagship. Flagship. Thank you, uh, Dr. Rudolph. Good afternoon again, and to everybody on the panel. Good afternoon. <clears throat> this, this is what I think. It's another elephant project. 
that we're about to embark on that we know will not and cannot be completed in the two terms of this government, if they so get the chance to run that long. One thing with Nigeria is we are very good at starting projects, but very, very bad at completing it. Not a talk of maintenance. Is, is the road needed? Well, yes. And, and my next question is of what use, what, what commercial purpose other than transporting people from Calabar the environment states to Lagos, does it serve? Is there any form of commerce that is going on between Lagos, Ondo, Edo, Delta, Bayasa Rivers, and Calabar that will so profit the nation that we need this, this road for? And I listened to the interview uh, during the week. He's hoping that the money will be recuperated from tolls that will be collected on the road. It's appalling to see the, the idea and the thought process in this. There's no landmark, excuse me, there's no uh, blueprint plan that we have seen. Nothing has been provided. Uh, like I said, is it needed? Well, maybe in the future. Do we have more important things that that money could be used for right now? Yes, we do. Are there roads in Nigeria that that money could service? that will do a better job with, uh, within the country in terms of commerce, transportation, and a better livelihood for the people other than this road from Lagos to Calabar? Yes, there is. Could that money, if we really mean well for the people of Nigeria, can it be channeled into something else that the country needs right now that is very, very important? Yes, it can. How many uh, hospitals can that money build for us so we can avoid instances of the case we had this week and how it was all handled, the shabby nature of our healthcare system that we can't even find them to reach, take people to in case of emergencies. So I think that this is just another uh, bottomless pocket that they want to throw this money into and it will never be seen again. We know they will not be able to complete it within four years, not eight years, not 10. And it's the same people that he's used to and he's known. And I bet you if this makes it through and they, they, they approve this construction, uh, after four or maybe eight years, it's going to be revisited again by whoever comes in next. And guess what? They're going to re-budget again. And at that time, it may be times 10, maybe 20 or more of what this rate that we're complaining about is. So I think it's not it's not really important right now, like Tom said, it's just misplaced priority. There are other things that that money can be used for right now that would benefit the Nigerian people and get us out of where we are now. So they need to do a rethink. Uh, Dave Umayi, uh, this, is, this is not a project that you need to embark on. I don't think it, it will do you any good. Neither will it do the Nigerian people any good right now. So. They need to begin to channel that to other aspects of the economy that will improve and better the lives of the people. If, if they don't have any ideas, at least put it on the existing refineries so that we can at least give the people some little bit of breathing space in terms of uh, uh, petroleum products that we are lacking and importing right now into Nigeria. So in my opinion, it's just another loophole for huge corruption and that 15 trillion or whatever it is they're talking about, it's just going to evaporate into thin air by the time they are done from office. All right. Thank you. The flagship, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Revolution. Mr. Uh, good evening, everybody and doctor. I know you see me. I've been hiding my face because uh, when you tell somebody you say you could do something and you never finish and sometimes you go hide now. But the thing has, it's not in my hands, doctor. I wish I knew about it. I've sent it, and they, now they just gave me a light that at the end of the month, they will master it all. So at least, so that you can even approve or disapprove of it. Let me start there, please. Oh, I don't, don't worry. You don't have to worry about it. It's, there's no time timeline, you know, we're, we're here. Yeah. I just want you to know, please. Okay. It's not like 
I'm joking with you. I don't joke with people. You know? Okay. No problem. So uh, yeah, you can see that my name eventually changed. Yes, you finally accepted that that's what you want. Yes, and there's a reason, a lot of reason, like what the topic on the ground today, for example. Look at how much they are spending for just a kilometer of road. And we Nigerians, we are just listening. Now we are here again talking about it. I don't think it's something to talk about. It's something that we, we trigger uprising. There are sometimes in a man's life or in a society, people will rise up, not just that like one brother was saying that Nigeria has been pushed to wall. Instead of us to bounce back by the theory, we are digging the wall to enter inside the wall more. This is what they are doing to us. Tunubu has nothing to offer to Nigeria or to anybody, him and his gangs. They are just using, they are just dividing the money. Fela said the party, party government. They don't, at the end, I look at the time frame, like they have, they program everything, eight years. That means they plan they will stay in eight years. After that, they find their way. The world Buhari did, who is probing Buhari today? Nobody. And nothing will happen. So that is the reason why I thought, this Dan and Biari, let me even drop it and just answer the what I've been preaching or what our principal have been preaching, Showare. You understand? So for me, all those roads is necessary, but the cost, is it the cost they are, they are using to build those roads, is it not stealing? Just like what P2B have proven. They are digging borehole for how many millions? But he, had, he has dug it for five million. So this is, I mean, I don't have much to say in this issue. The issue is that it's time for revolution. Yes, we have to tell these people this is too much. We can't accept it anymore. Yeah, they are just spending our money unlawfully. The other man said it the other day, why they are doing this is that Nigeria don't stone them. We don't question them. They just come tell us whatever they like. All our education, most Nigeria will probably tell you they are very educated people. How can people be so educated and people who are less educated are just punishing us and we are watching them? You know, anyway, that's that's where we stop for now. And thank you so much for another opportunity. All right. Thank you, Revolution. Uh, Pastor, welcome to the show. Yeah, <laughs> Dr. Rudolph. <laughs> I hope you are prepared for the lawsuit that is coming to you from Suleiman. <laughs> We're not afraid of pastors. Uh, forget about Suleiman. Um, yeah. So what is your take on this? Oh, well, there's, no, there's actually nothing much because uh, I was going through the comment section and those in the comment section have highlighted and some of the panelists that it's not needed. Let's be honest with ourselves. If you remember the flood that uh, happened, uh, uh, I think some few years back, and actually destroyed the road along uh, that Potakot uh, Worry Road. And that road is a federal road, I believe. You won't believe that up till uh, this year that I was home, they've not fixed the road. It's still there. We know the Lagos, uh, Lagos uh, Bini Road, some sections are bad. Uh, I don't know whether this is misplaced priority or not, but it's just, for me, it's just outright wickedness, to be honest. I mean, we are struggling with electricity, but they increase the tariff. Electricity tariff has been increased. And I don't know, to be honest, uh, a lot of you have said everything that I actually want to say. It's to me, like I said, I don't know. It's just, to me, it's just wickedness as far as I am concerned. It's not necessary. I mean, the train train would have even be preferable than even that coastal road that they're talking about, in my opinion. But how about the existing roads that are bad, that should be fixed over the years? They've awarded it to one person or the other, one contractor or the other. So I don't, to be honest, I got nothing to say more than that. Thank All you. Right. All right, thank you, uh, Electricity. Let's go to Austin. Austin, you're next. Thank you, Doctor. I just. I want to see this from different points of view, but before I go that, I just want to pick on Daniel. Dan, revolution is if you go to the scriptural Daniel, he is also a chief revolutionalist. Remember his case when the, the king was about to be killed, he came and brought up justice. So your name confirms to your new name. That's all I wanted to say. But when this road issue came up, 
that has made me to appreciate Arise News, no matter how we hate that channel. That channel is really giving us what we really need in Nigeria. Because if you go and listen to the same minister in other channels, you see how he was so calm, deceiving Nigerians. But in Arise News, they, they picked him up that he was filled with inconsistencies and his figures weren't matching up. And we, if we have that channel and other channels like that, it will definitely help us in a way to know where these guys are going. A few years back, either ECOWAS or um, um, Africa Union, they, they started a construction of a road from Cameroon that should be busting in Benin Republic. And if you do that road from a Boeing state, it is straight to Cameroon. Very good road. The last time I used it, but now it has started failing. So when we begin this coastal road, development cannot be stopped in any way. But when we talk about this coastal road, what comes to mind is, are we really a, unit, a unitary system of government? And you want to tow the whole road. So I'm the state governor who don't say, in my state, we're not going to pay state tax. So if we're not paying state tax, are you going to allow the Abia state not to tow the part of that road? Or are you once you enter that road, you're towing it for the federal government? These are the conversations that should come around this road. And I know that the train construction is far more expensive than road. So if road is giving us, I don't even know the figure, because even when we said 15 trillion, he said plus and minus. So we've started a road that we don't know the figure. We started a, a, a federal government project, which was pegged by a certain amount of dollar. But the minister doesn't know the actual figure, doesn't even know the figure that was budgeted this year for it. I mean, it goes a lot to tell us what we do in that country. And when people bring it to tribal, they are only being mischievous because you are just allowing them to deceive you. But, uh, but all the tribes in Nigeria are involved in what is happening to us. So when issues that are not clear to us come on board, <laughs> focus on the issue and do the reasonability of what they want to do. If it is not, let everyone stand up and say, this is not what we need at this point and speak what we need. But I'm sorry that we run a government where people come in and do whatever thing they want to do. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, a minister, an engineer, telling me that you're building a road that will last 50 to 100 years. My God, on coastal land. You're not even considering that if there is a water surge tomorrow, but you're, you're giving us all these things in a boy state where he left few, few, few months ago. Go down there and see some of the roads. They are not as good as he is projecting this one that have not been done. So let us try to be realistic when we make some, when we spend this public form. This is public money. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Augustine. Uh, Alaba, welcome to the show. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Good morning, all the panelists. Um, there's really much to say. The Nigerian saga continues. Uh, everything is MP, um, special purpose vehicle. Let's get money out. Let's do SPV, uh, any project. You know, money is going to go down the drain. Some people, no roads will be built or properly built. Some people going to get rich. Um, the same old, same old. And uh, I just want to congratulate you all for the fact that our legal system is now working very hard, very well, efficiently. Well, particularly with the incarceration of Bob Risky, it shows we can catch all the big thieves uh, while the little ones can walk away. But the big ones, we don't let them escape. I want to congratulate all Nigerians on the effective work of their EFCC. They're doing a great job. Um, that being said, um, some other things I wanted to mention. Uh, all of you on this panel, very important. As I think all of us, please try to get... Um, read these two books very very important the a fatherless people by oh my god i can't remember and uh why we struck by major Ademulegu. please try and don't discuss and don't discuss any nigerian issue without reading those two books 
it will be a meaningless waste of your time of uh, why we struck by Major Ademulegun and um, uh, our fatherless people by, oh God, I can't remember. You know, Mayegun did a good job reading those two books on his channel and it was very, very informative. All our problems are just repeating themselves. <laughs> Everything that is happening now has happened before. And then it will also help you to know which Nigeria you're discussing with or you're talking with whether they are a revolutionary, they are a reactionary, or they are those that are just there to make something for themselves. Very interesting read. That's what I have to say. That would be I have more to add as we go forward. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. James. Let's try you again. I've spoken already. Right. Why not allow oh, you to? Oh, speak? you did. Okay. All right. I I totally forgot. It's too early for me, but I'm already. Uh, up there. Uh, Chim, welcome to the show. We can see you now. Yeah, so thank you, Judo. I, I don't know what's wrong with my uh, the camera on my laptop. I could see everybody. I actually came in as a moderator and I was surprised when you said you couldn't see me. But anyway, thank you. And then thank you, Mr. James, for offering to uh, give me your slot earlier and I appreciate that. Um, this highway, you know, I think I've, I've listened to a lot of people speak and um, I'm trying not to sound pessimistic, you know, um, because some of us have been labeled as all we do is just come and complain and all that. You know, there are times genuinely when I go and I sit down and I ask myself, okay, so how, how positive can I be when I come to this platform? You know, when discussing the issues of Nigeria, how do I have to force, you know, being positive? Do I have to force, you know, just manufacture positivity. I don't know. Please, anybody who knows how to go about it, help me. I really, I'm, I'm, this is like, this is like, this is like, you know, that man who came to Jesus Christ and was asking that his son be healed. And then Christ asked him, do you believe? And he said, I believe, help my unbelief. So I'm actually, those of you who know how to wash our brains from not seeing the negative things in Nigeria, because I, to, honestly, I'm struggling. I'm struggling to come here and then I'll, you know, be proffering scientific solutions, you know, of how to fix Nigeria. I am struggling. You know, when I listened to Umahi, actually, before he left office in Ebony State, like, I want to take off from where Augustine left. I was one of those who criticized some of the things. Yes, he is. He seemed to have had some infrastructure mindset in what he did in Ebony State. But if you go and look at the quality of what he did post when he left, first and foremost, the airport he built there is a huge waste. You know, um, I don't want to, for those of my brethren who are from a boy state, this is not an intention to put down anybody. But if there's any state in the Southeast that is least lagging behind educationally, lagging behind in a lot of things, this is a boy state. It's a boy state in the entire Southeast. People know this. If you go to Tedo Show Market and go to the rail, it is the airborne instead of people who are selling on that. And I don't mean it in a mean way. You understand? I, I don't see what he did to lift his people when it comes to, you know, education, healthcare. He was busy constructing roads, you know, and but now we know he has left. Go see the quality of some of those things. They are already falling apart. Now, coming to this whole um, Lagos uh, Calabar Highway, at what cost? And when I say at what cost, I'm not even talking about the whatever trillions they have put as a price tag. We have a thriving business on that corridor that is being dismantled because of this road. And like, um, I think it was, um, who was it that mentioned rail? That what about putting on rail? Now, let's even assume I want to support that project. A rail on that corridor would have made more sense. Imagine a rail that will you have gone into agreement with even the the owners of that uh, tourist center that is being torn apart to say let's build a rail system that cuts into this place and it will be something that brings people in and also takes them maybe if it's a fast train that will take some people from there now and then take them to Calabar to go and talk Calabar and then bring them back to this place that would have been some creative thing to say let's 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 we're talking about tourism let's impute this tourist concept into this whole thing rather than a road let's see how we can build a rail system calabar is also positioning as a 
as a tourist center. That way, any money anybody is taking out, I've started giving this bull some benefit of doubt to say, okay, I can see where these guys are thinking. But people want to put in quota, pardon my use of word, bear quota, that will break up, that water will wash away because this is a coastal road. And like someone rightly said, I think it was Andrew before he left, the one they are building in the southeast road in between Delta State and Bielsa, they haven't finished it. That road has been there since for how long of uh, our return to civil democracy. Nobody has finished that project. And then you want to begin to do this other one at such a cost. You know, <laughs> let's just call it what it is. Our, our political leaders are a problem. They are a problem. I don't know. I, let me not say something that some, someone say, well, I'm, I'm saying something that sounds very harsh. Those, all of the political leaders need to be rounded up. Honestly, rounded up, taken off and thrown away somewhere. Because I don't understand the way they reason. And, you know, I don't want to say much because pretty much everyone has said the same thing. And I agree with um, uh, uh, Ferrari when he said, yes, that's the, that, that's the notion in the past week. Our EFCC is working. They solved all the problems with one you know, swell swoop. They just removed corruption. We have we've had Ganduje. We've had even the sitting president himself abuse the Naira. Videos are all out there. And the only person, whatever you may say about Bobrovsky, I'm not a fan of Bobrovsky, but at least how suddenly is Bobrovsky's offense bigger than all the other political actors put together? Somebody took a bullion van on an election eve into his private home, nothing happened till today. He came out and boasted and took that our face and said, is he your money? I can do what I like with my money. And he showed up and Asurok and is now the occupant of Asurok, the same character. But Bobrisky, who is just a, I mean, nobody that we can easily ignore, suddenly becomes the biggest headache we have. So that's why I said in my opening statement, I'm struggling to know how to come here and not be looking at the negativities and looking at the things that are not working. I'm struggling because I personally want to. In fact, the biggest news for me, the biggest cheering news last week was Super Falcons. That's the only thing I found cheering enough. I, I'm not finding anything. So um, I will end there for now and then maybe later on in the conversation. But please, anybody, when you're coming up, just remember, help my own belief. If you have a solution to help my own belief, I would really appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Tim. He can ask San Antonio, help uh, Tim uh, along the way. Welcome. Um, well, Dr. Jacqueline Damages, thank you for giving me opportunity. It's been a long time mm -hmm. because as Tim has said, I find it difficult this year to come over here because Nigeria is in, in the state of no Mekwata. No, Igbo people say no Mekwata. Nigeria cannot be fixed. You know the reason why? I live in Texas, for example. You have a road that goes from Los Angeles to Florida, one highway, I-10. You go from Los Angeles, you pass Arizona, you pass Texas, you, you go through Louisiana, you go to Mississippi, you go to Alabama, you go this, and you reach Florida. There is nothing wrong with road. It's a very good thing. But unfortunately, when you talk about Nigeria, this is a way to take more money that they have already taken. These individuals do not have any plan, including the Labour Party ones that were voting by Labour Party. None of them have plan. The reason why they won, because they went from uh, one of these parties to Labour Party, and they took advantage of Labour Party to get into the office. How many of them? People say, why would you? I talked to one of them, actually, one of them. I said, why can't you guys say something? He says, once you say something, the money that's supposed to be allocated by to you, they will take it away from you and tell you stories. And the next thing, they find a judge to remove you in the office. Then I said to him, if that is true, to me, if you wanted to do better or change things, you will do it 
let them remove you in the office if that is really what will be the outcome. Because you don't, that means over there where you are, what they're telling you, you're doing it. Why did we vote you? This guy is actually in, in charge of our area. He says, well, is that the option? And see, I, I told him that is the best option. Nigeria is not working. Even if you break it apart, it's still not going to work. People say, break it apart. Somebody said, gather all of them, put them in one place, and every, my own, and every individual will go and cut meat, cut, cut their body, parts, one by one, every Nigeria. But unfortunately, it's not possible. I think Nigeria is failing because of people of Nigeria. You're talking about people in the government. Individuals that are not in government is worse than the people that are in government. Individuals in Nigeria that are not in government, individuals like me and you, the poor masses, they are worse than the people that are in the government. Because everybody is looking for somebody to do, somebody to steal from, somebody to uh, rip off. There is no good news in Nigeria. Even the dollar is crashing. I was asking one of my cousins, why is dollar coming down so low? What are they doing? Nobody knows what they were doing to make Nigeria, to make the dollar come down. If us, who are the Igbos that import things from Nigeria, a month and a half ago, you bought dollar at 1,900 Naira. That is about 19 million Naira for $10,000. Now, $10,000. It's about maybe 10 million something. The goods that left in China six weeks haven't get to Nigeria. That means you have lost 9 million naira already before your goods gets here. So what are we doing? Nigeria is in the state of non Mekwata. That is the reason why I find it difficult to think positive about Nigeria. Nigeria does, there's no positivity that is coming out, out of Nigeria because the individuals that are running Nigeria don't even know what they are doing. All they want is the money, take as billion. They are not even taking millions. They take as much billion as they can take or trillion. All right. Dr. Jacqueline Damages, I'm so sorry. I don't have any positive thing to contribute in this issue. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I want to uh, take it off from where you stopped about the Naira because uh, it's something that I think we should have conversation around quickly, which is that it's coming down, which is good news. And now you are complaining. I didn't know about that part, which is that people bought at a high rate and maybe the goods they, they bought uh, abroad are, is still coming in and now they are going to lose money. But there are people who are complaining that even though the Naira is coming down uh, in terms of exchange rates, the price of goods are still up. So, so the people who probably bought things who don't have to worry about being able to sell it and make money because the prices are not coming down because the Naira is gaining value and may not come down. And also I want us to weigh in on what are they doing? You raise an issue. What are they doing to bring down the value of the, uh, the exchange rate? What, what do Nobody. you Nobody knows. No, Nobody we know, knows. We know, we know. One of the things they are doing is that they are, are giving the money, money to um, uh, the bureau, the, the change at 1,100. So they're giving them dollars and telling them not to go beyond 15% in profit taking. So that's one reason why it's coming down. So, so it's not that they are okay. not. Yeah. Okay. So they, you they, you raised a good point in terms of. Goods are not coming down. Yeah, goods are not goods coming down. But goods are not going to come down anytime soon because the person that bought the dollar at 1900 have to sell his goods, have to make his own money. So that month, in next three months, this, nothing, uh, well, nothing that goes up in Nigeria ever comes down. It doesn't matter. There's nothing that goes up in Nigeria ever comes down. Since I was a child, things have been going up. Nothing has ever come down. So, but when you look at uh, practical, somebody who paid six weeks ago, his goods left China maybe four weeks ago, haven't gotten here yet. When he arrives in Nigeria, he's going to clear it. How is he going to recuperate his money? So those are the things you have to think about. 
All right, let's quickly go around, or if you don't have anything to say on that, we can skip you and go to other people. I want to hear what people are thinking about the, the Naira exchange rate, because people are saying from the government side that all of you are critics of the government. You're not giving them credit for something that they are doing that is positive, that you all can see. Uh, and there's another angle to that. I don't think there's anybody here from Nigeria who is in Nigeria, not from Nigeria, but who is in Nigeria. They said that you guys are not happy uh, because now your money, your foreign currency, it's not worth much. <laughs> now that's why you guys are not happy. So, so it's opportunity for you guys to to explain yourself to the government. Uh, Mr. James, go ahead. I'll meet yourself. Okay, I'm sure you can hear me now. Yes, good. You see, when I was a young man, some time ago, I had calls to go to Ivory Coast. There's a market there they call Treasure Real Market in Abidjan. I bought some shares with Nigerian Naira. Why is it that we are talking about exchange rates when we should make the Naira convertible? That is the root cause of the whole problem. So no matter, as long as we keep on tying ourselves to pounds and dollars, euros and what have you, we will never get out of this problem. What, did they, what were they able to do in those days that made the Naira almost convertible internationally, at least in West Africa? It was accepted as I mean, uh, an international currency. So this is what we should concentrate on, not a question of exchange rate. That's what I want to say. All right. Um, Jim, go ahead. Well, well I think um, we all know it, and our guest is a proponent of what I'm going to say now. It's a simple production, and but it's not as simple as I'm making it look. Um, recently on LinkedIn, I you know, stumbled upon there's this uh, simulation on cocoa production and the volume of cocoa production um, over, since 1950 something, how nations have been producing their cocoa quota, the level, the volume of cocoa they produce uh, into the world, uh, contributing to production in the world generally. And when that, that simulation started in 1950 something, Nigeria was second to Ghana. And the margin between Nigeria and Ghana wasn't much. Cote d'Ivoire was, I think, fourth. Cameroon was third. And then there were other nations listed. And then, of course, the simulation was going on. And it was showing every year, as, as, as we jump into a new year, you know, you just be seeing the simulation moving. Nations jump each other. It just keeps going on. I, I have it. I will share it with you and share it with a few other people. Or maybe I won't share that with you already, uh, Rudolph. I'm sure I share that with you, if, if you recall. And... When I was watching this thing, I saw how Ivory Coast grew, overtook Nigeria and Ghana, and kept a steady pace, the, 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 the volume. And I saw how countries like Indonesia, that had absolutely no comparative advantage in cocoa production, Indonesia, Malaysia, there's one of that, Singapore, all emerged. In fact, it even became more curious when I saw a Germany and a Belgium and Holland that also have no direct comparative advantage in cocoa, climbed up as at 2022, that is where the simulation ended. Nigeria was fought, struggling fourth, fifth with Holland, Netherlands. Think about it. We are endowed with the natural resources, the ground and everything for cocoa to thrive. But Holland that doesn't have the soil is competing with Nigeria for number four, number five. Belgium around that other. I'm, I'm not kidding. So that what I looked at that thing and, and it stared me. And I was asking myself, how is it possible? But you know what? The Ivorians did something. They engaged in massive cocoa production. Ditto banana. And that's why they are the largest producer of cocoa and banana in the world right now. And maybe I'm, make, I'm mixing up the banana one. But when it comes to cocoa, no nation in the world rivals them because of production. Now, the next phase is using that cocoa internally so that you don't have to send it to switzerland for chocolates that's the next phase african nations are supposed to be going into but let's even talk about the simple production in itself how does a nation like nigeria that before independence was number two it is our cocoa production that developed liverpools and manchesters of this world we know this we all know that is our palm oil and coal that made the industrial revolution in Europe, especially in the UK, what it is today. All of a sudden, we are not able to 
you know, uh, leverage those things anymore. I'm not even talking manufacturing now. I'm even talking basic raw materials. We are not exactly there. So when you are not producing anything that is that you can export, look at Gary that most of us eat in, in the diaspora. Most of the Gary we eat in diaspora comes from Ghana. That's the truth. The yams we eat, Ghana. All these things, none of, none of this is coming from Nigeria. So when we're not able to produce, because when you produce and you sell to the international community, then of course it helps hedge your currency. It helps reduce you know, the foreign exchange demands and all those things. We are not doing any of this. What we want to do is give our son-in-law, chairman of Federal Housing Authority. That's what we're trying to do. All we're trying to do is to pad budgets and then buy exotic vehicles for senators. That's all we're trying to do. So when we are doing all those things, of course, the Naira to dollar will be in a chaotic situation and goods and services will be expensive. But if we're able to at least, let's even go back. I'm not even talking fi final production, industrial production right now. I'm even saying agricultural advantage we have. Okay, farmers are no longer going to, we've displaced people in Benue State. Benue State is our food basket. People are in large quantities in uh, internally displaced people's uh, camps in those places. Where are the farmers? There are no farmers in Boronu State, in Zamfara State. Nobody is producing anything. Those in the Southeast, yeah, every day uh, you're busy accusing EC and Anko and, and cursing sit at home. When all these things are happening, how do you think we'll be able to produce to even sell? It's, it's simple common sense. I'm not an economist. I'm, I mean, I'm, a, I'm not even a trader like uh, Peter Obi. But this is my basic simple knowledge that I know that we're not producing anything. And people think it's a joke. When we're not producing anything, of course, the exchange rate will not be in the favor of our Naira. It's just as simple as that. This is my simple economic uh, understanding. I don't know. I, I'm sure there are people who have higher levels of understanding of the economy here. They perhaps will also help me when it comes to that. But if we don't produce, let's not expect our Naira to be strong. All right, thank you, Chim. Uh, let's go to a color line. Let me let me profess this. Uh, Dangote's uh, refinery is producing, I uh, think, um, aircraft uh, aircraft fuel. I believe it's beginning to produce diesel. I think, and the government side is saying that oh, that you know, you guys are not giving us credit that this is foreign exchange that wouldn't be going out, that we are not going to be importing them. They are going to be locally uh, made. So that is production. And that means that we'll have more money at home and that the Naira will continue to go even below 1,000. I call it, I go from there. Thank you very much, Dr. Damages. I'm just going to um answer some questions as far as i know and uh put up my um view of it as well um in the case of what they are doing to i think you've explained that the cbn has intervened they've intervened by saying okay we would not leave um dollar to the market forces let's intervene let's put it at a price and they came with a price of about a thousand three hundred to a thousand one hundred whereby you come if you're uh, if you need dollars you go to the cbn you get some dollars at that rate then if you are in the bdx if you're selling you cannot sell more than 50 percent of what you bought from cbn so that keeps it at that rate but the question is is this sustainable what is when with the reserves how much dollars can you give so there they come with that fact which um, Dr. Damages has just given, that Dangote is uh, selling refined um, oil now. So we would always get dollars. And before time, that um, everything would balance out. But then you ask that question, how would everything balance out when your security system is not good enough? Because you cannot have production in a nation where security is a problem, you know, because at the end of the day, the power of demand and supply would always take effect. The more you produce, the more the other nations demand your currency. Because if you look at Saudi Arabia, a pound to the Saudi um, Arabian real is four, one to four. 
because Saudi sells oil. It says, so they demand real. And Saudi has enough reserves. That is where the production uh, argument comes in. The more you sell, the more your currency is demanded. And this is what answers Mr. James' question as well. The more your currency is demanded, the more valuable it becomes and the more stable it becomes. Such that, don't forget, let's not forget one thing. This thing we call money is just another raw material or like paper. The only thing that gives money value is because me and you trust that it can buy something. So if your money has stability, if it has uh, uh, a value, if you take it to Cote d'Ivoire and the man in Cote d'Ivoire knows that, look, this money has stability, this money can buy me something in many other nations in the world. He doesn't need to be uh, mandated to take it from you. He will take it because he's sure it will work somewhere else. This is why dollar works in many places. This is why pounds works in many places. And this is why um, real or the money of Brunel works in many places. So that is my uh, talking to the whole argument. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. Son. Let me unmute myself. Okay. Right. Um, with the dollar, people that are saying that we should. Um, we should start clapping for the um, the, the occupiers of um, Asurok that they finally brought down the dollar. Are you are you guys okay? There's no economic. I mean, it just see. I hate to, to sound like a broken record. It's only for the gullible that they would they would throw this out and they will be deceived and all that. There is no economic activity. Can't you people get it? There's no, the prices of, uh, of, 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 of commodities have not come down. There, there are no industries. How many industries are ruling, ruling out production in Nigeria? The, uh, the, the agricultural, uh, agricultural sector in Nigeria is non-existent. Are you telling me that dollar is coming down? So all the shenanigans that uh, the, the, the Agbado CBN governor that they appointed are just doing because they are criminals. Uh, to to make us if the economy is working fine and all that it's it's only for this it's only for it's only for the gullible that will buy that the intelligent people will not buy that we all know the situation so it's let's just not deceive ourselves let's say it the way it is and um, when you say the way it is they will say you're hitting on Tinobu, you're hitting you're hitting on the um, on the on, on the present administration nobody's hitting on anybody all we do ask okay you grabbed it you run with it and all that. Do the right thing. This man have never come out and spoken to Nigerians and spoken to people that he should speak to and all that and doing the right thing. Corruption is just rife in his um, administration. How can, how, well, that's an, okay, I don't want to even touch that because we've not got into that or we're not touching that to, uh, today. How can someone be uh, a junior minister for just a short period of time? Look at the amount of money we're talking about that she has stolen. These are monies that belong to Nigeria that we, we can we can dive. Okay, somebody was talking about um, uh, hospitals and um, and um, and railway and all that. But let people eat first. If people are able to feed themselves, the price of of of, of commodities come down and all that, then we can start thinking thinking right. They, our our soldiers will not be hungry. They will they will have enough uh, vigor to 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 fight. But the, the, the soldiers are even hungry. The, a, a video went uh, viral not too long ago about the soldier that was uh, uh, released uh, uh, on a pass and all that. He, could, he got to the um, uh, to the motor park. He couldn't afford it. Should this be happening? And yet somebody will come and start defending this all this uh, nonsense that is uh, that's been going on. All we see right now is economic, it's all they are padding and all that, but it's not going to be sustainable. That's the bad news. After some time, it's just going to, everything is just going to fall apart and the, 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 uh, the, uh, the dollar will, will rise again, will shoot beyond 2000. It's, it's just, that's just reality. If in case you guys don't, don't want to know the truth, you don't want to hear the truth, but that's the truth. You see? We're talking about 2027 and all that. The uh, corruption, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 judiciary is very very corrupt. We have a corrupt uh, chief justice. 
Einek is still there. The man that put us in all this mess is still there. I know that we're not even talking about that. Please, let's just, let's just, I mean, I I, I very much align with um, my, my brother, Revolution. I mean, I, I think that is, we need to start, we need to start taking, taking, we need to take back our country. That's just it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Tony. Um, yeah, Ike. Well, thank you once again. I will just say a little thing and I, I will move on. Um, dollar falling, whether it fall below 1,000 or this thing, it doesn't matter to me. I will still send money to Nigeria. But whatever they are doing, this is a temporary, Even it's not even a solution. It's so temporary that when it's going to hit again, it's going to hit so hard and people will not understand it. The dollar falling to, when I started exchanging money, I was exchanging $100 for 10,000 Naira. $100 to 10,000 Naira. That was around 90, 95, 96. I never imagined in my lifetime that we would be here. Nigeria have deteriorated. Like maybe they picked in 1960s then they started declining if you look at it in a graphic the decline is so bad why others are still going up some countries like indonesia some country like even india even india now is competing unfortunately until we become producing country if we cannot produce we are not going to go anywhere Rather, believing that dollar will change our economy. The people that are running in Nigeria, they don't even, we have so many people that are educated, but they don't even have brain. They don't have brain. Their brain is, I bully some people, kill as much as I can, become whatever I become, then steal as much as I can steal. Nigerian leadership, make the highest amount of money per month per capita globally globally that is sad and people talk about revolution one of the research i did during christmas time when i when i was in nigeria i asked people what are you going to do about it people parents kids they said to me parents will say my children cannot go and and uh, do any revolution because the one that the people refer back to 2020 what happened during the NSAS people keep on referring to that i said then there is no way these people will stop what they are doing because if nobody have the guts you graduated from college you don't have a job you still live with your parents at the age of 30 and eight years ago that you graduated you still live with your parents your parents are still paying your bills how are you going is that a life i ask them is that a life that you cherish they still say in the land i'm so for me dr damages thank you for giving me opportunity to come back maybe the next time i will come back it's going to be six months from here because Nigeria is not giving us hope, but I still love the country. I still love it every day. It's unfortunate that our people are not taking these things serious. The Nigerians are not taking these things serious. But you guys have a wonderful weekend. Thank you for allowing me to come on today. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ikena San Antonio. All right. Let me go the other direction. Uh, uh, Austin. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Damages. I. So I wanted to add, I wanted to continue with what yeah, we can see you. Yeah, what Ikolala said. The value of your currency, I'll just add that it depends on the volume of labor you add to it. The volume of energy you add to your currency. That will make your why do I say so? It's unimaginable how our currency can be imagine to have value when people acquire it without effort when people amass wealth playing over it people stack money 
in their houses. And that's the way the money will go down because they make it. And when Chin was talking about production, it's not just that we don't produce, we don't even have the mentality to produce. I have conversation with people, why don't you farm? Hey, how will I struggle to farm? At the end of the day, I can't even just get the, the quantity of garlic that will serve me in a year. Then if I take 40,000, I can buy a bag of garlic that will last in a month. So you see that mentality is, do it, 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 it discourages labor, it discourages production. If we have production mentality, like in my office, I was just calculating today. I went to the stack of where I have the rosary bead I give to patients that want the rosary. And this were given to me by old agent men and women that gather themselves together to fix this. They get this bead, get rope, and they do it, and they distribute it to different institutions to give to people that need them. But in Nigeria, you have the plastic one. A company produces it. Somebody will go and buy it and distribute. So if somebody sits around and gather people to do this bid, it becomes a way of production. But we don't have such mentalities. We have, we just want things to be easy. Things we don't want to struggle. And why would you struggle? Now the system for some people is that they have a list of people they will beg. You might have up to 10 people in your list. So this month you beg this person, this person will give you. Next month you go to another person. So before it comes to that person you beg in this month, it has taken six to eight months, so the person will be comfortable to give you a gain. And people run their lives. So if just imagine where you live, at the, uh, uh, towards the end of the month, you don't have money to pay your bills. You're losing uh, just two months you fail to, bill, to pay your bill, you become homeless. So why would you not start doing something? But we live in a place where people depend on charity and they plan their life depending on charity. And you see government encouraging this. So government really need to stand up and encourage people on how to do things, on how to work, and how to make your work productive. Austin, thank you so much uh, for that contribution. Uh, there are people who are saying that um, those that have been uh, putting their money, saving their money in dollars. Who bought dollars at 1,600, 1,700? Now, now they are stuck. Now that it's going below 1,000, that they are being forced to sell, to bring out the dollars and, and sell at a loss. Um, that these are part of the things that are happening in the, in the market. We also know that uh, the foreign reserve is dropping. So that's a question mark about why is it dropping? if all this money, uh, they, they are coming in, because they said that dollars, pounds are coming into the country, people are bringing in, uh, um, bringing in foreign currency into Nigeria. So we want to hear um, all those perspectives. But let me go to you, Revolution. What do you think? Uh, are you still going out there to post-revolution? Are you looking at what's going on? <laughs> are you, what are you seeing, you know? Uh, I want to sign out by giving my last submission, because I have to go and hustle. Yeah, you see, sometimes I've, 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 I get carried away when people say Nigerians are not producing. Now, there are things to buy, but there's no money because people have pocketed all the money. The big guys, Nigeria, to me, is a country being led by not even by. They say a country where one man who have one eye is leading people, but Nigerians have been led by blind people, and we are watching them. That's the problem of Nigeria. Everything is good in Nigeria. The problem of Nigeria, like Obi have said it, is leadership. These people ran away with the power. They call themselves Kabas. Now we've seen them. And we refuse to fight with them. I don't have anything to say other than the only way Nigeria can get out of this problem is whether they call it peaceful revolution, like Peter Obi is believing, or radical revolution. Without these two things happening in Nigeria, nothing will change. There are things in Nigeria people are having. I, I look at the picture in the market. The market women were complaining. We have things to sell, but nobody's buying. So where you people get this idea there is no production in Nigeria? Sometimes it, it, it makes me feel like, what in this people they talk? People, things, I have families who tell me things are there, but we don't have money to buy it. 
Things are rotting in every day. People will go to farm, bring out their goods, nobody buys it. After one or two weeks, everything destroyed, they pour it away. So thank you again, Dr. Rudolph. And I promise you, because the green light is there, end of this month, I will deliver it to you. Then if you like it, then you can, you know, thank you. So thank you to everybody. All right. Thank you, Revolution. Thank you uh, for, for that. Uh, for those who want to know, some people are asking questions. Where is P2B? Uh, P2B will join us at um, 4.30 p.m. New York time, which is uh, 9.30 p.m. Nigerian time. Uh, we may be able to bring you a speech that he will make a uh, few minutes from now um, at Harvard Live. So if we can do that, we'll bring that to you. So um, he will join us later on on the show. Let's go to, where am I? The flagship. Go ahead. Thank you, Rudolph. <clears throat> well, um, the intervention of the CBN is, uh, is a no solution, in my opinion. Uh, giving out dollars and pegging it at a certain amount for those that are the operators of uh, the BDCs in Nigeria, uh, it's not a good fix that will transit into realization uh, for the everyday Nigerian. Like I always say, until the resultant effect of whatever move or strategy they apply is felt in the pocket of the everyday Nigerian or the tables of the everyday Nigerian people, until that is seen, then it is a no solution. Uh, bringing a dollar down to 1300 to a dollar, uh, my question to them is how long would they be able to sustain this? Uh, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday, I heard, uh, is it the chairman of the BDC operators in Nigeria complaining that uh, they are at a loss at the moment? Because a lot of them bought when the dollar was high at 1900 and now the government is making them to sell at a lower price, they are not really happy about it. So even the intervention and the uh, availability of the dollars given to them by CBN is still not something that they are happy with that. Believe you me, in a couple of weeks, it's gonna rebound. And when it goes back up, it will be so harsh that uh, the everyday Nigerian will find it difficult. And as you and I know, that when there is a change in the dollar uh, uh, price in the forex market, it automatically reflects in the villages that even a cup of gari that is there and has been sitting there before the change in the value of the dollar, the price will also skyrocket. But now that they have made this intervention, the prices are not coming down. And like uh, Revolution was saying a moment ago, yes, there are people who are who have farm produce in Nigeria that are rotting in their storages. The reason is because they are not willing to sell it at a reasonable price. The, the dollar has dropped, but they still want to sell it at a higher price. And nobody has that, that liquid cash to be able to afford that amount that they are quoting. So the products are rotting where they are. So until we get this effect where whatever changes they make, uh, shows up in the pockets or the bank accounts of the everyday Nigerian people, then this is not a solution at all. And also, if, if you look at it closely, the the changes and this uh, uh, little bit of regulation, uh, regulation that they have made is only helping those that are doing trade, foreign trades. The everyday Nigerian does not operate with dollars. They don't have nothing to do with it. So if they give it to the BBC operators who are selling it to businessmen and women that are going to try to use it to import goods, and like, uh, I'm not sure who said it a moment ago, those that purchase goods that are on the uh, uh, high sea coming back home now at 1900, uh, are they going to sell it at a loss now that it's, it's dropped? Uh, they will still want to put it where they think they can make what they invested in those purchases that it made. So it's, I won't call it a temporary fix. It's just a no solution because it's not sustainable. I don't think they can be able to keep this beyond six months. If it sustains after six months, then I'll pull out the scorecard and, and maybe clap a finger for 
the government for the move that they have made. But as it is right now, I don't think they can they can sustain it. It's not going to uh, do the average Nigerian good uh, uh, because it's not reflecting in their pockets, uh, bank bank accounts or their tables at home. So let, let them think of better solutions. Uh, the economic team that's within the government think of better solutions and how to make these changes rather at giving it to the hands of those that do these exchanges, try to take it down below to the everyday uh, Nigerian at the grassroots level and see how we can make these regulations to affect the price of the common goods that sustains the economy, which we see mostly within the bottom spectrum of uh, uh, the people in Nigeria. So until that is done, I think we're still in the same uh, situation. Uh, and and the, the effect of this uh, little move they've made is going to be worse when it comes back. Uh, I bet you the BDC operators who are uh, counting their losses right now will look for ways to try to recoup it back. And when they do, 2000 naira to a dollar will be a good rate. So I say uh, we cross our fingers and see how they handle this. I'll, I'll stop there for now. All right, thank you. Uh, let's see, uh, Master Prince, Yanis. Thank you, Dr. Domages. Uh, let me just uh, make this comment before I proceed. You know, sometimes when we come on the platform to talk, some people think that we are haters, that we hate, you know, we hate uh, Nigeria and all that kind of a thing. My simple analogy to that is that those people who think that way, who talk that way, are shallow minded they are bigots and they are i don't want to call them illiterates but it's so sad that they are being overshadowed by 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 tribe okay that someone says something or you criticize a person is to make the person better it's not about Oh, some people are in US and then they comparing Nigeria and all that kind of a thing. Look at the money we, we're talking about. In Ghana, a dollar is 13 cities, 45 cents. 13 cities, 45 cents to, to, uh, to a dollar. Unlike Nigeria, there is 1,100 or 1,000, whatever it is. And somebody will come and say, oh, they're bringing dollar down. They're bringing the, who, who, who took it? Who took it up in the first place? Who took it up? It's lack of knowledge. And it makes me, sometimes I wonder certain people, is it that they come on this platform just to, 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 to say, okay, uh, gotcha. Or they just want to say something that, that is irrelevant. The dollar we're talking about that is going down today. Okay, dollar is 1,100. But import duty is being, is being done at 1,450 to a dollar. So does that make sense that the customs are even collecting more money and they are even saying that the customs are asking for dollars? So when I hear the EFCC talk about, oh, they are fighting against people who dollarize and Nigeria and that kind of a thing, and I said, is custom not there? Are they not seeing? Are they turning their blind eyes and pretending such things are not happening. By the time somebody is using 15 million to clear a container, and what do you think? The product will go up. So we tell you, oh, you say marketers, they they are, they hate people, that 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 that. Nobody wants to run at loss. It's not charity. Some people who think that the marketers are the problem, they should go and start producing or they should go and start marketing. Few days, was it a week ago, my wife and I ordered uh, this um, box of fish, you know, because I always, I encourage that. I told her, I said, do it, you know, you know, import it from Nigeria. 
And the guy, you know, we saw him on Facebook and true to his words, he kept to his words. He did good. But my problem is the fish itself costs $340. And the shipping costs $270. Which, of course, it's not going to the guy, it's from us, not the guy. In all these things, you think you you think that the government is supposed to sit down together and say, you know what? What can we do? Like that guy that is doing the fish, I really applaud him. And I told him, I said, I will advertise him. If I have the chance, I will make him, I want him to keep doing what he's doing, especially when he's homeless. That's what we, where we are. All so right. for me, the Naira is not, you know, whatever it is, whether it goes up or it comes down. I like it when, just like uh, E.K. in San Antonio said, I like it when it was hundred dollars to ten thousand. It was it, at least when you give somebody hundred dollars, then they will be proud that you gave them hundred dollars. Today, any of us give anybody hundred dollars in Nigeria, they will even be looking at you like, oh, "What is this?" That's all I can say. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. I'll, I'll come to the people down, but let me go to Alaba and Chim, and then we'll come down. Uh, Alaba, you're next. Bros, now nah, nah, to go, you give them more. Now we we, we will never speak. Yeah, you yeah, don't, 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 don't leave us outside. No, just so that to be out. Uh, uh, you know, I won't skip people by the time I start jumping around. Go ahead. Uh, hey, um, thank you very much. Um, I just um, we seems like each time we talk, we just repeat. The because same. you don't talk twice already now. That's why you are no, repeating no. or more. Uh, <laughs> now, so, no, no, no. Now, now, so, KJ has been here, and our man Ike has been there. We never talked. Yeah, but, but the topic is different now. We are talking about the uh, exchange rates. So that's why. I they, see. They're not waiting on exchange rates. Yeah. Uh, I see. Yeah. yeah. But go ahead. Okay. Yeah. This time we talk, it seems like we repeat the same, the same thing every time. But I just want a big piggy bank on. You know what uh, Kulata is saying that the pricing would be is a lagging indicator that the price will come down. We all know from historical perspective that nothing ever goes up in Nigeria that ever comes down, and all these uh, jingoes that come here and shout uh, for the government. Uh, uh just what they are but my, what i wanted to say is that um, well if we are throwing prices it's good the price is coming down the question is can it be maintained or can it go down further that is left to be seen over time like someone said maybe six months we'll see if they can hold it or everything's going to come crashing down i'm on the side it's going to come crashing down now when we talk we I hear a lot of terms that I, I, I get bothered with. Governments need to, government needs to do this, government needs to do that. You understand? I, I, I'm disturbed by by comments like that because it seems we are not in a pragmatic reality of what our situation itself is. We are expecting the people who come on board with uh, with a uh, with a special vehicle purpose to come steal and loot to do anything, and the moment we keep expecting them to do, we are endorsing them. Um, the the naira and the um, money situation is still very fluid as it is right now. Even though they want to take the praise that it's at least it's going down. But the fact is, can it be maintained? Production experts in economics have told you over and over that production and change of governmental attitude are the key factors that would make it possible to sustain the going down of the Naira. Now, if you're busy 
still trying to build bridge to nowhere to Calabar, whatever, with exorbitant prices. You're busy still stealing money. You're busy with a corrupt judiciary, very, very serious in the jailing uh, Bobrisky, while the Kandrujes of this world, the Bajamia, Bajamia Bila of this world, and the Tinubus of this world are running free. There is no serious change in this type of action. Nigerians, if we fall into the various categories, there are those who have this revolutionary mind, but sometimes their revolutionary purpose in itself is misplaced because it's not foundational based on what is on ground. And there are those who have this reactionary mind, uh, you know, of those who just react to any, any little thing that just happened. And then there's this other group of people who are being pushed purely by greed and don't even sit on the same position. They are opportunistic people who, who just waiting for an opportunity for them to grab their own. So we have these different categories of people and what the country needs going forward is a unity of purpose. Unity of purpose whereby we all agree on what is the problem. The problem is our government, the type of government, not the people, the government. If this is the case, how do we change these blind people that are in charge? How do we replace them? This should be our focus. And we can only do that. You cannot, for those with a revolutionary mind, you can have a revolution. Even if you have all the arms, it will fail. Go back into history and read. You understand? But you have to have a revolution of the mind. Until conversations like these are heard in the rooms and bedrooms and sitting rooms of Nigerians who are struggling to buy Gary, we are not moving anywhere because they are the ones who would actually change things. And then for the for the Agbadorians among us who fall, I just I just have wanting to tell them those who follow their track by way back in history. They, get, they got consumed by the same system. Go back into Nigerian system. Those who stood back and did nothing when the revolutionaries were, in, were pushing for a change, it didn't, take, it didn't take up to three years or a year before they got consumed by the very system they failed to support. The history is all down there for us to look at. And so now on this money thing, let me stay on topic. On this money issue, you understand? there won't be any tangible change. It will be that fluid. We will go down, we will go up, we will go down, and eventually we'll hang up being down because the objective of those in charge is to make money. Is to make money at the expense of the country, at your own very expense. So if they're not going to give that up, because you all talking here, or they're going to give that up because they just have a, 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 a moment of clarity. It's not going to happen. All right, let's 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 leave it at that and, and move quickly so that we can get to one other topic or two before our people be joins us. Uh, Ike, the next. Uh, good afternoon. You can hear me. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right, he can hear us. So we, we move on to KJ. KJ, go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Rudolph, um, the man of the people, and uh, every able panelist. I see my brother, Chim. And uh, Mr. James, uh, Mr. James, I wanted to send you something that you said yes, uh, last week, but that's on a different level. We'll talk about that on privately. Okay, I, I like the topic, and I want to start, you know, start from where uh, my good friend, Mr. Ferrari, stopped. Um, you see, the thing is with Nigeria, one of the biggest challenges is that when we are trading on a bad level, some people just keep praising the same system as if they're not even seeing what is going on. Now, on the issue of this uh, currency exchange, I don't know how far 
we are going to keep manipulating it and think we'll get a good result. How far? How long? Okay. You're just like so, you know, we have flagship said, you, you, or somebody said here before the guy who have left. We are, we are, we, we have food products and you know, produce in the market. People are not able to buy it. And you keep praising the fact that you are manipulating the system and adding, you know, figures that are not there and praising and saying that the Naira is gaining, you know, against the dollar. And you see, if you read the commentary, some people are already saying, because you are saying, saying that the Naira is not, you know, gaining any force, you are not in support of government. Why should we all join together and be lying to each other? This same lie that have kept us where we are till today. The same lie I've been telling since Nigeria became independent. And we're still continually to talk, say that lie. By the way, I want to say to the government, of, because I know they are always on this channel, listen. They should also, EFTC should go and arrest Tinibu because Tinibu, uh, just three days ago or thereabout, was spreading money. And when uh, Washu, Washu uh, was singing for him, he was doling out the dollars. Okay. And obviously, people are stepping on it. So he should equally be arrested and, uh, you know, put to jail. I'm not saying I support, you know, um, the lifestyle of uh, Bob Risky, whatever. But it's just, you see, they look for the little, little ones they can use a sledgehammer and kill. And the ones who are carrying elephant meat on their head, which is government elephant meat, are left alone. It doesn't make any sense. It, and it, it's not, it, it doesn't show that you even understand the, the situation that you find yourself. You guys, I mean, case, is, case is actually the other way around. It is the big fish that they caught. The small fishes are left just, just to help you. Sorry. Okay, no. What I mean by the, by the big fish is the bigger people in government who take the bigger money are the ones that are left. They are the, the little, small fish. Those are the yes, small fish. The little people who do not even have any, they're not in their actions or inactions are not affecting governance in any way, are the ones that are used, they use sledgehammer on and make sure that they suffer consequence of the big, big, big ones. That's what I'm trying to say, uh, Chim. Thank you for the help. All right. I, I want to go straight to, the, you see this issue of the manipulation of the currency and we keep, you know, this, if you, I wanted to post a video of um, Aero 5 on the same issue of currency when it moved to $200 for $120, for $140. And he made it a national debate. And I still have the video here. He made a national debate. He went there and criticized Jonathan and he said every other issue in Nigeria was because the currency had moved from $140 to what it was at that time. Okay, but now people are celebrating the fact that the naira is you people should be happy. The naira is even lower than is lower than one thousand, at least. You see, this is the unequal gauge that are used in our nation that doesn't help anybody. Whether you are from the south, the north, or whatever you say you are, as long as you agree that Nigeria is your nation, it will not help you. It will not help me. The thing that will help all of us is when we take into cognizance the fact that our nation is drifting on a very fast track and deal with it irrespective of who is in power. It does not matter who is in power. It does not matter who is in power. I, I, I don't know how much I can emphasize on that. Okay, Let us address issue as we see it. Remove sentiment. The great nations we see and talk about were only able to become great because they, they address issues as they see it without necessarily beating about the bush. That's all, all, all I say, because, I mean, there's not, what am I going to say? This is what Dr. Rudolf Platform had been discussing even before we got to this point. The continuously destruction of the Nigerian system, and it's not changing. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, KJ. Let's go to Jagun. You're next. Or, or meet yourself, please. Good day, everybody. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you are. We are here again on another weekend with um, a lot of bad news. Chim, my man, I can only give you two, my brother, two bits of uh, news or in terms of uh, encouraging you. You know these things already, but I, I, I'll need to remind you and remind you again that it's Nigeria that we're talking about. Uh, the first thing, in order to bring your spirits to a point where we can begin to make decisions is basically to look in the mirror. 
The second thing is to have a backbone of some kind of revolution in your heart. I think if we don't have these things, we may as well forget Nigeria because Nigeria is not going to do it by itself. The way I see it, I don't know if this enters your system as we are of age, all of us are of age on this platform. You know, um, at the time Obasanjo was in, even though possibly many of us didn't think he was the man to do the job at that time, after about three years of him being there, we were somewhat encouraged that he's going to do the right thing. His tenure was over after eight years with all the scribble that we note. And then Jonathan came in. And as much as madness was going on, we were trying to think uh, our man is going to do it. Uh, again, it just turned into a crock of nonsense. And then Buhari came in to waste eight years. And again, still, we believed that something was going to happen that would benefit us. We have Buhari now that, for me, one, I, I don't know who's confused here. I really, I have no idea who's confused. There's nothing he's going to do for anybody. He hasn't the nous to do it. He hasn't the guile to do it. He hasn't the ambition to do it. It has none of these things that it will take for us to get at, at least on the rail. Because we're right now, Nigeria is off the rails. I think we appreciate that. It's not a functioning, it's not a functioning geographical space because I don't know what to call it. You know, what, what, what I see is going on right now in the economy, and we know all the areas that the economic areas and the political areas that Tinubu has already made. Now, given the space of where the currency is, you know, we, um, the whole idea of, uh, um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, where the whole idea of uh, taking away subsidies as much as it was in everybody's mind that there's a there's a stealing of money going on there, it was still benefiting the country as a whole. That was taken away like that for many reasons. And it plummeted us into panic. We, we, we haven't got after, we're not, we're not, are we a year? We're a year now, aren't we? We're not quite up to a year, are we? No, we will be a year in June, I believe. Is that right? Anyway. For, for Tinubu's one-year term. Now, given that, we are right now in a crisis of currency. Now, we all know that where we are now, that Naira is woefully undervalued. But the thing is, so much money was printed in the last four or five months, and it hasn't added up to anything. Really, it hasn't added up to anything because of our debt position and the amount of debt we're in. If, uh, if, if we just think about it, our GDP is 500 billion a year, it should be at least 3 trillion. And I believe on a yearly basis, at least that amount goes into the pockets of our leaders, one way or the other, at least that amount over the years. And we've been watching this gap getting wider and wider and wider. And, and we feel it's, it's not going to come to a, a buck, a point where everything is about to crash. We haven't come to the end of it yet. Because, again, we are so deep into Nigeria. It seems that we're not really paying attention in the diaspora that we're in. If we look at these economies for what they really are, no, no stop giving America the, the 21 gun salute. Because the dollar is about to disappear from this planet. And when that happens, and I'm saying when, when that happens, what is what is going to go on with Nigeria? You see, if I will lastly say this, Nigeria has missed too many opportunities, just too many, in terms of where we are economically. Nigeria was supposed to have the ECOWAS market in its pocket. Nigeria was supposed to bring the first a uh, currency that took over a region. Nigeria was supposed to take all the Francophone countries, uh, not only in West Africa, 
but in Central Africa as well, Central West Africa. This is what Nigeria was supposed to do economically. One way or the other, they have to get there. But they tried their flams, they, they failed. And we're watching all of this. And, and, and somehow, as Ferrari has said, somehow we're looking at the government like they're real human beings. This, I mean, it's like, I, I, I can't reasonably, violence is not anything that I want to push. However, the mental revolution, the revolution of the mind, is not even begun to take place the way I see it. Lastly, ending with this. From the time protests kind of began in Nigeria, and SARS, that was the young man's kick. But the generation above did not get behind NSARS in Nigeria because they're just too afraid. There's no backbone. There's no courage within our people. Um, we look to our leaders. And yes, they are to blame. They are the worst of us. But they come from us, I'm afraid. So anyone not looking in the mirror and thinking that uh, it's those people over there, because that we like pointing the finger. Mm, all the time, we're trying to blame. Black. Sometimes I wonder what kind of human beings we are because we're not taking anything seriously. We're just wagging our gums and not going to the, the real crux that, look, this thing actually is not going to stop. It's not going to stop in Nigeria. It's not going to stop next door. We, th we, we may think Ghana is in a better position than us, but they're in a worse position than us because all these small economies around Africa, they need the kind of economy that Nigeria should be in order to exist. These, these economies, they can't exist without us. Yet we're, we, we don't know our responsibility. We don't know what we're supposed to be doing. We're stealing money. I, I think we're pathetic. I'll end it there. All right, thank you, Jagan. Uh, Mr. James, how is the economy in, in Gambia? <laughs> in the Gambia the economy, well, there's no basis for comparison with that of Nigeria because um, the Gambia is just like a local government in Nigeria. The population of the whole of the Gambia, I think, is equal to that of Benin City. And the land mass is um, equal to that of Bayesa State, 13,000 square kilometers or so. So there's no basis for comparison. Anyway, uh, Mr. KJ was saying something about we lying to ourselves. Uh, we should acknowledge something. I, I hope you are hearing me, please. Yeah. We are hearing you. Yeah, we should acknowledge something. We are running a PDP government. When I say PDP, I mean people deceiving people. You will be lying to me. I know you are lying to me. I pretend as if I do not know that you are lying to me. And you know that I'm pretending that you do not know. I mean, we just keep on lying to each other. The reason is simple. In Nigeria, a lie that binds is better than the truth that divides. That's the policy governing the country. When you tell people the truth, it, it means nothing to them. I mean, anyway, so that is that. Uh, for us to get out of this problem, there are certain things we need to do which we are deliberately refusing to do. For example, since this man came to office, Mr. Tinibu, nothing has been said about crude oil theft. Colossal sums of money going down the drain. Nobody is thinking towards that direction at all. The central bank governor is manipulating figures, deceiving and distracting people's attention from what is going on in the Niger Delta. This is one thing that is keeping us behind. The only way out of this problem, there's just only one way, and that is industrialization. If the country is not industrialized, we are just wasting our time. And we should be tired of saying, we are tired, but how can we industrialize without electricity? Now, we want to spend colossal sums of money to construct an imaginary road from Lagos to Calabar. That money should be you know, pumped into electricity. If you are able to provide enough electricity in the country, half of the problem will be solved because industries will spring up. After I have left Nigeria, there's a region, I think, between Lagos and Ogo State, they call Shongo Ota. A lot of industries were springing up in those days, in addition to those springing up in eastern Nigeria. If those industries can come up again, 
and let those in the East continue with what they've, they've been doing, we'll see the effect. One thing is certain, markets is not the problem for our goods. As I always tell people, the whole of West Africa is a ready market for Nigerian products. When Nigeria was Nigeria those days, we used to sell a lot of our products in West Africa, in Nigeria Naira. We don't even ask for dollars or whatever it is. I mean, the, the, I mean the, it was a medium of exchange in the whole of West Africa. Household items, like uh, let's say furniture, refrigerator, electric appliances, motorcycles, and things like that. If you produce, in fact, uh, traders don't even need to go to the Gambia or Senegal or wherever it is. The, the Gambians are coming to Nigeria to buy those things and take home because it is nearer, it is cheaper, and it is more convenient. It's just about two or three days continuous journey by road from the Gambia to Nigeria. So it's better than going to Japan or the end of the world, New Zealand, to go and get whatever you want. So. If we are ready, we will know that we are ready. And the only way out, as I've said, is engineering. All these shortcuts we are, you know, embarking on, how to, you know, uh, make the Naira more competitive or what, it's all not, I mean, to me it's an adulterated nonsense. Any government that is not emphasizing engineering is not a government that will take us to the promised land. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Mr. James. Uh, Tone, you're next. Right. Okay. I, like I said, uh, Doctor, we, we it's, it seems we're just uh, revolving like one big um, um, thing and all that, seeing the same. I, th I think we just said it all. There's no point me talking for topic's sake and all that. It's it, it, without Mr. James have captured it. He, he had just said it. Jaguar has said it. So what more can we say? You see, these people have just closed their ears. The Their supporters are just being more more dumb and stupid uh, as the days goes by but we we pray we don't hate them but we pray that they will them um, they will come to a place of understanding very soon and they will they will understand that nobody hates them and uh, we're all saying for the betterment of our country thank you so okay. let eagles air uh, mr abba uh, take yeah. over. Okay. Okay, Tom, thank you uh chim you want to say something i'll come back to you go say yeah i just wanted to say you know at the end of the day what we're just talking about is the purchasing power of the naira that's just bottom line. If I don't think the average Nigeria wants to know if the dollar to the naira is one thousand naira to a dollar or vice versa or whatever, because some of the other nations that you know are doing well, like Japan. Japan's Japan's currency exchange between is it Japanese uh, yen and yeah. yeah. For as long as I can remember, I remember not getting a job because I went for an, an interview in a company and I was asked about. Why are Nigerians so fixated with the uh, exchange rate? And although I gave a good response, but the guy didn't feel I, I was able to have explained it from an industrial perspective. And so I didn't get that job. That's fine. But I still remember it very well. He told me clearly that, and I, after that, I began to read The Economist a lot. The average Nigerian is interested in that he takes his one naira to the market, and his one naira is able to feed him and his family especially for those who live day to day, the hand to mouth, she or she earns money from her trade and is able to buy food for the children, buy bread, buy milk, you understand, buy Gary, even if she has to repeat it every day, she doesn't have the capacity to store, to buy food stores and store, but that, that she, and on a daily basis, her business generates income and she can buy and feed her family. That's what she's looking for. In every economy, we have those kinds of people. Even in the industrial economies we're talking about, there are people who live hand to mouth. But the fact that they can walk into a Walmart or a Costco or whatever it is and spend $20 and feed themselves is what they're talking about. So if those who are busy screaming that the uh, government is doing magic, listen, if my purchasing power is low, forget it. And that's what we're saying. People have money. But that money cannot buy anything tangible. That's right. Can I can I just back can I can I just come in because you, you reach a very interesting point. Forgive me, Jim, please. Um what you're saying is right to a point. And I was listening to you to see where you was kind of going. I'm but not done yet. I hear you. But you know, the Japanese, the Japanese yen 
is trading at a very low value. However, the Japanese have done 50 solid years of growth. 50 solid. They have an infrastructure behind them that you cannot okay, believe. So that, that was the next point I was going to talk about. Remember at the beginning, if you listen to me, I said we're not producing. And I don't want to... That's, that's know, the bottom contest. line. Yeah, I don't want to contest with what Revolution said. The fact remains, we are not producing. Listen, if the government, like Mr. James just said, decides to invest that money they want to invest in that Calabar Lagos Road into fixing infrastructure, into fixing security, so that the basic farmer in Benue State can go and do his farming and flood the market with food, we will not be talking all these things. I, you know, it bugs me when I see people make it look like, listen, I don't want anybody to come and beg me for dollars. I would rather that Nigerians back home are feeding well. They don't have to, you know, do what uh, uh, um, uh, the, one of our speakers said, select who they will go to from between six months to go and beg for money. Don't beg me for money. It, it pains me when a, a grown man, a classmate says, please, can you send me $20? Because he or she has calculated the volume of what $20 is when I send $20. $20? Like, seriously? I would rather this person takes care of themselves. If I choose to send money to a friend, let it be not because the person is begging me, but let it be that I heard somebody, oh, their daughter is getting married. Oh, I can't attend. Bro, this is my contribution to wish your daughter a, a happy married life. Oh, you're doing something for your father. This is my contribution. Not that some it, we have, I have people who beg, beg, sending you a message. You, when someone just says, bro, how far? Already my tentacles are up because I know what's coming next. <laughs> These things are not dignifying. It's painful. I don't feel happy living in the diaspora and I am seeing people begging from home. We don't want that to happen. Let the value of the money, of the currency locally that people are able to expend, let it be able to buy Gary for them, buy milk for them, pay their rent. That is what we're... And if it's not happening right now, whatever Kadaso is doing is gibberish economically. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Tim. Uh, let's move on to Eagles Air. You're next. Uh, good evening, everyone. I hope you can hear me clearly. Yes. Okay. So thank you, Rudolph Okonkwo. I always uh, love the program you always uh, bring before us on the topic because it makes us to reason clearly and think about the future of what Nigeria is going to become. I believe that some of us here, we are employed in Nigerian government to give analysis of what how the economy will be. I know that both of most of us here will give clear picture of what tomorrow economy will be. I want to say something clearly because this is what we need to look into it. What is that rating? When when there is deceit and lies in leadership, the economy becomes unproductive. Then the currency suffer it i say it again when there are deceits and lies in leadership the the economy becomes unproductive then the currency suffer it that is what is going on in nigeria nigeria government or the people that elite what they have in government is deceit and lies somebody know that if your economy is not productive there's no way the currency will grow. And it keep on going on to borrow money and put into foreign reserve for dollar to come down. Then when the, when the money you borrow, finish, dollar go up again. Who is deceiving who? That deceit and lies that we have in government and that makes the economy not productive and the currency keep on suffering it. They know the truth. What is the truth? How do we make this country to be productive? They are not interested in it. We are interested to build a road or bridge from Lagos to Calava, and the bridge will start from Lagos, not from Calava. What they know, what they know is to close all the whole seaport in southeast and open only Lagos to be functioning. Who is deceiving who? What they know is how to arrest a mefile and they carry him up and down. And what they know is ESCC to go to and look for small, small boys and arrest them and let the big fish that be stealing all the home money that is enough to build, build electricity, is enough to handle our security. Who is, who is fooling who? 
So the follower of Nigeria is the elites. They know the truth. They don't want to handle the truth. What is the truth? Make this country to be productive so that the currency will have a value. If there is no output, there is no way the currency will have a value. Then what do we do to encourage our output? Here in India, here in India, do you know a government subsidized food? A whole family of three or four can use 20 rupees or 50 rupees, go by the side road and feed themselves very well and go back home joyfully. In India here, in India here, if you want to build your house, you go to government and borrow money. As long as you have land, you go to government and borrow money to build your house. And you will pay that money 10 years' time. Some, some of them say well, they pay it until they die. Their children continue to pay for it. This is a country who needs the development of the country. And the most that is trending everywhere that is doing well, uh, doing well in the economy. What happened to him? Government encouraging through Donald Obama. Obama loaned him money, gave him money. Today, LMOS is re returning back to the economy of the country. What is it that the Nigerian government is doing to encourage indigenous company or indigenous uh, modest micro company? Nothing. Rather, they look for a way to bring it down. In which way does they need to encourage? One, they need to make power to be stable. If there is stable power, electricity, so more micro industry will begin to breed. They will no longer spend new money in petrol or diesel. Life becomes easy. Now, we the country started having productive. In fact, the currency, the currency begins to get weight. Here in India, people will leave three rooms and they use one room for factory. Ordinary slippers, ordinary betel slippers, one room, they use one room to produce it. And the government will encourage them, give them loan, help them to build their own. And do you know that if in India here, if we import foreign car, foreign vehicles, the tax they are going to pay in that foreign vehicle is half of the money used to buy it in US or any country on Europe. But if you want to buy uh, any car made in India here is cheaper. Have you seen how the government encourages their cities, encourages every product in, in, in India? But the Nigerian government, they prefer to go, out, go to Japan and buy Toyota and live Ill, innocent alone. Then who is fooling who? So the problem we have in this country is that we refuse to do the right thing Rather, we follow ourselves with deceit and lies, and the, the economy becomes unproductive, and the, economy, uh, the, the currency suffer it. And when the currency suffer it, a little person in the street cannot use the value of the money to buy something, because the money becomes nothing for them to buy it in the streets. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Igus. Uh, Janaba, your next. Uh, good afternoon from this and everybody, and uh, it's nice to be with you again, Rudolph, and the fellow uh, panelists. Uh, on the issue of the currency, I don't have much to say. Whatever the abracadabra that they are doing, that uh, bringing the dollars uh, down, we we'll see how long that lasts. Um, everybody has spoken about it, so. so in that regard, um, time will tell whether there is uh, a structure that is supporting it or uh, it's about forcing people and to sell the way or about putting money in the reserve, whichever way they are manipulating, uh, time will tell. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Ike. Let's try again. Ike, can you unmute yourself? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. You can hear me? Yes. Uh, sorry, my internet has been off and on, and uh, that is what it is. But uh, I've been hearing the, the long grammars and big grammatical speaking for everybody. Listen. Uh, 
the people of Okuama who are living in the forest now doesn't know what we call dollar and pounds. The farmers in Benue State who produce Nigerian food that there is no access to them to produce that food doesn't know what you are talking about here. The thing that put food in the table of Nigerians, they don't understand all this big grammar we are speaking here, right? Then what happened in Okuama, we have forgotten it, right? All right, uh, we're having problems with uh, your connection, Ike. Uh, hopefully, you can fix it and uh, join us again. Let's I'm going to give up the line. Go ahead, if you can hear me. Go ahead. Can you still hear me? Go ahead. We lost you a moment ago. Yeah. So, so all this big grammar, all this big grammar about dollar, dollar. The people who are holding the dollar, just few people in Nigeria are holding the dollar, giving it to the people they want. So I don't understand all this big grammar about dollar. When when Nigerians cannot feed themselves, like everybody has been saying here, so all this grammar doesn't solve the problem. The, the, the solution to all these things is what most of you have already said here. The security, we don't have security in Nigeria. There is no infrastructure in Nigeria. There is no electricity in Nigeria. So what of all this long grammar about dollar, dollar, dollar central bank? It doesn't solve all these problems. Because the people in, in Benue State who are the, the food basket of Nigeria cannot go to their farm. They can't produce anything for, for Nigerians to eat anymore. Like somebody said here, most people, most people they, who were able to produce certain things from, the, their, from their farmland, they are trying to sell according to market forces. So you, it, it, it is a problem what we, have, what we are facing in Nigeria, right? So if we, it end up to what we are talking about, what the man we are waiting here has always been saying for, for how many, for almost for one year now, production, right? When you don't produce anything, how will your, how will your currency be, have value? I mean, it's just, it's, just, it's just a waste of energy. All this, listen, it is a renewed shake we are in Nigeria, right? So uh, uh, these people are just, when they wake up in the... All right. Ike, uh, thank you so much. Uh, let's move the conversation forward. Uh, let me play this. Yeah, so, uh, they're hungry, right? Uh, we have lost. If we can, if we can Don't leave me there, boy. No, guys. Nobody, they love. Don't leave me there, boy. No. Don't leave me there, boy. I got three children. I'm going to raise them. I got three children. I'm going to raise them. Plus, I'm back. Oh Jesus, what is this? Plus, I beg, I beg, I beg. I got three children, I'm going to raise them. I beg, take a small spot. Don't like this is a risk. Swag they shall see the risk we take. Hey, it's okay like this, I beg. Don't speak. See the risk we take, people, to entertain you. Lying on the right on River Niger. Whoa, whoa. Oh, whoa, whoa, this one had a hit under. You don't go boss, Abby. All right, this was a sad uh, story out of Nigeria um, this week. Um, last Sunday, we had a uh, uh, Stella, who talked about the welfare of actors in Nigeria. And um, within the week, um, a sad incident happened there in Anambra State where they were shooting. It's a long story, but it's sad all the way. Not just what happened to the actors and the people production team, but afterwards. Unbelievable. I want to hear your view on this. And then uh, while we wait for Peter to join us. Uh, let's start with you, the flagship. flagship. Mike. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, let, let me start by saying, uh, uh, my extending my condolences to the family of, or families of, uh, 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 his name just skipped my head, but I'll call him 
uh, 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 John, that, that's his name. Uh, Junior uh, Pope. Junior Pope. Pope. Thank you. Thank you. Junior Pope. Uh, I, it, my heart felt condolences to them. It's really a sad situation uh, looking at a man uh, record his last moment before he left. It's, it's really sad. And like Rudolph said, the, the whole thing from the beginning to the end is, is unfortunate. I was listening to uh, Kenneth Okonkwo uh, make a comment about the uh, uh, passing of the young man. And he said he died long, long ago. He just didn't die that day, but he's been dead a long time ago. And for a moment, I sat back to reflect on his last, uh, uh, I mean, Kenneth Okonkwo's uh, last uh, uh, outing with us here on the show and last Sunday's uh, show with uh, Stella Damascus. And I, I began to wonder and think what they really mean when they say Nollywood is doing great and is getting better. Looking at all these incidences that have been occurring from time immemorial and how the, the unfortunately the cream of the crop the best ones among them that people are really attached to and uh, familiar with are just exiting with, with in such uh, sad ways uh, that, that i guess what you're trying to say when, when i when i reviewed it the, the none would doing good is the monetary aspect how much they are making what they are getting and so on. And little is said about the welfare of the people. And I know Stella highlighted on it last week a little bit. Uh, what regulations are there in this industry? What are the do's and don'ts? How are these crew handled? Are there policies in place that governs uh, whatever time they spend on their sets shooting where to go to shoot stunts that they perform, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's, it saddens me to see when I looked at the video, or videos rather, and I saw the aftermath of the accident that he had a chance to coming back to life, but the, the actions that were taken were so very, I, I can't find good words to, to uh, quantify or, or express them. Uh, it brings me back to our healthcare system. If we had a good system in place, accessible to the people, I think he would have had a, a great chance. Not to uh, mention the thought process of the people that were handling him at that last moment, who for only God knows what reason thought that the best place to take him to was to uh, harbor list. Uh, to, I don't understand. I really can't figure it out. I, I'm still trying to place my mind on, on the whole thing and how it happened. But this is what I have to say, that beyond just an industry that is known, not only to Nigerians, but to the entire continent of Africa and the rest of the world, there seem to be a whole lot of lapses. And it's not regulated properly. What I mean regulated, I'm not talking about the staunch hands of the government or any regulatory body to, to uh, pin them down on what they do. But I'm, I'm talking about the welfare of the actors and every member of the crew. I mean, looking at the boat that they used and why they got on it, how they sat on a boat without life jackets. And who, who made this arrangement? And how did they get to agree to get into this kind of a setup? Were they on a shoot or is this between shoots, trying to get to where they are going to shoot? Whatever the case may be, I think there are a lot of protocols that should be written to govern and, and control this, this setup that they have. It seems like everybody that has money can get cameras, lights, and the crew can just uh, get out and shoot movies without really looking into the intricacies of these things. What needs to be in place? What needs to be looked into? The do's and the don'ts of it. You, uh, 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 you just don't get out there and shoot without taking care 
of yourself first to really figure out your safety first before you get out to do these things. So I think it, uh, the bigger picture or moral from this is within the industry, there, there's a whole lot of revamping that needs to be done. And then secondly, on our side, we really need to have a serious discourse on healthcare and access to healthcare for our people. Because if we had good systems in place or good healthcare facilities around, incidents like this uh, would stand at least a 50% chance of, of being put back and, and life being, being restored to uh, the victims. And, and again, I end by saying uh, condolences to the families of all the victims and, and uh, uh, the gentleman involved. Thank you. Thank you, the flagship, uh, Alaba, Yanis. Um, that was so, so, such a sad story. Uh, I just heard that the man died. I think the Pope Junior or Junior Pope or something like that. I saw, I didn't know he made a last minute video. I didn't know the hospital failed him, but I'm getting to know those details now. Um, it boils down to only one point regulations. Who makes regulations? Government. Do we have a government? We have a non existent government. Everything that happens to every Nigerian boils down to that fact. Government. We don't have a good government. We don't have a non existent government. They might call themselves governors, mayors, or whatever title they president, whatever title they give themselves and be looting. We have a lawless nation. And as a people who have been freed from the shackles of the colonial masters for 60 years, but are not really truly free, we need to start agitating for our freedom. Because if you don't partake in this conversation, because you're abroad, or your children are abroad schooling, or you've made it, or you are the top echelon of the Nigerian elites because you live in Ikoyi, Banana Island, Victoria Island, and this issue doesn't bother you, or because you're a big Hollywood star who's made your millions from a stage performance, or you are rich as Dr. Rudolph here. <laughs> you have to start, <laughs> you have to start partaking in this conversation. You have to help us. You have to join us. We are if we if you think we are dreamers, please join us in this dream. We want a new Nigeria, a different Nigeria, because what happened is that. If you don't partake, if you go about your own normal life, I have gone about my own normal life for the last 35 or 40 years. Eventually, God forbid, Nigeria eventually happened to people. Those who never partake, eventually that system will happen to you. So before it happens to you, join us. If you are rich, if you are a millionaire, Help us sponsor media houses so that our voices can be heard. Eh? Put money on people who talk. Eh? Sponsor this medium. Establish more things so that every night, because one day it will touch you. You can be close to the corridor of power all you want. You can be rich all you want, but that Nigerian thing will touch you the way it has touched Bobriski, the way it has touched uh, Junior Pope. The way it has touched Mobad, the way it has touched Fela, and we're going way too far now. Let's stay within the confines of those close to, close within our timeline. The way it has touched people, you understand? And even all those who failed after that first initial coup to help to join in that revolutionary fight, within a year, the same system consumed them all. Consumed them all. And those that didn't, it didn't consume, it consumed them during the war. And those he failed to consume during the war, it consumed them in the 70s. Make matters worse, it consumed more people in the 80s and it's still consuming. Join us. Sponsor media houses. Let us talk. Let us be bringing light to this evil. Now, regulations, the media, the film industry, they don't have regulations adequate to take care of things like this. Because we don't have a government, and I won't be a party to those that say the government should do this. There is, I will be one of those that say we don't have a government. We need to bring them down. The people there are just opportunistic 
hooligans taking advantage of the fact that you don't know they're not supposed to be there. So the day you know, we will drag them down. We will stone them. So awareness, information, it, it will happen. It hasn't happened yet, doesn't mean it's not going to happen. All these, I want to run away. Yeah, run if you can, but once you get to where you're running to, join us. If our voice is loud enough, if education is loud enough, that man should not have met his hand so quickly. I'm not saying accident don't happen, don't get me wrong. Yes, accidents happen, but in a normal society where people have brains, you don't get on a boat without a life life um lifeguard you don't go acting without somebody regulating that acting let me stop there and get me some water <laughs> all right thank you <coughs> it was total system failure i got a lot of calls from people who said to me you are from a number of states i didn't know that state is so backwards that people are thinking this way until we get close to incidents like this, we don't understand how behind we are as a society. Um, Jim, you're next. Yes, uh, Rudolf, thank you for bringing up that point. Uh, I'm gonna start from exactly there because yes, just yesterday I went to visit a family friend and uh, there were lots of us in there. And, uh, you know, um, this conversation about uh, the, uh, the movie incident came up and a lot of things, cropped up. One is, I heard people say that, um, I heard, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's accurate, but so I'm going to give it, give room for anybody who, who wants to uh, say, no, it's not accurate. I hear that that guy would have survived, but people mm -hmm. started bringing in clandestine uh, processes into the whole thing. That's what took his life. No, you know, no, I use English. That, that's not English. What is it? Not, what's what? What is Clandestine. What okay. Is I'm, you are the professor here now. You're supposed to be the one helping. No, no, no. Are you afraid of saying juju and going to? Okay, so they're bringing in um, <laughs> fetish. <laughs> good, good. Okay, all right. So I like clandestine, brother. I like clandestine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so people are bringing up uh, fetish beliefs into it. That's what led to the guy's death. Someone just, you know, missed drowning. You're supposed to, uh, 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 you know, give uh, CPR and all those things. And then instead of talking about taking him to one native doctor, and then even, even now that he's dead, there's a contention about whether his body should be buried by the riverside and all. I'm asking, of what significance and values are these things? So, but, you know, um, I know government should be responsible for having a regulatory framework for virt virtually everything that runs society. I agree. But nevertheless, when I've been pr privileged to be part and parcel of a movie production, I've been a background extra in a movie, and I know how we're taken care of right here in Canada. You know, you, they, they, you will find that at, this, at the set, you have, there is fire service there, there is medical service there, um, there will be a police personnel in that place, just in case there are things that go wrong, and then People are, there's a holding area where people are held. When it's time for you to go and play your part, they take you from that holding area in their vehicle to where you go and play your part. When you're done, they bring you back to the holding area. If it has to do with moving into water territory like this, there will be lifeguards. There will be, you know, you have all your safety measures in place and all those things, which was totally lacking in this particular situation. So... Again, to all the people who have spoken, yes, perhaps this is where regulation, and it takes me back to the conversation we had last year when we we're talking about this whole thing about fire service, about a certain market. And then I said that market in itself should even have a fire service station, not trying to force people to buy a fire extinguisher personally. You know, now government is going to come in. Maybe government is going to wake up now. But you know, government is not going to wake up now and come in with a good intention. They're going to come in now with an intention to take advantage of the situation and create a market for themselves. Just watch. Just watch. Somebody's going to come up and say, okay, henceforth, we have to do this, this, that. And then suddenly they will now empower government. It will now become another milking process. These things are doable. I, every time I say it, I say, we, there, is nothing, there is nothing fundamentally special about the white man. Trust me. 
if you remove legal processes, if you remove the law, the white man will be as exactly as a black man is in Africa. They will break laws. What is keeping them in check is the fact that there, is, there are processes, not because they like it. They, some of the average people don't want those processes. They would like those processes removed, but those processes are there. They are there to make life work. It's not convenient. And the government is not asking it to be convenient. The government is putting it so that things are done appropriately. So I think we need to start waking up. I worked for a telecom company once that had an office in Apapa and had another office on the Victoria Island. But because of traffic between Apapa and Victoria Island, we don't go by road. If I had a meeting in another department and I needed to go for that meeting from Apapa where my office was to Victoria Island, we go by boat. The company had boats. But trust me, you don't dare enter that. If that boat was meant for six people, only six people and the guy who moves the boat sits in that boat. And everybody will wear their life jacket. It was a consistent thing. And there was never, I can't remember, a mishap. So it looks to me that the only time when processes are put in place to run is when, when you know, these big multinationals are involved. A Shell, for instance, having its own. Or an MTN, for instance. But when it comes to <laughs> normal everyday or even government parasitals, those things are totally lacking. They are not there at all. And I don't understand why we keep doing this. We don't seem to love ourselves. Number one rule of life is to love yourself. We don't love ourselves. Our, our government does not love our citizens. Our government would rather love a foreign uh, citizen than it would love its own citizen. Yeah, I, I don't seem to understand it. So, you know, perhaps it's a lesson to other movie producers because this is water. It could happen on land. There could be other mishaps that will happen on land. We've had cases where, and I'm not, I don't want it to look like mishaps don't happen. We remember uh, um, James Baldwin, or that, was that his name? The guy who mistakenly fired a gunshot two years ago or three years ago and he killed someone. Things happen. We know this. But guess what? It's not as frequent as it happens back home. Sometimes you begin to wonder, is it that people, you, you want to look at, none of them there is wearing a life jacket. And then the, the boat capsizes and everybody just, just dies. So uh, two, three things I want to end. We need to start looking at regulation, like we've all said. The other thing is we need to begin to look at some of these our fetish beliefs. Because this guy would have lived to tell the story. He would have lived. If people didn't bring in all those fetish things, take him to one native doctor, oh, because the law here, I'll, thank you very much, Tracy, I like Baldwin, and all those things. People, we need to have asked a question to a friend. All these, some of us, are uh, sacred beliefs. Don't fish in this water. And fish should be there, and nobody cannot fish in the water because they say the water is, is sacred water. I keep asking myself, to what end? To what end are we holding some of these fetish beliefs? Our fetishism hasn't taken us to, uh, to the moon. Some other people are turning their own witchcraft into going to the moon and doing other things. Our own, is it to just put fear in people's lives? I don't understand it, though, because I, honestly... I want to see our witchcraft take us to the moon. Our witchcraft is lead to designing of cars. Not just this silliness that I keep seeing. Don't, don't fish in this water. The fish is sacred. If you fish in this water, if you, that fish will go to another water and somebody will catch the same fish. Because remember, right. fishes move around. And they will eat it. But this, when it's in this location where you can't eat it, my man, it's mind-boggling the way we think. A lot has to shift back home. A lot has to shift. I just want to end it there, please. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, KJ. Yes. Uh, thank you. I'm going to speak on at two levels. Um, first of all, as a professional in the business, like I said, my first degree was on theater arts, and I did it very well. I know they say I'd be total performer. Um, now, I'm going to talk about what people have been saying, like what Chin, my brother, said about regulation. It's not, not, it's not totally because there's no regulation. What, it's, what lacks is it mostly because most people who have money, just like Stella Damasco said um, last week, that this business was being run by industry or people who are just businessmen. They, are not, they don't have any other clue apart from the fact that they have money and they can catch a cameraman and get some people organized and get them into doing whatever they want them to do. And that's it. They do not bother about the safety that the people who are working with them are supposed to be you know, provided. 
And that's what one of the things that made me, you know, early on, I said here on this program that I, I was one of those who started shooting the home movie in Nigeria. But what stopped it was because the guy refused to follow the regulation and we lost out because we didn't want to go on. As people who call themselves professionals, I could not stand to see actors not being paid when I know that they're not going to be paid because the producer or the executive producer have told me that he's not going to pay them. All he wants to do is pay the technical guys and, and us. And when we finish, that's all. So now this, this same thing has continued in the industry, even till tomorrow. Actors act 150, 100, 200, 300, 400 films. And it's still they still look for how to survive on a daily basis because their monies are not paid, either not paid, or the people have told them, you know what, once you sell the film, we'll come back and pay you, which is always never, you know, never happens. So, and for you to continuously to put your put your face out there, you have to just keep taking part in anything that they write. If they even say just come and walk up as what they call walk up as, you come and walk up as just for you to just be able to get something to put in your pocket, and that has actually affected the industry a lot in Nigeria. Now, because professionals are very few, again I use Stella Damascus and and Get Henshaw as professionals because I know that they actually, you know, they rated us, get rated us. Now, those ones are very few and you find out that the films they are in, sometimes they're able to bend the hands of the people to accept, to put some regulations in place. Now, in the first place, if you, if they were following the regulations that they are taught, if you are going to a set, you don't go by yourself alone. Now, I'll, I'll go back to the scene of what happened. There was a police, or there's still a police post, a marine police post somewhere around there that they could have been able to rent jackets from, or at least even get those police people involved because producers want to save money. Sometimes they don't in, involve people who are supposed to be part of it. Now, I've listened to all the video. I, I mean, not all, but some that have come to me, you know, some have come to me and even the one that the guy was talking about how it happened, it's not totally how it happened. The ones that have said that the guy would have been saved. No, the guy had spent almost three hours under the under the water. How can he be saved at that point? How? So the, those who are parading the fact that he was brought out, you know, alive and all that, may not be necessarily telling the truth. I was in there. I'm only discussing from the point of those who were on ground when he was fished out of the water. Now. Now, the other part that Tim, Tim also uh, Tim touched about, which I want, want to dive into a little bit, if you did community theater, you know, one of the things you learn is that you, when you go to a location, you have to obey the people's custom and tradition. You don't go there and say, okay, you are from, coming from an ivory tower, and so this is your idea of doing things. No, you learn, that's what the community theater is all about. You learn how the people, how, what are the ethos, what are the things, the value, the, the things in place. These things may not be anything to you, but... Because they put value in those things, you have to be in, the, as in that community, you have to understand and be, obey those communities so that you can, you know, achieve your aim and go away. In this case, in the Igbo land and most part of Igbo land, when people drown, when people are drowned in the river, it is believed that those people are not supposed to be taken into the community because it's going to attract other things. I don't want to go into this, but I don't have what they, I'm just telling you from the point I know. The other part, I don't know. So they are most of the time buried by the side of this of that river. Hold yes. on. KJ, hold on. I, I've never had this before. So you said it's Igbo thing, but can you say the specific area that you know this? Okay. Is about? I'll, 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 again, I'll give an example. Yeah. Around my area. Okay. If people drown, they don't take them home to go and bury. They bury them by the side of, that, of those rivers. Yeah, go authority of the family. Sorry, yeah, of course the family know this. I mean, it's it's not it's not a new thing in Ebola. Okay, research. Okay. So, now, aside that, and I'm not saying because the expected believe. Let, let me say again that something that Jim said, which I want to agree with him. There's a river in my place. They said that the fishes there are, are sacred fish that nobody should go there. And when we are growing up, when we go to the communities, we are we are very careful not to. Uh, you know, touch any of those fish, okay? But I believe that what I one of the things that those laws were said because that's the the stream where people drink from, so they don't want people to go there bathing or trying to go so that they don't 
distort or you know you know make the water dirty so people can get fresh water. So I believe some of these things were put to help organize the community. Now, down the many years later, I went back to the place and I don't see any fishes and I asked my mom, ah, what happened to this fish? I can't see fish. I say, oh, these stupid young men who are now uh, everywhere have gone there to eat the fish. So the young people now went there and harvested the, the fish that have been there for so long and ate everything. And they are still alive walking around. So some of these things are put to help guard the community. But coming back to the practice of theatre, some of those things that, they, 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 that you see, it's not necessarily because there's no regulation. It's because the people who are now producers and directors are not even taught the basics of this, this thing. The first thing you are taught in theatre is how to make sure that people are, are safe because you, you are working with heavy metal, you are working with you know, you know, boards and all that, and tools and all that. So you are taught how to make sure that the place you are in working is, is kept safe. And just like Jim said, there is what we call it in Nigeria, it's called a green room. When you finish your, your act, you are taken to a green room where you go rest and just wait until you have the next, your next shoot. Okay, but here in, in, in our situation, because people are trying to manage and people are trying to make sure that they keep costs low, things are done in such a way that does not help. Now, if you are even, this I learned from uh, the, 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 when I was serving, because when we were, when we were serving, we had an issue that, you know, with water, something like that. And uh, we lost a copper. Now, if you are crossing the, the sea or river, okay, there are certain regulations. Those who are marine, you know, related. I'm not related. I don't have any such this thing. But those who are marine related, they will tell you certain things you cannot do. But when you are crossing a big body of water, you do not even shout. You don't shout because according to them, when you are shouting and making a lot of noise, you are distorting whatever spirit that's there. I don't know. Now, the reason why the, the, that same stream I was told in, when I was serving that many years ago was why that lady got drowned, but because coppers were making noise. And, we, you know, and so the, the, the river got excited and began to, you know, swell and eventually, you know. And, but, but that's what happened. I'm telling you as a, as a, as a witness. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, because before this happened, I had gone, I was one of the people who were who are the Reiki people, went there to do the Reiki. The, the, the stream was by our, our, our meals when we got there. But the day the stream acted up, I was swallowed over. And I'm, I'm, above, I'm above, above five, five, six. Okay, the river was covering me. So how that happened, my brother, I don't know. All I'm trying to say is that before you take people out of location, into locations that you don't know, you get there, first thing you do, you consult the locals. One, you have the locals on, 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 on ground to take you through the process. Two, you get the police to be involved. Even if you're not going to pay them to give you a uh, police people, you rent their, their jackets, okay? And three, you are going to get people who will be standing by divers because you don't know. It's not the first time I, an actor is there in Nigeria water in the, one of these streams. It's not the first time, not even the second time, okay? You don't know what's going to happen. And now you carry a body of people, put them, and, you know, again, the, the, according to the other version I had, it wasn't because the, the thing simply capsized. It was because they were all doing a video on on the on the on the on the on the small boat and they didn't see a local a local uh, boat passing and so they hit the end the edge part of the local boat and everything so assaulted everybody got into the water so could that have been avoided yes if we had people who were supposed to look out for these things okay you have if you have guards you have people who are working with you on set that's how we used to do this thing there's no cutting corner where it has to do with safety, especially because we know it can go bad in a very little minute. It can go. Look, there are certain things we did in theater that I can never do now, okay? Because sometimes you are, you, you are on set, the, the, the play is on, and the lights all of a sudden go off. Those days, you know what we do? We take our bare hands, we wear we are these uh, uh, lylon bags, take our bare hands, grab those wires, and tie them together, okay? I can't do that now because now when I when I try, if I try, I, the thing will shock the daylight out of me. But but the grace of God kept us, okay. So we know that those things, those that sometimes we take such action. But if you prepare for it, if you plan properly for it, it will not happen. By the way, it's not everybody who should produce. There are more than twenty thousand producers in Nigeria right now, okay. Even though with a second degree, I cannot call myself a producer of when it has to do with fame. 
I have been on film set many times. I have shot okay also in it. I'm not a producer. It's not everybody who is a producer. You don't just because you have some coins in your pocket, then you carry people's lives and carry their children and put in danger and in harm's way because you think you have money. Okay, now it has happened. What are you going to do? Because there's no insurance for it. This 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 young man, his three children and wife are not going to get anything. There's no benefit. Okay, so it's not even a question of whether whether government is doing it or not. It's a question of the fact that everything has gone, you know, a, a, a haywire. All right, and only God can help us. Like I said, right. now it's not only him, mind you, that still looking for three other people or four other people. So it's not even only him. There are five people, about five of them that have lost, and two have been recovered. Three are still under the water. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. I mean, the story is so wide and big, and um, just the fact that uh, the boat wasn't supposed to carry that number of people, which is a common thing we see every day in Nigeria. The fact that um, there was nobody to call. Um, so uh, it's a lot. And Janaba, I'll come to you because you guys failed, uh, failed our people, the church. After how many years of being in the country, people are still. Um, who are still believing all these things. Um, so what do you have to say for your constituency in the church? Uh, first of all, uh, my condolences to the young man that lost his, uh, uh, to the family of the young man that lost his, uh, his life and uh, his fan. Um, I think uh, we have traditions and we have cultures and customs that guide every activity. But first and foremost, uh, I don't think it's Nigeria is where common sense is not common. I think uh, when I saw the young man uh, without life uh, jacket, I think uh, the value you place on yourself uh, is what it is. I think no matter whether you blame the regulations or blame the producers, whatever. Uh, Nigeria is where you have a seat belt for safety that people that think they're above the law doesn't even use it. It's not about regulations, it's there for you. It's a common sense for your own safety. So there are ways that we cannot just uh, romance irresponsible and to shift the blame around just because we think we want to look good on political issues or, or that kind of thing. Uh, I think uh, uh, it is what it is. It should have, uh, it should, it should have tell them, even uh, if other people are not wearing it, uh, if we believe in itself, we say, I'm not going there. But these are desperate people who want to just do anything uh, to uh, put on Facebook and YouTube but unfortunately, this has happened, and I hope we that our life we will learn from this. I was on convoy from uh, Enugu going back to my place, and um, we just left gas station, and the driver told me he wanted to pee in the middle of the fire, of the road, in the middle of the no house, nothing. And I told him if we if we if we pull over. I'm going to break his head and take over the stair because there is no reason for you to come and pull over here in the middle where other people are in convoy going and then you're going to stop me. And I told him, I can drive. Don't look at me. I cannot drive. Because there are certain things you have to look out for yourself. You have to be yourself an uh, angel at a time. And you can see he's talking that, oh, I'm the only child of my, uh, my parent. I have three kids to go back to and all of that. So it's sometimes like, is he seeing his own death? And what did he do? He did not wear life uh, uh, jacket, no life guard. So I believe people should place value on themselves, regardless of whatever we talk here and there. And when you come to about church, uh, you can talk to KJ, it's more traditional than I. I am not a traditional person uh, in terms of a uh, church issue in my head. Uh, by the way, I met with your girl in Enugu um, Blessing, and we have a good time. We went around with other family. We, no, no, no. You, met, you met Blessing? Yes. When? Uh, last week. Oh, okay, because I, I didn't know about that. Okay. Right. Yeah, I was in Enugu uh, mm -hmm. when I commissioned something there. Uh, so um, the, to say that uh, church have their own role and tradition have their own role, like AJ said, there are things you don't do around the water. That is the belief. Whether he worked for you or not, when he turn around, 
I don't dream more often. I dreamed last night. I saw my uncle in my dream. I will ask him next time, well, why did I see you in my dream? So there are things that you don't do and there are things you don't, you don't go to places and disobey them because you think you, you can get away with it. Everything we have, whatever you believe work for you. That's what I believe in my own world. And church do not fail you. If church will fail you, uh, it's, it's just like um, it is what it is. Church is church. Uh, go and ask them in Israel, why are they bombing uh, Gaza? Thank you. All right. Thank you, Janaba. Um... Uh, Jagon, you're next. I'm still trying to understand a few things about. Okay, Jagon, go ahead. We'll come back to that. Um, my condolences to the young man. You know, um, as you were speaking about him, I did see the story, but it didn't stick in my mind. So I went to check the name, and immediately I saw the person being so young, good-looking man, that is dead. It came as a shock just now you know the, I'm, I'm coming at this thing thinking from many angles again looking at the disappointment that is nigeria now that don't happen to him i'm not saying he, he doesn't have a responsibility but niger don't happen to him what i mean by that is i too i'm coming from a media background so i've done many things in, in all levels of film production and there are those who are making their films on a really small budget. And they have an organization, but they don't have all the uh, paraphernalia as in a bigger budget uh, setup here in the UK. When I see big budget setups, man, they're organized. They've got big trucks, about 14, 15 different trucks, so much equipment. And then as has been said, they have the uh, health, and security there intact in in tow so i i've seen things in, in in films at different levels but there's a way that i have to look at this there's a way i have to look at this especially where we nigerians are concerned with the way we do our things so archaically yeah uh, i don't like this or i don't like that i wonder if the guy could swim i wonder if the guy could swim too many Nigerians don't know how to F to swim. And for me, it's just like, what you what, what's this mean? I understand I, I'm an Elijah man. We are swimmers. You understand? We don't muck about. We enter that sea and we swim. That's how we come up. All my family on my dad's side, all of them can swim. Male, female, goat, chicken. All of them can swim on that side. On my mom's side, or not one of them can swim. And it's just like that, as far as everyone's concerned. The importance of these things, it, it doesn't seem to touch us. The water is a natural phenomena. You can't play with the water. You cannot play with the water. If you are saying that you are going to be filming on the water, which is now a lot of different levels of concentration, that you need to get through what it is that uh, uh, you, your objection is. So now you, you've gone, you set up whatever you're filming. You yourself can't swim. The fact that it doesn't have a life jacket on is a thing. The fact that there's not enough money for a stuntman is another thing. The fact that on the film, to show a life jacket, once that film comes out, that's going to be um an eyesore uh for whoever's looking at that thing because well maybe it won't be because he was on the water and that is how nigeria is um because i always see you know when people are on the water in nigeria they always wear that life jacket and it to me it looks a bit archaic but it is important it is important most especially if you can't swim two flaps in the water if you can't swim especially in a river you're going down in river, there are currents that you don't know. You can't see them on the top. You can't see them. You can't. You, testing water ground, as has been said, is a serious thing. I, I don't know how we think. I can't really understand how we think. But at the same time, what we commonly do is give our life for free into the wind. The life that we should give to 
emancipate our people. No, ah, uh, no, I can't do that one. No, I'm not gonna die. I'm afraid to die. But then we're just dying like flies for, for free, up and down. Now, for me, well, my last point really is this whole Nollywood phenomenon, as has been spoken last week by the young lady who was here. And as I've always thought, because I'm in this industry, I'm not in the industries per se. I'm not an actor or anything, but I'll give anything a go. And um, I don't necessarily agree with um, everything that uh, KJ said, even though in the main he was accurate. What he said um, about, or oh, this just quickly gone from my mind. Sorry about that. I'll just continue with what I was saying in terms of Nollywood. Nollywood, since his beginnings, I used to look at these films and think, what the hell am I looking at? This is nonsense. And gave it no chance. After a few years, well, I come look now. I thought, mm, these guys get stories. And you know what? These guys, they can act. They can actually act. I began just listening and checking out these stories. As I'm listening and checking out, I'm thinking, my goodness, man, this thing is powerful. If we just plug in correctly, we'll make this thing happen. What happens in that stupid country called Nigeria, unfortunately, is when we have our own industries, we, we don't buy into it. We just leave it there looking at them. We don't, we don't engage. The, go the government is responsible for this kind of death because the government should be backing the industry to a large degree because that industry is all over the planet. Firstly, when I came across two of my Jamal friends here in London, their, their parents used to watch uh, Nollywood, especially those two small guys. I've forgotten their names. So they will be talking to me about the thing more than me self I know. So ah, these people are watching this thing. Then I come view the whole of the Caribbean in Jammu, the whole Caribbean watching our movies. Then I come back and get scratching my head. Then South Africa or Uganda or Kenya, they all know about us from our movies. Then we're there, that's lying back. That's, that's, you're talking about big markets, big markets, and there's no investment. How, how, they, those guys who, uh, the poor guy who just lost his life now, they, you, do you think there was any budget for all the things that you're speaking about? There was no budget for that. There's, if they filmed it and it was successful, we would have all watched it and loved it and then forgotten about it. But now someone has died. And this is an industry that really could be worth hundreds of billions of dollars, foreign currency, what we're looking for. But no, are we going to invest in anything like that? What for? Let them just get on with it themselves whilst we pocket all the rest of the finances. I mean, our country is completely stupefied. These things are never going to stop happening. They're never going to stop happening. We're going to have to happen again and again in another industry where we're not looking after. I mean, the country's a shambles, man. It's a shambles. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say. I really don't, but I'll leave it there. All right, thank you. Um, let me go to show. Uh, I'll come down, you guys. Um, <laughs> I know. Uh, you know, um, Dr. Damage, if it's possible, let me just do mine and uh, so that I'll be able to, I'm, I'm just getting ready to get off. Um, uh, is that possible? All right. Okay, so pretty much, uh, first and foremost, if you happen to look through the comments, what you see there is uh, the Ecuadorians have started blaming Pito B that uh, he would have built uh, a fire station, probably he would have uh, a fire uh, department, probably he would have built it inside the sea for them to know that um, he was once a governor. And um, the thing is this. <clears throat> I'm not only concerned about Junior uh, Pope. I'm also concerned about those other people that were involved in that boat mishap. And at the same time, my mind also cast me back to that of Lagos. Do you know that on the same day, two people fell off from a bus into uh, what do you call it? The uh, third mainland bridge. And they were gone. You know, this is a simple thing that happened. Instead of us to come together and say, 
what can we do to avert this mess? If there is the availability of ambulance or even a man nurse, just by the shores, a life could have been saved. And I'm so surprised that even the divers that got him out of that place didn't know how to do CPR. The police, whatever it is, didn't know how to do CPR. For Christ's sake, what are we talking about? You know, we say all these things, and it, you know, to some people they say, "Oh, you're unpatriotic." What? What and what can we say? What and what can we not say? It's a simple thing. Even somebody went on, I think uh, that was on uh, the De Vries show and was talking about how it is the fault of Delta state government. And then I asked, what is the need of establishing Blue Ocean, what the Ministry of Blue Ocean, whatever, whatever it, it is called? Hmm? What is the need? I thought they were supposed to be the ones managing the whatever it is, or is River Niger not uh, up to, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know what to say. All right. And I'm, you know, that is not easy. there's a lot to say, but it's okay. And then, uh, for those who claim to be pastors, please, somebody I, can, I, I support, I'll give somebody five million if the person will go to that sea and stand there and say some whatever it is, some trash that they want to say. If they don't fall in there, you know, I, I hate me. I, I'm saying it. I challenge the person. So please go there and see if uh, Jesus will save you from that sea. We'll see that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, man. Rudolph, can I just ask a quick question of the panel? Uh, it was brought up in the uh, in the chat, and I think it is quite a pertinent question. Can I just go around the panel, including yourself, starting with yourself, who can swim and who can't? Please, I would just like to know. Can oh, you swim, Brother Rudolph? I can't swim at all, uh, zero. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, Rob. And I almost got drowned. I, it's a long story, but I wonder how to answer. I could imagine, bro. Lazy. It's a life skill, it's a must. Yeah. I agree. It's a must. I agree with you. You know, uh, brother, brother, show. Show swim, man. <laughs> I was, I was going to touch on what you said, actually. Um, quick answer is, yes, I learned in the UK, um, but in Nigeria, it's different for, for different people, and I'll touch on it when it gets to my turn. It's not like people don't want to, but I'll tell you why it doesn't happen. Sure. Okay. Madam, my dear, Ngozika, how are you, dearly? Yo. Very well. Good evening, everyone. I can't seem to save my life. I nearly drowned once. But I want to learn. I am planning on learning. Thank you for your quick answer. Bros, Bros, Chim, I know you're not going to let me down, bro. As a Lagos I, I, boy. Why should Lagos boy in my or ah? Come on. I, I, can, I can swim. I come from a village that also has a stream. So I used to swim there. Uh, but it's been a long time. I, I dive into anything water. It's been a while now. So you do have, you can't forget. It's, it's not a skill you can forget. You, you'll I, get I, yeah, stronger. I know. Know, but I, I still need to do some refresher again, I, I guess. Mm. So, but I can still. <laughs> I, won't, I won't boast and tell you about my own level. Now, backstroke, I go take, do that thing or almost. Anyway, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, brother told, wow, wow. What's in love? Are you following us, told? Yeah, I can. I can actually because it was it was one of those essential skills that you need to have in the academy. So yeah. Okay, very good. And not and not just swimming in the swimming pool. You were taught how to survive Bra in the river. In the sea so and in the river. That's my yeah, so special. There's a, so there's a difference between um having a skill in swimming pool and having a skill swimming. You you will know that as a, as a German. Uh, the swimming I'll tell swimming you that it's easier to swim, swim in the sea than it is in the yeah. in the swimming pool. So your it's thoughts, you have the equipment, so you might find yourself... No, 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 with, without equipment. It's, the, it's that, the salt. You know. The salt gives you buoyancy, so you float a lot easier. Exactly. Whereas exactly. in the, in the fresh water, it's flat. It's just you 
and your own strength that you need, which isn't easy. Mm -hmm. So, Bros, I, I sorry about this, uh, Doctor Damage or I just wanted to check us out. You know. <laughs> oh, the straight answer to your question is no. I see, bro. My my big flagship. I know say you never put flagship on the boat without being able to swim. Uh, of course, you know that, but I need a lot of improvement. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, man. Good for you. <laughs> Bros KJ, I know say you be south. Bros, don't let me down like that too. I, I can't swim. No, no, no. I, I think can, that you are swimming from I, the I south. Survive. I can survive in the water while I can't swim. I can survive. But yeah. I can't survive. Yeah. Bros, can you tell them? Uh, 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 Ferrari, you're not gonna get away with it too. You be Lagos, um, yeah. Like uh, 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 sadly, I, I can't swim, but I once lost a friend at Lekki Beach on my birthday when we were young. Uh, uh -huh. he died, and then also, also, I noticed here that in the United States, swimming and driving are part of the classes you have to pass before you leave high school or absolutely. Elementary. You have to know how to swim uh, and uh, drive before you That's graduate right. from high school here in the United States. I, I swim, and I once almost drowned at uh, at a water park when I took my daughter, and the little girl was just laughing. Dad, you can't swim. I've been Nigerian. Exactly. Uh, um, the same thing happened in Calabar. And my son thought he was, I was joking. Everybody thought I was joking. This was lazy river. That is the lowest on my below my knee, uh, knees, and uh, I tumbled, and people thought it was a joke. I almost drowned there. I just wow. my final strength. I said, "Let me just stand up," and I stood up, and that was what saved me. You know, so it, it's 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 an important skill. But beyond uh, beyond that, um, I think there are so many levels of failures. Uh, we're looking at this incident, and we think. Anybody that goes to Nigeria should actually be worried about emergency systems. The fact that you can have an emergency and call for, for an emergency support and somebody will come. Um, that's the first uh, problem in the whole system. So even if there were people doing CPR, because I talked about, I thought about this and uh, we discussed it with so many people doing CPR. At a point, you need a serious um, uh, EMS, emergency system that will take you to a hospital. But there's nothing that will come. You, you know, you find people who are seriously sick in Nigeria being put inside on the on the floor of a vehicle to be taken to a hospital. And then what they call hospitals in Nigeria are basically clinics. Um, there are very few hospitals. You take someone to what's supposed to be a hospital, and there's no doctor. Uh, you know, there's no trauma center. People don't even know the difference. So any building where they have uh, two beds and a nurse, and it's called a hospital, and you take someone there when there is nobody to uh, deal with that issue, you know, whatever the issue is. It's a complex thing. It's so scary. Um, it's not just about river. It's about accidents on the road. You see people fall down. People people take pictures. People who are still alive, nobody's doing anything to... Anyway, it's a long story. Let me hear from you guys. Let me go back. I, I was just going to say this, uh, Rudolph, if you give me uh, one minute. Okay. All right. Go ahead. So here, here's a big problem we have. CPR is something that we don't know. It's never taught, never mentioned. Nobody knows much about it. I could boast to say about 90% of the Nigerian population doesn't know what it is. Here is a business opportunity for every one of us here on the panel, those that are listening and those in the comment section. Go get training on it. Get certified in it. Go back home. Open a small institution and begin to train people. If you like, you could monetize it for a small fee. That's a solution you provide to this lagging Absolutely. problem that could have possibly saved a life in Nigeria. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. And well to, said. Yeah, to be done. Uh, let me go back to show um, Gozeka. I want to get to Gozeka. That's um, because she's joining us from Nigeria. Then I'll continue with Tone. Uh, Gozeka, uh, show, go ahead. No, Ngozi can go before me. It doesn't matter. Since she's in Nigeria, she can go. Then I would go after her. Then you go to turn. Because okay. if you take lights. <laughs> okay, Ngozi can go ahead. I didn't know you were hanging out with John Alba in Nigeria. No one of you told me that this was going on, but that's okay. Ngozi was frozen from the look of things. But okay. she, she not? She? Yeah, I think, I think she is. Ngozi can blink. Oh, okay. She's back. Okay. Go ahead, Ngozi can. Yeah. 
It's your turn, Nozika. <laughs> I'm mute, so she can't hear us. She can't hear us, so go ahead, Asho. All right, Um. yeah, so good evening, everyone. Uh, and all the panelists, the chat gang, the viewers and the listeners, because there's a difference. Sometimes I'm a viewer, sometimes I'm a listener on YouTube. Sometimes I just put the phone in my pocket. I'm not watching. I've got my head, you know, headphones on. I can listen, not watching. So uh, there's a bit of a difference there. But good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us once again. Um, wonderful show so far. I've caught most of it. Um, I'm going to talk about a few things that we've already discussed, uh, just like two minutes on each one or less. Uh, but to uh, answer someone in the comment section, I can see he's got the LP logo um, in his name, uh, or as his DP is Daniel Amaifune or something. You know, that's something people talk about the obedience that our blood to the hearts. You know, this, when is Peter be coming? Or are you just using it to seek attention? Does Rudolph or Dr. Damage show look like somebody who's looking for high numbers? You know, to you ask, like literally you asked, and two seconds later you said, or oh, are you just putting that to look for Daddy, attention? Daddy. So it's been said many times, if you paid attention or if you watch from the beginning, Peter B is coming in about one hour, 10 minutes, wherever you are in the world. In about one hour, 10 minutes, Peter B should be here. So that should answer your question. So we're not particularly looking for attention. Uh, oh God, Daniel. Hmm? Drink, uh, drink Zubo and calm down. Right, so to talk about some of these things, uh, you talked about the, um, the, the first thing you talked about was the, was it now the the road that they're trying to construct i've not paid much attention to it i only found out about it yesterday or so um so i cannot speak on it um because it would be unfair but from the point of view that a lot of people have spoken from it's because they you know there's a trust deficiency there's a deficit and those who think oh people just talk for the sake of talking it's because they've been burnt too many times if this actually happens and people can compare it to other parts of the world especially in africa and see that the price is not far off I don't think anybody would complain, but the people have been, we've been on this route too many times, uh, you know, all pun intended. We've been on this route too many times and people have seen it. But, you know, we want Nigeria to work, me especially, I want Nigeria to work. So if they can do it, you know, and not fleece us in the process of doing it, then I'm all for it. Uh, but when we're saying Boho's been dug for, you know, 100 and something million or 200 million naira, whereas, um, sorry, $125,000, whereas somebody else is doing it in Kenya for $5,000. So, you know, that's the problem people have. Not that we don't want you to construct the road, by all means construct, construct it, but don't cheat us in the process. Um, to talk about the naira, I was one that came here a lot of times and told you, you know, pounds is now 1,800, it's now 2,000. It went up to 2,400 pounds. And it's um, 2,400 naira to one. And it's gone down now. Um, I think the last time I checked yesterday, it was about one four, one three, And the dollars, I've read that is like under, under 1,000 naira, which is good. Um, but it's the effect on the people that matters. Because the minute naira crashed against the dollar, the price of goods went up the same minute. People did not wait for their goods, whatever they bought. Immediately, the prices went up. So for people like myself, I live in the UK, but I, I, I do a lot of day-to-day -day spending in Nigeria. So it affects me personally. So the person that I was given 20 pounds a month, for instance, to do whatever they need to do, I started giving 30 pounds, 35 pounds. So let's say January last year, for example, I was giving somebody 20 pounds. By January this year, I had to give him about 35 pounds to do exactly the same thing because prices had gone up. Now, Naira is beginning to appreciate, but I'm still having to give the person 35 pounds. Definitely. You can see how it affects me. So when I talk about it, and people like us talk about it, it's not because we're crazy or we're stupid people or we're just born haters. My salary hasn't gone up, but I'm paying somebody 35 pounds. Somebody I was paying 20 pounds, not pay, giving. Before you start saying I'm doing cheap labor, I'm giving somebody 35 pounds under one year from 20 pounds to 35. Now that the Naira has, has appreciated, nothing has changed for me. And I see that people are talking economic, you know, grammar. I hope that in the next few months, <laughs> things will start to fall in place. I know this lagging and something lagging, something is dragging something. The one is the wagon dragging the other. I'm all for it. But please, in the next few months, as Naira keep appreciating, I hope the prices will drop and I can start giving the person that was on 20 pounds last year, 20 pounds again. My salary never go up. Oh. 
Uh -huh. <laughs> and all of us know as it be. So that my light is not bright. I'm having to turn off the light in the UK. I'm listening to our power minister all the way from Nigeria. So that is that on the uh, Naira issue. I'm happy. I'm, I'm really happy that this is happening. I just hope that it reflects on the day-to-day -day lives of Nigerians. Uh, and I think the one I, I caught up with is the the gentleman that died, um, God rest his soul. Uh, it's a side mm -hmm. one. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't know him until he died. You know, I only knew about him when he died and I saw it trending and all of that. And I saw the video, in fact, because I don't like all those, you know, all those tragic things. So when I saw the video of him where he was saying, oh, I'm going to be the father of my children, you're speeding too much. I thought that was going to capture the crash. So I quickly switched it off because I didn't want to see how it happened. Mm -hmm. But then I now read the comment when someone said, oh, this was when they were on their way. That wasn't when it happened. So I went to watch that particular one till the end. Yorubas will say, simply translates to there's enough blame to go around. I'm not trying to blame the dead now. So this is not about Pope Junior or Junior Pope. It's not about him as a person, but about us as a people. The amount of risk we take, probably because we don't know, or probably we just think we're invincible. I don't get it. Even if you can swim, you're in a river. It's different from swimming in a swimming pool. There's current. People drop in Thames. I mean, there was a time I used to be at guys on St. Thomas's Jargon would know, you know, people in London would. I used to be at St. Thomas's. Literally, my office was overlooking the Thames. I was just in the um, uh, Westminster. And people have dropped in that water that looked very calm, like it wasn't moving. And they die instantly because there's current. So you know you are doing such things. And you just, it was like cruise to me. You were telling the guy, even the, the video of him going, it was like cruise, you know, recording. And not that, you couldn't sense the danger, the real danger that was involved. So I'm saying the government have a role to play in terms of legislation, what is allowed, what is not allowed. But even us as a people, there's a role. We have a responsibility for our own lives, for our own safety. How do you just get, I mean, if they say there's, you know, the boat should only take five people. Why would 10 of you crowd it? Why, why would you do that? I don't know the exact amount, but we do these things on... I talk to my friends in Nigeria about, oh, you, you're not wearing seatbelts, and they laugh at me. And I think, oh my God, are you joking? What's funny about wearing a seatbelt? What part of it is funny? You talk, you talk to your friends in Nigeria about seatbelts, and they start laughing. Oh, ah, you don't think for London. Bros, it's no, it's not. I want you to live long, to look after your own children. That's why I'm telling you to wear a seatbelt. The government won't come and sit in the car with you to force a seatbelt on you. Take care of yourself. There are some things the government would do, but there are some things we should do as individuals. One of my dad's friends died when they were in their 20s. This was in, 19, in the 1940s. They were in their 20s. My dad had to raise his son, his only son. He's like my brother. I didn't even know it wasn't my dad's son. They, were, they went out, they were coming back. They got to a roundabout because there was no seatbelt. As the car went around the roundabout at night, maybe like 1 or 2 a.m., the door opened and the guy just dropped because there was no seatbelt on. So these are things that have been happening for years. My dad was born in the 1920s. This man died in the 1940s and it's still happening due to negligence. Mm. So the government have a role to play. Like I think it was Chim that said it. I was listening, I was cooking, but I was listening. And I had him say something about, you know, if the laws are not there, if there are no consequences, even in the Western world, people will break laws. The few days I go to the office, there's a particular road I, I go through when I go and catch a train um, to, to the office. That road, you're meant to come out of that road. To go right is prohibited. So you have to go left and go all the way around and turn. In this UK, in this Kent, every day I go to the office. And I live very early because I travel far to the office. So I go like once a week or once in two weeks. I see people come out of that road. When you go people, and they turn right. They literally go over a curb or an island, actually. They go over an island. So it's not like there's an island. They will drive over it and turn right. You know why? There's no camera there. And it's always around 7 in the morning, 6.45, when I go past that road. If there was a camera, they wouldn't do it. So it's not, it's not a matter of color. Anybody is ready to break the law. But once you know there will be consequences, then you take care. That's this right. thing that happened to this guy today, um, whenever it happened, we will talk about it here. Different media channels will talk about it. For those who will cash in, will cash in, and we'll move on to the next one. Can I just add to that real quick, Shola? Uh, sorry. It, 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 your, what you said that needs to be further underlined, I believe, is the fact that 
these kinds of safety measures need to be marshaled into law to make effect. In the UK, we never used to wear seatbelt or everyone mm -hmm. would just be driving anyhow. You understand? Back in the day. So when the laws came, most of us said, well, we seatbelt. I'm not going to wear no stupid seatbelt. The reason why they put it in in the first place is because there were so many crashes that were taking place. And the ambulance services and the police and the security staff had to clean up the mess. Yep. And if you see the mess of a dead body splattered through a windscreen, it's not pretty. So they had to do something. In what they have done, today or it's just automatic. As soon as we get in the car, clink, yep. before anything. It's just automatic. And I'm not one who likes following laws and rules, to be honest. However, it, because it was engineered in such a very progressive way, there was a lot of advertisement that came out. It was for a whole five-year season to get people in line. They don't do it anymore. But it, it wasn't one year or two, one season. It's five years. Constant advertising until it got in everybody's head. Yeah. So I just I wanted you. that. Yeah. So you know, as Dragon said, if if people know there will be consequences, then they will start to abide by the rules. But this one that's happened will just be in the news cycle for a while, and people will move on to the next tragedy, and they will sympathize, empathize, and we'll move on to the next one. So that's why I said before I started that only is lower. I lead you this room. The only is the house owner. The alleju is the visit or the guest. There is enough blame to go around. The government are not doing what they need to do. But us as a people, even if the government is not doing, I understand if there are some things that are out of our control. But as a human being, you should be able to control. And I see Adewale in the comment section said it was at the mercy of the captain. You don't understand how Niger works, Adewale. You do. So don't let me say you don't. That guy was a boss. Did you see the guy that was the captain? You tell him whatever the, you want them to do. So can, the I, can, I just them. can I just interject for a minute? Uh, there was a footage I saw, the two minutes footage. The captain himself, was a young man, he was saying that actually that he did ask them to rent a life jacket. They declined. They said it was too expensive. Okay. And yet, look at the cost. You see, if, if he had seen, if he had um, uh, estimated that his life was more expensive, even if it was going to be 1,000 naira, which I know it would not be 1,000 naira, you know, right. so... That's just it. That's exactly Sorry. what I was saying. You know that we need to start. You know we need to start taking care of ourselves. Put a premium on your life. What the government won't do for you, there are some that are out of your hand in terms of security and all of those. May God can save you. They can protect you. As you know, the government can do that. But things like wearing a seat belt, getting the right boat, putting the right amount of people in the boat, don't overcrowd it. All those little little things we can handle on our own. We can't put everything at the foot of the government. I don't care who's in power. If 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 Peter B becomes president, he can't go and marshal everything and say, "Don't take boat." No, you know we're adults. We have to take responsibility. So we have to start making sure that we do the right thing. It's similar to when. Uh, we were talking about the houses that were being demolished. And I've read somewhere that they're going to demolish some more in Lagos. We talk about it. I still say, because you that you are buying the house, in some cases, you go and bribe so that they can approve it. And, you know, the people that bribed, the people that approved it, what, what are the consequences? If you demolish people's homes, which is the right thing to do, if it's not in the right place, demolish it by all means. But what's the punishment for the government officials that approved it? So that tomorrow they won't approve more. Mm -hmm. You have to set a deterrent. That's what that's what that's where me I stand on these things. I sympathize with the guy's family. I hope that you know they get so-called comfort that they need. Time is a you know, time makes it better. Time doesn't even heal, but it makes it better. You know, I hope that they, they can cope and move on with life. Um, but I think that's all the topics for now. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Sean. Let's hear Ngozeka. Please, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, my network, don't worry. By this we time, I would have sorted out the network issues. We can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah. We can hear you. People should pray for me. By this time next month, I'll sort out my network issues. So, <laughs> I. Good evening, gentlemen. I am subdued. I'm very sad. I was telling my friend today that I. 
Mr. John Ava, good evening, sir. Please, just a minute. I wanted to say that the on-screen personality of Mr. John Abba is not the personality I met to. It's like this man has dual personality. He was <laughs> such much fun. Like, ah, thank you, sir, for having me. So I I wanted to say that you know, I've lost I've lost so many people that are close to me. I mean, I've lost my parents. How bad can it get? But mm. Every time somebody dies, especially in a tragic way like this, it still hits me. It still hits me, especially in situations like this that could have been prevented, avoided. But I don't want to dwell so much on what has happened. I want to talk about um, spin-offs from that accident. Two things. Okay, make it three. I'm going to be as brief as I can. Is am still audible? I think there's a delay. What's you're now? okay girl you're okay you're okay. not a hero so the first the first one is um the whole craze about whenever something happens people's first instinct is to whip out their phones it's crazy mm -hmm. it's getting worse by the day like every day gets worse this Right. Um, for, okay. for um for clarity's sake it's five people that have been rescued the other two were found yesterday and um one of them a lady the makeup artist her parents did not have money to transport her her corpse back to her village so she had to be buried at the riverbanks the young lady that just finished youth service last year oh my god i think i'm off again all right no we're hearing okay all right so i had that story um which is another part of this uh tragedy that who knows what states that incident happened? Uh, what part of was it River Niger? Uh, Tone, do you un understand these things? Was it R River Niger or Anam? Where is Anam? I know Anam is in Anambra State, but what part so, of the river? Um, I don't know, oh. but you know, you know, River Niger falls within two main states, um, Delta and Anambra states. So I don't know whether it's the Delta the, path the, or... The travel, the travel was the initiated number. from the Delta side. I don't know if they went to Anam, but the whole thing was they were shooting from Delta State from Asaba, to be precise. Okay. From what I have read, like I keep saying, I, I give room for those who are back home to to correct if, if anybody makes any uh, statement that is not accurate. But from what I learned, it was they initiated the travel from the Delta side. All right. Because um, one aspect uh, that we we uh, can not overstate is um, what do you do in an emergency, you know, which is in wherever you are in the world, the first instinct is to call. Even when you're doing CPR, the first thing they tell you is to call for emergency support before you start CPR, because you may end up being tired while you are doing CPR. You need help. You can't just depend on that. But if you have no one to call, then that's the first breakdown. If you can't call the police, because if there were police there, they would have prevented what happened, the rest of the things that happened, taking someone to have a list and going to the morgue without a doctor pronouncing someone dead, you know, all, all those aspects. So we, we, um, we, we get to that. But let's um, get to, I think, Tony, you're the next. I think you're the next. Yeah, I was, I was uh, once with him, because it's a so yeah. I just want to say something before you, you guys just carry on. Actually, the call is the second thing. The first thing is to be calm. Just so you know. To be what? To be calm. Oh, okay. It's we'll not bad. We'll it's not my own uh, training. But uh, yeah, if you the first first thing is this. And it, okay. And, it, no, and it's funny. Al almost every sector in the UK, regardless of where you're working, there's a training retraining for CPR every year. But we'll get to that later. Yeah. Okay. okay. 
That's that's good. I could understand why the issue become. In fact, the first thing they say, I've been in a plane where an emergency started. The first thing they say is, who has CPR? Who is trained? Who is capable? It's not just that you are trained. I'm trained, but it doesn't mean I've not been challenged to the point where I will go and do CPR. But I've, I've been in a situation where if there were nobody, I mean, there are doctors and nurses, I'm not, you know, anyway. But that's, that's the first thing you have to become to be able to volunteer and go out there to start CPR. Um, okay, Tun, you, you want to say something before we go? Yes, I, I was going to say that um, the intriguing thing about the whole um, incident was the um, the superstition that was, um, that shrouds the whole thing. Because I'm starting to hear that um, before you embark on such, because listen, this is not the first time they'll be getting on the boat. We should just establish that first and foremost. It's not their first time. So I was meant to, uh, I, I meant to understand that each time you want to embark on such, um, they believe there's a, a river goddess, and then you have to buy a bottle of Fanta. Even Mommy Water self don't get uh, diabetes by now, so <laughs> without the Fanta, we need to drink all this well. You know, it's it just so it just so 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 sad. You know, it just, it just so so sad, and that is why I would say I would applaud uh, where the right thing is done. Like in Lagos State, for instance, they have uh, their waterways and all that. You just can't get on any any of those boats without um, having your uh, even even if you can swim or not. You need to have your um, um, life jacket, and which I I I I applaud them for that. It, this is not anything political. Let obviously let let um, um, let's highlight it. So the the thing is the whole thing. I mean, you could see him on the boat and all that. And first of all, it was overcrowded. Number two, you are holding your 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 you're trying to make a video for your for your fans and all that. And they're saying playfully that uh, you've got you've got uh, kids or that you're going to uh, that you, you want the driver to calm down and all that. It obviously was distracted because it wasn't like it was a very busy uh, waterway. How come the 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 driver of the boat did not see the other boat and all that? And it, it was a collision. It wasn't just it wasn't just um, it didn't just go over that that, that, that side. It was a collision. How come he was so distracted and the other boat man too was so distracted and nobody saw so nobody could uh, and the speed you should have some some kind of speed control. All those things were were not present. Now. Um, in that area, how many, um, how many um, life, uh, is, what, what do you call them, lifeguards do they have on ground? None. No walkie-talkie. And they're supposed to be there, constantly there, you know, monitoring um, the, the water in case of any emergency. If you go to most beaches here, even the UK and all that, you see them sitting on those high, uh, sort of a high stool and they are monitoring to see if there's anything that is an uh, anomaly so that they can swing into action you know there's that they are they are they are walkie talkies and all that there's backup so what sort of when that sort of thing happens and all that they, they will deploy an helicopter very quickly to take to pull people up none, none was there even when they pulled pulled out the poor guy that they could pull out you know because maybe it's just one person that was even oh. searching for work uh, for maybe five bodies or even 10 bodies like um um i want to bring in what uh, my good friend the forefathers we always say i know that that the 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 ratio of a soldier to um uh, to the population is very very low so the ratio of the uh, the lifeguards to the people that were that were experiencing the uh, the trauma was so low so the man was tired he couldn't even go back you know, and there were so they, there were loads of people just suckling, suckling them. They, they, they didn't have any enough air. Nobody had the training to know that you need to put them in a recovery position to ad, ad, administer uh, CPR. They don't even know what is the recovery. If you tell them what is the recovery position, even in the hospital. I, I remember one time I was in Nigeria. I, a nurse, I was telling her about recovery position. She was just like, like looking at me. What is Olga? What is a London man talking about? And all that. So. Those things, it's sad, but it has to happen. Like somebody just said in the comment session, somebody, somebody else died in Lagos again 
in the, on, the, on the beach, you know. So this thing will continue happening until we change. That is why we we continue will continue to talk and talk and talk. Let us start doing the right thing, because the thing all the things that we are seeing right now is a trickle down effect of of uh, doing things anyhow over the years. So uh, may may God have mercy on the souls of the other people that have lost their lives um, needlessly. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Tim, one minute uh, before we go to talk. Who is speaking? Uh, me, Tim, do you mind? I just I want to step up, please. I just want to weigh in on... Uh... Is that okay, Tim? It's actually not my turn. I was also just raising my hand. So oh, let's... sorry, sorry. Okay, Rudolph, you decide we'll go, please. Sorry about that. I thought it was your turn. Okay, uh, Tim, one minute, and then Pastor, one minute, and then we'll go to... <laughs> Pastor. Okay, so Pastor can go ahead first, and then I'll go after him. Okay. If you like, call me Reverend Rudolph. <laughs> I'm looking at the <laughs> Uh, just to weigh in on what Sho actually mentioned, uh, which is very important in terms of this uh, accident. It's not today's been happening anyway. So for me, it doesn't move me. I work on the rig and on the boat in Escravos, and there was a nasty accident that happened, what accident that killed a lot of people. In safety, before the law, there's what they call moral obligations, which we hold to each other. And if we don't exercise these moral obligations, for example, we should mention the issue of seat belt in where they laugh at him. You see, we hold each other moral obligations. Even parents put their children in front of uh, the in front of uh, the front seat where a child shouldn't even be sitting. Some I've seen where parents have the dot the child in front of the steering driving carrying the child in front of the steering. In this is my last trip. So we have moral obligation to each and every one of us. And if we don't perform this moral obligation, that's where the law now comes in, in terms of uh, health and safety. You know, I was thinking, what do we need? What can happen in Nigeria that will trigger this, the people to rise up and start to hold our leaders. I don't know what, honestly, I'm, I'm searching. I'm also, what, what can trigger the rise of the people? Because this thing is, has gone too far. Someone posted in the comment section, in, uh, is it Malaysia, the, the woman that was uh, involved in corruption and she was sentenced to death? Uh, that is, can we, when are we gonna see such thing? In Nigeria, because every all these things that, like, like Tony said, it's a trickle down effect. These are all the institutions that we are supposed to put in place. Wearing seat bed, having a even we that work on the rig, on the boat, we are still required to put on life vest, even though you are you are on the on the platform, you will still put on life vest, except on the deck. I mean, the the the, the Derek man and all those things. How much more you are just in a boat? No life vest, no book. Where is the moral obligation we owe to each other? Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. I, I don't actually understand what you mean, but uh, if people here understand what uh, the obligation is, how you're supposed to work, that's good. But I don't understand that. To so each other, are you saying, I don't know, can you explain? You know, if you don't. Okay, Rudolph, I, I employ you, for example. You are my employee. Okay. I hold you that moral obligation to provide a safe working environment. This is outside the law. I hold you, I hold my employee that moral obligation to provide a safe working environment. The captain of the boat owes the passengers that moral obligation. I think he has gone off. We can't hear you anymore. Oh. Electricity, we can't hear you. All right. Whatever. We can talk about it tomorrow. Next time. Ru Rudolph, I think he got it wrong. It's not moral obligation we're talking about. We're talking about legal obligation. People should be able to sue for negligence we, until our legal system is effective and goes beyond this Bobrisky situation 
We are not yeah. going anywhere as a community. Okay. <laughs> let, me, let me let me let me take my time before uh we get lost in this whole this thing. So I was I, I, I understand where he's coming from, and I maybe there might be a, a wrong use of the terms or whatever, but we are I think I think anybody who's objective understands where where Andrew's coming from. Now um we it's not just the employer, even the employ the um the employee has the right to turn down um a request to do jobs that he's he deems not to have you know gone through the appropriate uh, safety measures. I give you an example. People work in uh institutions where they have to move items and they ask you to go and move the item, you get there and you discover that okay, this is not something I should be doing. You're supposed to take up your email, send an email to the uh supervisor that is asking you to go do that thing to say with a picture to say, look at the thing you're asking me to go do. This is something that is that we should either dismantle and not be moving. But you see in Nigeria, people will go and do it. Oga, Oga Sokwe, Oga has sent you to go and do it. So you go and do it. Do you understand? So I think those are some of the things that we need to uh, address. Now, KJ said something earlier on. That is why I asked to speak that I disagree with. Um, we saw what happened in uh, the ship that knocked a bridge down in the US. Uh, was that Michigan, if I'm correct? Maryland. I'm Maryland, okay. Okay, so fine. We saw what happened. Now, I'm not sure anybody was uh, um, pulled out from that water alive. So, number one, like Sho has rightly said, and I emphasized, things happen all over the world. There will be mishaps that, irrespective of the best intentions, the best safety measures put in place, there will always be uh, unforeseen circumstances. Force major will happen. But what we're saying is when these things happen, I've had their appropriate measures put in place to make sure you either mitigate or reduce the level of uh, the damage that will happen. And in most times back home, these things are not there. They are left at the mercy of, you know, uh, like KJ said, uh, thank God it didn't happen to them, uh, to God be the glory. You know, when they went to do something, uh, to God be the glory. I, I believe in giving God glory, but I, I also am one of those Christians who believe that God sits down something and says, don't involve me. If, if there was a way he could immediately respond to you, who say, hey, hey, don't call my name in this matter. I have absolutely nothing to do, do with it. You know, um, the, a couple of weeks ago, I had, I was in a little vehicle accident. My car, you know, um, got damaged. And I followed the their, their protocols and pros. First and foremost, if you have an accident and somebody is on that vehicle is involved, none of you is expected to move. You all sit in your car. One of you will call police. And the police will come, not, the, not because the police are coming to charge anybody, but they have to, you know, take records of what has happened, make sure that the uh, um, insurances have been exchanged appropriately, get information on what is happening, because it also helps them build statistics. <laughs> so that assuming this accident is happening at a spot where it is not even the drivers involved, maybe there's a situation there, let's say, for instance, it's prone to easy sliding of vehicles because of snow, and you have accident. They take note so that they went, they return back to the city to say, last year alone at this spot we had fifty accidents. So it cannot be the drivers. It means you need to send construction workers to go back there, look at what the surface of the level of that place, and see what you. These are these are reasons why you know sometimes you wonder why are they asking you to stop? Why are they asking you to to stay in that place? No, not because they can't ask you to go home, but there are certain things data they need to pick up so that they can address these issues. We are leaving a lot of things to chance, to our gods, to the mummy water and all these things. And I'm totally not in support of those mindsets. I don't have a game. I'm not, I have nothing against going to do a recce to say, let's understand the terrain. But if the recce is so that we will understand how to give Fanta to mummy water, then I'm not in support of that one. Because you want to go and understand that uh, the law here states that when you, before you enter the water, you throw snap and all those. I'm not in support of those ones. We need to do away with those things. Totally, I, I don't, even if I'm in a minority who is saying it, I am saying it. Do away with those things. I, I hear you. I had a conversation with a friend and we we're talking about this fish matter. And he said it, it's a form of conservation, conservation technique to conserve things. I agree with him. But I'm saying that's extreme method of trying to conserve nature. Why do you have to lie and frighten people? Lie and tell people, listen, hey. We don't want you to extremely fish here so that we don't deplete the fishing uh, population. Come on clearly and say, why do we have to go into these mythologies that, you know, create all sorts of myths and fears and all those kinds of things? 
I'm still saying I don't know the rule or the tradition that says if somebody dies in what in the water, then he must be buried there. Of what value is it? What is it? How is it going to deter other people from dying in that place? You're just so so you on land that bank will just become the burial ground of people. What are we talking about? Do you understand? These things are a lot of these things, are, and I'm not saying it because it's traditionalism. If the 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 myth, whether it is Christian, Muslim, and we know with our education that these things are bobo yaya. Let me use that way. You know, please let's do away with these things. These are they add no value. You know, why would somebody have a, a, a you know boat mishap and then the first thing is to take him to one traditionalist because that is the custom of the place. He has to go to it. I don't I don't get it. You know, I, and I'm not saying that I have a total picture of everything that happened there. Because if you have been listening to me, I've been saying this is what I heard. If I'm wrong, I'm I'm okay to say, oh, but that's what I heard. But you see what I don't agree with. You know, I, I still believe maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that guy could have been saved one way or the other. I don't know. You know, but we're leaving a lot of things to some cultural milieus and things that are, you know, and I'm and I'm not against culture. I'm not against culture. I'm just against that culture that shows no wisdom, shows no intelligence. That has no value in any form. Those things are setting us back. So I, I know I know we've discussed this thing forth and back, but I like I rightly said earlier, there is nowhere we don't have mishaps. What, what the whole idea behind certain processes in is sometimes it's just to be able to know how to mitigate going into the future or to see how to reduce or uh, you know totally eliminate it in, in any case where we can eliminate it, rather than all this whole subjectivity that we go through. Some of the time, I just wanted to add that, and I know before we end that topic. All right, thank you, um, Mr. Shu. Uh, please help me um, carry on. I'll be, I'll be right back. I need to talk to the OB people. I'll, I'll come back, guys. All right, Rudolph. We'll see you in a minute. So, Ungosika, I'll let you finish up. Um, one second, Ungosika is in Nigeria. While she is, while she has network, let her finish up. Um, I'm like, you know, no vex. So, it's the village people. They don't want me to say this thing I want to say because there's a certain group that I that I orchestrating it. But so what you do? It was the clean mouth. I see the clean mouth now. What you do? What what you do? The open. Nahito, nahito, nahito. Let 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 I'm getting a feedback, an echo or something. Uh, Ferreira, Osita, I'm going to mute you both just to make sure it's not from you. All right, carry on. Okay. Thank you. So, I, like I said, my condolences to the families of the five people that lost their lives. Yeah, there are five people that lost their lives in that accident. It wasn't just junior poop. There's a young lady that just finished her youth service last year. She was a makeup artist. She was one of those, and hers is even even more terrible in my own opinion because the family could not afford to transport her body back home, so she was buried immediately at the river bank when they when they when they were able to pull out her body from the river. She was buried at the river bank. The family, the poor parents, could not afford to transport her corpse back home for a proper burial, so she had to be buried there. It's it's one of the most heartbreaking things I've ever heard. So, and there's, I think they say they are still looking for one of the crew members. So, Junior Pope, the makeup lady, the sound guy, his PA, are those that have been found. The other guy, they've not found his body. So, we are hoping and praying that they find, at least so that the family will have closure. That's on that. I don't want to really dwell on this. I just want to touch on two things that are very instructive from this um, accident. Which unfortunately, this is not me praying bad prayer, will happen again because we just never learn. The first one is I am sick and tired about the social media craze our people have now. I am sick to my stomach. Something tragic happens. What most people with a smartphone over there were doing, they weren't even Googling, what do you do in situations like this? They were taking pictures, going live. Ah, for the life of me, like these the ones that made videos of the cops and was and we're posting it up and now. No, 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 no warning, no disclaimer, nothing. How do you make videos of dead people? How, make, how do you make videos of people struggling for their lives? 
How do you see an accident and the first thing that comes to your mind is to make a video? Are you all right? I don't know how many times we need to say this. We are losing our humanity. It's not cute. It's not fun. It's not work. It's plain stupidity and wickedness. You, know, you have a smartphone. Of all the good you could use the smartphone to do in that situation, it is to make a video. Are you all right? How does the video help the person? You're not Googling what to do in a situation like this. You're not calling for help. You're making a video to post online that I was there. I hope we get it right someday. And to be able to get it right, we need to set a few scapegoats. And speaking of scapegoats, I heard his wife slumped when the news was confirmed to her. And then she was taken to a hospital and a nurse was making a video of a woman that just lost her husband and was almost unconscious. She was making a video of this new widow in the hospital being attended to. The other part of this thing that I want to talk about is, I'm sorry, I'm going to offend some people here. It seems Nigeria doesn't like women. I can't get over it. The Nigerian society doesn't like women. Let me take your mind back to the Mobad case. You people, even those of you that had not heard about Mobad before he died, when that young man died, the first thing that hit the airwaves was, that he was being harassed by a certain group of people. And that before he died, he was making claims that they were after his life. Now this young man died. These tons of evil from God knows where twisted the whole story and somehow went for his young grieving widow. They went for his widow spawn a, a very stupid tale about paternity fraud. They didn't even give this, this, this young woman the chance to grieve for losing her husband. They, they, they descended on her and from she, 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 she was a bad wife to she, she foisted um, a, a, an illegitimate child on him to all sorts of nonsense just because she was a woman. And they are about to do the same thing here now. They are about to do the same thing with Junior Pope's wife. He already laying claims to the fact that his marriage was about to be, uh, was on the verge of breaking and calling out his wife. Isn't this crazy? What is wrong with people? What is wrong with our society? What do they have against women? I don't understand it. Somebody just lost the father of her three children. She just lost her husband. And idiots are roaming all over the internet, making insinuations, casting aspersions, on this person that hasn't even come to terms with her loss. I just hope that one day we can sit and tell ourselves the truth. We need, we need to, because what it means now is that, is that if a, a man cannot die naturally or in an accident without his wife being roped in, in the blame somehow, which makes me very scared and uncomfortable. I have sisters that are married. God forbid it that if anything should happen to their husbands tomorrow, somebody somewhere ah no, it won't end well. Though. If you talk, eh, my sister, me and you will put leg inside one child. Of course, I'm just imagining what the families of this of these women are going through. How does your sister lose her husband? She's still in shock, trying to recover from it, and some idiots are typing away, accusing of having having a hand in his death. Is it not crazy? And the, the last part I want to talk about is um, AGN. Their statement they, re they released after they've confirmed his death. I don't know who is advising these people. Well, I don't know. I know Nigerians are more reactive than proactive, but this one, this one was in total bad taste. First, it was the AGN that um, gave credence to the whole, oh, he did not die. He's alive. He's struggling for his life. Yes, I saw a post by from uh, Mr. Mecca Rulas, the um, Actors Guild of Nigeria president. He was one of the people that gave it credence, that uh, made people start shouting, what God does not, cannot do or does not do, does not exist, whatever it is they say. Then after it had been confirmed, the same AGN 
said, oh, we have lost him. Finally, we have lost him. So because we have lost him, no further, uh, every shoot in riverine areas have been suspended and actors are bad from working with the producer. Actors are bad from working with the producer till further notice. And I'm asking, is this the first thing the AGN should do? Like, off the top of their head, as many as they were. This is the first thing. They did not even address what happened. They did not even address what happened. In what they no, no reassurance, no, no nothing. No, we not just straight up hammer, sledgehammer kind of reaction. Oh, this thing is up. No, yeah, people don't follow Adam Maluk. Uh, you people, uh, this nothing. I am so disappointed in them, and they were there. The same AGM or AGN or whatever was there. This young girl was buried at that river bank, and they could not provide funds for her parents to carry her dead body home and bury. But they had audacity, they had time to be issuing statements up and down. I hope a day will come where sometimes we begin to use ourselves as an as example because I, I believe that it's where we put ourselves in certain positions or imagine ourselves in certain positions or the people we love in certain positions that it will it will really hit home till then we'll be acting it like that proverb that says that if they carry a dead person's cup if they carry a cops it will be as if they are carrying firewood till then i don't know i don't know what will become of us we are just going to go downhill from here if their souls rest in peace amen um thank you Ngozeka, for your submission um I believe the natural order is Osita hasn't spoken um, since he's joined. Um, so I would go to Osita. Um, Osita, welcome to the show. I believe you've listened to the conversation. Um, so you know what we're talking about. So please weigh in. Thank, thank you, guys. Uh, uh Janaba came and I saw you first. Oh, there's no problem. Uh, that aside, once I'm in any world, of course, you know, I'll give you a shout. Things have not worked out the way I planned them, but that's fine. Uh, back to what we are talking about. Yesterday, I was uh, actually in such an uh, emergent situation. I was on a motorway. I was running 70 at dot. Next thing I heard was, at first, I said, uh, is, did I, is it the terrain of the road? I went a few more seconds. I said no. I've never said I've, I've never you know had something like this before. That's the first time I've had a flat tire in my life. Okay. Then I stopped. Put on my uh, hazard light. The next thing that came to my mind was, of course, how do I get this car off here? It, I know I, I got out of the car, came so my tire was in shreds. Left um, the you know, passenger the, the passenger tire. I got back into the car. It was raining. The next thing that crossed my mind was, of course, you know, call it towing because where I was and the you know emergency you know road uh, you know emergency you know telephones verify. I don't know where. In fact, I, I even if I walk up, I'm not sure where I could figure get that in because sometimes it's easy to read things on the book. And you pass your driver's license, you know, this stuff, and you get your driver's license. But on, the, on that day, on that application, you could see, say, no day easy. <laughs> then the next thing, when I I called the van, the, the towing people, they said they are four hours away and they, they are going to charge me about 570 quid. Bro, the money, I, the, the, the job I went for, I wasn't going to make up to that amount for that job. I was not like, uh -uh. which can which be this? Maybe I shouldn't have taken that job. I go back into my car. And that's the thing about sometimes staying calm. I've risen four hours. Is that how long I'm going to wait? I'd already told my wife that she was going to see me in the next, you know, one hour. Because myself, before once I'm going to work, once I get there, I notify my wife. I've gotten, I've gotten to work. Once I'm about to start leaving the place, I call my wife. I'm on my way to start coming home. 
So I told her I was coming home. My wife is soft that she will panic if she, that time gets there and she doesn't see me. How would I now go and start telling her that, oh, I'm stuck in a motorway that I don't even know which part of the UK I was, to be honest. I mean, I, just, I, know, we, I know the area I am, but I don't know the particular place I was. Like, it was almost dark and everything. And trust people in the UK, nobody stops for anybody. You know, it's not like Nigeria where people with VCC or car sport. They some will say, yeah, I'll go waiting happen. No, no one does that. Then the next thing, of course, is I remembered, ah, I think I have a spare tire. Because as a time it happened to me, I didn't even I wasn't sure if I had a spare tire anymore in my car or whether it was good because I've never had the need to use it. I went, you know, took off the you know trunk carpet. The tire was there. The jack was there. And I've been using this car for God knows how long, and I've never had to use the jack and the spare tire. And I started thanking God in my heart. They started thanking the, the, the garage I bought the car from, that they were wise and smart enough to have helped me to you know make sure that those things were there when I took the car. Then I brought it out. Thanks to Network, I went to the YouTube again. I went to YouTube, just checked. How do you change your tires when you have a flat? And that was it. Because I've never had this before all my life. And I started doing it. So the whole point was that, thanks to God, for some reason, I was able to stay you know, calm as much as possible. And before I knew it, I got myself out of that situation. In most emergency situations, you're likely to panic. And it is natural. But the first thing is to be calm and approach it. Now, coming back to what has happened in Nigeria, there are two most definite factors that caused those things. One, it was an unusual, you know, um, ocean current because those guys have been plying that, you know, the water route for God knows how long. Now, the question is now, uh, are those boats water worthy? Are they actually worthy enough to, you know, withstand certain or certain unexpected change in water current? We do not test boats, of course. And it's, you know, it, you know, it now box my mind that something as dangerous as being on a boat, there is no one who satisfies whether a boat is healthy enough to be on the water. That's one. Someone has already mentioned it. Even for us here in the UK, they will ask you, they will always tell you that the driver is the one who's responsible for the passengers, rightly so. Also, just to pose that with being in an airplane, it is the duty of the captain or the hostess to do what? To prepare you for emergency. That's the reason why they always tell you, you know, you know, uh, you know, uh, gear on your your seat belts. They show you where the life jacket is, the emergency oxygen, what to do, the emergency, you know, doors, uh, the emergency exits. Even in workplace, when you come to a new workplace in the UK, what they do, what do they do? They show you the exit doors in case of emergency. Emergencies are things that are. It is, that's why it's called emergency. You don't know when it will happen, but you need to be best prepared for it. I used to live in Lagos. I lived in Ikorodo at some point. And due to traffic, because I'm the kind that once I stay in a vehicle for too long, I start feeling sick. And I have very poor, you know, you know, um, respiratory system. Not very poor, but at least to a point that I have, you know, I'm easily congested. So most times I prefer being on the boat if I'm going from Ikorodu to maybe, you know, the island areas, the Koyu and the rest of that. One thing I can tell you is that I've never known how much they sold life jackets. But when you pay as a passenger, you are entitled to have a life jacket. And God bless those people. They always enforced it. I remember clearly. So I was surprised 
that now somewhere in the east people are getting into boats without life jackets the first thing if you're getting into a boat is to ask the person for a life jacket or the conductor will tell you the captain as, as so called will tell you have your life jacket it's mandatory it's the basic it's the least so for the fact that someone will have to come in and they've you know made a budget for themselves oh I'm paying 500 or a thousand naira, a thousand five hundred, you know, to be in this boat. And you come all over again, all over again, and start optioning them their safety. It's not a premium. It's a, it's the it's the basic. And you start optioning it, like oh, you need to pay for this to get this. Like bloody hell, those boats shouldn't be plying at all. It is the basic. It is as basic as making sure that the floor of the boat is not leaking. This is so basic, and this is why this death is so saddening because it is something that is 100%, you know, preventable, avoidable. This is a very careless death, a reckless death. The operators of those boats should in no way go scot free. I do not care. I, I don't care whether the laws had existed or had not. After after I heard of that incident. I started looking for the, you know, the, you know, we, the, the, if, if there is anything like, you know, water safety, you know, a, a, a commission in place in Nigeria. But of course, there has to be because if not, tell me from which intelligence do the operators of, you know, speed boats in Lagos, where do they get their, you know, information or, or, or with which they, you know, they, they, they operate? Because those guys, you know, they can, they're still liable to default, but something, something keeps them implementing those laws. Something keeps keeps them enforcing it. So we need to go back to the legislation. Maybe it's not popular to everyone, but there has to be certain pieces of legislation that address these things. There should not be in this day and age where any boat will go on the waters without their passengers having light jackets. My time is up. I can't, I can't, I can, I can, you know, um, unfortunately I can't say the other things I wanted to say, but this that. This debt wasn't necessary. Thank you, Thank you very yeah. much. Um, I just thought you know would give others um chance to speak, especially as Rudolph has gone to um check on the Peter B uh, people to see if he's able to join us at, in 15 minutes as promised. So for those asking, the promise we have or the agreement we have with uh, Mr. Peter B and his people is that he will join us in the next 15 minutes. And that's why Rudolph has had to go and um call them to find out because he's, he's speaking at Harvard. So you never know how this event will go. There might have been a delay, it might still be speaking, it might overrun and all of that. But Rudolph will be back shortly to update us. So for those who've come to listen to Peter Abio ask him a question, that would happen um, at some point. Um, but, okay. Can I spark now? Uh, I'm just trying to find out. Is there anyone who's... Have you spoken on this particular topic? KJ? No, um, I want to react to... Um, my... uh, but no, answer the question first now. Well, allow him to react. Don't, just give him the ball. Have you spoken on this topic? Don't dodge me. No, no. Well, I have spoken. I was with, uh, about the third person that uh, spoke. Okay, so I, I, I'll, I'll give you one minute, like, and I mean literal one minute, sixty seconds, because I need to go to Paul um, to hear from Paul regarding this. You know, so Paul now, fisherman, a waterman. So, okay, maybe have, you can go, but you know, I mean, what I want to say is simply that uh, you see, we must not discountenance the tradition of our people, no matter. And I don't, you know. I'm not no, I, this I, this this stuff has nothing to do with tradition. I I, I won't even allow you to propagate well, this stuff. Please, 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 let him, please, please, please. Let him, his opinion. Is his opinion? We don't have to agree. Relax, it's it's safety. What he believes. Relax, we, relax. You're not going to change his mind. So let him speak. Relax, please. Yeah. And I'm so really, on, KJ. Listen, whatever you have talked about. There's there's a, every community have what they believe in. If you don't believe in it, you don't like it. It's okay, but that is what they believe, and. When uh, and and I'm talking about you know uh, the things I spoke uh, which uh, Chim reacted to. When people, I'm not a traditionalist. I I just happen to be somebody who read white. Now, when people's custom and tradition is involved, you got to be very careful, okay? And that's one of the things you are taught. You know, I mean, if you are if you work in the different communities, that's one of the things you first to learn, okay, to be able to handle those differences that are totally different from yours. I used to, I, I had a time I went to do a, a particular work in, in Burkina Faso, and I was told that 
their own way of welcoming you is to give you a bowl of water, okay, and a and a boiled egg, okay, and that you have to accept it. If they give you the water, you accept it, you drink it from it to show that you 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 don't have anything against them, and you accept you take the the, the boiled egg and eat. Okay, so now coming back to what I'm saying. There are some cultures that welcome you with their wife. We should accept that one too. No, there's no culture like that. That is wrong. Yes, there is in Nigeria. It's Come on. There is. I live in Chiefland. They I welcome you with their wife. No, that is We are in Nigeria, please. I've yes. heard this rumor one too many times. We're, we're in Nigeria. Let's not be saying things. Don't we tell these people. They'll start visiting. Don't tell these people. They'll start going to Polyka. those places. Just, just Apart from being an Igbo man, Okay, a total, and it's total thief man. There's nowhere in Tivland that they give you their wife. Uh, All right. Um, KJ, please. Uh, nowhere. Okay. KJ, so please, I want to speak before can speak what before Mr. Peter B comes. Okay. I'll give Paul the listen. Let's yeah, Paul, back. please wait on this so that uh, I, I hand back to Rudolph. Oh, okay. Uh, it, it pains me when immediately I see Dr. Damages. That also uh, makes me panic. I'm funny enough. The person that would have done a CPR at home is even not at home. So it just makes me panic now. So talking what uh, KJ said um, about this culture, as an Orobo man, we have that, that culture too. The job people have that culture. To some extent, I don't want to guess, I'll say the Shekiri people do have that culture too. That when people die, they bury them and what. But guess what? It's a culture thing, you know, like some of the argument I argue every time. Probably maybe that is why I'm also on YouTube. I argue that when they say culture, and tradition. This is our forefather that make it. Today, I am father. This thing, I didn't die it. Let me also contribute to now. Most my my, my forefather enjoy everything that I will not enjoy. Come on now. Let me also contribute. So that's exactly what I'm doing. And I question when I go home, I go to the king palace. I argue with the king. He works, he works on me and he makes me happy. I'm going there in four weeks' time from now. Guess what? When people die in Lagos, talking about Igbo people, talking about Robo people, talking about Kwale people, some people, they may be struggling financially. They even bury them in Lagos. Then what they do, they use culture. They say, take their hair, their nails. Whenever you have money, you go bury them well in their ancestral home. I've seen family members who things like that happen too because they, uh, they, they just don't want to stress anybody. They don't want to bring themselves to ground zero just to beg to transfer the human remain from Lagos to Delta. So they do the need food. They take that person to cemetery and they take the nails and the hair. Maybe 10 years, maybe 20 years, any day they have money, they'll go do the, the thing. So which means even in that culture, there is always a leeway that you can also go. You understand? That is one. Then when we talk culture again, culture, what you believe as a Muslim is different from what I believe as a Christian. So we must learn to respect some of those things. That is one. But talking about what happened to this guy, I think to some extent the system failed us and the guy himself to fail himself tremendously. People don't understand how water works. If I will answer Jago, well, I know how to swim. I swim very well. Learn how to swim very well in Lagos. My school in Apapa, so I used to do those things. We have water a lot in Apapa then. Talking about this thing, when people fall in water, even though as a lifeguard, what Nigeria will fondly call diver, stuff like that, if people fall mistakenly in water, it can consume them. Because before you get yourself together with the current under that type of water, it will take you. So that's how careful one can be. So that thing, it is the height of negligence when it comes to the government. I was in Nigeria two years ago. I went to Baragri, went with like two African-Americans. So we all went there. It was fun. So we are about to use the boat from Baragri to CMS. That's like an hour, 30 minutes on the boat. It's so discouraging because when you see the life jacket, they're so filthy. It's very, very dirty and everything. Now to, to buy your own, say you want to buy your own, it's like three times the price. Also very expensive. And, uh, and, and I argue with the guys. So, coincidentally, somebody came, 
he, he was arguing with me, he started telling me, oh, he live in England, he lived that, you know, because they feel whenever you say anything, like you just quote the words, they say, oh, because, because look, I live there and never had it. And I asked the guy, I said, are you telling me you have this thing? I work in the airports. I work in, I work as an aviator. We still have life jackets. We have all those things. I told him, I said, do you know we have laundering machine to maintain these things? How do you tell me you have these things? You don't maintain them. Is it proper? I am asking you, if you get out of your comfort zone, if you get out of this place, if somebody give you this vest, will you want to wear it? Get a laundry machine. You don't need to let people use their hand to wash these things. You understand? Okay. These things can expire. You can replace these things. Don't keep these things like this because you are also using it to discourage people not to use it. But guess what? I still turn the Lagos State government to even enforce it, even when they themselves too, they're not take, they, they are not taking good care of it. At least they still enforce it that you must use it. Anywhere in Lagos water, you must use it. I think it's a good thing. So when it comes to, in terms of regulation, they fail. Then in terms of our people, the height of ignorance and stupidity with this, our ritual, culture, and tradition is killing us. You know, I learn how to do CPR when people pass out by holding them one part on their ankle, they will revive. That is what my culture tell me. But growing up now that I understand much, much better, I see CPR in a different way. So many better ways in CPR. I might even just go break somebody's ankle and think yeah, I'm doing CPR. You know, so we need to learn and relearn. You can't tell me an organization these days, even in schools, public schools, they don't have the EAD, not even CPR themselves, because you can get tired while you are doing it, you are counting, you are counting. They're supposed to have their EADs everywhere. You understand? To also help, because the EAD is even better than that manual CPR that I can do. It's just hard. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say, but I, I really feel for the young man. I, I feel for his family and at the level of his own ignorance and the ignorance with our people. It's, it's one too many. That's all I can say. All right. Thank you, Paul. Um, I'll hand over back to Dr. Damage. So I can see he's, um, he's dressing, you know, like a, like an English gentleman. Uh, so it means Mr. Peter B is not uh, boosting us today. He's finally going to turn up. Uh, Alaba Ferreira, I took you out uh, because I said that, uh, you know, nature call, you're, you're about to eat. And as we have it on the show, eating of any type is not allowed. You can have a drink, uh, but eating of any type, even chewing gum is not allowed. So once we see you're eating, um, it's not personal. We'll just take you out. We'll let you have your dinner, lunch, whatever. Then we'll bring you back in. If you're driving also, don't even bother to join because I'll kick you out personally. You can't come and die on our neck and we hope that you stay alive anyway. So Dr. Damages, please go. go, go, go. Right. Thank, thank you, Sho. Uh, just, just to update everybody, uh, Peter B is coming, but it's not exactly at 4.30. So he, he was running late to his lecture. At this point, he's giving the lecture, is still going on. I'm in touch with his people. And merely after the lecture, he will join us. So I'm not sure of the exact time, but we are going to continue our conversation until that time. Uh, but I think it's a good time to talk about what will happen when he comes in. Um, shall, we, shall we give him a, 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 a welcome, black like fella? Okay, late come out. What do they do? We start jousting him anyhow. <laughs> so, so <laughs> Rudolph, before you go there, you know, I asked you yesterday. I asked you, should I wear ECM or should I wear ECM Yimba? Because I see flagship is wearing, I'm not sure which e what is <laughs> it's your doom. <laughs> I, I think Flash you want to wear it for straight one year. That's interesting. <laughs> so, what is that so, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm representing very well. Yeah, you are representing very well. Yeah. So this is what we're going to do. Um, so you guys, because I've not talked to him myself, I was just talking to his people. He the plan was that he will be with us 4 30 to 5 30 because he has another event at 6 30. So now that the Harvard event has been pushed back and, and is still going on, it will mean that he stay with us with conflict with the next event. But it's up to us. I, I'm sure he, will, he understood that we need at least one hour to have this conversation. 
So the plan we, we have uh, as of now is that once I get the notice that he's coming in, we are going to get everyone out of the studio and out of the, out of the stage entirely. And then he will come in. Because I want this to be for you guys, your experience. It's not really about me. I have only three questions for him. You know, he expects me to talk to him. The part about people coming in should be, you know, an addition. But I'll, I'll ask him only three questions. And then we let people in. So the plan now is we let three people in at the same time. Um, you ask your question and we put you back backstage so that he will answer. And I can tell you why we're doing that. If you want to know, we're doing that because um, we want you to ask one question, your best question, and you listen to his answer. Because we don't have time for follow up and back and forth with, with the um, participants. We just listen to his answer. We get new people in uh, so that they will be, have the opportunity. Otherwise, we may not be able to go beyond five people and the time will be up. So I'm calculating that we we'll get 10 people in all. If you ask a question of one minute or two, that would mean 10 people will be 20 minutes right there. And then his answer, depending on, he, you know, we can't control how long he will take to answer a question, but the, hour, the standard is, I would say, two, three minutes. So you can see the math. They see that we don't have a lot of room. So that's the way we planned it. Um, I hope everybody will be okay with that. I mean, many people may not have the opportunity to um, to, to ask questions, but it's all good. I, 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 I'm getting the commitment that he will come back again because this wasn't the idea. I, I thought we'd do three hours. And he's, he does it very easily on the space and everywhere else. It's just the nature of this arrangement. There are so many things packed in this travel, and then now he misses one of his flights, and then now... Um, he pushed everything back. So that's that's the arrangement now. So, but he's committed to coming. He will come immediately if he's done with this uh, this lecture. Uh, our guy, um, Ovia, is there. Uh, he was supposed to send us a live feed. I don't know. Maybe he went to smoke and, and, <laughs> <laughs> and the speech is going on. We don't know. So anyway, but I think what we should do now is to... Uh, <laughs> what you should do now is, I think everybody weighed in on the topic we're talking about. Let's go to the next topic that I think is important. Um, do, 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 doctor, I, doctor, uh, if, if if you don't, doctor, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, why don't you maybe take some questions for us, then you just do it yourself. I hate the fact when I ask people questions and I probably I like to do a follow-up and I don't get, and they give me answer that is not anywhere close to it and everything. It just look like, um, it's like that kind of NTA interview. <laughs> I don't know. So sometimes you understand, but when you ask a question, at least maybe we can stand our ground, even they one question and do a follow up. I can ask him now, how old are you? And he told me that maybe it's he and my, my mom is classmates. I can tell you come back and say, how come you are like this when you are my mom, you are classmates? You know, you know, stuff like that. But when you just ask questions, then the person just answer anything. It just look like, say, we said we don't take brand heavy look. No, but it doesn't. If myself, too, even if I ask a question for you, it's the same thing. Uh, there's no guarantee. Uh, no, at least a follow up. <laughs> it's not so convincing. You know the reason oh. why we even even at this time when we have tight schedule like this is that follow up we take time from. I have like twenty questions here, so I'm not going to be doing follow up when we don't have time for people. We feel well, that I agree with you, there, but doctor, you know, ninety percent of us too is just to go greeting. Oh, God you, bless you. you are doing great. Call. You have to know that if a politician doesn't want to answer you, it doesn't matter how many follow up you come up with, he will still find a way not to answer you. No, just, but doctor, but doctor, but just I, around the, doctor but just there's something the Alaba did, did with uh, like Femi the Falano. There's something Alaba did with Femi Falano. Everybody will know that the follow up, the question that you asked, you didn't get the answer. Whether you didn't answer, people will know. This is These are the things that some of us uh, want to embrace. Rufai today, that is fire burning. You understand when Rufai oh, follow up and everything, we still don't get the answer. Rufai is the only one asking. That, that's what you don't get. Rufai is just one Rufai, but now you have 20 Rufais who want to ask. And if only one Rufai asks, then Rudolph will be accused of favoritism. Oh, you let Shu ask 20 questions, is your favorite. <laughs> oh, you let Paul ask because him and your mother they're from the same place. That's what will happen. Do, do oh, you know what I think? Okay, sorry. I, I, I think, uh, uh, Dr. Damage, you, you already have some questions, yeah. I think we should also, now that we're waiting for him, let us go through those questions. 
and select the ones that are most important. Then each then you can now do division of labor of who go ask which question because some of us want to interact or you know. We considered all those things. We even considered you guys sharing your questions with us and we choose. But what we mean is that people will blame you didn't choose my own because you, you stuff question. Uh, you know, there are so many things that will come out. And of I, right because because sometimes question some question questions come repetitive. And there are questions that, that definitely there are more questions. There are some questions that are more important, things that people want to hear more about. I think oh, we should focus that? on those ones. What, what is that? important to you may not be important to me. Can I, can I just can i just ask yeah um i was listening to the format that you chose why is it so different than before what is the specific speciality in this oh, the, 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 the one one difference is that you are not going to be on the screen this way we are when he's answering your question so there yes i'm asking why there, there won't be any temptation to um ask a follow-up question or interrupt because it's got one hour. We have, have one hour. Bro, we don't kidnap him for three hours. Be that now. What's it? We will pay ransom. Anyway, so so I hope it works. But I mean, the promise I have for you guys is that he will come back. I know he's committed to doing this. It's just the way things um, happened. So, okay, um, doctor, I will give you one question guys, to ask him. We, he has we, been procrastinating a lot when it comes to you. That is a question that you asked. Oh, wait. You are not so, <laughs> waiting me at the reason they say I'm only one phone call away from the potential president of Nigeria. You don't see the arrangements. So what are you go see me for Azo Roku? <laughs> doctor, I don't tell you see, these London people, they only did too much. Come out of this London people <laughs> for system. So 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 that's how we are going to do it. Uh, in terms of who we get the chance to uh, ask a question, um there is no there is no system in place for that you know we have 10 people here already uh, but everybody will go out and come back in so as much as possible we will try I, will, I have people who will help me and uh, we will try to make sure that different viewpoints are represented uh, what i mean by that is that they are, they, we know most of our guys we know each other really and we know we have people's um school of thought is but we have to make sure that it's not just people that we say hey, you are the greatest man in this world and we love you you know we want to make sure there are other people who will ask critical questions so that's why i'm saying what's important to you maybe what is may not be important to me i may want to just say that you are the greatest thing since sliced bread and then so on the contrary that that won't be what i'll be saying to him yeah, I, I, I actually think I'm one of the people who have some, you know, bitter things that I might say to him. Okay. So maybe if he's lucky, maybe you don't choose me. If he's, <laughs> no, not, no. If he's unlucky, maybe you don't choose me. Anyway. That's a good word. No, no, no. Because I, I've showered him praises at his back a lot, you know, on a good day, on every day. But if I'm going to have a, a chance to interact with him, I best ask him something that is very, you know, um, uh, uh, very consequential. Let, let's see Angus the cap. Yeah. I just want to say that I don't mind shelving my own question. I can just ask it in the comment section. But please, the only thing I want to beg is, I know some people are just itching to have him here so that they can spew all the things they want to spew. Just ask questions. Though. They didn't say come and insult the man or come and make accusations. Just ask questions. You don't want to come and start disrespecting the other well, guests. It's, 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 you know, of course. It's, just straight to no, the praises is even more annoying. The praises is even more annoying. Just ask questions. Ask there is no questions. Time. Yeah, and there's not I, will, I, I will tell you that my people won't be um they won't they won't think twice to remove someone who is so dis disregarding the, the, the guidelines, which is go straight to your question. You are not going to read it and essay here. We don't have that time. So find the best question. Just yes, yes, yes. let me let me actually show you guys the wrong way to ask a question. And I was the one who did that. So maybe that will help. Um, uh, to, I saw that and I laughed. And yeah. I said, uh, <laughs> you saw that. That was the wrong way to to ask a question, and uh, I did it. Oh, oh yeah. Well, um, uh, Ovie said Peter B is on. He needs the link. Oh, he's, he said oh, he's okay. hey, I don't see that one now. That guy. Ovie wants to come in. Is that what he said? Well, I think he wants the link so he can join the studio. So he can. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I I can go backstage while he while he joins. Yeah, where is? Yeah. I posted the link. Yeah, bros. 
Where do we, um, oh, we should communicate with me. I'm here. Okay. All right. Let me send it to him. Um, Where is the video on the asking questions so that some of us can learn? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. How not to, not how to. <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it. Um, but let me just make sure that Ovia, if Ovia is coming in, he has. Yeah, he, he, he just posted it on the uh, comment section and I've posted Kim. the link. So I, I'll leave Kim, this. This is how not to ask question. Ekarosa, Awobonko, Ilenko, Dishenko. Speaking of the children. Why, why do you make it then seem you, like he's supposed to do it? Stop then you ask how the children say they are fine. Then you say, what of Tega? <laughs> what of Jimmy? Man. What of Emeka? <laughs> After you ask how the children. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right so please people will not get great <laughs> uh, let's see if we can get over here to send us a link from the event um uh where is show show left uh i wanted to I'm, now you don't take him out oh no not me there are many people who do this oh, really? I don't think it's me <laughs> no, 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 sorry sorry I, I took myself out to that because i said i was going to leave so if you could join yeah, that's not the problem. It's not from here, the studio here. It's from the back end. You know, I don't think there's space at the back end for you. Right. Too. Okay, okay. Because of all the other things you have going on. Okay, let me let me leave from the back end. I'll just yeah. leave completely. Yeah. Okay, please. Um, yeah. But it's gonna cost you five ninety nine cash. Don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> okay, so um but so sure, where did you get OBS call? He's not responding to me. Uh, let me highlight the comments and I was like oh, okay. okay, all right. Yeah. Not to damage you, said some people are online saying, Let's preview the, the questions. That's what some people are saying. Who we preview oh, it? Who we preview it? Question. Why are they previewing the question? What's it going who to we do, do that? that? No, let me know who we do that. Is it you or them? Uh, the comment section, <laughs> okay. V is joined, okay. Of the system, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are 
It's easy. In our own case, it actually doesn't exist. In fact, they expect you after election to just go to your house, lock yourself up, you're too visible. You know, things are wrong, things are wrong here. Somebody get a contract almost 15 minutes and you say everything go to where the tender everything how to do it in a what are you always talking about? When you say this is wrong, a simple question it's difficult and then you have people who think People who did not contest the election and all that. It's difficult to me. However, it is cool yet for things to work. And that's what I tell those who are working with us, you must be able to show them this is what is Without explaining it to anybody, and nobody today will have asked question on the most of this one. Partners are, are the Western and the Western 
has been to limit uh, their perception, their perspective of democracy to uh, hold only to uh, the fact that elections were held. No, because what is at stake in democracy more or less more than this if you do not know before or, or everything. And uh, uh, I'm not sure that the kind of democratic model uh, which have been supporting uh, from the uh, uh, was exactly what was expected by uh, civil society uh, in the uh, uh, middle of uh, African countries. Uh, so that is the first point. But I think we do have a just vision of what are uh, how power uh, at central level can be prevalent, and it's not only lying in civil society, but at local, very local government, it's very important as well. We have realized, uh, in particular, regarding security in the last decades, uh, how important were ordinary uh, authorities, for instance, uh, or once again, religious uh, authorities. Uh, you have uh, also those um, uh, decentralized institutions which have been put uh, in place in a number of countries which do matter as well. So I think that this idea of uh, civil society as the main actor to promote change uh, is uh, too narrow. There is definitely a need to look at other kinds of actors and also at the kind of uh, of relation they are uh, uh, these uh, institutions because we also have to recognize that lots of power relationships uh, are uh, in fact important in this instance on the African continent. It is absolutely crucial to recognize the fact and to stop considering that African democracies are or are modeled on kind of very, very institutional way uh, of thinking. I'm sorry, but the democracy or authoritarian regime of the African also are not modeled as the North of Norway on the one uh, and Turkey on the other hand. Uh, in a way, they definitely take into account the very peculiar specificity of African governance, which is very complex with lots of actors, the millions of actors. And I think that also the future will lie in the way in which there will be the capacity to integrate all those multidimensional and very diverse actors. Thank you very much. We hear uh, a call for us to be more creative in developing our own schemes of our own model of governance. Uh, what does African democracy look like? What is the role of central authorities, authorities beyond uh, central state institutions? Um, I'd like to turn back to Mr. Obi. Uh, in part, drawing on your, on your experience as a governor within uh, the regional governance, what is the role of regions um, in promoting the counter powers? Or probably accountability on one hand. And on the other hand, I'd like to ask who African public civil society has been sufficiently demanded. Are the institutions high enough in terms of uh, their rulers of governments? Uh, All right. Um I think the audio is so poor and I don't know if it serves us well to continue to listen to this. Um, and before he's going to do this, uh, Ovia, we thank you for, for the feed. Uh, if you can hear me where you are, but the quality of the audio is not very good. Um, we will um, um, bring him on the show, obviously, as soon as uh, he's on. So let's, let's uh, talk about... Um, no, I wanted to play a video for you guys, how not to ask a question, and it's from myself. So it's not something I haven't done. I have done it. So it's, let, let's watch. Okay. 
Mr. Polido back there. Thank you. You've been amazing. Please start letting people in. Starting with the first person is Rudolph Okonko. I'm sure you probably know he's one of the biggest critics. I'm, I'm just reading the names of the people that are already yeah. in the studio. Please don't sign out, even if you are not seeing your picture yet. But uh, Abuchi Oi Ola and uh, Chupu Dala, Joshua, Ahana, Judah, Osamudiane. You all are in the studio, Grace and Eta. Is there, is there somebody is my and one of your biggest critics? No, 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 <laughs> he's no, no, your no. <laughs> Nobody is my critics. Everybody is, everybody, yeah, they're all contributing. Yeah, exactly. Critics are people who also <laughs> have to do better. So. Please and please, you only have 10 seconds. I'm sorry. Just go straight to your point. Say your first name. Go straight to whatever you want to ask. I beg of you, the man is tired. No, no we problem. appreciate his time. And the event, he's enjoying it. What they, they are trying to drag him out since he says he's enjoying the interview, sir. Go and start the program, he will come later. So please, once you get in the studio, sir. Yes, please go straight to your question and please don't drag anything. Rudolph Okonko, you have 10 seconds. <laughs> Governor, thank you so much for, um, for so, joining us. Okay. Governor, okay. Governor, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate this time to talk to you. What's your question, Rudolph? Can he hear me? Yes, go ahead. All right. So my question is, is very simple. Um, most people in Nigeria, they believe that the country um, is broken. Yeah, the country is like a car that is um, that knocked engine and and it doesn't need a new driver that it needs to be fixed the, the car the engine needs to be fixed but you want to be the driver of the car that the engine is not let me let me read you what your hero said i know i know we have to frame it very well the Federation, this was in 1969. He said that the Federation of Nigeria is called as corrupt and oppressive and irreformable as the Ottoman Empire was in Eastern Europe over a century ago. And in contrast, the Federation of Nigeria, in the form it was constituted by the British, cannot by any stretch of the imagination be considered an African necessity. Yet we are being forced to sacrifice our very existence as a people to the integrity of that ramshackle creation that has no justification either in history or in the freely expressed wishes of the people. So the question is this, was Ojuku wrong in 1969? Do you think that Nigeria, as is currently constituted, is necessary, is working for people? And do you think that we need to get a new driver instead of changing the engine of this car that is not. I don't understand yeah, Rudolf, what he said Rudolf, what you Rudolf, you know, I was the person who said that this car has an engine not. I didn't want to say that. I wanted to say it. Good. Require that changing a driver will not make a difference. Yes. And what changed? It was my own position. I remained my position. But what I keep saying is that it, we don't need to keep the driver that knocked the engine or the driver that knocked the engine. We need to change the driver that will even take it to the workshop where it is going to be fixed. Because even if you're going to, even if you see vehicles that are being towed, there's somebody there managing to turn the wheels until you get to the mechanic center. Otherwise, it's going to be worse, you know. So, 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 so that's what you are going to do. Need to send it to the mechanic workshop. Somebody needs to be driving it so that we don't have a situation where it will go from engine log to the, the car and then a full blown accident. But that, what is question you've taken? And I said, Ojuku was my leader, and on his last days, he believed that. The, with competent leadership, you can start repairing the situation. Like you know, what Chebe said, there's nothing wrong with Nigeria. The air is good, the food is good, the environment is good. God blessed us. What we are lacking is to have 
leadership character, competence, capacity, and commitment to building a better Nigeria. Every country is a, as diverse as we are. Even some are more diverse as we are. Big countries like Indonesia are more diverse. Even if we talk about religion, the biggest uh, Muslim country is Indonesia. So why are they doing well and everything? And today in Nigeria, you know that no part of Nigeria is doing well. And ask people who think it's about tribe, why is is there uh, Kassana not the safest place in Nigeria? Why can't we drive to Kaduna by road or by air anything? Is it because uh, somewhere from Southwest or Southeast is the president? No. Is there anywhere the Northerners buy bread cheaper? Or is there but, any road that they can go but, on? Well, governor, governor, let me, so let me. What place is the problem? And this problem can't be fixed if we have start fixing it while I believe, like, I say every day, we need to start a process of talking about how we can restructure the place to make it more effective. I just talked about policing. There's no reason why you should not have a safe police. There's no reason why federal government should be the one dealing with the issue of education. There's so many things that we can do to restructure the place and make it more effective while remaining as a true federation and calling effectively. Thank you, Rudolph. Sir, you don't... I know he wants to ask more. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Don't, 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 don't worry. I'll don't collect this data from me and we'll discuss. Yeah, I'll give you okay. that number, so... Because of my critics, it does Okay, um, okay, good, good. Thank you. It makes things better. Thank Please you, help me fix this audio thing. That's an example of how not to ask a question. And um, you can see that it took him five minutes, more than that, to answer that question. So we might see lots of that today. So that's what we are going to try to uh, avoid. Um, just so that you know, I'm hearing that uh, Iran just attacked Israel. So uh, might be facing a, a third world war very soon. Um, Terrible. Um, so, you know, I, I, it was funny yesterday that this uh, Biden said to Iran, don't. Don't. And I'm like, so what did you say to Israel when they, <laughs> when they attacked the Iranian um, consulate or something somewhere in Syria? You know, did you tell Israel, apologize, but you said to Iran, don't. That's okay. it. Um, anyway, so, um, yeah. That's uh, that's an example. I was the one that did it, um, but there are other reasons why I, I did it that way, but, um, which I don't have to talk about here. But that's um, hopefully. So what I want us to do now? Go ahead. Anybody wants to say Beruto, something? Beruto. Yeah, but Beruto, I didn't see the, What was bad about Beruto. that? No, the bad thing was the back. Sorry, and, yeah. The Sorry, back, yeah. and forth, back and forth. I was. I uh, don't want. I wanted to. Yeah. Not, the, not the original questioning, but the back and forth. Yeah, yeah, the back and forth, that's why. And then it's too long. I, that thing I read it was not necessary. But I wanted to put it in that context so that he would understand. Uh, go ahead. Um, um, sure, can you can you take take over for me, please? Um, please. Okay. Yep, no the, problem. Um, yes, yeah, same. Okay. You wanted to say something? Okay. okay. Okay, Rudolph, I've gone. But to me, the question is still relevant, even to today. Okay, so it's still about this question. What? But that's fine. Okay. Um, I think what Rudolph wanted us to do, um, CM, maybe something that interests you or not, um, is to talk about the uh, the sentencing of Idris Okune, uh, popularly known as Bobriski. I know last week when I brought the topic, a lot of people mm -hmm. um, turned up their nose about it, but yeah. I'm glad that people are finally yeah. coming to where I was last week, where I yeah. repeatedly yeah. said this wasn't about Bobriski. I tried to elevate it to say, see it beyond Bobriski. <laughs> Do you see what is happening? You know, do you think you know, it would start something where people will be getting arrested, or do you see it as a broken system where some people can use the law enforcement 
to go against who they don't necessarily agree with. And I think that's where a lot of people are coming from now because you see a lot of, not support for Bobriski, but condemning the fact that somebody was sentenced where you have videos of the daughter of the president spraying money. You have a lot of people all over the internet, big celebrities spraying money. A governor of Niger State, there's a video of him literally throwing money at people from inside open roof car. You have WizKid doing the same. So the question is not Bob Risky. So that's where we want to start it from. You know, how do you see this? What do you think? Because see, uh, it's it, six months or see, five listen, or six thousand. Uh, sure. 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 Let me save you. Let me save you from yourself. No matter how you rationalize it, the actor makes the news. That is just the way I see it. It's not the law we are following here. We are talking of the, the subject. Who is involved? That is the news. Anyway, before I continue, please let me let me thank uh, Ostadim. I have not seen him for a long time. Ostad, been using your line that uh, you can rig yourself into power, but you can't rig yourself out of poverty. So I've been quoting it anywhere I am. And I've been, people have been replaying it. Anyway, the thing is, you know, you know, you know the thing, eh? I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for myself. On this Bob is risky or Bob or risky or Bob risky, whichever way you call it. Speaking for myself, I, sometimes I wonder. This is this this is a chap that won a, an award among women some couple of days ago. We heard that he was arrested. I was trying to say which part of the cell we they place in. They say it's in the male facility. Of course, this is Nigeria. Where should it be? But he came there as a female anyway. He came there, yeah. He presented as himself, or he presented herself, but was put in the male detention district. Then, then I wondered. I no, wondered. No, no, no. CM, CM, the judge <laughs> asked the judge asked which which gender he 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 ascribed he is, and he said male. Just to let you know that. Uh, okay, okay. In that case, that they they should take the award back and charge him for. Because you can't so, be so, so you're, you're moving away from the point. Not a woman competition and say you come first, isn't it? I'm not that case, yes. Eh. <laughs> no, no, no. It's true. Let's be logical here. If it, if he identifies legally in court, that, that is not why he was she sentenced. Is a he man, was sentenced for you know? mutilation, and that's what eh? we want to discuss. Uh, Myra wait, mutilation. I'm, I'm, I'm discussing. The, I'm discussing the aspect that is uh, important. What is a uh, who? who you can let them come and they arrest me. I spray money too. Who hasn't spread money here? So that is no that is no news to me. The news is that by seeing Bob Risky arrested and placed in a she was placed because is she as I know because she won an award. So she was placed in a male in a in the male, male facility. That is a contradiction I can never understand. He claimed to she claimed to be a male and she was sent to um, 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 she claimed to be a male and she was sent to the male detention facility. Now, why then should she win an award some couple of days or weeks uh, earlier? As a she she, didn't, she didn't give the award to herself. She didn't give the award to herself. Now, them stupid people in Nigeria won't, won't follow uh, Western she, nonsense. So, now, so, they follow. So, she, so see, she cheated now. She it's not she that she she they gave it to a man. Her. It's not yes. her. Yes. 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 How can you speak for Bob Risky? Bob Risky. I am. I am. Oh, CM. CM. I want to speak for Bob Risky. I'm not yeah. speaking for him. I'm not speaking I for him to, in any way. Wait, wait. Don't shout, Ferreira. Don't shout. Please. Okay, okay. There's, yeah, no need to shout. There's no the need point. to shout. Okay. And, and There's no, no need to shout. All I'm saying, PM, PM, all I'm saying, I'm not... Sorry, 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 sorry. Let, let me finish so that you can... I leave you to you people. Let me give me 30 seconds. One thing Bob Risky's case has shown me is that you choose your gender depending on what you have to do defend that is just the case so i've learned it now if first with any situation you choose your gender if you feel that uh, you will be a she 
it will help you, you choose that gender. If you feel that you will be a he, if that will help your case, you choose the gender. So that's what Bob Risky's case has proved to me. Please, well, are you okay? Um, well, see, yeah, yeah, I, think, I think I think you really thoroughly missed the point on this Bob Risky issue. Okay. I think um, okay. what just happened there here is that uh, your buyers have just come out against Bob Risky. I have one too against him, but I would defend his judicial right to the fullest in a country that is an animal zoo where some have rights more than the others. As intellectuals, these are the areas we need to focus on. We need to leave the personality issue out of this and stay with principle and stay with poli sound political ideology when we, when we have a public discourse. Yes, the whole of half of Nigeria, more than 90% of Nigeria wants to lynch Bob Risky for the, you know, dishonoring the, the gender issue. But that's not the issue here. That is not the issue, and we all keep missing the point. In fact, Bob Risky is a placard for civil rights issue being violated. He's not the only one who sprays. Tons of these rich Nigerians spray, and yet everyone is okay with him being locked up. This is the problem with Nigeria. That is Nigeria happening to him, and we are all missing the point. You, and you know, it doesn't matter if the man is a cross dresser, homosexual, or crazy sexual, or whatever name they give themselves. The point is, is right as a Nigerian, which he has not, has been violated because he's not the only one who sprays. And that law should not even be a law. You see, you're missing the point, and we make fun of things that are serious. How are we going to change a country when we don't get the point? Uh -huh. Can I can I can I, can I, can I, can I weigh in on hold this? On, hold on, hold on. Let's see. Excuse me. Hold on, Please, I'll be brief. I just came in to weigh in as a woman on this Bob Brisky issue. See, all of you here are men. And Bob Brisky now claims to be part of the sisterhood. We did not accept him into the sisterhood. You, the brotherhood people, you are saying you, you don't want him back in the brotherhood. That is not my problem. What Mr. Show is saying is that he was charged in court for Naira mutilation. And that we have moved past the conversation about Bob Risky now to the greater um, discussion about if this is the case now where we are at about spraying money. How do you feel about it? Do you realize you could be a victim tomorrow? That is what Mr. Shea is trying to say. And I am saying on this Bob Risky matter that I feel slighted at that event. He Let me just put this on record. Anybody that follows um, Bob Risky's antics on social media knows that he, he, he on a very good day, he, he calls himself a, a, transge a transgender. Yes, there are videos of him calling himself a transgender, not a crossdresser, a transgender. He calls himself a woman. There are videos everywhere of him. This is not part of the discussion. There are videos every of him calling himself a, a woman, um, behaving like a woman. This is not him just dressing like a woman. This is him declaring that he's a woman, claiming he has undergone surgery to transform to a woman. And as a cis, I don't want to, I don't like using the words. As a woman, I feel slighted. I felt slighted. At that whole charade they called an award a be movie premiere be movie screen i felt really slighted when he was given um the reward for best dressed female i felt really slighted the people that decided to give him the award every single person that sat there or stood there and watched such aberration i don't know what to think of them it's just madness it's craziness I'm not talking about the moral aspects. I'm just talking about how the insults to our sensibilities. This guy is a man when he pleases him and a woman when he pleases him. My only issue is that he should choose, he should pick a side. He is a man today when he pleases him. He is a woman tomorrow when he suits him. He should just pick a side already. And on the whole charges of Naira mutilation, I think it's just, it's just a facade. Somebody wanted him hanged and couldn't find anything that would stick. And just use that one because if they went with the whole um, um, LGBTQ um, charges or um, um, charges, the international community will start coming for Nigeria. And Nigeria has her fingers in so many 
um, buckets of debts. They can't afford to have the international community breathing down on their neck on issues like this. So that is why they had to clinch him on something so trivial and nonsensical. But I'm saying that almost every woman out there, any woman out there that does not feel slighted and insulted by Bobriski's antics, I don't know what to say to you. Let me go back to my backstage. Thank you. You're muted, doctor. Thank you, Ngozika. Thank you so much. I, I think I saw some hands up. Uh, uh, Chim, okay, Chim, go ahead. Okay, so um, two things, like, um, I'm not sure who said it. So, by the way, before I go, Osita, I'm always meant to ask you, are you aside of Kobo's uh, nephew, niece, son, child, brother? You know, you, 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 the look alike two of you have is, is legendary. But that's by the side, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> I just wanted to put that out there. <laughs> You look like Muhajid himself. Anyway, so I think the point is we're missing the point. Number one, there is an issue of morality, LGBTQ, blah, 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 on one side. We have our views about that. That's not the issue in contention. The issue in contention is an extant law that says we should not mutilate the Naira. I'm in support of not mutilating the Naira. I'm in support of not abusing it. I'm totally in support. But that being, that being the case, there have been people who have mutilated the naira way before um bob Risky. and the question any rational mind is asking is where was the efcc when all of this was happening why this selective and um, uh, selective uh, persecution we we've had very high profile characters the president of the country himself <laughs> carried a bullion van into his house it's against the law of nigeria if we go and look nobody did anything to him our politicians during elections spray money. Nobody has gone to. There is a video, like Show rightly said. In fact, there is a video three and one. I'll share one. the videos in a minute. I'll share them. I have them. Oh, yeah. So we have the video of the uh, self-acclaimed first daughter of the nation spraying money. We have a video of uh, our brother, uh, what's his name, Obi Kubana, chesting the money. Chesting money. Yeah. Then we have the current sitting governor of Niger State in an open motorcade spraying money and i'm happy the person who actually shared that with me is a northerner and he was totally saying this is wrong you cannot be holding and this is this is the guy who shared it is a muslim who is probably against the kinds of things bubriski stands for but he was saying it's wrong it's unfair to be winch hunting bubriski when a, a sitting governor is doing the same thing and abusing it and we have many we have our so-called uh apc chairman you know bettering the money under his cap and all everywhere on this, but we have all this. And so we, when it comes to dealing with the issues of his morality, we can come there. But when it comes to this law, this is actually wrong. The EFCC is being selective and nobody needs to call them out on this. And every rational person who's reasonable has said, listen, I might have my issues with Bobrisky on this, thing, but when it comes to his, his uh, fundamental human rights, he's been, he's been unfairly treated. And I think we should be, we should be bold enough to say it. I don't care who, who, uh, 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 whose ox is God. And I will go to my Christian values. A woman was found guilty of, a, of a, what is it called, of adultery. Nobody was saying that adultery was, was right. The question was, where is the man? Do you, I mean, if you're accusing a woman of adultery, was she committing adultery by herself? Where are the men who committed it with her? And that's why the man said to them, he who has no sin, cast the first stone. So I, I think uh, EFCC needs to go back prosecute everybody involved before they can come back and tell us that they are right with Bobrovsky. As long as they can't do that, they should let that guy go free. Simple. All right. Thank you. Um, doctor, if you just permit me two minutes, I'm just going to uh, play a few videos. I've muted them so because I'm not sure, you know, the copyright of the sound and all of that. But I'll play a few few videos. Like like Jim rightly said, I, I have no interest in Bobrovsky. I don't know what he, she stands for. I'm not interested. I don't see him. People like that are on Twitter. They use Instagram where you never find me. I only hear about things like this when it becomes a national issue. And like I said, I see it beyond, forget the name. If this was Shion Kuti, if this was another celebrity, would you be interested in talking about it? Or is it just because it's Bobriski, you think it's below you, it's beneath you? You know, it's part of the problem we have. Oh, Bobriski, so I won't talk about it. It's BC beyond Bobriski. Tomorrow, you will spread money in Nigeria. Somebody that doesn't like you will send the picture to EFCC. You'll be prosecuted, then what? So we're saying, by all means, Bobriski is guilty of what they've charged him for is either six months in prison or 50,000 naira. 
the church, the judge decided it's not going to be 50,000 naira, which I even think is too low. You should make it like 10 million. Because if you have enough money to be spraying, 50,000 is nothing. Review the law, make it prison or 10 million, 20 million to deter more people. I don't support people mutilating the naira. But um, let me see if I can find the video. Okay. All right, um, you get the drift. You saw the videos, the three videos. One of them was the daughter of the president, um, Shadi Tinubu, the first video. The second one was Obi Kubana kicking and chesting money and all of that. Uh, and the last one was the lady who recently drove from London to Lagos. Um, I can't remember her name. She's now an ambassador, you know, Lagos State have rewarded her, which is good and all of that. But what we're saying is when it is selective and it's part of what we come here to discuss every weekend. So how you don't see it, but it, it worries me. We claim, you know, we come here, we talk about injustice, selective. What you've done to Bobriski, please let's do it to everybody so that we can deter people from doing it. But if you stop on Bobriski's, then this continues next weekend. Today, today, Saturday, people are spraying money in Lagos, in Ibadan, everywhere in Onicha today. What's the difference? That's what I'm saying. I'm not in any way defending Bobriski. He has a lawyer who can defend him. So I'm not talking about, I'm just saying equal justice for all. All right, thank you. Sure, thank you for that. Uh, Forefathers, welcome to the show. Um, greetings, uh, Dr. Damage. Thank you for having me. Um, greetings to everyone on the panel, um, the chat, and to the viewers. Um, I don't know, is it regarding Bob Risky we are talking about? No, no, uh, just weighing on all we've been, I, I know you've been around. If you have anything to say about all the things we're talking about, but you can also talk about Bob, uh, Bob Risky. Okay. Um, I guess um, his own matter is, as um, I think um, Sho touched on it in terms of, you know, it doesn't seem fair that uh, justice is being picky. Um, but then again, um, almost in all capitalist system, you see this feature in, um, the, in uh, democracies and, you know, they, there's unfairness in the system. Um, you notice that justice seems to be very, very swift for the poor. You remember when there was a riot in the UK, they opened the courts for 24 hours to convict people for stealing trainers and all the rest. When it comes to the rich that are dodging tax and um, putting money in tax even billions upon billions, uh, the law is slow. This is a feature of capitalist system. This is why I always wonder why politicians even bother to rig elections. Because you already have an advantage because you are rich. In the capitalist system. Um, also, um, I think in the end, um, you know, one cannot say um, if somebody is trying to enforce the law, you stop them because some of that one hasn't been enforced. Um, we are just, if we do that, then we are just making things even worse. Because one immoral act, one law breaking, um, just because it's unfair doesn't mean there should be second. Otherwise, it's anarchy we are all advocating. There is no society you will have um, generally perfect um, enforcement of the law for everyone. Um, it's about degrees. And I think many, most Nigerians are really fed up with how unfair the system is. And I've seen this on the ground and it's beginning to destroy the system itself. I've seen Nigerians be very, very upset about the rule of law. They don't want traffic warden. That's my own experience where they said they don't want the traffic warden at a junction that there is no traffic, no traffic is flowing, everything is blocked. And there was a traffic warden standing there. 
And they said, then I told them, why is the traffic warden not doing anything to clear the traffic? They said, because he doesn't have the power to do that. I said, but why don't he have the power to clear the traffic? They said, they don't want him to have the power because he's going to abuse it. Now, you see, that is a microcosm of what we are going through, where you people feel that the system is so unfair that they would rather, law is not enforced at all. And that is a very, very terrible situation for us to be in. And I really think that we have to take whatever we find and push for the others, like the lady that is sp spraying money now, whether it's Abiola's daughter or not, or Tinubu's daughter or not, she should be held accountable to, because it's unfair. And those that uh, are Bob Risky supporters, he's not the only one. There was another lady that was uh, convicted in the late last year for spraying money too. They seem to be very selective about what they do. And personally, spraying the money versus um, election malpractice, I think election malpractice is far more grievous. And you see it everywhere. And nobody is doing anything about it. Um, it if you are operating a democracy, um election process is almost sacred you can't have people um damage it the way you see it being uh, damaged in nigeria um and no action is taken regarding i don't know how many people, how many people that have been prosecuted for election malpractice in this last uh, cycle none so and now they are throwing her in prison it seems unfair um but i think what we need to do instead is to push for more people to be prosecuted um for um breaking the law law breaking um and you cannot be encouraged because it leads us nowhere it's just going to damage us even further um so yeah that's that's my take on uh, bob risky um well i i, I want i have a follow-up for forefather quickly um uh, which one is more is this, really, is this really necessary listen we've got a third world war in our hands about to happen and we people are, to are talking about some man that has decided to start wearing skirts and blouse what are we talking about? We're not serious. So. We're not talking about the man wearing scare. We're talking about equity before the law. If, if it and was reported there's a drone, across, if, if, if it was safe for us to go and put the drone, we're talking about equity. I have a little Calm down. So please hold on, hold on, guys. I turn, hold on. Everything is important. It depends on how you frame it. And the fact that there is a world war coming uh, doesn't mean that we are not going to uh, eat, get married, play. The comedians will still continue to perform. Uh, talking about comedians, I have another crack reporter who wants to join us live from UK. And Tony won't like this, but um, Indaboski is live in the UK. <laughs> And I have a crack reporter who is trying to join us, but um, we'll try to get him if we can get to that. Um, I'm also talk talking with the uh, Peter Beast people as soon as he's ready, and uh, we are going to connect to him. Um, let me let me go to who we have not heard from. Um, okay, I'll about you. Respond yeah, to Yeah, just one minute. Hey, Rudolph, I want to uh, my time. I want you know, my, my sister went bad the other time I was talking. Okay. Yeah. So I'm back. Yeah, well, just one minute. I won't be long, uh, electricity. Uh, I have a question for for forefather on the submission. Which which one is worse, an unequal law, or that is a law that is enforced only for some people, or a law that is not enforced at all? Um, now, the premise of my question is that is that when why we fight injustice in this world is because people are not held equally before the law. That's why we call something animal farm a zoo, where some are more equal than others. Apartheid became a thing worldwide because it places white over blacks. Segregation became a thing because it places white over black. Now, if you have a system <laughs> that places the rich over the poor, it is also equally unjust. So, as a means of uh, abdicating justice, you understand? If you can enforce a particular law for all the people equally, you shouldn't have that law. In fact, it's a basis for appeal. For those who know law, I'm not a lawyer. That's a basis for appeal. Because if the first person can get away with it, then all should get away with it. So that's your argument doesn't hold forth until we start preaching equity for all which is where it has brought Nigeria to his knees, to his knees as we speak, because some people think they are more above the law than others. 
whether they are from a specific tribe or not, that's not the issue, or from a specific religion, that is not the issue. But because of their privilege, they exercise privilege over others. So anything that does that needs to be cancelled. All right. Thank you, Alaba. Wait, also, I can, want I, can to... I respond quickly to what he said? No, hold on, hold on. I want to mention that the Babriski situation is exactly the same thing. Uh, Israel, if you look at what's happening in the Middle East now, Israel decided to attack an embassy uh, building of, of Iran. And the world didn't think it was over the line, you know. And, and when Iran decided that they will respond, America said, you can't, don't, you know. It's exactly the same thing. You can break down everything to the basic things, what is right and what's wrong, what is the right of everybody, who has privileges that others do not have and why it leads to crisis. So it's not about the lifestyle of Bob Risky. It's about, it's about the law and how it's applied. All right. Um, so go ahead. Talk about it. Yeah. yeah you, see, so sorry. In, in, you see, in life, um, even nature is unfair. It favors some continents over others, favors some <laughs> environments over others. And the human beings, uh, societally, then to gravitate towards unfairness, uh, we like it or not. And it's not because of wickedness, it's just because of kindness. If you are kind to your neighbor, you will do things for the other, your, that your neighbor that results in them maligning the law. And if you think deeply about this, you find that that is what society is like. They gravitate towards each other. Everybody is kind to their fellow man. And before you know it, they become a, an old boys club and you have elite class and you have uh, the lower class. But in the end, some execution of the law is better than none. The, the ideal situation is everything is applied equally. That is why the law is there. However, if you execute some of them, it's better than none. Anarchy is far worse. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor. Thank you, uh, Reverend Rudolph. Uh, uh, before I come to you, Ferreira, uh, uh, definition of Naira mutilation is defined as mutilated currency is a note that has been damaged to the extent that one half or less of the note remains or its value is questionable. That is not the case in respect to what Bobrisky did. So the authority is wrong. It's spraying money. It didn't destroy the money. The money can still be used, can still be recognized. So I don't see why we, we have to argue. I mean, it's not whether he's lesbian or gay or not. It's about the matter of the law. He was arrested or she was arrested for mutilated currency. And, and when Sho brought up this topic, I asked Sho to highlight the definition of what mutilated currency is. He didn't do it or she didn't do it. So why are we, I mean, the law has to be fair on everybody. I just that is the definition. You Google it, you will see the definition there. So, so, so sorry, Pastor. Pastor before, so, sorry, Pastor. 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 Sorry, 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 Tim. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is important. Um, see, I'm sorry. I took you out just random so I could answer. Um, Pastor Electricity. So the CBN Act of 2007, yeah. Section 21, Subsection 3 says, for the avoidance of doubt, spraying off. That was the first line. Spraying off, dancing or marching on the naira or any notes issued by the bank during social location or otherwise, however, shall constitute an abuse and defacing of the Naira, or such notes shall, shall be punishable under the subsection one of this. So spraying off is the first one. So it so is not mutilated. What, yeah, it, all of them. They've not put them under mutilation. Spraying off is an offense. I just thought I'll clear that. Uh, so that according to the report, he was arrested based on mutilating the, the currency. Also, they, they are the ones that made the law. They've classified spraying as part of their mutilation. I just thought I'll clarify that. So if that's the case, all of us are guilty. Every I, one of us are guilty. I never sprayed Naira. So I was young when I left Nigeria. Made. They have money to spray. <laughs> that's Please, that's point leave me out. <laughs> yes, I'll bring you if back. that is the case, case my every one of us are no, guilty. So no, if you give Naira to your church, you're mutilating it. If I give money, if I give Naira to church. Anyway, let me continue, please. Uh, Ferreira, you claim that I was wrong when I highlighted the issue of moral obligation. Are you still standing on that? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Did you uh, see because, what I just? Did you, did you see what I sent to you on the private? Yeah, chat on the platform. I saw it. I saw it. Yeah. countries so are see, not run 
on morality because individual moralities differ. Countries are run on legality. Fair, fair. Hold on one second, please. You see, we owe each other moral obligations beside the law. I, no, that's I, I a religious say, view. If I'm an atheist, I mean, that's I'm not a religious that. view. It's no, not a religious view. Fair, fair, fair. It is not a religious view. It it's is not, not a religious, religious view. view. It's a, it's a view of morality. If it's you see someone lying, if you see someone in the street I lying down, if you saw Ferreira, if you Ferreira, brother Ferreira, yeah. if you saw somebody in the park on your roots home and this person was wounded on the floor, your duty to that man is to go and check if he's okay, not That's just to humanity. walk past. That's my humanity, not, just, not my morality. No, no, not just to walk past like you did me when I was drunk that time. All right, yeah, all right, all right. Let me, about let me humanity. finish. You see, no, 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 I'm, I'm not going to argue with you, okay? I don't mind being called, being told if I'm wrong. I don't mind. However, if I am not wrong and you tell me I am wrong, I will put it to you that I am not wrong. It's up to you to believe. It's subject to debate. On Wednesday, let me just tell you something. Hold on, Ferreira. On Wednesday, I submitted my first assignment on health and safety on moral ground. I quoted the law, HSWA, health and safety at work. I failed the number one question because my tutor told me, I didn't ask you about legal matters. I asked you about moral obligation in health and safety. So I got seven over 10. So you Google it, you will see it there. It's not What's the difference religion. between morality and ethics? Please, let me finish. I don't like being interjected, please. Let me finish. I was telling my daughter this evening, if you are driving and I'm sitting by your side and I refuse to use a seat belt, what would you do? She said, well, she has told me, and that is, I said, no, you have a right to tell me to get out of that car because I'm putting your life at risk. That's the moral obligation you hold to me. So please, let's get the record straight. Moral comes first before the law. It's there. Google it. You will see it yourself. I didn't make it up. It's there on, on the internet. So I am not wrong. You are wrong. I yield the floor. Thank you, Rudolph. All right. <laughs> okay. I, I will go to James. That's but, guy, huh? I'll go to James, but let me just show you guys a little bit of what's going on live from London, where um local P, our uh, the other crack reporter we have talking about spreading the naira. I, I hope it's the naira mm. that's in there not the pound. Um let's see if we can play it a little bit of this. <laughs> All right, that is um, a member of the Pentecostal Pastors Association of Nigeria. And um, yeah, I hear <laughs> You'll be surprised, he might be a member of the Pentecostal. <laughs> anyway, are you going to James on moral grounds? Is that why you're going to James? No, oh, I don't know. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, can you hear me, please? Uh, yeah, James, go ahead. I'm sorry, my background here is very noisy. If you cannot okay. hear me, you can let me know, please. Go ahead. I, I, just, I just want to say that. Going by the definition uh, on the private chat, Mr. Tinibu has devalued the Naira to such an extent that its value is questionable. That is the greatest desecration of the Naira. Not that's what right. the did. That, that's we'll how see. we should look at it. And also, let's say you want to buy a toilet, uh, what's it called, a toilet roll, let's say Nigeria today. If you collect five Naira notes, to buy a toilet roll, you discover that the volume of paper you use is more than the toilet roll you want to buy. So it's better for you to go to the toilet with five Naira notes than buying the toilet roll. So that is the greatest desecration of Nigerian Naira, not what the boy did. And secondly, the judges must be called to order. A judge has no right 
to do what the judge did. The boy was being uh, uh, tried for desecrating the money. Not for, I mean, it's not, a, they are not trying this, uh, what's it called? Uh, I mean, if it's a boy or a I mean, that's not the issue at stake. That is, if I commit murder, for example, and I appear before a judge, it would be wrong of the judge to try me for treason, whereas I committed murder. So a judge has no right to redefine the crime during the course of a trial. So the judge should be called to order. So that's the little I've got to say. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. James. Uh, I'll come to you uh, if there's no other person here. Flash it, I don't know if you have something to say. Local P, if you can hear me, uh, please help us to see if we can book uh, in the bus queue for this show. Uh, we are open any day he wants to. <laughs> he wants to come on the show, we will take him. Um, look, um, uh, Jagum, go ahead. Uh, I have something to say. Uh, if, if you want, Jagum. Okay, Flash it. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, thank you. It, it's apparent that uh, the, this uh, case of uh, Bob Risky is beyond uh, what he's been charged for. Uh, I, I look at it seriously on the basis as uh, he's a Nigerian, not based on whatever he defines himself as. And if this goes and is allowed, then every Nigerian will be guilty of the same, those who have done it, uh, from the president down to whoever that is on evidence, video or whatever. But I, I, I want to look, I read the uh, law that show just read now, and I'm kind of concerned a little bit in the wording. And I'm, I'm thinking, should they go back and rephrase or rewrite this law, sprain and match, M-A-T-C-H. Are those the right words that should apply in this case by the definition they're trying to make? I, it, it seemed a cake to me. and. Uh, a little bit pigeon. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I stand because uh, it's Nanaja, Nanaja English with that now. They want to say mash, then, which then, is not, which is not even the right then, word to use well, in that case. But they can't say mash. I won't black in my jazz. His defense has. They, they need to come back and and readdress this because. Uh, you, you. Bra, that, when I read uh, when I read from Nigeria, the amount of grammatical errors. That I read is 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 unconscionable. The law Pure, is, uh, so, every word there just is out of place. It's spelling right. mistakes, saying things, saying things how they pronounce it and writing it down. Exactly. Very very poor. Very poor. It's they need to go back and and redo that. They need to start again on most of them. Thank you. All right. Thank you, flagship. Um, so who who is next? I want us to talk about Alan uh, Oyema before uh, it becomes. If, if we have time. Talon, Talon, the Alan, Mayema. Oh, peace, peace, air peace. Air peace. It's yeah. my turn, but I would prefer someone to go forward on air peace issue, Joe. Okay. No, let me hear Jonaba if he has something. Jonaba, you have anything to add to what we're discussing uh, about Bob Risky? Uh, I think mostly it's what everybody has said. It's a selective uh, judgment. It'd be like saying you get in style now, Jonaba. What thing be that thing for your neck? I just came back to see my mama's grave. So what is your problem? <laughs> I'm only kidding, bro. Don't I worry know, about I me. know, I know, I know. Um, uh, I think uh, Nigeria is not fair to anybody, mm -hmm. and it's not fair to herself. So uh, whatever happened in jungle, stay in jungle. Can, can, can I just say something, Brother, before you move on? Go ahead, go ahead. And um, I'm of the school of thought, like the same as uh, flagship. But I want to make it OHA. Eh? The person, when he be, him, well, you understand, when he go, he, when he no grief for and he cause all these things. So let him and Bob Brisky go and settle their issue outside of uh, the Nigerian court frame. No, wait, wait, who is the person? I'm hearing some things like the, the other things going on. Somebody came out who is a very black man, said he was responsible for the arrest. Is that what you are referring to? No, but no. if you if you follow the trend, okay, mm -hmm. this individual who was arrested and taken to court, there were other very strong forces around the, 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 the geographical location who insisted that he must be charged and put in prison. 
Right. Are you yes. afraid of mentioning those forces? I, I, I see. I, I have children to train. <laughs> 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 so the, the, look, because look at it this way. You understand? It's, this guy has since I, since we have been there. I mean, this guy started doing this is show since I think if I if I remember correctly, sometime in the late twenty uh, two thousands, the late two thousands. We all know this guy who is a cross dresser. Okay, we know him. We know the stupid boy called Bob Risk. <laughs> okay, and and we all, you know, first when he started, it was like a joke, and they, they invite him to all this uh, Abuja, you know, fun fair and all that, and he comes. Okay, he, there's a particular location where all of us used to or uh, meet. You know, it's called Area Ten. You know, the Cultural Center of Church. Uh, Chim knows that place. It's a meeting point for everybody. You are Bob Risky. Not me or him. Uh, uh, look oh. at me now. I have the idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted to understand. I don't, you know. Okay. No, it's a meeting point for artists and all the events happening in Abuja. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah, so, now, what, what you are saying is that there are people who are close to him who we know. Okay? So, if he has stepped on those toes, let him go back. Okay? Because I don't think he's going to survive it in, in prison. Whether they put him in the male section or the female section. So, let him go back. And appeals to the power because if you look at it, the judgment vis a vis, just like you have said, with the crime do not match. And why do you give him, you know, no option of fine? No option of fine. Why? What is the crime? Meanwhile, people are putting there's dollar people, there is normal people, there's even those who give contracts to their cronies for over 15 years without bidding, without even submitting to the Fed to the Federal Executive Council, without even putting it in the budget. Those people are still working, and it's not in it's not in small naira; it's in billions, and they are not being called to question. And then you take this young man or woman, as the case may be, who now said he spread a naira, and the president just did the same thing three days ago, in a party in Lagos, and he has not been arrested. Neither is any of his aides arrested. So there's a question that was not being answered. Let the let Bobrisky put the cat out so that we all. I think the question, but um, um, Rudolph, I'm trying to avoid this. There's an English saying that says, "Who will bear the cat?" That's where we are right now. Nobody wants. KJ, to what you are trying to say is that there's somebody a top there that is had to want to have a relationship with Bobrisky. That's why he arrested him. Is that what you are trying to say? Uh, I didn't say that. But if that's what you are trying to say, I'm saying well. <laughs> But, but, but just to weigh in a little bit, so okay, on a more serious <laughs> note, we know the er Erisco versus uh, the pregnant mother story. All right, uh, hold on, hold on. Um, we have to end it here. Um, Peter B is about to join us, so we are ready. So I'll get you guys out. Um, uh, and please, everybody, really, uh, get out from sorry, <laughs> let's say that way. We have to get out so that he, he can actually join us, okay. Yeah, hello, hello, hello. Okay. Uh, Rudolph, you are muted. You are muted, Rudolph. We can't hear you. Okay. So I'm going to remove myself now. Okay, please. Also, we want to get people out from the from the studio too. Please get um uh, remove yourself because we don't have space there, so we can have him join us. Uh, when we come back, I mean, after I'm done with him, which will be very quick. I will get everybody back and all right. So um I think we have an, we have space for him now. But new people should not try to join where we get get them to. So um ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have uh, Peter B joining us on the show uh he's going to join us from please don't try to join us now please uh, we want to make room for him 
Um, he's going to join us from Boston. He just delivered a, a talk at Harvard University. And from there, he's going to go and have a meeting with Nigerians, kind of a thank you tour. He's meeting Nigerians in Boston. And tomorrow he will be in New Jersey to meet some Nigerian supporters of the party. Uh, he has about an hour to join us and have a conversation with us. Uh, for those who may not know uh, Peter B, if there are people who do not know him, let's uh, watch a little bit of um, a profile of Peter B. When he was just a governor of Anambra State, a small state in eastern Nigeria, he used to say that the society that we abuse today will take its revenge on our children. He used the first four years as governor to stabilize Anambra State. It was only in his second term that he began to gain the attention of a few people outside the state. As the only APCA governor and a close ally of Chukwemeka Odume Gojuku, he strode along the treacherous political arena of the southeast with dignified ease. By the time that he made a speech at the platform in 2016, a speech that is equivalent to the one Barack Obama made in Boston at the Democratic Party's convention in 2004. His name, Peter Obi, had been catapulted into national prominence and a household name amongst the young and educated elite in Nigeria. When he stood before his kinsmen to declare his intention to run for president in March 2022, nothing could have prepared him for the ride he would have while the rest of nigeria warmed up to him and cheerfully carried him on their heads and shoulders the people of anambra already knew him <laughs> He was Okute, the former governor whom all the 177 traditional rulers in Anambra state unanimously confer the title Okute. His name is Peter Gregory Omobwasi Obi. Obi was born on the 19th of July 1961 in the business city of Onicha, where he continues to live and work till date. He attended Christ the King College, Onicha, where he completed his secondary school education. He was admitted to the University of Nigeria in 1980, graduated with a BA Honours in Philosophy in 1984. Peter Obi attended Lagos Business School, where he completed the Chief Executive Program, Harvard Business School, the London School of Economics, Columbia Business School, and the International Institute for Management Development, where he received certificates in the Senior Executive Program and the Chief Executive Officer Program. He also attended the Kellogg School of Management and Northwestern University, the Business School of Oxford University, and the George Business School of Cambridge University. He describes himself as a mere trader. Senior brother is even more intelligent than because he's a professor, I'm a trader, so he knows more, so he will be able to do things better than I'm doing it. You know, I've done my little own as a trader. Now the professor is there. This is despite his exploits from boardrooms to politics where he left a trail of verifiable track records to which he always referred his opponents to with his go and verify anthem. Being a businessman, resilience was second nature to him, but in 2003, his political resilience was tested when Chris Ngige was declared winner of the gubernatorial election. Obi went to court and in 2006, the election of Chris Ngige was nullified and Obi was declared winner of the 2003 election. He assumed office in March 2006. He was impeached in November the same year by the Anambra State House of Assembly. However, his impeachment was overturned and he returned to office in February 2007. He was removed again after the 2007 Anambra State gubernatorial election. But the judiciary again intervened by ruling that he should be allowed to complete a full four-year term. In 2010, he was re-elected to a second term and this time, he served full term. In this current dispensation, it was uniquely refreshing that in the Nigerian political arena full of certificate forgers, ex and current criminals, and men and women with an opaque past, 
the only talking points that Peter Obi's opponents could hold on to was that his statistics were sometimes off, that he said he had only one pair of shoes and one watch, and they found two, and that he called a church leader and conversed for vote in the infamous, legally obtained and leaked Yes Daddy audio. In 2023, 20 years after his first election appeal, Obi went back in court to challenge the process of the presidential election he said he won. Let me read and assure you that good people of Nigeria that will explore all legal and peaceful options to reclaim our mandate. A case was dismissed by the Supreme Court, but the support he received has continued. In rejecting the ruling of the Supreme Court, Peter Obi argued that the court had failed the people of Nigeria this time. We won the election and we will prove it to Nigeria. The former governor vowed to stay around and be the opposition to the government in power, which he considered illegitimate. As he used to say as governor, when the premise of an argument is wrong, the conclusion is also wrong. The conclusion of Mr. Peter Obi's first attempt at the presidency is that he has just started. His fight against what he calls the structure of criminality has only begun. For taking a party that got only 5,000 votes in 2019 to 6 million votes in 2023, he had done something that no politician has been able to do in Nigeria. His enduring mantra says, go and verify, irrespective of what the future holds for him. If he does not personally move Nigeria from consumption to production, someone else will have to do so. And someone else has to cut the cost of governance that he once legendarily did in Anambra State for eight years, after which he saved millions of dollars for the state. And until these ideals that Peter Obi based his 2023 campaign becomes the norm, even his fervent opponents would agree that Nigeria would continue to flounder. Even those critics of his who say Peter Obi would never be president find out as soon as they say so that there is a thing hanging around their neck. All when right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please welcome to our show, uh, His Excellency Mr. Peter Obi. Welcome. Uh, please unmute yourself. We can hear you, sir. Um, yes. Okay, good. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, we are glad to have you. We've been waiting, and a lot of people have been waiting to oh, talk. Oh, so I sincerely apologize. Today has been very, very bad for me. You know, I have an event, a speaking engagement in, in Harvard. But leaving from Newark to Boston, I missed my flight twice. You know, because of complications at the airport. So, you know, I, I missed my flight. First, I was at a different boarding gate. They didn't announce it, and it went from another boarding gate. By the time I could be able to change my ticket, I missed the second one. I missed the third one. So that took me, a program that was supposed to end by two just ended. But I was happy the students were able to wait, and I apologize to them for what happened. You know, thank you. That's very good. We are glad that you're here. I don't know how much time you have with us, but let's start. I will ask you a few questions. Uh, okay. This this actually for my my audience, my panelists, and people who watch this show for more than a year, eighteen months. I calculated it. They've been waiting for you to come on this program. So uh, no, 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 no. I don't think it's up to them. No, no, no. Okay. August, August 2022, on last show, okay. you said you were coming. Yeah, so so let's get to that. Uh, the first thing is this. Uh, a lot of people want to know whether you are the leader of the Labour Party. Are you the leader of the Labour Party? <laughs> well, you know, I don't, I don't, for me, I don't see what I do in politics as being leader of any place or not. My position is that just like I always say, I'm not desperate to be president of Nigeria. I'm desperate to see Nigeria work because I know it can work. Then thing is what I'm, I'm, I'm desperate to see all the parties be the way parties should be, where things are done in an organized manner. For me, that is the most critical thing. Wherever, yes, you can call me leader of the Labour Party because 
That's what the party said. But most importantly is to see things function in an organized manner. We have a more desperate situation. Parties are just a means to be able to contest election. What is important is that being a leader of a party does not reduce the price of food. What I want to see is that the average Nigerian lives in a society where things are moving properly, the access to education, the access to health, and the means of livelihood of the people. Mm. Now, your, your supporters uh, look at what's going on uh, in the party, Labour Party, and they wonder why is it that you don't exert your, yourself and, and get it into order? Uh, because they see you as the leader of the party. That's why I ask whether you are the leader. You see yourself that way. Well, quite frankly, they are wrong. I'm not in control of the party. And I don't think whatever is happening in the party is so minute to what is happening in the country. So for me, it's something that will resolve and resolve very amicably. And it's not anything to worry about. Let's worry about the country. Mm. Let's worry about how the average Nigerian will have a means of livelihood, be able to eat. That should be our worry. Mm. Now, you, you've said several times that you are not desperate to be president of Nigeria, but you are desperate to see Nigeria work. And... Um, People, people wonder, and one of them is one of our panelists here. His name is Chim. You will meet him later. He said something like, if you are desperate to see Nigeria work, that you should be desperate and ready to actually die for Nigeria. Are you willing to die for Nigeria? I hear you say in different platforms that things you are going through after the election, what you are dealing with. Are you ready to die for Nigeria? I'm sure that you haven't seen people do what I'm doing today. When I was campaigning, I was the only person who campaigned in every part of Nigeria. I was in Southern Kaduna. I was in Southern Burundi. I was in Southern Gombe. I was in different places. Biu, uh, so sorry, I was in um, Newman, everywhere. And I would do something everywhere I go. So you could see where I campaigned in different areas of Nigeria that people never before campaigned. So I don't know what else people use to measure somebody who is committed to Nigeria. You are committed and you are ready to risk your life for Nigeria. Is that that? that... I've, not, I've, not, I've, not, I've probably not done more than that. And today, if I'm not committed, I won't be doing what I'm doing in opposition. All right. Your party chairman, uh, Aburek, was here on our show, and we talked to him. We asked him several questions. One of them was, did he see the result as tabulated by Labour Party, the, your own party, your own result from your agents? He said, yeah, that you have it. And he promised to show, show us the result. We haven't received it. I wanted to know whether you saw the result and what was it like? Quite frankly, if you ask me, somebody asked me something like that, but privately about a few days ago, I told him the last election is gone. And I don't want the court, the highest court of the land, even when I don't agree with them, have put a finality to the last election. So let's look at the future. I don't want to be talking about last election. I want to be looking at the future. And that's why I said my expression is see Nigeria work. Mm. Okay, let's look at the future. Uh, but before we do that, there's another question that people are raising, which is accounts about the finances, especially people that donated money to the party. Do we have the accounts? Is it public? Because people still don't seem to have seen it. Well, the, the, the party account is not under my control. We've said we are going to appoint a sound auditor, and that we have appointed. So if a sound auditor comes up with their work tomorrow, any day they come out with it, we'll make it public. 
monies were re re received by different groups and different places. And we have said people who receive money should account for it. You've seen one of the campaign accounts was managed by Asha Yusuf. She's come public, accounted for it. And that is at all levels, even support groups. We have asked them, if you know you collected funds from anybody, account for it, it's necessary. I'm going to go around to everywhere we've been, where we think people made donations to say thank you. And if I receive their contribution, I'll let them know. If I didn't, I'll also let them know so they will know who they gave it to and go and ask that question. And that must be, because if we are talking about accountability, when we go into office, we should start by accounting for the small resources. But I can tell you, whatever we received was judiciously applied. That's why we achieved what we were able to achieve. But whatever it is, we need to account to those who supported us. It is critical, whether there's whether of the material, in cash or in anything, we need to account for it. All right. Um, there's an election coming in Edo State uh, for governor, and you have a candidate from Labour Party. I have a question. Uh, what are you putting in place to make sure that what happened in the presidential election will not repeat itself in Edo State? Well, what are we going to put in place? We are not in charge of anything. The only thing we can do is to continue to say, let's do the right thing. Advocacy and ask people to mind their boots, their this and everything. We can't do more than that. We're not going to carry gun. We don't have access to gun. We don't have access to. We're not going to kill people because we want to serve the people. We're not going. To, we're just going to do the right thing. But is that all? Because some people were wondering. Um, one of the things that didn't work out well in the last election was that you don't have agents everywhere. Uh, Labour Party didn't. Well, we're going to have agents everywhere. We're actually supposed to have agents everywhere. It is a difficult thing. The last election I said is past. What it is is that there's a lot of issues that made us to be in that situation. And then we can, it was just our, our first attempt to be more organized in the future. Mm. So, so you're assuring Nigerians that you will have agents in Edo everywhere, in all the polling units? I believe so. Yes, we, we have no reason. We, in the last election, we even have agents everywhere in Edo. Okay. I don't want to say it, where we do have agents. Okay. All right. Um, one more question from me before I let um, our people come in, because I don't know how much time you have for us. Um, but the question is, if you were announced as a winner of the election last time and you were you were sworn in. You will have declared your assets for Nigerians. So, um, and I, I believe people who know you, they believe that you would have made it public. I, I, am I right? Well, yes. Let me tell you. Is that yes? There is a mandatory for you to declare your assets. But where we are now is also necessary to do so public. Even if we have not been doing it in the past. Things have changed. We now need to do things differently. And I believe we need to do things differently. Even when I tell people that when I was campaigning, that I'm not going to do well so much on the past, even when I'm looking for fighting corruption and everything, we will be able maybe ask one or two questions about the past. But our focus would have been on today and tomorrow. Mm. Now, uh, people who know you, they say that you will have done it publicly and that, um, you know, you will make other people working with you to do the same thing. Yes. Will, you be, will you be able to tell us, Nigerians today, ballpark figure of what your assets look like? No, I can't because I'm not in office. I yeah, mean, I, know, I know you're not in office, but that would be a change. That would be something. No, 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 no. It's not, a, it's not necessary. All I tell people is that I'm not a poor man. Mm. And whatever... I have is by his grace, is God, you know. 
And I don't want to, I challenge anybody to say, show me where I stole public money. I was governor for eight years. And in eight years, when I left office, everybody, including you know, that I left 100 and over $150 million and over 30 billion naira. What else do I need to say to prove that I'm not, say, a thief? Because no thief, no, I've seen what he can steal and keep it. People go into church and steal telephone because they came to church to worship. But because it's in their nature, it's part of them, and they do that. So the same thing, nobody asked me to save money. I was not under pressure. I was not under anything. I did it on my own. Your critics, they say things like, um, when things are good, that you don't talk about it, you don't tweet about it, like the Naira. The Naira is gaining against the dollar and other currencies. Um, that a Dangote refinery is about to start producing or is producing that, you know, that things are looking up, that you only pick on bad stories out of Nigeria. What do you say to that? I tweeted, we'll, we'll go and check when they inaugurated Dangote. I tweeted about it. Go and look at it. I tweeted about it and I said the implication. I don't need to be tweeting about it every day. On the issue of the Naira, where was the rate before? Where did we get now? What is the implication? You, of course, you make comments on it when you look at what is happening. You see me make comments on the, on the Naira and what people think it is this. I'll make comments on it. I don't tweet always when things are bad. My role is to say things the way they are. Okay, I, I agree. We'll bring people in. And um, I, if I bring you in, remember, I, I will share the link. One question straight to the uh, to your question. And then we will um, uh, we will get to as many people as possible before we before uh, he goes. We don't have a lot of time. I have several other questions for him, but uh, we are short of time. So let me bring in the people uh, that are already in the studio, and then we will go from there. Uh, please, just uh, your question. Uh, I'll start with you, Pastor. Yeah, thank you, uh, Rudolph. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Your Excellency. I'll go straight to my question. Uh, you campaign on transparency, accountability, and uh, verifying or verification. The thirty thousand dollars allegedly is I'll use the word allegedly given to the senators by Akpabi in respect to the party. Is this true? Is it false? Thirty thousand dollars that was given to the senators by Akpabi. Is it true? I don't know about uh, which thirty thousand. I. Over what? Rudolph, do you mind weighing in into it? Okay, so there's this story out there that the senators received money to pass the budget, all the senators in Nigeria, and average was 30,000. I think what he's getting to, uh, okay, go ahead. So, so they, they didn't deny that, that they received money. Um, some of them received more than, more than $30,000. I think the question that Pastor is asking is whether you heard about it. And I think I'm guessing that what about the Labour Party senators? Why, uh, what did you say when you heard that? Um, they well, were quite frankly, I didn't uh, follow up uh, on that. I didn't know about uh, uh, they give, being given money to to pass the budget. I heard about being the budget being padded, budget being doing this. I've heard about buying them vehicles, which I condemned, you know, in every ramification, even when Labour Party people were involved. And I keep telling people, it's just like what you asked me at the beginning about the issue of, of um, leadership. Leader, uh, leadership of the party. I said, I'm not in control. I don't have powers to sack a employee. employ him. Neither do I have powers to sack anybody. Just like you don't have powers to tell 
the labor legislators, what are they going to do? You see, people must understand one thing. There's a difference between where you're in, when you're in charge and when you're not. I, I give you, let me go back to my former party, Abga. When I became governor, during my time, I was contesting election. Abga was engulfed in similar situation we find ourselves in labor. And that was the situation when I became governor. I don't know if you know, it became like that for a long time. It didn't stop me to, from doing what I want to do as a governor. Because I was in charge. I could sack a commissioner. I could keep a commissioner. I could question a civil servant. I could do this. There's so many. I had the power to do what I wanted to do. I answered a similar question today in Harvard. That when you are in charge, you can decide, like I said, I can fight corruption head on. I can decide this is not going to happen. Legislators, I'm not going to buy you this type of car. Because I have the similar situation. Traditional people are not going to use this type of facilities. Because this is going to happen. But when you're not in charge, what are people, what people do is that, just like they say, oh, if you can't manage party, how is he going to manage Nigeria? I'm not party chairman. I don't have any role in the party. I didn't manage Abga as governor, but I managed Anambra State because I was in charge. I was the person who knew what is the right thing to do and pursued it. People say, oh, if you can't manage legislators, how will I manage them? I can only preach to them. Rudolph is like you now. I can't manage people say, oh, if you can't control Rudolph, who is your friend? I mean, you're my friend. How can you control this? No, it's not the same thing. I can only preach to you. I can only, you know, persuade you to do the right thing. It's a different thing when I am in charge. You cannot decide this is the way I want things to go. All right, let's leave it at that. Let's go to the next person's show. You're next. All right. Um, thank you, Rudolph, and uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Peter Obi. Thank you for joining us today. My thank question you. to you is, um, and I, I believe it's a question that might be relevant you know, for years to come, while you remain active in politics. My question to you is, currently today in Nigerian you know, political space, are there political actors or gladiators that you consider you know, a step too far that you know, even if it means it takes you closer to office, to Asso Rock, that you will not work with, based on what you know of them, based on what they stand for, based on who they are? Are there people that you would say, regardless of what this will bring me, I will not work with these people because I know them and I know what they stand for. I won't call their name, but there's so many of them. Okay, fantastic. Thank there's you very so much. Many, of course, there's so many characters you will never have near you because they don't believe in anything. They are part of the confusion and they will never change. Thank so you. So why would you want to bring them near you? Thank you very much. That answers my question. They answer people today. People would have been surprised about the team that we have assembled. But they will know that this team have come to work. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sho. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Chim. Chim, you are next. Uh, thank you, Rudolph. Um, good day, uh, Mr. Obi. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Uh, even thank though uh, Rudolph has tried to malign me slightly before you. <laughs> All right, my, my question is this. I know you've tried to answer it in a certain way, but um, I'm still not very satisfied. So, you know, bear with me. Um, so we know that we run a presidential system of government and you have declared yourself to be an opposition leader based off the outcome and you want to help hold uh, the, those in government to account. Now, um, I guess the thing is a lot of people with the way they believe see you as somebody of influence, believe that a lot of your Labour Party 
members of the National Assembly actually won their elections in part to your influence, in part to the fact that people believed in you and so voted for those people. Now, the frustration a lot of people have, including me, is that you have, you're saying you're not in charge. But some people believe that we're not asking you to use a gun or use a whip and beat people, but rather to use that influence to inform the way your members of National Assembly vote such that when they see that credibility, perhaps it will be a carryover into uh, 2027 to help to say, OK, this is what we missed when we did not get a Peter Obi and a majority LP in National Assembly. So if you're unable to do this, you know, um, I mean, what do you say when people say that you are not you're not uh, uh, bearing your influence in Labour Party? That's my question. The only thing I can tell them is two things. Let me even before I answer that tell you that quite a number of Labour Party legislators are, are doing the right things. If you follow them, quite a number of them. But that notwithstanding, I've governed the state with 30 members. Are you hearing me? Yeah, we can hear you. I've governed the state with 30 members, not for my party. Who of knows what I'm talking? And I was able to do what I want to do. Return school when I had no single member from my party. Been able to empower hospitals owned by voluntary agencies without a single member from my party. And took other decisions. I still maintain the only thing I can do is to continue to preach and urge them to do the right thing. Other than that, it does not in any way shows, it's like saying, because my brother or my sister or my wife or my children is a thief, God forbid, I am. You cannot do that. I cannot say because Rudolph's brother is an addict. The Rudolph is. And Rudolph cannot control him. You, you persuade, you do whatever is possible to tell them to do the right thing. But it is a different thing if Rudolph has power to say to this person, if you do this, this will happen. If you do this, this will happen. That's when you test and say, this person can do this. I did it when at my own, when I was being impeached, I still took those decisions. Because I was in charge. And I said, this is what I want. And it must happen. I say every day that I'm going to fight corruption. And people say to me, how? I say, when the person in charge is not stealing, his wife and children are not Listen, If you know, my brother was impeached. Go and read my three, three reasons why I was impeached. My first impeachment. One was for cutting the cost of renovating my office. Two was cutting the cost of renovating my lodge. Number three was for saving money. I still continued with saving after my impeachment. I returned because I was in charge. But it's difficult to go and tell somebody else whom probably don't know what the circumstances and everything. You, of course, you talk. And I can tell you, they are different today than other legislators. They might not be to the level that you want them to be, but it's a gradual process. Just like I tell you, business and everything, now, when it's not in a spring race, we're in a marathon race. That change is what will continue to preach until everybody abides by it. All right, thank you, Chim. Uh, let's go to Mr. James in the Gambia. James, join us. 
Yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. I'm sure you can hear me. I can hear you very well. Thank you. Um, during the last election, I was a bit disappointed that four presidential candidates went to Chatham House in London. Mr. Bola Tinibu, Atiku Yosef, and Kwan Kwanso. Considering the fact that we are really under the influence, I mean, there's so much foreign interference in the internal affairs of Nigeria. Considering also the fact that these are the same colonialists who colonized us for 400, who subjected us to 400 years of slavery. May we please know the kind of things you discussed with these men at Chatham House behind the scene, because it's not what we see on the television alone that transpired. That is the question. Categorically, I did not discuss anything with anybody behind the scene. And when they arrived, I actually arrived UK that morning, did my presentation and left at night. And there was no discussion. I even answered it while I was talking to Harvard people today. Now, we have no reason to have foreign intervention or foreign influence in our country. And I'm one person who insists it shouldn't be. All right. Thank you, Mr. James. Tone, you're next. Um, hello, Your Excellency. Thank you for being here today. Right. Um, my question is, um, we witnessed all what happened in the last election, uh, regrettably, and uh, we're preparing for 2027. Um, in view of the fact that we all saw the role of the uh, INEC, of, of INEC rather, and the judiciary, nothing must have changed. So what's, what's the assurance that is not even going to get worse in 2027? What is the Labour Party doing to prepare ourselves for, um, for, for these two agencies? Because obviously, clearly, the judiciary is... Um, has not done very well, and INEC as well. Well, my take in it is that my guess is as good as your guess. We're doing everything possible to ensure it does not happen again. They're not entirely what our answer here. We're not going to shoot people. We're not going to kill anybody. But we're doing everything possible to ensure that it doesn't happen again. And I urge Nigerians to also get involved. Just like I tell the youth, it is about your future. We'll get in, in a civilized, civil manner to ensure that it does not happen again. All right. Thank you, Tone. Uh, flagship, you're next. Thank you, Rudolph. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Good afternoon, Governor Obi. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, it is said that the strength of any nation is measured by how well it takes care of its people, most yes. especially the vulnerable. Yes. The village of Okwama in uh, Ugeli South local government of Delta State recently had a sad event. Unfortunately, we lost most of our gallant men in the process and uh, a couple of people in the community as well. Uh, it's over three weeks now and it seems like the people there that have been displaced have been forgotten about. Uh, this week, the Vanguard newspaper published some photos uh, which showed the women, old women, young women, and kids that are living in the forest around the Kwama village. My question is this. If you were the commander-in-chief, what kind of leadership would you have provided, and how would you have made sure that both parties that are aggrieved, both parties meaning the military and the, the innocent citizens in Nigeria, are brought back to the, their community to continue, continue their lives as it were. If you have followed me in Twitter, I was very clear on this. I condemned completely the killing of our soldiers. We cannot have people who are sacrificing their life for us to live killed in that manner. And at the same time, I condemned the reaction 
of the military. Two wrongs cannot make a right. And the people who are now suffering are people who have, in my own estimation, nothing to do with the killing. They should not be subjected to that. That's why we have a society. I would have even physically visited the place, see things for myself, be able to bring everybody. I know the pain of this military, but I know the suffering of the people. That is why you're in charge. This is as we done. The mistake has happened. This has gone wrong. But it will not be for us to do things that should not be found in a civilized modern world of today. I think I'm appealing that those people from the village be brought back, rehabilitated. I'm advocating that Nigerians should not live in IDP camp, talk a lot of forest, when we are not at war. I've gone to IDP camps in Benue and other parts of Nigeria, and I said people should not live outside here when we are not at war. All right, thank you, uh, Flagship. And uh, let's go to uh, Jagun. Jagun, uh, you're next. I'm not hearing you. Oh, Jagun, we can't hear you. Uh, unmute yourself, please. A uh, pleasure to meet you, Mr. Peter Obi. Thank you. We, we are all behind you, even at this time. I hope you still feel that. Um, two really small questions. Well, one small or one medium, if I may. The first question I have is about leadership. Leadership in Nigeria, right across the board, is extremely poor. I, I would like to ask you, firstly, if you were not the candidate, if you are not running, and I'm, we're glad you are also, don't get me wrong, uh, excuse me for being a bit obtuse, but if you were not running for the presidency, who would you vote for? That's my first one. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know how I'm going to answer that. that it's too controversial. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I, I felt it might be a bit obtuse. But as I said, we're all looking for leadership. And I would just like to see where your eyes were, if anybody else could do the kind of job you're doing in your estimation. There's quite a number of Nigerians who can do the job and do it well. Fair enough, sir. You know, the second one. Of them, but at this stage, I don't need to mention. You know, as I said, I'm not desperate to be president, but I'm desperate to see Nigeria work. And I'll support Nigerians who are competent, who are qualified. For me, at this stage where we are, mm -hmm. we must look for the best. People Indeed. with credibility, people with character, people who are competent, people who have the capacity, and people who have compassion. It is important. We can't I, I respect that. where we are now, where it is, everything fits. Yes, sir. Something a bit deeper, if I may. Um, global geopolitics and the configuration of the world today and the fact that we're ever headed into the future. Does Nigeria stand a chance of catching up in real terms and not in glowing terms of glorification? In real terms, in your, in your most curt analysis Very of, of the situation. Very easy. Just not Nigeria and Africa stands the chance of catching up because you have so much resources. Mm. Have so much resources. The reason I asked, I said ge geopolitics. I beg your pardon. Sorry. The reason why I said geopolitics because I'm speaking about what is going on outside of Africa that is holding Africa back, and I don't mean that as a, a piecemeal. I mean there are strategies outside of Africa that are working against Africa. That's the geopolitics. 
that's what I said before, that we have a chance of catching up. In fact, like I said, this was a question I answered today. Nigeria has no reason for anybody to hold it back. It is this elite, the drivers of our continent today, mostly, I'm not saying all, the drivers of Nigeria today, which has meant the political class, are mainly people op occupied by people who have since passed their destination. I must leave this stage so that people can come, people who have ideas, vision, and commitment. For example, if I use Nigeria, we have no reason to be held back by anybody. We have all the resources, God-given resources, to be able to determine our future. We don't have nothing to do with AIDS. You've seen me condemn that Ukraine gave Nigeria grain. How can a country at war be giving us grain? Ukraine have 603,000 square kilometers of land space. Northern Nigeria is bigger than Ukraine. Just Northern Nigeria. And we have the same arable land as they have. Can grow the same grain they're giving us. But because 60, 70 percent of their land is cultivated and productive, when 60, 70 percent of all is uncultivated and unproductive, the things you do, they will know you're serious. All right. You Thank, can. You. Thank you so much, uh, Jagon. Uh, Eagles Air, you are next. We can hear you, Eagles Air. Can you unmute yourself if you're muted? All right. We have to skip you. Uh, you can come back again. Janaba, you are next. So can you hear me? Can you okay. hear me right now? All right. All right. We can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, Mr. Peter Opute. Uh, good evening from uh, India. Good evening. Please, uh, there's, something, there's something that bothers me. I want to ask a question. And that thing, I'm troubled about it, is what convention, the convention uh, Labour Party had in Newi. And in that convention, we are made to know that they are not there. Alex Oti is not there. And the Labour um, Union leader are not there. TUC are not there. So, and it's in that time, I have not seen you make a comment of concerning that uh, convention that uh, they are bring uh, Julius Aburi back again as a leadership. And the Labour Party and TUC say, no, they are not part of it. Even INEC said that they are not there when they, this thing was conducted. So what is your take? Because it, this means that they're going to affect you in the future. So what is your take towards yeah, the, the convention yeah. that happens? Yeah, and your stand in the Labour Party concerning future? Me, if you have followed me, I've said it repeatedly, that from the onset, I said there's a lot of consultation that needs to happen. And that whatever happens in Labour, we will resolve it with a lot of consultation. There are no things I want to make public, but I'm of the opinion I didn't go because I believe there was not enough consultation and things would have been done differently. But in it, you called me leader. I'm a father. There are things when I have children and everybody will disagree. We, we manage it. What is happening in Labour Party today? It goes, uh, you can, it's not up to 5% of what is happening in other parties. So we manage it and everything. I remember whoever is uh, this or that in the party, it's not a, a problem is how to solve the huge Nigerian problem. When we party on, we will amicably solve it going along. All right. Thank you, Igos. Uh, let's go to Janaba. Janaba, come on, you're next. All right. Uh, Governor 
Peter, I'll be welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my question is simple. Uh, Nigeria is like a broken, uh, has a broken engine. Uh, do you want to be the driver or you be the mechanic? The mechanic. Because when you fix it, then again, the, most mechanics are qualified drivers. Then you can yeah. drive. But the first is to fix it. And I want to fix it. And to fix it is not very difficult. To fix it is to focus on good governance. To focus, for example, what is difficult in Nigeria? Feeding itself. Nigeria can make more money from agriculture than we make from oil. And we have vast uncultivated land in the north. And that will give us food. That will drive inflation down. That will help our manufacturing. And that will help our export, which we will use genuinely to manage the foreign exchange rate. All right. Thank you, uh, John Alba. Thank uh, you. Alaba, you are next. Oh, no. Hold on, Alaba. I think it's uh, four fathers. Four fathers, you are next. Um, thank you, uh, Dr. Rudolph. Uh, greetings, um, uh, Peter Obi. Uh, thank you for joining us here today. I really appreciate the work you are doing in Nigeria. Um, my question is going to be layered. is basically two questions. Um, I was on a panel with you last year um, when you agreed uh, with me that, uh, that security is paramount in any nation. And, um, you know, Switzerland as a nation stopped fighting wars 200 years ago. And Switzerland has more bunkers today than Nigeria has soldiers. Switzerland's population versus their soldiers is 1 to 50, while Nigeria's is 1 to over 1,000. And I, the question is that you, your, your policy, your manifesto indicates that you are looking to change Nigeria's security posture. In other words, to raise our manpower level to around 2 million which includes the military, the police, and other security uh, uh, aspects of the country. But since um, the election, I have not heard um, much about it. Even if uh, 4,700 people have been kidnapped, not to mention other aspects of uh, insecurity in Nigeria. And um, the, the, the reason why I'm asking is I'm puzzled why you, you went quiet about that security uh, issue, because historically, if you look at it, if your nation is not secure, everything else you are building, you are building it on sand. And the warning is al always there on the wall. And the second question that is layered on this is that, why is it that our people are not aware of this? That we are supposed to protect ourselves. Is it because these our leaders are the ones that were groomed by the colonizers? Thank that you. they don't seem to understand that we are we are a separate people that have to protect themselves. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. I, Father, if you have been following me, you would have seen that nobody has spoken about insecurity more than me. And this is even one of the, the reasons why I said I'm always bringing out bad news, which you know I'm not bringing out bad news. The bad news is there. I didn't create them. Mine is to bring it to government in case if they have not seen it. Forward as I've spoken, I've said the first job of government is to secure its people. And it's critical and it's fundamental. And Nigeria can do that because it's a country. You can't have a country taken over by non-state actors and you're looking. That means the state have collapsed. If the state is functional, you provide security. And to do so, all that you require is to start, like I said, raise the manpower. We can have a 200 million people. And our police is about 300 and something thousand, out of which you know that 20, 30% of that and different bits. You can't have the level of number of military we have. You need to raise it. Egypt, 100 million people have 
over a million. So we should raise it, train them properly, pay them properly. We also have a lot of money we are spending on security. We should spend it wisely by making sure we have the manpower, equip them properly, take issue of security as priority number one. Because you can't be going about talking about attracting foreign investor where it's not secured. You need to put your farmers to go back to produce this food I'm talking. They can go in an insecurity situation. At the same time, you need to create environment for people to have means of livelihood. Because the more unemployed people are, the more poor people are, the more you have insecurity, the more you pull people out of poverty, the more you reduce criminality. It's happened in South America, it's happened in Asian countries. This is I'm talking have happened everywhere. This security you're seeing in Nigeria today is also occasioned by the general level of poverty that has excavated it. So these are things you need to fight in very aggressive manner at multi levels and different fronts. So I believe you, we all need to deal with insecurity. Otherwise, we're wasting our time. All right, thank uh, you. Dr. Dami, the second question. No, no. Thank you for further. Uh, I'll about your next. Yeah, um, greetings, uh, Your Excellency, Mr. Peter Obi. Thank you. Um, I'll go straight to my question. Um, all political parties in Nigeria and most politicians, 99%, have no clear philosophical political ideology. Neither are they principled. Nigeria needs a revolutionary change, revolution of the mind first. In light of this, what are you? Are you a revolutionary, a reactionary, a progressive, or whatever other vocabulary you might have? The recalcitrant nature of the Nigerian people requires that, apart from you, you said preaching to them, requires that, uh, what tools do you have in your arsenal, apart from the Labour Party, that you can add to what you're currently doing to empower the people? Uh, building boroughs is good, but building media radio station, TV station, to start a massive movement, particularly abroad, supported by those at home, to effectively, effectively have the right numbers that we need to effectively make a change in this very deep and sad situation that we are in. So that's my question. What other arsenal is in your tool? Because working with the Labour Party, I personally believe you should do more. You should be a movement. Because there's a lot of people who share your philosophy or ideology, which you're going to tell us what it is now. I want to join up with you. We're not harnessing those numbers. What else can you do to do that? Alaba, I have just actually answered the question which you asked, but I agree with you. There's need to do it. That what you said I should do is what Rudolph is doing already, and I'm participating in it. We need more. No, no, we need. We yes, I agree. We need more. Being in opposition, my brother, is very difficult in Nigeria. Extremely difficult. You can do what you're doing because you're not there. You're harassed. Your business is harassed. Your family is harassed. Everything around you is harassed. If I tell people what I'm going through or members of my family is going through, the only thing you can say is, it has stopped this. Because that's what it is. Because it's a state capture. The winner takes everything and make sure that you don't move. I have friends today who will not take my call, who don't want to come to their house, who will be doing location and call you and say, Peter, I'm doing this, but I don't want you to come. You know why? And I can tell you, it's so painful. It happens every, virtually every day. People say to you, I'm doing this. Today is my birthday. My wife is inviting people privately, but I don't want you to come. Are people whom I send just 
birthday greeting. They won't reply me. They will somebody on that phone and call me and say, we saw your this but we can't reply because if we reply you, these people will know because they're taping everything about you. That's not a normal life. And these are people who are supposed to stay and say no. I've been at the airport, at the garden, I want to greet somebody, will not greet me. These are people I used to be in my private life as a businessman or bank. We all used to meet together as directors and say, they won't greet you. They're using somebody's cell phone to call you or they'll tell you, say, let's meet somewhere overseas. That's not the normal life. So to go through this, is painful enough. This interview I'm doing, like every other interview, your call, your question, that you're there talking. Didn't you see now? Rudolph said by saying, I bring only bad news. Tell me which news that I brought that is not there before. No, 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 it's not, not, Governor, it's not, it's not Rudolph that said it, it's your critics. That's what they're he saying. <laughs> Today, I advocated for one thing when I was speaking to students in Harvard. I said, we need to dismantle, change the presidential system we're operating. And because it's not appropriate for us, we need a mix of presidential and parliamentary democracy. So we can have the president, the governor, an elected person who will be answerable to the people. So when we have the presidential questions time, like we have prime minister presidential questions time, then in France or in UK, the president or the governor is the one answering. Today, if you let me president, I will recruit 1,000 special assistants if Rudolph says anything, or you Alaba said anything, I will unleash them. They will be calling you all of names, calling your wife, calling your children. People who did not elect, who had nothing to do with it, have turned themselves into lunatics, asking everybody. But if we had a presidential question time, and also to enable us to pass vote of no confidence or confidence, when the person is doing well or not doing well, we can't just elect somebody and say he has to wait till after four or five years to go. No. These are things the system can solve. So I'm an advocate. You said, which philosophy do I believe in? Or which is this? I stand for good governance. Does that make you revolutionary? A reactionary or a progressive? I'm not a reactionary. You can have a means of progressive and a bit of revolutionary. Not revolutionary where we start damaging things and causing problems. We can do it by building a change of mind. We want to change the people's perception and conception of life in Nigeria. Thought we cannot live in a society where we celebrate criminality because that's what we're doing today. Whether it's in politics, out of politics. Because not only in politics that we have problem in Nigeria. We have problem even in private world where people think today I'm not doing anything, but there's a possibility that something can happen and money will come from nowhere. It doesn't happen anywhere in the world. All right. Thank you, uh, Alaba. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you, Your Excellency. I appreciate you answering my question. Thank you. All right. Before we continue, let me take one from the comment section. Uh, someone wanted to know uh, whether you still believe in the in the judiciary in Nigeria, based on what happened during the last election. Well, it is an ongoing process. You can't say you don't believe in them, because at the end of the day, they are there. You can say. Yes, I believe in them. After all, I'm one of the greatest beneficiaries of the judiciary. It worked in the past, and it can be made to work again. What we have today is state capture, 
where people who captured it across the line are doing whatever they want. They have hijacked the institutions, but it can be strengthened. All right, and we see. Thank you, Rudolph. Welcome, Your Excellency. We are happy to have you. Thank you. Sir, my question borders on the extreme bitterness and hatred in our country. We saw it play out in the elections. Do you think that Nigerians need to come together and sit down and decide on how we want to live as one country, make new rules, or better still, change the rules so that there will be equity and justice for every part of Nigeria and remove this issue of minority majority and, and that we have to secure the country. Do you, what, do you think it is time for us to start discussing and we need to do this before going to further elections? That's my question. Thank you, sir. Well, quite, for, quite frankly, um, what you have seen, I said it before, religion and ethnicity or tribalism are all elite conspiracy for state capture. Majority of Nigerians, majority of Nigerians wants to live together. But we have a state capture. And when people are incompetent, they bring in things that they shouldn't bring in. Today, it's not put I buy bread cheaper. I've been in the north, they're hungry. I've been in the southwest, they're hungry. I've been in south, south, they're hungry. However, the elites who have captured the system uses these things to keep us divided. If we have good governance today, we have people's talent and hard work who we'll match up the opportunity, these things will go. And we'll start loving each other. But unfortunately, where we found ourselves, this thing has to be there for a while. All right, NWC, thank you so much. KJ. Uh, thank you, uh, Governor, Your Excellency. We appreciate what you are doing and what you stand for. Um, I just want to ask you a question. You know, with all that you've said, I'm a bit concerned that uh, your lawyers, they went to the tribunal and they didn't have any evidence. Even with all the, the effort of the, of the media to help them with evidence, the judges said they didn't see any evidence. So sir, can you confirm why or tell us why your lawyers went there without having evidence? Well, if you have been in this very as I told you, I don't want to discuss yesterday. Yesterday is gone. Those who talk about yesterday will miss tomorrow. I'm preoccupied by tomorrow. That exercise has come to an end. It's for you to judge whether they have evidence or not. Even the evidence were physical in the court. The world can see it. But anybody can choose anything he wants. And I didn't, we have the best of lawyers, the best of legal minds in that country. So, it's All yes. Right. All right. Thank you, KJ. Uh, Edie, Ed, go ahead. Uh, all right. Thank you, um, Rudolph. And thank you, um, Governor Peter OP. Um, so, my question is this. Um, so, I, I actually wrote it down. Is, is there any chance that you, you might you know, leave the Labour Party if things remain the way they are now? And also just from a political point of view, are there lessons you've learned from the last election that you look to probably um, put to practice as you go into 2027? Because we we believe that you're likely going to run again, because now you're going to be up against people who are not the incumbents when you first ran, which is 2023. So are there new things that you've put in place? Well, well, every day is a lesson. Every day you learn. And if you learn, you use them very carefully. There might not be things I, I can tell you here now, but I've learned a lot and I'm going to put them in place. I can tell you that. And the issue of leaving Labour Party or not leaving Labour Party, 
like I said, they, we don't know the dynamics on which the elections are going to be conducted going forward. No dynamics will determine. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Uh, let's go to Osita Dema, uh, Yones. Good evening, your Excellency, Mr. Peter Obi, and it's really a pleasure to finally you know, speak with you one on one. Um, I want to uh, take you back a bit to when you were a governor, and I know this question has been asked to you, uh, and that is uh, concerning local government um, autonomy. I'm of the view that while you've been a great governor, and almost everyone can you know say about the you know marvelous things you did in Anambra, but not most of us are not able to identify who you, the local government chairman were or the caretaker chairman. And the reason I, I bring this forward is because I've been living in the UK for a long time now. And you can see how the local government work. Development is local. Employment is local. Even the insecurity we're talking about is local. Education is local. So is it not to an extent an, an aberration that the people find a governor to be more imperative than a local government chairman. And also the thing about the, how the finances move from the governor, this whole single treasury account, where the state is in control of the money which is meant to be for the local government chairman, and at the end, rendering the local government chairman useless. So your, your excellency, with your experience, what exactly is the problem? Why is it that you, the governors, do not allow local government chairmen to function? Osterdema, you, quite frankly, thank you, but if you were actually a follower when I was governor, you wouldn't have said the local government chairmen were not known. The local government chairmen, our issues were for court case of people thinking Governors manipulate local government election. I told you I governed with 30 members, not from my party. They wouldn't allow me to do local government election. But we appointed local government chairman that everybody knew who they were. See, today, if you ask people who was chairman of local government, this local government, where Peter was, they will call their name. And we made sure that the resources of each local government were used for our local government. Let me use all, let me give you a few examples. If you go to Newe local government, it is through my tunnel that they built the new headquarters they are using now, and it was done by Newe local government. If you go to a channel local government, it is in my turn they built the new headquarters they were using now. It was built by, by that local government money. If you go to Anisha South, it is during my tenure, they build the headquarters they're using now, it's built by local government. If you go to Dunukofia, I can go on Dunukofia, they never had a headquarter. It's during my tenure that it was built and it's there. If you go to Oka, I can go on and on. What we did was to ensure that the local government money was used to pay salary, to pay primary school teacher, with the one we brought in, the balance was used to work in that local government. In fact, it was a pride that is not being used. That when I was there, local government chairman, one day, my speaker, who served under me, the PDP, we lost him and he, when he was being buried. Everybody in the parliament said, it was during my tenure that they started doing projects based on local government and constituencies because I usually would tell to them, I don't have money to give you, but we can do something in your constituency. So you can tell your people you attracted this. But I believe what you're saying, development is local. And we must make the local level work. It is necessary. It is important. So are you, are you saying that you support yeah. the local government getting their money directly without having to go through the governor? This is where, like, the, the point where I want to the, the understand. Money, 
They've always gotten their mind direct. Let nobody tell you it goes through the governor. No, 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 no. It doesn't. It goes, it goes direct to them. If I let me even tell you, the law says that 10% of all local local uh, income revenue, the state revenue, should be given to local government in addition to the one they got from Abuja to be used for the development of that local government. All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, We are uh, rounding up. Uh, he has to leave. Um, yes. uh, more than 30 minutes uh, <laughs> over time. Uh, so, Ray, you're next. Yes, thank you very much. Dr. Rudok, Rudolph, yeah. um, Your Excellency, Mr. Peter B. It's a pleasure to meet you and um, be on this platform with you. I must say you are one of the most approachable politicians of our time that we have known in a very long time. And this is one of the major reasons why you see a lot of us actually following and supporting you, because you, your ways are pretty clear for us to see. My question tonight, Mr. Peter B, is um, we've been following you and we've been seeing the fantastic job you've been doing with the Boho, uh, providing water for people, especially within in the northern area of Nigeria. Now, obviously, just because um, this is beginning to spark up some other uh, uh, regions saying, is this also going to reach them? So we want to assume that definitely you are moving from top, from the top of the country towards the south. But just want to know if this is also something you plan to do, maybe within the, within the coming times. And then and if this is obviously should be one of your plans, then the next thing I want to also ask is how do we get to support you now in this project you're doing? Because you're doing great. You're doing something we, you. some of us thank would you, love Ray. to do. Thank you, you, Ray. Um, um, thank you very much for, for your comments and for your support. Let me be honest welcome, with you. Sir. I was doing this because of the Ramadan fast. Okay. It was in my going to visit people and support them with food and everything. And they requested this. But let me assure you, within the next two weeks, uh, today is the 13th, before the end of this month, we are going to come up with what we call challenge because he has not shown us that there's so many things people can do to actually solve a lot of problems. Because in doing this, we have learned our lessons. And when we do it, I remember, Rudolph, I'm going to hold you responsible to Introduce me to Mr. Ray. Absolutely. So I will Absolutely. Tell you where I want us to do. Somebody asked yes, me sure. today about it, just the same thing. Somebody asked me today, how do I donate money for this? I said, no, don't donate. I will tell you the price and where you're going to put it. Okay. You know, in Nigeria, it's difficult to give people money because what they do with it, you can imagine. You know, they do the least they expected. So I always say to people, I'm going to introduce you to do this direct. Even those ones that did, some they say it's not working. I'm going to go back and fix it. But we are going to come up with a perfect challenge. All right. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mr. The final Peter. question we have is victory. Victory. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, good evening, Dr. Rudolph. Can you hear me? Yes. And uh, good evening, uh, Peter Obey. Um, it's nice having you on our show. Thank um, you. So my question is, um, you've been in the corridors of power. Um, some people consider you to be a part of the elite. So my question is that what, when, you speak, when, you, when you speak to your fellow politician, uh, your fellow governors and within the political circle, what do you guys actually discuss? Because I, I, I don't understand. Like there are other other in the, like in the developed world, they put their people first. They are bringing out policy that benefit the people in their country. All I see our political elite, what they are doing, they are stealing money, um, marrying many many wives, dancing around, wearing agbada, swinging agbada left to right to center, without putting their people first. Do you think there's a disconnect between the political class and the people? And why do you think they are behaving that way? Because I, 
I simply don't understand why a group of people cannot put their people first. Instead, they are they are take their they prioritize themselves first before the people. Because you've been a governor before. Do you think that when they get into that office, some kind of something possesses them and they go crazy and they simply don't care? What, what do you think is the answer? Because I don't understand Richard, it. Richard, there's nothing that possesses them. Nothing. Let nobody get tell you that anything possesses them. What possesses them is greed. You know, and greed is the part of the sickness. People get sick when they get to power. Because greed must have limits or you're sick. Most of us are sick. And let me tell you, I'm part of this elite. We don't discuss the people. So don't, you said they disconnect, total disconnect between us and the people. We don't discuss the people. Otherwise, tell me why we should see all this suffering and still allow it to thrive. There's a total disconnect. You are very right. That's what we need to do. But the people are also part of the problem. They are insanely complacent. They should also be able to say no. Victory is the only Nigeria that people celebrate criminality. If you vote Peter in, everybody knows that when Peter was contesting the election, he doesn't have a house in his village. Then when you vote him, he goes to his village, builds a mansion that he will never, never could afford ordinarily before he became governor. He will bring all the priests and everything to come and bless it. They will all be there, blessing it and asking God to give him more from wherever he got the money. The people will be there celebrating and praying for him. So rather than call police, because they know the, where the money is coming from, they know it's stolen their money. They are part of the celebration. So the people are also insanely complacent. The religious are hailing him. Everybody is celebrating. So it's a criminalized society, and everybody is part of it now. And that is what we are trying to preach, to change it. It's not going to be easy. Because why do I generalize and include myself? I read philosophy. Go and read logic. In logic, or a portion of logic they call slogism, when something is over 75%, you can generalize without committing fallacy of generalization. In Nigeria, it's about 90%, if not more. So I show you, it is, that is the work we're doing which we are urging you to join us. The people are disconnected. The, the leaders are disconnected with the people. We yeah. are not fair. Okay. All right. Uh, Victor, sorry, we, we have to go. He has no time left. Uh, Governor, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, before you leave, I, I want to say this. You always said, uh, when you were governor, you always said that... Um, that the society we abuse today, we take its revenge on our children. Don't you think that you miscalculated? Because it appears as if the revenge is happening while we are still here. Uh, no, you haven't. But I remember that when I said he's taking revenge on his children, he's taking, it will be worse. Because all this money we are borrowing now, if you go and read it, most of the bonds we are issued now are payable 1940, 1950, 1960, 2040, 2060. So we won't be there, uh, my brother. There's no way I will, I will want to be here by 1960, because I'll be over 100, 100 years. So you could see why I'm saying it. Apostle Angel left us with less than 10 trillion debts. We're over 100 today. And that's what I'm telling victory. The people need to question what is happening. So the abuse is coming on, but it will be worse. Now he said, for your time. Yeah. Thank you, 
Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Remember that this is not what we planned. We wanted three hours, but we respect your time. So I hope you'll come back. It's work in progress. Yeah. You know, they say that you come and set up the TV and everything. Please, you have set it up. We have it already. I'll sure that uh, I'll be part of it so that we can continue. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. I appreciate God bless it. all of you. Thank but you. know that we have no other country except this one. And all of us must come collectively and build it for our children. All right. God bless you all. Thank, thank you so much. We appreciate you. And uh, see you. you next time. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we'll be right back and um, and do a of uh, what happened. So let's um, take a little break. All right, um, let's bring in everybody in. We don't have much time to waste. Uh, thank you guys, everybody that joined us. We appreciate those on the comment section. Uh, they stayed more than 30 minutes over. I was in touch with uh, the team and uh, they were telling me to round up. That's why we had to. Um, I know some people wanted to be able to ask questions and they couldn't. I'm sorry about that. But um, let's see. Uh, for fathers. Yeah, um, I really appreciate his time here. I thank him for coming over. He did try to answer the questions as straightforward. Um, you know, all those people that argue with me about security, you go and argue with Peter, uh, uh, this thing, Peter B2. And um, the second question was more uh, searching, but uh, obviously, maybe you are not allowing second questions. Uh, even if uh, uh, Jagun got his second question into into it, uh, you didn't let me get that second question. Because that second question was more troublesome. Uh, but I do appreciate the fact that he did take on the questions. And this is one of the things I like about him. He doesn't like try to run away from the question. He tried to answer the question the best he can. And um, I think he's a is, is actually one of those Nigerians you will say that he's a blessing other than um, a takeaway. And all many of our leaders have been very, very devastating to our people. His conduct in the last year has been, yeah, some people say he's soft on so many things. And the, the way he answered the party politics aspect, I think it's a little bit letting things go too much. You can't say you, ha you have five million to six million votes when labor just had 5,000 in 2019, you are the one in charge. So that one, I'm not, I'm not very, you know, fond of that answer, but by and large, he's a credit. And I think it's, it may be just his personality. We, you can't change somebody. It's just his personality. He doesn't like conflict. No matter how much you try to drag him into conflict, he doesn't like it. So on that one, I give him, he's consistent on, in that nature, but he could do better personally. I think he, he, I don't know whether he can physically do it himself or people around him should take over that party. How can you have over 5 million supporters and you can't take over a small party like Labour that was just nobody how many uh, years ago? So that's the way I look at it. But in terms of the way he answered my question, he reiterated it that he agreed with the point I was making that we need to take care of our security. But the question I, I asked him was about why was he silent? He was a bit, whenever he talked about insecurity, he talked about uh, from the point of view of education from the point of view of um, um, uh, poverty and stuff like that when in reality his policy was a more robust security posture of looking to recruit two million people two million into the security for that would have changed things nigeria is losing almost 50 billion dollars in gdp um, uh, activity every year because of insecurity what is more valuable than that in terms of uh, economic investment so but i'll leave it at that thank you all right thank you uh for fathers uh sure Yes, um, thank you, uh, Rudolf, and um, well done for bringing Peter B. I, I, I was happy with the question I asked. It was quite straightforward. Um, and I have, I have my reasons for asking that question because, you know, there are rumors, there are, you know, chats about him and El Rufai running together in 2027, El Rufai being his vice president, you know, candidate um, running under SDP. That happened about a week or two weeks ago. So that happened. And that just made me think, you know, what length would Peter P go to, even if it takes him to Arsenal Rock? And that's why I wanted him without mention. I didn't ask him for names. And he also said he wouldn't mention names. But without mentioning names, so let's say 2027 comes and he picks, let's say he goes with Ganduje. The worst happens, right? So it would, 
allow people to say, okay, you were on a particular show, someone did ask you a question, are there characters you can work with? So at the point of answering that question, are you saying Ganuji was never one of those? So that's why I asked that question. It might not have meant much to some people, but the way I see it in my head, I felt like it was something that was important to me. You know, so I was quite happy with that. Um, as soon as I asked my question, I just had to go and eat because I'm not eating. So I was listening um, with my headphones. So I've, I've been listening. And um, I think he answered most of the questions um, really well. But when I looked into the chat's comment briefly while I was eating, um, I checked the chat, and I realized that a lot of people are hell-bent on holding a private citizen more accountable than their daddy. You want to hold a private citizen who dared to contest for presidency. You are when you see Peter Obi, your Viagra kicks into action. You are strong. Your president wouldn't even talk to you. He wouldn't even answer questions before election, after elections. They will tell us he's busy governing. Go and ask him. Peter Obi is not responsible for any of the things going on in Nigeria today. Today. So the why people have more energy when it comes to people. Where is Atiku? Please. I'm sure there are PDP supporters somewhere. They exist. It's almost like we, you know, we don't talk about them. Let's have Atiku. Let's let, let, let Atiku speak to us. And maybe we'll answer the questions in a better way. Maybe he's a smarter man. Let him who come and tell us the new version of the Bala Blue, whatever he has going on right now. Let him come and tell us. All right, thank you, thank you. We are we are looking for Tiku. We actually have. Uh, we'll be God talking. help you find him. <laughs> we'll, we'll find him. Anytime we find him, uh, Pastor, you understand? Yeah, you're wasting your time. You will never get Tiku. So don't just just. That's a wishful thinking. Uh, uh, yeah, you see, my, I focus on my question. He said he didn't. Uh, he didn't hear about the ten thousand, thirty thousand dollars given to to senators, uh, which I find very shocking, whether I should believe it or not. I don't know because it was uh, a news that went around. However, for further, the fact that uh, Peter B agree with you doesn't validate that your your distance is uh, accurate or, <laughs> or <laughs> doesn't mean that people cannot disagree with your opinion or your comment on security. Now, people will disagree even if the matter is a fact. It's a, it's a, it's a great thing he, give, he gives himself to the people to answer questions. Like I said, like some of you have said, we wish that uh, leaders, others, we also, even though if they don't come to this uh, platform, but they will come out and address and ask, allow people to ask them questions. But you see, they will not because uh, uh, they know what they have in the cupboard. They know the skeleton. Uh, 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 he has in the cupboard. As far as I'm concerned, my take is he has to leave the party. He cannot, he, he, he can't make any difference in that party. He has to leave it. That is just my stand on it. He can preach from now to tomorrow that it's gonna, it ain't going to work. That's just the truth. Until he leaves that party, as far as I'm concerned, it's just, uh, it's just beating around the bush. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Tone. Right. Um, Dr. Damages, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity again tonight. I, will, I had a date tonight. I had to cancel it last minute. The person wasn't very happy because I wanted to speak to um, His Excellency. Um, Dr. Damages, I'm not happy with you. With, with all due respect, I think you're too soft and people, people are starting to walk over you. You said it very clearly. I was to, I was to go for show, but show had uh, uh, has given his excuse that he, he no 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 don't worry my don't worry my brother you're fine you're cool that you had to go and eat for fathers who was there was seeing people like Sam or oh, insulting I, I don't think it's something nice that you have you have an important guest like Peter will be they will be insulting personal insult at him and for fathers is telling where me about he, his name is Sam O and, and for fathers is telling me insult yeah it's their personal insult to him, and and forefather is telling me that he's looking at Israel and oh. um, and 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 whatever and all that. I'm what is your problem now? Excuse me, can, can you listen to me, forefathers? Because you're just pissing me off this night. What you are <laughs> happy from from one hour ago to talk about Bobrisky? And you shut people down here. You put people at the backstage, and you see people insulting Peter Obi, and you and you and, and who is insulting? Who is insulting Peter Obi? 
Some some oh, it, is it the same song by John Zos? Well, that guy is crazy now. Is it the same song by John Zos? No, no. All you, no, all no. you people are in the electricity. I don't know whether you are available, whether you saw it, because I know if you saw it, you will have taken some action. A war is so going nice. on. You're worrying about insults. Uh, uh no, your father, no, you no, didn't no, do no, your no, job. No, You're no, supposed no, to get those kind of people out. I don't ban people anymore. For something much less than that. Let me. I, I was actually sorry, Doctor Rudolph. I was watching the comment section. Mm -hmm. I, I I was reading every comment, and there's only one person I put on timeout. If I have a reason to, I don't see any other comments. I put a and comment there. On, I put a comment. Come, hold on, hold on, hold on one second. Put, hold on, hold on one second. I will make that judgment call. You may not be happy with comments some people make. I'm not but stupid. Make... You're telling me I'm stupid. You know, you're telling me that what I saw is different from what you saw. So if you do not see what Don. that, that chap was writing Don. as an insult, Don. Don. bros, Don. look with talks through. Don. Don. Uh... All right. Um, okay. So okay. I, I, I had no idea. Uh, but I, I, I didn't know too. I didn't see any insults. Comment. I got a message from one of that. I saw the insults. Well, I got a message from one of the moderator who said that uh, she puts the guy on timeout and removed the comment. So so I I didn't I, I wasn't reading everything. I was trying to concentrate on what we're doing. I know you can't know. do everything, doctor. Yeah. I'm not blaming you. You're not. Your it's not your fault because you can't do e everything at the same time. But at least your moderators should be able to to help you out. It's not nice. That's what I'm just trying to say. People are having as uh, uh, normal see, session. See, so I was busy posting. I've learned um, how like, to like like the video. Them. Subscribe to um, um, uh, Iroko Post TV. I was doing no, it's not like I wasn't doing anything. I was posting um, so that people, there's a lot of people watching right now. Stop with your excuse, you know why I'm coming at you? Because <laughs> people do less and you put them in the background. You want them, you put them, no, no, you put them that, in the that, background. That, that, so that's, I didn't see the insult. If I had seen the insult, no, no, no. so, so I, 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 sorry, I've scrolled up now because I'm going through the comments and I, I no, I think there's who some O. Oh, I want to Sam believe it's not the same Sam that joins us. There's a Sam that, you, that joins us from the UK. I, I'm I beginning to see some of the comments, and they, and the they are, seen, they are, they are not name. nice at all. I mean, well, what's this? No, no right. I can't even all highlight right. them. They're, they're right. really bad. So, so what you do is this. Uh, next, next, time, next time something like this is happening, reach out. You have my number. Reach out to oh. people, uh, even if we are on live. Um, you know you know how to reach me. And I didn't want to distract you, Rudolph. Yeah. I have your personal number. I know, but I don't I don't want to distract but why, you. Why, why, why are you coming after me? Show is also a moderator. Sorry, because Rudolph. Because you failed Rudolph. at your Rudolph. job. Rudolph. <laughs> why are you coming Rudolph. after Rudolph. me? Yeah. I'm not the only moderator. Yeah. Because you guys a moderator do, too. Rudolph, we do respect. We do respect. Stone, with due respect, I manage, I do comment section only. I can't just remove people. It's called freedom of speech. They are not insulting. I was Ele listening to me. Electricity, no, hold I'm on. sure hold, if, you saw, you if you saw those Can comments, I'm speak? sure you'll have removed them. Can you please Maybe without allow me to speak? You. Can you allow me to speak? I put uh, my Sam O on time out because a lot of people started complaining about Sampo. Even people complain about Kulata. I didn't put him out on Kulata because he has not said anything that will make me to put him out of Kulata. You may not like what people say. I can understand. But please, they have to speak. Kulata. I'm talking about Sam O. Kulata, I didn't, Kulata didn't do anything wrong. Kulata made his opinion and they were decent. I'm, I'm not talking about Kulata at all. I'm talking specifically about Sam O. That's the person I'm talking about. All right. Thank you, Ton. Uh, and Gozika. Mm -hmm. Good evening, gentlemen. Have a good morning. <laughs> I couldn't. Um, I knew people had more pressing, life-changing questions, so I didn't bother. I trust the. Com I trust you, gentlemen, to represent our community very well. That's why I didn't bother. I was, I was listening from the background. I did see the comments Tone was talking about. What did you do about it? It was nice. What did you do about it? Were you too scared? Were you if too you're scared going to, to warn be this, him? At least warn him. I if, said this is if, unacceptable. If, I was if warning you're him. going to be this. I'm not a moderator. What you do? You know, you, you know, know, let me just yeah. shut up. After yeah. I did what I did, have you seen his comment again? So let's leave it at that. All right. Okay, uh, thank so you. For those that may not know, Ngozika is also a moderator here, and Ngozika. Um, 
put uh, was the person that put um, the Sam O uh, on timeout and remove the comments. So, um, but he thank insulted you. me too, uh, Tone. I just saw he insulted me and my my female parts and all the rest. So uh, it's not only your father. Uh, he insulted your dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't see. I didn't see. All right, all right. Let's not give it too much attention. But next time, once you see that, reach any of the moderators, even if uh, not me, and then we will take care of that. Um, let's not that, that not be the thing that we'll remember for this uh, this uh, conversation we had today. Uh, Ngozika, who is next? Uh, where did I stop? I think Ngozika, go ahead. Oh, it's Chim. I listened to, I, I didn't follow the whole conversation because my internet was missing up, but the place I got um, in from was where Mr. Reyes was asking him questions. I was on a long call. And see, say all you want to say about P2B, but one thing is clear, he will try. And from where I stand, that is all that matters. He will try to answer your questions as honestly as he can. He will try to listen to your questions. You know, sometimes they come here, so they don't even let you get out the questions. He will listen to it, even with the preface and all. He will listen. He will try. And seeing a Nigerian politician that tries, I know that is bare minimum. Yes. We are at that stage where bare minimum is what all we can get, and we are comfortable with it. I am comfortable with bare minimum because, heck, none of them is even doing anything, let alone bare minimum. So for me to see a politician that wants to try, that is trying to engage, to answer the difficult questions, to not run away from it, to not deflect, I am satisfied. That's all I have to say. All right. Thank you. Uh, and your next. All right. Well, thank you, Rudolph. Um, let me start with uh, this uh, quote. No matter how slippery your child's bottom is, leave the beads there. I'm not sure if any of you knows who said it. Uh -huh. But the person who said it is, is the thing that makes me repeat it. Is the person is the person who said it. That's that's my cocoa. Okay. But anyway, I think it was a beautiful outing. Um, I mean, anybody who is um, honest knows that uh, Peter B means well. But that being said, for some of us, especially someone like me, I want to hold him a bit more accountable. I don't want to be doing all this. Your Excellence is fantastic meeting you. It's not going to help him. I don't think it's going to help him, nor will it help the cause of our nation. So the only sore point continues to remain a sore point to me and I'm not asking him to change his personality so it's who he is, is that he needs to realize that when it comes to politics, I mean, for instance, if I had more chances to speak, I would have referred him to what happened in Senegal. You could see what, how the strategy the Senegalese guys adopted. Sanko, who is the prime minister today, was supposed to be the one running on that ticket. But they became smart to realize that, okay, they were dealing with a cabal, a Senegalese cabal too. And when the guy was not allowed to run, he quickly made way for the guy who won. And the guy who has gotten in there, they share similar opinion. And I, hopefully my prayer for them, I'm not a Senegalese, is that they will not fight and they will continue that synergy. The guy knows that the person who's supposed to have been president is Sonko. He got there, he made Sonko the prime minister. Literally, what he has handed up to Sonko is, Sonko is going to run the economy. You know, he, why he's going to be the political head. And my suspicion is that by the, if the guy wins a re-election, then after he has done eight years or whatever their own system is, Sanko is going to be the next president. So how does that relate to Peter Obi? I think the point he's missing is the fact that his influence is... <laughs> like uh, Forefather said, or who was it who talked about the six million votes? How can you have six million votes? And, you are allowing, and you're just you know, with the less affairs saying, I don't run the party. I still disagree with him. We're not asking him to hijack the party. Nobody is asking him to become a, a uh, godfather. No. We're saying to him, use that influence to pull the party in the right direction. And he's missing it. It will haunt him by 2027. Go and write it down. The only other thing he can do, and I think, was this show or was that um, Andrew who said it, is that he will have to leave that party so that he's... Six million votes, he can use it to go out and create another party where he will have influence and have his people that share similar view. But if this Labour Party that has 
different layers, has the NLC, has the TUC, has a bure, people who can easily, you know, sell out in any way. Sorry, I don't think his good night, good behavior or his niceness. I keep repeating it. He will be a nice man. We will remember him for being a nice man. But I don't want to remember him as the president we never had. If he has something to contribute to Nigeria, then we would like him to at some point occupy that position and be able to contribute it. Like John Abba asked him, does he want to be the driver or he wants to be the mechanic? Beautiful answer. The mechanic doubles as a good driver also. But all and all, I know he has this type of personality. The only support, like I rightly said, is that issue of not wanting to uh, dismantle or how how do you guys put it? The apple cart does not want him to shake the apple cart or something like that. I don't know how ruffle to... feathers. He doesn't want to ruffle feathers. Exactly. He needs to ruffle feathers. This is politics. He needs to ruffle it in a good way. And I, or the, or, listen, I, I always quote uh, uh, Li Kuan here. Li Kuan ruffled feathers, but he was honest. He ruffled the feathers, fixed the thing. And because he was a good man, his intentions were good. When it was time for him to leave the scene, he left the scene. He left the scene. He didn't come there and become a godfather that is running Lagos State for 50 something years or whatever. I just made those numbers up. Don't mind me. I know what I'm saying. So the point I'm simply making is there are certain stages in political life where he needs to put his foot down, especially the people he has a control over. The odds one is saying it. I don't agree. Members of his national assembly, he needs to threaten them. Tell them, you guys, you know what? I will campaign against you next election. And people will sit up and start doing the right things. He, 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 there are opportunities that he's losing. I'm serious. There are opportunities. I will love him. Oh, yes. But I don't want to be that kind of supporter that does not critique you with a good intent. There are opportunities P2B is losing. And my fear is that come 2027, Abracadabra will happen again. His six million may happen, but it will not count because from within his system, there are saboteurs. So that's the only sore point I have with him. He didn't give me a good answer. But I understand his answer is based off his personality, so I respect that also. All right. Thank you, Tim. Before we continue, let me just uh, inform you guys that on the 21st, that's uh, two Sundays from tomorrow, Aisha Yusuf will be here. So um, to be an important uh, continuation of this conversation with somebody else within the party who uh, might be able to say certain things that maybe the uh, P2B will not be able to say. All right, the flagship. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, it, it was a great, re really great conversation, uh, candidly, I would say. Uh, I'm a good listener. I really love to listen. And in my listening, I, I could tell and read in between the lines when someone is speaking and to a great extent tell the direction to which they are torn. Uh, the, the reason I asked the question about Okwama is uh, the people seem to have been forgotten about. You know, nobody's saying anything about them. I saw those pictures from the Vanguard newspaper, and uh, they are quite sorry to say. Uh, it's unfortunate that what happened happened. The, the brave men of the armed forces who responded to the call to go to that village uh, and met the untimely death uh, are, great, are great assets to the nation. They have been given their due honors and their family members also uh, promised a whole a lot of uh, good packages, including uh, the kids that are in the womb, yet unborn. But the one thing that, that we seem or the nation seem to have forgotten about are the innocent victims in that little village, uh, the old women, uh, the younger women and the kids who are there, most of the men have fled for their lives, whether they are the guilty ones or not. We all know that the perpetrators of that crime, that they are no longer in Okwama village, neither are they in Bayasa state or Delta state. They must have ran very far. That's if they've not been killed. But my, my thought was to see where he stands on the suffering people that are in the forest, living where they, they, they are not used to. Uh, living in an ID camp, IDP camp is way better than the conditions that the Vanguard reported uh, that these people are found in. So I wanted to know where he stood, what he would do if he was uh, the commander in chief. I wasn't expecting him to give direct answers and uh, 
critique the present government, but he did answer my question very well. And I saw the, the direction uh, and the side to which he would stand and what he would do if he was the commander in chief. So I was quite impressed. I took it, um, satisfied with it. I think a lot of work needs to be done. And all of that lies in the hands of the Delta state government to uh, conduct their, their internal investigation and figure a way out for those old women and men, uh, children uh, to be taken care of. Either they pull them out of there or they, they resettle them back in their homes. Uh, having said that, Peter O'B is, uh, I'm trying to place him. Uh, I haven't listened to him multiple times. I follow him on social media. I've read a few leadership books, and there are three categories of leaders that, that I've come up with on my own, and these are my personal opinion. There are leaders who lead from the front, those who lead from within the middle, and those who lead from behind. And I think I'll put him in the middle. A leader who, who mingles with the people, understands the people, works with the people, try to see and feel what the people are feeling, uh, get to know how well to direct, navigate the course of the country uh, or the community, wherever it is that they find themselves as leaders. And I'm hoping that uh, he gets a good chance. I didn't expect him to let out all his game plans for 2027. And he did mention quite a few times that he's not gonna let out everything out here in public. So I'm expecting that there are some uh, little uh, secrets in there that they are working on in spite of the issues within the Labour Party and how they plan to, uh, to get past it and, and get to where they need to be. Uh, lastly, uh, while he was speaking and all the questions were being asked, I was wishing seriously that all the uh, assistants and all the folks that are working with the present day government who are here listening to the conversation, I hope they had their pens and notepads and jotting down points to take back to the government because he did dish out quite a whole lot of pointers that if this government really means well for the people of Nigeria and for Nigeria, they can take those and run with them and hopefully get the people to some uh, good place before they get out of office. So. In all, generally, I, I think he did very well. I'm, I'm quite impressed. And, and again, thank you for bringing him. Uh, we really appreciate what you do, Rudolph. It's it's quite quite a great effort, and and kudos to you. Thank you, thank you, flagship uh, Alaba. You're next. Yeah. Um, well, I think Obi did pretty well, and uh, most of you, the panelists, did ask some very good, pungent question, except for one person. Um, <laughs> always throwing jabs. Um, uh, oh, my question was to define who he is, apart from what he's been going around saying, in terms of political ideology and philosophy. And they actually, I almost interrupted him, but he, he remembers he answered the two parts of my question. I almost interrupted, thank God I did it, I would have been that rude or make up. <laughs> it, it did answer those questions, but um, one word I walk away with, Obi is telling me that is a revolu progressive, two words joined together, revolu aggressive, revolu aggressive, like the newly formed word, is partially a revolutionary, is partially a progressive, is not a reactionary, I'm glad he did pick that, because reactionary is are the ones that have destroyed Nigeria. However, I did, pay, I did take him to tax with my question because regarding this issue of uh, the Labour Party, I think a lot of people who are saying he's not taking full charge of the Labour Party because he has six million votes are a little bit uh, lacking, are taking away the reality of that six million votes. The six million votes is a vote of people who are inching for a change. And uh, the hypocrisy of their suggestion shows clearly. Is that me? Someone else is talking in the background. It's not coming from me. It's some noise. Yeah, yeah. I, I got it. Yeah, OK. The hypocrisy of that take over a party, how do you take over a party that lacks ideology, which is what my question was all about? 
a party doesn't have an ideology. So that means Obi's job first is to build ideology. And that's why I took him to tax on building boroughs is good, but we need you to build media houses. That's in, you know, we need you to build radio station because first, when we have these media houses, and then you need you to tap into the massive current of, of, of electrical charges that are people who think like him abroad, the dots are not connecting. He needs to tap, if he's hearing me now, into that abroadian base who wants a change for Nigeria. And also the Nigerian base, he has, we have not, he's not tapping fully. He doesn't know his influence, his massive influence. He's not using it to fertility. This is what I call the untapped channels, which was why I was trying to push him that your, your issues goes beyond the Labour Party. The Nigerian problem goes beyond party problem. It requires a massive movement because for you to have a revolution, you need a revolution of the mind. If the people are not hearing the message, there would not be a change of the, re of the mind. And if the mind persists the way it is now, we will continue to get this same result we've been getting since 1960. That some people tried to change in January 1966, but failed because they were also betrayed by the reactionaries among them. So to have that effective change, you need a precise, critical number of supporters, They're not just people who just follow for following sake, people who are ideologically sound, politically sound. You need your own disciples, not people who worship you, not people who worship you, just follow you, your excellency, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, no. Because uh, personality don't make leadership. It doesn't. It's a philosophical ideology that is embedded in there. And he has it. He has, he has something. He has character. He has something that most Nigerian politicians don't have. So he needs to stand himself apart from them and start his own movement, his own people. Now, if it entails leaving the Labour Party, leave the Labour Party, but you can still walk within the Labour Party, which he doesn't control. Get that straight. He doesn't. He, he just used them as a vessel. You understand? But at the same time, you need an outside movement, outside the move, Labour Party, that is galvanizing support and joining the links. So that's what my question was targeting, because that change, my people, is not going to come if we don't have the critical number. The bad guys have already recruited people yet unborn. So we got more work to do if we're going to stand behind someone to lead us to that promised land. We got more work to do than just what he is doing. And I'm a little bit disappointed a bit, just a bit, not too much, that he doesn't take the title of a revolutionary fully. He pushed on that progressive. We know what progressive could be a carbon copy word of, I'm here, I'm, no, I'm here, I'm not there. We know a lot of progressive. Those who built Lagos are how they destroyed Lagos. They're not progressive. And people who call themselves Aoi's, that, that's, the, that's the biggest joke of all. I once had a conversation with a friend, which we did at Luta together back there. He confidently, he's a strong Agadoist. He can come there, oh, I'm an Aoi's. I said, your political ideology is useless if it doesn't affect meaningful change on the people, on your people and the people around you. And he said, I'm going to get personal. I said, dear, yeah, politics is personal because it affects my life and the life of the future of my children. So anybody tells you politics is not personal, it's a complete fool. And they want to hide under the Aoist. I'm an Aoist. I follow Aoulowo. Garbage. If you follow Aoulowo, you will be screaming at the top of your voice that all these people ruling Nigeria should be in jail or should be shot at close range. All right. Thank you, Alaba. Uh, Mr. James. Yeah, uh, please, I'm sorry. There's a uh, location going on very close to me. I have no control over them. Can you uh, bear with me, please? Um, well, you're just like Peter Obi, you have no control over. <laughs> uh, actually, you know, I asked him only one question. Uh, unfortunately, he did not answer it to my satisfaction. That is, what took him to Chetan House? This is Nigeria internal problems. 
we are trying to solve. And you are going back to the colonialists who created the problems, who laid the foundation to find solution to the problem. If he did not discuss anything with them behind the scene, why was he there at all? There were about 10 or more presidential candidates that refused to go. Why is he among the only four that went to Chatham House to have discussions with the colonialists? I'm not too happy about that. Anyway, um, my worry is this. Should he, for example, drop dead today, may, may, may no evil befall him. Should they drop dead today, what becomes of the obedient, obedient movement? I, I don't know, because if you look at the history of Africa, we've had a lot of henchmen who plunged their countries into problems by being looked up to, by, I mean, they, they, they build no structure. And once they quit the scene, it's mayhem that, you know, engulfed the country. A good example is uh, Felix Ofe Bonnier of Ivory Coast. Um, even a world war in uh, what's called Western Nigeria, since that man quit the political scene, no other Yoruba man or any Nigerian who has been able to continue with that free education program because everything revolved around him. So should this man, for one reason or the other, quit the political scene, what happened to this movement? It's going to be in disarray from the way I'm seeing it because even the party is already gone. And another thing that is uh, of interest to me is that people are, of, I mean, since this last general election, people have been saying that it's in control of six million votes. I disagree radically because we are all saying categorically that Yakubu, whatever it's called, conducted uh, a selection, not election. They allocated no, I mean, votes to people. So if you ask me sincerely, what would have Peter be called if the election were free and fair? My honest answer is I do not know. What would have shown us called or Jagaban or any of them? My honest answer is I don't know. That was not an election. So we should stop saying that it's controlling six million votes. Probably it's controlling more than that. It might be controlled up to 20 million votes or even less than 6 million votes. So when we're analyzing these issues, we should base it on concrete empirical facts. So this is just uh, what I have to say. And uh, also, uh, he has spoken well, but I think there's an English saying that um, the sweetness of the pudding is in the eating. A lot of African leaders have come and gone. They've told us very sweet lies. And at the end of the day, they rub our faces with shit and they get away with it. I can cite examples all over Africa. Um, take Liberia, for example. In the year 19, uh, 1944, there was a man, W.V.S. Thorburn, who promised to reform the society because the society was decadent. He spoke a lot of grammar, and at the end of the day, he couldn't accomplish anything until Samuel Do removed his successor. Uh, what is this man's name? Guinea, Secretary of Guinea, the same thing. Uh, um, in Senegal, Leopold Seda Senghor, as intelligent as that man was in his lifetime, he signed the colonial pact with the French government that is creating problems in Senegal today. Likewise, I mean, the, the, the examples are all over. So. The fact that he has come to stock very good grammar, convince us, that does not mean that he will deliver, or that does not mean that he will not deliver. Actually, if any Nigerian politician tells me that he's a man, not until I handle the scrotum, feel the testes, I will never believe them. So that is just it. Thank you so much indeed. Right. I believe because it's already it's nine minutes to midnight in the Gambia. Okay. I have to go. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. James. Thank you so much. Uh, talking about people who are going to come on the show, uh, our Mustafa, I mean, sometime in May. So, for those who uh, like to talk about security, uh, he'll be back here to talk about that in May. Uh, all right, let's go to Janaba. 
Okay, thank you for having me back again. Um, I think uh, Obi is a, is a good guy. Uh, I'm not his fan. I think he's a weak man. Um, uh, he's doing what I predicted he's supposed to be doing, that is speech. Uh, he should be motivating people around. I think he's a mechanic. He's not a driver, uh, but he say he a good uh, mechanic can be a driver. Um, I think uh, uh, the James asked him a question. I mean, he said he didn't say anything behind the scene that that is all. But the first place he should be busy about the people in Nigeria that are trying to make him their president instead of going around all those things. But um, He's good at it. Um, I wish him well. Uh, whatever he says, that he challenges the uh, whether the government of the day or whosoever. And I think he's kind enough with a good judgment that when he sees somebody that uh, he thinks the person would do well, I think he have a good judgment to endorse the person. But uh, any belief that uh, 2027 or whatever he is becoming. Uh, he can be a nominee of any party. He, uh, he have uh, that influence. I don't think he's using it well. But if he chooses, if he believes he and his team are doing it, uh, the result is not there. But uh, they organize him to travel around and make a speech. I think it's good for him. It's good for the people of Nigeria that we have a motivator, uh, motivational speaker like him. And at least... Uh, it's not keeping quiet uh, completely, but uh, any person that believes that 2027 will be will become your president, uh, good luck. All right, thank you, Janaba. Uh, KJ. Uh, thank you. Um, yes, I, I, I think generally it's, um, it was a good, um, it was a good time with him. Um, I asked my question because. Um, I wanted him to tell us the reason, but um, he refused to go there. Um, you could, you can assemble a group of lawyers and take them to court, and at the end, the uh, judges only bash the lawyers, and none of you is saying anything. And I, I agree with uh, my brother Chim, and uh, a few other people have spoken. You see, when you are in a place that he is, it's difficult for you to take power. And I can say that with every sense of responsibility. You don't check power being a gentleman. You don't. Okay? Um, Babangida used to have a saying. You know, there was a time that the media was harassing him so much. And one day he made a broadcast and said, look, we are not only in government, we are also in power. In other words, it can do and undo. The Bible puts it this way. If you run with uh, foot soldiers and you are worried, what will you do with running against horsemen? When you are not, this, both of you are not in government, you couldn't check or even shake the system. Is it when this other guy is one now holding the horns of the cow that you think you can milk the cow? It's not going to happen. And the, the way you are going about it, like I said, you don't take power that way. That's one thing that we from the South don't understand, which the North understands very well. The concept of the concept of power. Okay? The concept of power is what we, especially we, the Igbos, we do not understand it. And that's why sometimes when we're in a position to make a change, we are beggarly about it. And being beggarly about power don't give you power. You have to grab it, run with it if you need to, pursue it, take it by force. That's the way to go about it. If you think anybody's going to give you on a plateau of gold because you're a gentleman, you're wasting your time. I'm, and I'm, I'm serious. If not, go back in history and check who has been a gentleman have taken over power in Nigeria. Who? Nobody. Even a passenger, what, go back to his, his time. And he said what? It's a fight to finish. He was not the one who made that statement. So what, are, what am I saying? 
you have a party who uh, um, um, members are not even in position. So you should be more aggressive in getting what you want. And I'm saying aggressive using the word sparingly, not in the, you know, going out to begin to box people down. But you should be the one in the trenches. You should be the one who's, who is hands-on. Okay, and if where you are right now is not giving you that, then you need to set up a system that will give you that. You know, going about saying that I'm not in control of Labour Party, and so they can do whatever they like, and you're on this side, it's not going to work. And it will not work, and it will never going to work. Because these people are already taking out your people one after the other. Those who are not able to go out are being taken out with the, uh, the with, with the, with, uh, the um, you know, power. They were taken out by the government agencies. Are taking them out. Those who have refused to. Those who say they are loyal to you, are taken out by government agencies. Those who have refused. Those who have accepted to go are now turned against you. And the, the ones who are hammering you every day, you are like a front runner still contesting. You know, still contesting. You are not being talked as a citizen. And I understand what he said because I, I have said that here many times. That it's difficult operating within the the terrain is operating, whether you are a politician or in the opposition or you're a journalist, it is difficult because they come after everything that you know. They come after even your cat. If your cat is available, they will come after it. So now, but having said that, you chose the job. So if you choose the job, you should be ready for it. Just like, I, you know, sometimes I find it difficult when an army officer comes and says, oh, I mean, look at their kid, they're being killed. No, you signed for the job. When you went to sign for the job, you understand the intricacies that is involved. You understand the danger. Don't tell me that you you, you see war or your policeman, like the other ones who saw some time, the one video that was running, uh, trending, and the police people were running away from pursuing the bandits. Okay? You chose the job. So now you have chosen to be that person that Nigerians are looking up to. Give or take, you have six million people back in. Yes, you show, your voice should carry more authority. And like I, like he said, I understand they are coming after him. They are coming after that. In fact, that is an university was put as one of those that is not qualified that is supposed to be closed down. I don't know if that that have been resolved, you know. But before now, it was one of the best universities in in, in Abuja. But after the election, his university became one of the worst that is even not accredited. Accredited. So I know what he's saying, but you see, uh, nothing good come easy. I think there was a musician who sang that song. Okay, and so if you want to go against a pig, you must be prepared to wrestle in the gutters. You can't say, no, I won't do that. You can't say you're too much of a gentleman. You can't say you are holier than the Pope. You just need to march out. And if you don't want to take it, then you step aside so a smaller person can run the show. And that's my position. You see, even, even what I asked him was for him to tell us what transpired. Why is it that the court didn't say you people presented any evidence. But you said that is in the past. If you don't know what, how it happened in the past, how will you know what they're going to do in the future? Okay, you must be able, that is why we study history. You, we study your story, your history. And then you, we know the mistake that was made and then we we'll know how to go about it in the next time. We know how to negate that same thing. They, they, you, you have states that even the media helped you. BBC, for instance, gave you all the package of what happened in River State. You could even say, look, even though, know, okay, Maybe you didn't want to talk about the judiciary because you say you have benefited. But you could have even given that as an example. Now look at what happened in rural states. Even the media said we won there, but it wasn't given to us. You could even mention the states that we think you won, which we know you won, but wasn't given to you. You said it's the past, and that has gone. But you don't still have a structure in those places. You don't still have hitmen in those places. Okay, let's assume you are planning behind. We didn't know it, and the public don't know it. And you know what is good in politics? And that's why some of you, when you come, oh, we're talking about police in America, you say, well, some of you mistake this guy, I, like, I love Trump. No, he comes after you people with everything you have. You have every system. And why you have all the system? He's shouting in the media. He's shouting. Each time there's something done, he doesn't keep quiet. And that's what I expect him to be doing right now. Because the whole of Nigerian media is against him and the Labour Party and every other person who they think controls some form of vote in that so you should also set up a system that where you will be shouting at the rooftop. Look at what they are doing to me. Look at what they, even if nothing is going to happen, but the public will have a record. At the, at, at, at eventually, the public will swing at, against the system. 
because they will see it as a big man beating a small man. Okay? And, but you're not doing that. You are just playing gentlemanly. At the end of the day, 2027, 20, 20, we still be the same story, my brothers. Let's not expect magic because it's not going to happen. On that note, I end. Thank you, sir. Thank you, KJ. Uh, Wale, you next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rubo. And uh, well done for the job well done. You've really handled it well, and uh, you catch a big fish. So well done for what you've been doing. Uh, two things I'm going to say. I wish uh, Mr. Peter Obi could listen to some of the feedback we're giving now. And I think he's really shooting himself on the foot, if I may say. Uh, like what Mr. KJ said just now. You know, something happened. You have what it takes to shake Nigeria. But you're just taking some kind of gentleman. It doesn't, if it's someone like you would rather have that kind of vote and capture Lagos, do you think we'll be saying what we are saying now? No. So you need a radical person to kind of shake all these cabals. But Mr. Obi is thinking it gently. And I'm, I'm not a prophet of doom or saying something bad, but I don't see anything positive happening in 2027. Because these Agbadorians, they've already put everything, they've bought the judiciary, they've bought the eye neck. So what do you think is going to happen? Do you think they just go back to sleep? They are thinking of 2027 already as we are speaking. So, you know, you should place the, 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 the joker on the table for Labour Party because without Peter OB, there are no, I don't even think they, are, they exist. So it should be radical with these people, but I don't see that coming from him. Anyway, that aside, that's Nigerian politics. The only thing I'm going to probably say here is I know we have great panelists here, and it's only 10 people that can be here. I'm looking at the numbers that participate every week on these, and we haven't got up to a thousand. Now I'm thinking what could be the factor, what could be responsible for just saying people every week? What about people on the chat? I'm not saying everybody on the chat are the people who just want to abuse or Agbadorians or the, 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 the people who have no sense. There are some people who have seen in the chat and they try to put their opinions and perspective in. So I think somebody should be in charge of that, at least picking their positive vibes and let, you know, let their contribution count as well. I know not every one of us, not all the 500 people will be able to ask Mr. Peter a big question or put something in. Ignore those idiots that are just saying something that is not relevant and they just want to abuse. Pick up on good people who have something good to say. Somebody should be picking up on that. And by doing that, I think we'll encourage more people to join this, you know, weekly Have Your Say. Because the, the program is called Have Your Say. So that is one thing I'm looking at. And maybe probably maybe young young people, female, like the, was it two weeks ago when the black... Um, this lady, when we are talking about the airline and everything, and she put something on the chat, but everybody look at what does it mean? Can you come on, on air? And she did, and it was a great debate on that night. That even someone in my household who wouldn't even listen to this thing actually listened to the middle of the night, and that's the kind of things we want. We want people who are shy to come on air, and also. Um, one thing I will say is the way we handled Mr. Peter will be uh, questioning time really worked well. When you ask a question, try to give other people chance to come in and you can come in again. Because when we look at it, yeah, we are all educated one way or the other. We might have different degree to each other. We might speak grammar better than others. But if you invite my grandma to this show, I'm sure she will have, you know, one better thing to say. She might not be, well, I wouldn't say she's not educated, but, you know, she's not, she might not have the Western way of education, but she might have sense to contribute. And if you invite my cousin to come and say something, she might say rubbish things, despite all his degree or whatever. So please, let us see how we can do things better. I know my time is up. Thank you. And that's why I didn't want to call me. I would rather be on the chat section. Thank you, but that's my own contribution. We can do better. We can, you know, 
we can let other people get involved rather than just our own opinion every week. I hope maybe it will work. I don't know. But that's just my contribution. But well done for what everyone is doing. All right. Thank you, Wale. Uh, let me just say that tomorrow we don't have a guest because uh, I was leaving it open for, for uh, Mr. Peter B. I wasn't sure whether he would be on today or tomorrow. So we don't have a guest. So you guys can uh, vote somebody in as a guest and maybe um, uh, <laughs> whoever you want as the guest, we can get someone to interrogate him. All right. I just wanted to mention that, but we'll be on tomorrow and uh, we'll figure out maybe forefathers will be the guest and uh, you guys will get to find out his DNA and everything you want to know about him. Uh, Ustadima, you're next. Uh, thank you, Dr. Damages. The reason I'm saying thank you is that uh, um, it's a good preview. At least I'll add it to my resume that I've interviewed Peter Obi. You did, actually. You so, did. so please, a special request. When you do uh, the video editing, please, I, I want that cut where I interviewed him. Because wow. my, wa my wife, she was watching it in the bedroom, though she couldn't hear you know, the audio, of course, because I was sort of you know, you know, casting it to my to the television upstairs while I was asking. So I, I needed to you know, you know, view it. So it's, at, at least I think you will elevate my status in the house. I you know what you know what I mean. When you, you know? when you become a local government chairman, uh, what are you running for? And, local government. And, I, I, and, I, and I, again, okay, back to my question because I asked the question where I felt it was very important for me to get enlightened most, and the reason is this: I want, I, I pray, and I hope, and I keep on supporting Peter B to become president, but. Apart from that, apart from that, 2027 is, is close at hand. What's going to happen after that? And someone was mentioning saying things about the continuity. If we will be decides to depart, you know, quit the political scene, what happens? Okay. And that is that is what we should be thinking about. If not for the way things are in Nigeria, normally most of us shouldn't be too worried about who becomes the president because where things matter the most actually is within the local government area the schools the, the you know healthcare health centers the markets the you know the security all of it is, is it should be within the, you know the, the you know the the, the local you know, the, the councils so, and being that he's been, you know, in that situation before, position, because when you go online and you make a lot of research about these things, about the account between the state governor, state government and the local government, my brother, is not clear. Even with the laws that have been passed, in, you know, the, when the, the, uh, the law that, that we made in 2022, it still sort of gives power to the, state assembly to, to an extent to want to control some of the things happening within the local government area so i was asking him how he ran his own you know how he ran the local government during his own time and I, i've been on this platform where someone asked him before why didn't he conduct local government election and he said due to you know the you know litany of uh, litigations that happened when he took over power of which personally i still do not think that he's good enough because from what we know, once you're a governor, you can easily, you know, invite the, you know, independent electoral commission to, you know, commence the electionary process for the local, you know, governments, for the local councils. Okay, at least to the best of my knowledge, till someone changes, you know, that uh, uh, perception of, uh, that I have. So, he did answer well to an extent for me. He made it clear. He started mentioning the people who. We are, of course, you know I'm not from Anambra State. There's no way I would know the local government chairman and the people that he was mentioning. But from what he was saying, his local government chairman, we are very functional. And I'm inclined to believe that because there is no way he could have achieved most of the things he achieved if he was the one going individually to be doing those things. So if he was able to touch a good number of places in Anambra at the time he was a governor, 
there should have been a, a degree of independence a degree of cohesion and a degree of you know autonomy which he allowed to prevail within the local you know councils so for me that's something that was very imperative to be honest i'm sure that I've, may, may, most likely when people be is done i don't think i'll be really caring for anyone else to really become a president someone like myself i'd like to focus more on what is happening within the local government how do we liberate the local government because i believe that from building from the ground up there are a lot of awareness that our people do not have even when it comes to you know government education social education the things we are talking about the other time about security about um you know people having the awareness that when they get into boats that they need life jackets those are basic social studies that things that should be embedded in our social studies but because local governments are useless a lot of things you know sort of get damaged even before it comes to the state level so if we are going to be building leaders who will you know uh, 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 usher us into the the nigeria we are looking for the future we are looking for it, it, we need to go back to the basics which is the local government area but um all in all it was a great privilege to be with a man he's very he can be very articulate very honest at least to to you know uh, to my own uh, own uh, perception he's someone who is ap very approachable and I, I use this word very approachable very approachable and just before he came on this show you know he was in boston where he was delivering his lecture he was speaking about how do we make the presidential system something more that is more accountable where is not this you know congregation of spokesmen that are always coming out. We need something like this, the way, same way I, an ordinary person, with no political inclination, with no political power that, you know, anything, is able to assess the head of state. Where the head of state can be brought to a medium where he's able to relate with a common man. This is what we need. The presidency of Peter Obi might not change everything in Nigeria, make everything perfect, but it will set a new Bar, you set a new benchmark for what leadership should be about. And let me quickly speak about again when the thing about him having the hold of the political party. If I don't want to blame Peter B too much, and the reason is this: we all know when he joined the political party, it was a few days to, in fact, a day to the PDP. What is it called? The PDP um uh conversion. Is it, is it conversion? What do they call it? Oh, is it primary? Oh. Primaries, exactly. Yeah. His movement into the Labour Party was it was reactionary, so to say. Labour Party has a foundational problem that has existed before Peter Obi. Now look at the dimensions of the things happening. And someone like Abure at this point, and look at how difficult it is. An average politician is greedy. A natural politician, and a normal, a normal African is greedy. Someone like Abure who, who has tested power and who has tested money, and who knows that there is more to be gained by being the head of the you know Labour Party. Do you think he's going to give up that party position easily? Most of us must not forget that one of the reasons that Peter B is able to function the way he functions is the fact that this man, by God's endowment, apart from having been a man of good character. He's financially independent. That helps him, regardless of what is happening in the political scene. Abure is not like that. Abure is thinking of his stomach and his children who are probably going into the university. A lot of a lot of people in Abure's position will not give up. So Labour Party has a long way to go when it comes to bringing its house in order. But from the queue and the body language of Mr. Pitobia. I don't think he's a man who does not understand the influence he has. On the contrary, I think he knows fully well his influence. In fact, I think he's fully well banking on the fact that if Labour Party persists to do what they're doing, that he can easily work out. I think he knows fully well that without him, that Labour Party is almost nothing. On the contrary, but he's not the kind of person who wants to flex that influence. And we must also be careful of what we're looking for. We must also tread carefully so that we don't jump between a line of having a very big influence in the party till we get into a state of, a, 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 you know, a position of capture. 
the sort of thing we see happening in Lagos where one man can determine who will be the next governor, even if he's inside the grave. That is something we also do not want. So it's a question of that balance. So on the contrary, this man knows his worth. And I listened to Aisha Yusufu when they were talking about on one of her casts. He said, whatever conversation that is happening about 2027, Obi knows is definitely the picture. In fact, what you can say is that Peter Obi is running for presidency in 2027 against Tinubu. If there's one person who you're not sure whether he's coming on the scene again, it's definitely Atiku Abubakar. Because I don't think the PDP in the right senses is ever going to give him a ticket, not with what is currently happening. Now, if we're saying, okay, Obi, what are you going to do next? Definitely, the PDP is not even an option for him to go back to. The reason is this. The likes of Yeltsin Wike is hell-bent on making sure that nothing good comes out of that political party at this point in time. So, the, and he says something, the political dynamics is what we determine. If you listen to his last broadcast when he was on space, he also said that if he tries his best, that he's not going to die with the Labour Party. So let us watch and see. This man is someone who is very strategic and very brilliant, to be honest. He might not put out all his cards on the table, but that does not mean he's not arranging them somewhere. The moves he's making in the North, I'm sure they are definitely cooking up something. Obi has people supporting him. He has the masses. The only problem I know we have when it comes to 2027 is INEC. Because like you said, the power of incumbency will definitely come into play. But here again, I will say, what are we the ordinary people doing? You know we want this gentleman in power. We all understand what we are up against. What are we doing about it? That is the question. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, victory. Quickly, I, I, I have to go, but I want to listen to um, uh, all of you that uh, participated. So I, I actually take this feedback and use it for next time and every other thing. So, Victory, go ahead. And Rudolph, you did very well. Thank you very much. Uh, I've got to compliment Yeah, it went very well. I think we were all very well behaved. <laughs> so, they should not be scared of COVID. <laughs> uh, doctor, you're very funny. When is my turn? Um, we'll, we'll sit down. Oh. No, no, I, I, I was up since 2am and it's 8. I know, I know, I know. I'm just joking. I'm in breakfast, um, I can't remember, but go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say that, um, you know, the reason I'm asking that question because he's part of the political political elite and I suppose they do meet and discuss about things and stuff like that. I mean, I, I'm really, really concerned of like, what does these people talk about? Like, you look at what, what is going on in other part of the world where people are forming strategy alliance to get that defense up properly in place. And then these guys are just borrowing money, you know, stashing money in bank accounts, swinging that bag left to right, dancing, I'm talking bull or blue. I, 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 I mean, sometimes I wonder like, are these people, are they, are they, they don't live in this world, you know? Is it that when they get into power, they like, they don't, they, they haven't got a clue. And it kind of answered the question a little bit, not to my my liking, because I think there's there's unseen hands behind what is happening in particularly in Nigeria, where there are people pulling the strings behind the scene, and most people don't see this. Um, and the other thing I was going to ask him as well, I watched it on Arise News where um, they were saying that when he went to the um, corruption facility in Anabra that th there was a woman in prison because of 250,000 naira, and the woman child was in prison as well. A, a child of like, is it less than two years old? <laughs> At least I couldn't believe what I was hearing, that this woman was sent to prison because of 250 cases. I wanted to ask him, what did he do about that? Did he pay the, pay the money off? Or is that woman still there with her child? Because I see that as a grave crime, you know, for, for, <laughs> for a baby to be in prison, um, with her mother, I'm assuming that baby doesn't even know what's going on. And how many children are in prison in Nigeria like this that are going through the same thing? And I think men, women come here, we talk. I, I think we should be really, we should be ashamed of ourselves as men, black men particularly, uh, to be witnessing that kind of thing in our country. We are children, in, children are actually in prison. Can you believe that? You know, so that really that knocked me off completely off my strides because I couldn't believe what I what I had. So I was going to ask him that particular question. And the other thing I was going to say to him as well was about the issue about um, the Confab 2014. 
you know, as he looked into that document and what is in that document that himself likes and he wants to push forward. Can we start talking about that document? Why are they not implemented that document? Although I looked at the document, um, I suppose anyone that is agitated to want to, maybe they want to leave Nigeria or want to see Nigeria a better place, they should take a look at that document. What is it about Nigeria that you don't like, that you want them to fix? And look through that document, see what is written there. And then you, you can make up your mind. Particularly when I looked at the document, I was looking about resource control. It, they didn't really address resource control explicitly for my liking. They just said, oh, they will look into that to see how they can increase the revenue to the oil producing state, you know? So that's that's the other thing I was gonna ask him, but uh, the time, you know, was we had limited time. So that's what I wanted to say. All right, thank you, Victory. Uh, Tone, do you mind if I skip you? Uh, I know you yeah, were sure. on. Oh. Yeah, go on. Okay, go on. Uh, Marzi Prince, uh, yeah. Were you there? I don't think you were. Were you at the, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm tired. Marzi Prince, go ahead. Okay, he's watching TV. Prince was not there. He didn't. He didn't interview. Me. He didn't. Okay. All right. Um, let's go to Jamie. The, 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 uh, we, we, we were we were the we were the uh, what do you call it? We were the comment uh, soldiers. <laughs> I saw you. You know, we were the comment uh, soldiers. So we had it there. Um, let me start like this. Victory, I don't know. I don't know what you know about Nigerian politics. But from what you are saying, you are saying that you are going to ask uh, uh, Peter B if he looked into the confab of 2014 and uh, what is he doing about it. <laughs> Peter B is in opposition. He is not in presidency. You should be talking about getting those people who are in presidency to tell us if they've seen that document and what they are doing about it. And when you say elites, 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 yes, I agree with you, we have elites. But everybody, it's not the same. It's just like you know, I, I don't know where you are. You are probably, if you're in America, and America seeing you and saying, oh, you're a Nigerian, are you uh, a Yahoo Yahoo? You know? But the fact that you, that, that you are from Nigeria doesn't mean that you're a Yahoo, 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 Yahoo boy. So let's put that aside. And then uh, my brother KJ, I, I'm surprised at your comment today. You know, this man has said it, and he has said it, that he is not desperate to be a president. But that he is desperate to see Nigeria change. You don't have to be in presidency to do things. You know, when we talk, K KJ said something about when Abiola, I don't know most of you who are, you know, on this panel, if you were there when Abiola ran his own presidency. I can tell you because I was part of it. And I received, I received enough beating, not only beating the, the, the you know, the, the treatment from the, the, the police. And uh, that was when we had uh, the mobile police doing, you know, acting anyhow with uh, 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 the armies. Also, the, from also the, to, uh, what do you call it? From also the, to, uh, um, to Oba or Ikeja, you you will see people on the road that after have they've lost their life or you know they've been you know uh, 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 pepper sprayed and all that kind of a thing. I got that was the, that was the time I even knew that you could use kerosene. So it kind of like tried to sub you know subside the the, the effects of uh, uh, pepper spray. So and. When Abiola came, when when he when when he was away after winning, when he was away, there was no problem. But immediately he came in. There was a you know, there was a statement he made. Them arresting Abiola was not because of that statement. It was because of the interview he had in CNN. That was, they were waiting for him to come. 
And they just wanted to hear that. It's still people that were pushing him. Say something, say something, say something. And when he said it, what happened? He was, you know, he was nabbed. And the rest is history. We all know how it ended. You know, this same man that we are accusing that he's either that he's uh, 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 lukewarm or he's too cold or whatever it is, he has family. And definitely his wife or his family talks to him also, which should also be, which should also, you know, look at it on, from his own, you know, from his own side. It's not easy. I really applaud him for even being able to move around, still standing. I think we just came back a few days ago. And why did he Atiku come back? Atiku just came back because of the 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 next meeting that they're about to have. It was it is it tonight or tomorrow that he came back. This same man told you if you know what they're doing to him, whatever he is, they know. And the only place I, I don't think they will know is maybe you know coming to America. They will, you know let them come and tap his phone. Let's see. All right. But they are looking for a way to nab him, to, to you know, to you know, to put him away. He is their nightmare. He is their albatross. So we should stop pushing it and start saying, you know, keep saying all that. Let's wait and see. If twenty twenty seven comes and there is an opportunity for him to run, let him run. If it's not there, let him be. But we should be considerate in, you know, what we say and all that kind of a thing. I really applaud him. And whether they like it or not, and I will still say it tomorrow, Mr. Peter Opi is the president that I know. I don't know the one you guys have over there. I, I don't. I didn't. All right. Thank you, Mazze Prince, and thank you for that's this. all I can say. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you, uh, Jagan. After you, uh, Omoya is corner. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, well, I, I appreciate that meeting very well. He's a pleasant man, to be frank. You know, as you engage with someone, you can quickly ascertain the kind of person that they are. He's a pleasant man. I got two questions in, which uh, forefathers un underlined. <laughs> but my questions were light. I mean, I, at least the first one was, I just really wanted to find out from him if he had looked around the political playing field and afar. And, and seen anyone that is of merit. That and, and Jagu, thank you for that question again. Thank you, that was a very nice question. Actually add to the polity, because I, I, I really find it hard when I look around the political atmosphere to see who can really form a government. Who, who, who would I like to join? Not, not that I'm political at all in that way, you know, um, but I do, as he said, want Nigeria to quickly turn around. And then I had to go on to ask my main question, which was geopolitically, you know, because I understand that you have a, an understanding of what's going on inside Nigeria. But do you have an understanding of what's going outside Nigeria that's affecting Nigeria? Because the, there are many things. I was going to go on and ask him about the HDI of Nigeria, which is the, the uh, Human Development Index. And I was watching a program the other day, and it was. Uh, one uh, young, not so young actually, about 40 year old actually, um, speaking about um, 54 countries of Africa and what their HDI is. So I was watching it with real suspicion as to where Nigeria would be. Um, and really thinking it's going to be the top three. But I, again, maybe I didn't understand HDI correctly enough. However, he too, being from uh, um, Cape Verde, was wanting. Yeah. His numbers to be as well. Anyway, I watched it. Nigeria was 35th in HDI in the whole of Africa. The, the countries that were above Nigeria, it was like, my God, Nigeria, man, you've got to be ashamed. You know, we like to say that we're number one giant of Africa, this, that. All this, all this, all this economy in Africa means, means nothing. It means nothing to us. We don't seem to understand. We like to boast about nothing. We love it. And Ghana, the only small country, and yeah. I'm looking at myself thinking, you know, but I can't help. I, don't, I haven't been on for that long, have I? I've just yeah, yeah, you have, you have. Fair enough. 
Thank you. And um, I'm also Russian, but I want to make you sure. You know, you're a storyteller, Jack. So storytellers don't know when their time is off. <laughs> <laughs> is that bad? Was it that bad? Yeah. Very long. So there, there are people saying we should I either have uh, forefathers as the guest tomorrow or concerts or I think there were other names and then they mentioned that uh, Omoye is <laughs> Forefathers and Pansat. That's not going to make a show. We, That's going to be a squad. We, we take a vote. People in the in the studio will take a vote in the next uh, minutes because I, I have to go. Loco, I can see you in the uh, the back end. Uh, thank you for the video you sent up to us. Um, Osi, Omoye is going to you next. Greetings, uh, Dr. Diamond. I came to say greetings to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Happy so New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> greetings We're to everyone. Mr. Chief, forefathers, aka the two Niger, uh, the flagship, uh, Osita Dima, KJ, Jagun, Mazi, and uh, Tony. I guess Tony. Greetings to everyone in the comment section as well. Hello, dear. Yeah, so I missed the whole Peter B thing. Um, so I wasn't, uh, unfortunately. I usually go where he goes, but uh, yeah, I got caught up in other things, so I couldn't uh, make whatever he had to say. But you know, I'm going to go back and watch it. However, I've been listening to the comments by everyone, the submissions that have been provided so far. And I've been hearing people say, oh, he needs to grab power, he needs to do this, he needs to do that. I think we keep forgetting the man has said he's not destined to be president of your your jungle. I'm sorry to say that. I'm not sorry, but it's a jungle. He's not he's not destined to be a president. Okay? So because he's not destined to be president, he's not going to do it the way everybody else. He's not going to put anyone's life at risk, he's not going to put his own life at risk, or his family's, someone's mic is on, uh, his family's life at risk, right? So there are men here. I mean, I'm looking at men all around, right? So the question is, um, Senegal just got a new president, I'm sure we're all aware of it, uh, 44 years old young uh, man. And uh, these people, it's been a long time coming for them. Apparently, I was the opportunity to be on a space with uh, the Senegalese, sharing how, you know, the process that brought uh, the Senegalese president, it's been a long time, since 2000, and they started, I think 2011, or maybe even earlier than that. And then they met in college, and then they started you know, forming ideas, they, you know, anyone who had a similar idea with them, they take them in, the movement was growing, they tried to run for, uh, to get power twice, I think, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, they lost both times, and then eventually, this time around, it worked for them. They didn't use violence, they did not use violence, it's all strategy. Nigerians are brilliant people. We're very brilliant people. We have ingenuity within us. I would assume that, you know, there will be a rollout of some section of people who are engaging in conversations like this. Like, how do we take Nigeria for what do we do? There should be people who are doing that. Instead of waiting for this soul man, I think this is a problem we have in Nigeria. We're always waiting for this one person. The job is not for one person. The job is for everybody. Right? You see, you know, some of us don't like the way he's going about it. He's too quiet, he's too docile, he needs to take the power, run away with it and grab it. Everybody's personality is different. Since we see that he can't do it, eh, let those who like to snatch, grab, run away, let them form their caucus and see how they get, you know, the, uh, the, the uh, cooperation from the citizens and people who are also interested in running. And making sure that they win it. It's very simple, right? So we're not going to force, personally, I don't think that the man should be forced, forced or cajoled or pushed or forced against his personality. It's not possible. He's, we already knew from the jump that Peter B does not have that personality. The person that has that personality is Ahmed Dati. Ahmed Dati happens to be his, his VP, right? Uh, candidate. But if, if Ahmed Dati was the, was the president, I trust 
and trust and believe it will not have happened the way it happened because that man has fire in him it will not have happened but it wasn't him so let everybody do their own part right let everybody get together and start to think of ideas on how we can take it back everybody has different strategies i am i'm, I'm watching this man going from place to place touching the lives of people even those that do not support him right i don't believe in a 2027 election i've said it from the one from the jump how do you win an election when they have perfected the act of rigging how with the same judges with the same court with the same people how even now they're coming up with them um, they have ideas for you know creating uh, machines that will even just fill out the numbers for them they don't even need to put in anything the the, the machine will tell them the 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 uh, rigged numbers and declare the winner heck they even said maybe INEC will be left to decide who the president should be. I'm sure you guys have heard some of those stories. So I say all of this to say, everybody, all hands on deck to win Nigeria back. Because Nigeria is a massive country. Now, another thing is we have, there are, other, there are so many ways of taking back this country. We also have the state, the governor, the gubernatorial elections are coming up for different states. The citizens of that state, of Nigeria as a whole, can support and make sure that the right person gets in. Because that's a, another way to get your country back and ensure that they have local government and the local government chairmen are functional. And then make sure that, you know, they have, uh, uh, what's it called, um, um, stools for the urbans and all of that. Activate their administrative roles so that they can be doing what they ought to be doing. So they too, they can be getting, you know, they can be, they can be playing a role to ensure that they move the state or the country forward. For instance, if we have great governors, if we have governors that know what they are doing, that have vision in the South, the South will, will turn around. We don't, we would, slowly you can make the central irrelevant. There's so many ways to do it. So you get behind a governor you know is going to do the right thing, right? Somebody like Alex Oti. If we had governors like Alex Oti, can you still hear me? I can hear you. I know the sound is not as okay. It's not as clear. Uh, not very, but we can hear you. Yeah, but it's not the way it used to be. <laughs> it can oh, be okay. Let me see if I can. Be better now. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Is it better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry. So the airpiece is muffled. Okay, sorry about that. So I'm saying that there are so many ways to win back our country. You get the right governors in the state and slowly make the central irrelevant, useless. If the South gets it right and have the right governors, we'll, uh, half of our problems will be solved because your problem is not the federal that's causing it, it's the grassroots. Do you have local government chairmen? Hold them accountable. Hold your local government uh, chairman accountable. Hold your representatives accountable. Hold your ministers and your senators accountable. Who are the people you're sending to be ministers? Who are the people you're sending to be senators? Since nobody wants to come out and fight, the other way to fight is by doing this, right? Since people in Nigeria, they like what is going on, I would say shut down the goddamn system. Let nobody go to work, but who am I? I'm just one person. But if everybody could think about that and say, if I don't go to work, who cares? How much are they paying me anyway? I'm not even able to survive. People are running out of Nigeria every single day. It doesn't make any sense, right? So if we're not going to do that, since we don't want to shut the system down and we are not ready to get on the street, well, let's look for strategies to win back state by state, local government by local government, representative by representative, state by state governor, and take back our states. Simple, right? The North does the same thing. The Middle Belt does the same thing. Now we have to talk about the issue of insecurity, right? Because it's gotten heightened now. Recently, they captured one woman somewhere in Uromi Axis, right? They stole a, a whole human being. It's come to the south. They keep saying, "Oh, it's come to the south." Oh, you people don't think that you are going to be. It's going to be any different from what's happening in the middle belt. 
okay so since we're not getting on the streets and since we're not um shutting down the system because that's where any, any other same society that's what they are doing since we don't want to do that right let's leave let's stop heaping on peter v the man is doing it the way he can he's building borehole he's doing how many how many we don't do we don't build borehole how many of us don't do borehole i don't i don't know if i don't do more than they share okay so in the meantime let's think strategy let the guys who have the mindset of wanting it to be like niger or another uh traori in burkina faso get in one room and be discussing we don't need to know you just do the action we will shout we will come and celebrate it's simple that's what me i came to say because anywhere they talk about uh, peter will be my president today tomorrow till whenever right until we get a better human being or somebody who can exceed him in capacity or more we are on a long team let's put our money where our mouth is instead of making noise get together start to strategize do what you need to do we have able-bodied men show your power all of now they go gym show, now 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 the time to show those muscles when you don't debut since more okay leaders show up let's see your leadership skill okay get working so that all the people that want to marry many wives they know their names i'm not mentioning any names this is the time to show it you say ha all this opportunity that i want to use to marry many wives let me use it to show my power right now i'm the man i'm the leader Hi. in the home show it you go see all the women they troop come to they beg you marry us like 50 go show they'll say just marry us it's okay we want to have a seat that is like your own simple we day on that they not go together every weekend that they not i don't tire for now men men show show your workings mona show in your muscles in your power show that's all I, that's what i came to say oh. dr damage is well done god will bless you whether you like him or not cheerleader we like it oh i like that too. <laughs> 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 what are you doing tomorrow at 12 30 12 30 uh i'll be available for you for mr dr damages alone for your sake i will make myself available okay so i yeah. have decided <laughs> we reserve four fathers for another time so, <laughs> <laughs> don't yeah. let four fathers come for me you. you know the I last time four say hey, this one that one me i i know eh, eh. I say new year. I don't want to follow for father's drag. But if you come for me for father's drag, we will not. We will not. We will not for one for father's. We will not for one for father's. Yeah, we want. Yeah, we want to hear from you. So tomorrow. Okay. Twelve thirty. All right, twelve thirty. Right. Twelve thirty. Yeah, yeah. Your time or my time. My you know, time. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. And Mister Ferreira, long time greetings, sir. It's been a while. I heard you. Greetings to you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I'm surprised you remember my name. <laughs> of course, of course. Thank you very much. You read that All right, you, guys. Even if you read that yeah. thesis, you read, people will remember your name. Uh, look, <laughs> look, 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 are you sleeping or are you with us? Okay. Look, look, can you, before I go, can you tell us what I Daboski did in London today? Uh, it's very important to me, you know. Be, okay, be, Mr. I'll let be, me I'll just hop on. I'll see you tomorrow. I will talk tomorrow. Yeah. All right then. Bye. 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 Greetings in the house. Abito Shika. What what in the Boski Baose? Back to sender. What happened? <laughs> 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 Give you if you give you a bad person, I'm gonna report to you. I bad person. <laughs> Did you book him for the show? Because we, we actually need to interview him. Oh, really? Um, no, I, I did it because um it was like I think he came for something else. So some people took advantage of his presence in the UK and just invited him to that show and made tried to make money out of him anyway. Um, but um in a nutshell, for me, I just wanted to catch fun because I know he's, he's a comedian, at least for me. It's supposed to be the number one first class commander in Nigeria, so uh, I have to be there. Chief, you supposed to know now in the Boski Bahose, the chief commander of Nigeria. I have to be there. Come on, first time, I have to be a bit of shaker. 
I, I agree, agree with you. That is the way I see him. I know they see him as past or anything. The guy that comedy. You know, yeah. He's the chief comedian of Nigeria Republic. He says he's a pastor. He says he's a pastor. But in a nutshell, um, I just wanted to like, we can't be coming here every time and be complaining, 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 and not try to catch phone and release, leave some stress for ourselves, you know. Um, but in a nutshell, uh, what I saw there was like, um, everybody that came there, they didn't come because of whatever he possessed in Nigeria. They came to see a comedian that everybody wants to look, you know, to release some stress. You know, the UK, everybody's working, 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 no, 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 no time to, to group. So everybody came there to come and catch fun. So like that. So, but my own stuff there, I tried to tell everybody, like, look, in this, in 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 the fact uh, for sorry, for the fact that we came here to catch from, we should all look at the fact that yeah, where we came from, the our people are suffering, you know, our people are you know denied the normal things in life. So if we can come here, spend our own hard earned money and come and catch from for free, something that will not benefit us just to get humor and not progress our life. Okay, what can we do with this our time, with this our money, to make sure where we come from, our families in Nigeria or our own country, is um, um, have the best of what we can give? You know, many people might be. Some people say like, "Oh, um, no, Nigeria, they're not serious. Nigeria, they they they, they deserve what they are getting, and all that." So like, "Oh, we cannot go to Nigeria and fight." I, I said, "Okay, no problem. We cannot go there and fight." Okay, we are here, we are in diaspora. What should we do? Just to change the narrative so that those who are in Nigeria will say, oh, if people who are enjoying, so to speak, who are enjoying in diaspora are fighting for Nigeria, we in the country, what should we do? So maybe that can even change their perception of how they can fight or how they can, you know, do what they can do to change the country that we all are craving for. You understand? So I told them like, look, we can all decide to just sacrifice our time. And okay, it, I came in a brutal way, maybe that many people may not like. I said, look, we should just shut down Nigeria embassies all over the world. Maybe you no know, damages. It might seem to you like, oh no, it shouldn't. Not in a violent way, but in a civil way where nobody will be arrested like just because okay going to prison is taking your freedom they're like inconveniencing you to some extent for you to you know become upright in life so those people who are working in nigerian embassies you understand if we can inconvenience them you know just to make them feel the discomfort that people are having in nigeria just some to some extent maybe they can send some message to nigeria to like hey this is happening all over the world, Nigerian embassies. So like, oh, these people do not like what's happening in Nigeria. Okay, maybe they can start listening, you know. So, but everybody, all the embassies in, Niger in um, all over the world, Nigerian embassies, they're having the feel of the day, treating Nigerians the way they want to treat Nigerians, thinking that they are God over Nigerians who are, you know, living in the diaspora. So if it's time we can take up this um, challenge to like, no, we were not happy with what we are seeing in Nigeria. If you over here in diaspora, you are our mad piece to the Nigerian government, let's give you the heat so that if you have this heat here in your so-called comfort zone in diaspora, then maybe the Nigerian government can start listening to you because we cannot come here and complain every day, every day, every day, every day, and still nothing, not even one thing that we are able to do. To change anything rather than talking 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 and still we hear even worse news than the previous news that we heard before so we cannot come on here and sit in our comfort zone all the time and saturday and sunday we just we talk about it maybe catch phone in our comfort zone here in the diaspora and still nothing is being done no impact of the diaspora is being felt in the nigerian government i think that is what we should try and reconsider so that maybe i don't know if what, what will happen but let let it be known even to nigerians living there to like oh we are suffering here but we have somebody 
who we think or assume that they are living in, in a comfortable life in diaspora, but still they went out of their way to fight for us in Nigeria. Maybe they can even change their mentality like, oh, if they can fight with their enjoyment or their so-called comfort zone, we who are re really suffering, maybe we should do something to help them. You understand? Like that party person maybe can change something. That's what I went there to do today. Not because of the major anyway, let me not lie. They are trying to go there to like, you know, hack and make some Nigerians, you know, um, do something so we can change the um, narrative in Nigeria. Thank you, local P. Uh, for the, for the... Local P, if you don't suffer, go back, go, go back, go back to Nigeria. Let me know who wants you. Yeah, if you don't suffer. Local P, did you uh, get some powers while you were there? No, yes, he released one new power. He said onions, onions power. The onions that will make people cry, that your enemy will be blind. Is a, we put onions power in their eyes. So if they, they are looking, they are looking for you. Baggy like onions. Is that what he said? Exactly. Exact. Oh, Jim, it's like you are white to k compliant. You are so compliant. You're like, sure. so compliant. All right. All right. Yes, Thank you, Dr. Oh, P. Um, oh, unfortunately, we, can't, we, we didn't get a feedback from our crack reporter, the other one that was in. Uh, in Boston with uh, Peter. Oh, okay. Yeah, the one who called him crack reporter. I am not. I wasn't there. I wasn't didn't show up. <laughs> you no, call him that. I don't know where he is. A crack reporter. Uh, KJ, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. I just want to um say something. Uh, my friend, uh, my brother, um, Mazi Prince, um, and then my other sister who just left the platform. I will be waiting for her tomorrow. Um, you see, this thing of when people say something and uh, all of us who seem to be in the same group seem to be fighting one another, it doesn't take you anywhere. Because the people who have developed the developed uh, countries and who have had good leadership, for which we are enjoying right now, they didn't get to that point by refusing to accept what is needed. Even when a person is doing all the best, you still want to tinker your, your 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 method, your strategy, to get it correct. Now, the main fact that we said, or I said, that you know, merely saying that you are not desperate. You see, again, as a Christian, you are slaved by the words of your mouth. Somebody said, "I'm not desperate to be president." Somebody said, "I will I will be president." Even when the odds were against him, he kept saying, "I will be president." Even if they don't want it, I will be president. Who do you think is likely to go and get it? You that say you're not going to be desperate, you're not desperate to be, or the person who is telling you, I will be president. It's, it's a two different ball game. It makes a difference. Whether we like it or not. You see, they both have a, a saying, you first have to agree to yourself that this is what you want to achieve. And then you face the odds. And then you will see different strategies coming to you. But you cannot be going, okay, you can't be going to war and say, you know what? I, I, if I come back, I come back. If I don't come back, it's okay. You will die there. So you first take yourself and tell yourself, I will come back. So when they come and each time you, you throw, you know, like what 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 are, are we saying? Is any of us there saying that Peter B should go and die or be, be, become rebellious? Is anybody saying that? No, we're simply saying this is 21st century. It's not that your last time. Be strategic. Be strategic. And you can't, look, let, let me even throw this banter. Now, most people are saying, oh, if it was um, Dati Ahmed, it would have been a different ballgame. Do you think, uh, are you for, forecasting that by 2027, Dati Ahmed will still be his vice? Have you ever thought of the fact that if the North come together and say, Dati Ahmed, we want you to represent the North in, in, in 2027, he will still be Peter B's vice? Come on, guys. You think if they not come together today and say, we want you to run for us in 2027, it will be Peter Beast wise. So we should be strategic. And the, the problem with, with us, from, like I keep saying, is that we seem to think that whenever somebody says, oh, the, you know, make one complaint, that we see the person as, as an enemy. You are coming here to tell us, what have you done? Do you know what I have done? And did I, I, come, to, I did come out to say I want to be president of Nigeria? Or should I come to the platform and tell you what I've done before you know what I've done? You are the one who came and said, I want to serve. You are asking you want to serve. And if you say you, you want to serve, we have the right to ask you questions and say, well, what you are doing, we're not satisfied with this or that. 
So don't look us as an enemy. Rather, take what we have said and go back and check. If you need to tinker your plans, you tinker it. If you don't need to tinker it, let me tell you something. A, a preacher once said, if somebody comes and say, hey, KJ, you are a very greedy person. Don't re respond immediately and say, ah, no, not me. Ah, I'll be trying to No, you, you go back and ask yourself, in yourself, God, this is what they've said about me. Am I really a, a, you know, a selfish person? Let the Spirit of God confirm to you. And if he says you really avoid, oh like say you, you did your small look, you make your adjustment. If he's not, you say talk, you thank God. But not every time that something is said, you all come swinging. Who is here who doesn't want a better Nigeria? Nobody that's on this platform who doesn't want it. Okay? And we don't really care whether it's P2B or anybody else. All who are concerned that the people of Nigeria should get better, the system should get better. So we have less pressure coming from that end. All right, I see it's in between of hand. I don't know. Wait, well, that's, that's my take. <laughs> I'm waiting for, her. I'm waiting for her tomorrow. I'll be here. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, a lot of hands up, but I want to uh, do my vote of thanks before uh, I'll be listening. Uh, no. um, Dr. Damage, you give me the chance to respond to him real quick. You give me the chance to respond to him real quick. Oh. No, no, I raised my hand before you. This one I will not agree. We go, Tim, we go first. KJ, KJ, KJ. KJ, everybody is not the same. But hold on, uh, hold on. Let me just. Uh, I want to really thank everybody um, that joined okay. us. Okay. Um, we're patient enough for for this to um, happen. Uh, and especially those that supported us, uh, that donating money and doing things like that. It's very helpful. Um, like Mars the Prince, thank you guys. Um, a lot of people were involved in um, making this happen outside of this platform, including people at the Peter B's um, end. So I thank them, they know themselves. So um, we will um, come back um, uh, tomorrow and and do our own thing and next like i said next week we are going to have aisha yusufu and uh, uh, next month we have um mustafa coming here um he has an important message uh his people reached out so so we will keep bringing you guests that are uh, important in the conversation around nigeria and uh, everybody thank you guys um forefathers uh Chim, uh my uh, flagship tone, <laughs> KJ, Alaba, Jagun, uh, Local P, um, as a prince. And of course, I want to thank Ovie. Ovie has been around New York area for the past few days. He was really determined to meet Peter B. And he drove to Boston to go to that event. And um, we appreciate his efforts. Uh, thank you, guys. I will see you tomorrow. Um, take care. Uh, for fathers, so let, let's hear from Chim. Chim, after Chim, and then um, I'll be around. I'll be listening to take a break. Okay, Th thank you, Dr. Damage. I appreciate that. And um, yeah, that was a great show. And I think all panelists, you guys should be proud of yourself. You know, um, all guests are welcome here. And clearly, we were very well behaved today. And uh, please, um, 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 is it the uh, Mazi Prince or Ch Chim? Okay, Chim, go ahead, please. The Mazi Prince. Yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, for father. So what I was going to say is a little bit uh, in line with uh, what KJ said, but from a different perspective. One is, I don't think, you know, sometimes it's like this uh, Donald Trump that those of us who are in the US, I'm not in the US, I said those of us complain about and we say, oh, Donald Trump has uh, uh, um, followers who, uh, who can kill or do this or that. You know, but we repeat the same thing when our own Nigerian politician crops up. I have nothing against me to be. If I was in Nigeria, I would vote for him. If I was in Nigeria, I'm a very active person. I've taken part in political activities. I've supported campaigns. I'm not a top figure, but I support, I go for... In fact, let me not go too far. But I think we do that man a disservice. When some of us come here and just want to, you know, the same attitude we carry to some of our churches to go and be, ah, my papa, 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 papa. Let's not do that in politics. We're not helping him. If we see, if you are not able to see the loopholes to call to him to change, keep quiet. Do your own uh, asheju, as your people will call it. Then let those who are bold enough to say, Mr. Peter, we like you, but we don't like this hole we're seeing. Correct? Okay. You understand? You that's, the only way, that's the only way we're going to help this person to be able to, you know, be the kind of politician we're looking for. Don't expect that everybody's going to come here 
and praise him to high heavens and say his style is the best. For me, I see loopholes in his style. I'm not asking him to be a dictator. I've never asked him to, to grab it, steal it. I love his candor. I love the way he wants to follow process. He should continue. However, when it comes to politics, there are also certain strategic things you do, not just in the mountain of, say, I'm being strategic. There are certain things you do. There is nothing wrong in, we all know, and we all agree that a lot of the people, LP candidates who went to the National Assembly, they wrote on his goodwill. They wrote on his goodwill to get the way they get. So why can't he, in the same way, knowing this, let's, there's nothing to be pretentious about, say, okay, you know what? Hold these uh, guys accountable. I kept saying it here even before he appeared. How is he able to call those guys for a meeting before there's a major decision in the National Assembly to say, guys, go there with a the common front. Go there and be able to pull in a condition that will make the, the Lutheran Party come to align with Jesus. Okay, what do you want? And you tell them this is what you want for the people, and they will do it. Those of us who live in Canada, we see what the NDP is doing with the uh, Labour Party. Labour Party is the ruling party, but the Labour Party is in office today because the NDP gave it an alliance that has kept it in office. Otherwise, if they didn't have that alliance, they would have been asked to call for election. These are some of the things, I know we're not running a parliamentary system. I know very well. But what I'm saying is, I think Mr. Pito, will be, as much as he has done well, there's more to, to be done. To come here and tell us I'm not in charge of Labour Party, I'm sorry, I don't agree. From here till next year, if you come back and repeat it again, I will say I don't agree. That's not the way to. That's not the way he's going to be able to accomplish that objective he wants to accomplish by just telling us that he's not in charge of Labour Party. No, no, he needs to be in charge of Labour Party. He needs to. In fact, if he's a good man, he needs to be in charge of it and make sure his fellow good men are in charge. Let them run the things and not necessarily perfect them, so that that's the only way Labour Party will grow. But if he just sits and looks and says, let them do what they want to do, it will not work. It will not work. So. Please, I just thought I needed to say it for people who think well, we're not we're not bashing the man. The man yeah, but, but, but do you think that that is a product of the Nigerian environment where if you are forceful, it's very easy for you to get corrupted uh, or even taken out? Because if you are a good person and forceful at the same time, you get taken out. So he's now used to playing gentle and surviving. I don't think, I don't think so. Because if you look at uh, Chief Awolo and his grips on... Uh, was the first party and the national at the in in the southwest in the sixties? What was the name of that? Party? Ag was that Ag? Ag, Ag, and then UPN and Co. The guy had action, a control. Action group. Action. He had a control. But the only thing is this: Awolo was a good man for his people. I, I mean, we may have our little differences about him here and there, because he look at the people he he had around him: Ajasi, uh, Bolaige, uh, Bisi Onobanjo. Let's name all those. Those guys were not pushovers, though. They were not there licking Mr. Chief Awolo's ass. Sorry to use that word. They were not. But guess what? He was comfortable having them as his henchmen in the different states. I, I know for sure, I've had people who had told me things of how Bulaige was one of the toughest people who gave him a tough time in the party. But he didn't, but he allowed it. You understand? But again, there was a system he used to be able to hold the party and to push his policies. Because guess what, um, Forefather, if you remember, this free education that we have we had in the Southwest, I can bet you some of those governors would not have implemented it if Awolo was not firm and so yeah. that they all carried it to their states and they did it. Just so I think we don't do this man a good service when we come here and say, hey, leave him, he's the way he is. No, Nigeria is not going to change. The guy, the opposition, the sorry, the ruling guy. You saw, you saw his confidence when he tells you, grab it, do it. You see the way he has manipulated that thing, but for a wrong reason. You understand? Know, yeah. I, for one, would have loved a Tinubu if his control was that he gets those good candidates, he lets them run, he's on the policy side. When they are going wrong on the policy side, he say, no, this is not what our party stands for. But we know that the man is doing all those things for his selfish reason. That's where he fits from. You understand? Know, so nothing wrong in being in charge, but for the good. And we have examples yeah. of people who have done these things. We come here, we talk about Le Kwan. So, but, but, what, but what if he's not like that kind of person? What do you do? Well, no, well for what I have no answer to that, honestly. You see, I, I have an answer. I have an answer for, for that. Listen, and I'll be reading one guy who calls himself Spiderman. I mean, I don't really give a damn what you're writing. Okay? My stance still remains my stance. I don't have any 
issue with P2B. Um, sorry, sorry, uh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm going to yeah, remember Mazi Prince wanted to speak and uh, he doesn't. Sorry, speak I just let them in a minute. I'll, I'll yeah. be true. Now, if you are going to a terrain, you first of all you have first of all to what you do, you analyze your the forces coming against you, your enemy strength and weaknesses. They call it smart, right? And then you know how to prepare your strategy to avert or to come against whatever you're going against. I'm not saying the man is not strategic. And we're not saying the man is, you know, he's not a good man. But you need some firepower to get certain things delivered. If you are not a very tough person, you, you need someone who can take that position and say, okay, you know what? I'm not going to do this dirty job. Hey, uh, Ed, go and do the dirty job. I need four father told this and this and this and this. Uh, but, I, you know, you know my nature. I'm not going to be. So he does the thing. He, he goes there and turns the guy off. And then you can come in like like the one who quenches the fire and say, hey, you know, it's enough, it's enough, it's enough. Okay. But exactly. he delivered your message. That is what mm. is it's all about. You can't tell me you are not the entire of the party. So everybody can go to do whatever they like. At the end, who now gets you to the position where you are going? How do you get there? Because this is a transport that's going to get you to your pos your desired destination. You are not in charge of it. You are not controlling it. They are all going haywire. At the end of the day, who can you trust to deliver your goods? It's not about being the, you know, I mean. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mazi, please go ahead. Thank you for your patience. Mazi, are you there? Mazi Prince, California. Mazi Prince, California. Goodness, goodness. Uh, thank you, uh, Paul Fathers. In, in as much in as much as the, as the habit, as the, can you hear me? Can't you hear yes, me? Loud and clear, we can hear you. He, he, he just won't poke me, Abby. He just won't poke me. KJ, my, KJ, my brother, make you calm down. Sometimes maybe they take chill pill now. Ah. Eh? Abby, because you never go sit down with uh, Trump. You know, you know, say try they come up soon. That Trump, that. Uh, Try a one that they had up and down. He's coming. Eh? That hush money, that I travel when he go. He must come tell us how he take to one. Mm? Eh? No, no, no worries about it. I told you now. I told you. Uh -huh. you, you. You don't see what's in the apple. For me, guys, what I'm trying to say is that with all due respect, for me, when I follow somebody, I don't follow somebody blindly. Okay? I would never be in a court. I have never been in court. I will never be in court. And I put it on everything that is very dear, very dear to me. You know, um, I've looked at it and seen that we all different. There is a way we all handle our, our things. And OB is not like that. Believe me, there are discussions going on the background. And when I say this thing, I'm saying because I'm somebody who loves interviews. I've seen uh, Pat Otomi being interviewed. I have seen um, uh, Kenneth Okunkwa being interviewed. I have seen uh, 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 this uh, this guy from from Kaduna, the spokesperson that represented him in the in the labor meeting the other day. You know, uh -huh. I've seen him speak. In all these things, I try to speak one thing: there are discussions going on. The only person that is not listening is Abure. And to tell you the truth, we all know Nigerian politics. Nigerian politics involves two things. It's either you paint your, you know, you you you, you paint your fingers with the, the red paint, or you go the corruption way, which we already know Obi is not that he's never gonna go with those two sides. He won't do that. And the thing there is, you don't even know who you talk to in Labour Party because there are a lot of moles in Labour Party now. There are a lot of moles. Even Abure himself, I don't trust him. But if I, if I was opportune to, 
talk to you know to advise Pio, I will tell him, don't know how you talk to Abure because whatever you guys say, he might end up you know using it against you. Abure wants power. Abure loves that money that he's seeing in that chairmanship. Before he became the chairman or whatever it is, he was you know he wasn't making that money. He was living in a in an apartment somewhere in Abuja, but today he has houses. So he he's loving it, and he doesn't want to relinquish it. And then at the same time, the guys on the other side are using him because to them they feel the more there is problem in Labour Party, the better it is for them. Yeah, but, but hold on, let hold us on, see hold things on, hold play on. This, out. This is a great thing. Is it? This is the same let thing that happens. Let us see things play out. Oh, sorry, the same sorry. way I love sorry, Nigerian, please. you know, sorry. the way sorry. I look at Nigerian politics sorry. is the same. Yeah, I think you are delayed, uh, Prince. Um, I think uh, there is something about this Abure that I think we should clarify. How is it he has support with people in the I same party? Now. Yeah, in the same party that Peter B won vast. More, vastly more vote than the Labour Party has ever won. How did he have so much support to be able to do all the things that he's still doing? Why, why are P2B supporters not there to block some of these things Abure is doing? How did that happen? Forefathers, most of P2B's supporters are not card carrying members of the oh. party. Okay, well, forefather is, is very, very simple. simple. It's transaction. Yeah. Understand Nigerian politics. With Arab and B and all that stuff, did you see the, okay when the problem started in the beginning of all the problems, Arab and B was interviewed. And what did he say? That Labour Party was a party where they use, you know, uh, uh this other guy use them, they just come and give them money just to do one or two things. That was what they were doing. They weren't going there to win. They were not going there to win, they were just going there just to be a force and then the uh the ones that that might win will come to them and you know sort them out people said that the youth said that the youth leader now i don't know to kenneth uh, kenneth uh, kennedy i don't know to was an errand boy that they were sending him to go and buy them uh, uh rice and beans or whatever it is uh, uh, lunch you know what i mean that's to show you how corrupt they were but we don't want to play in those kind of politics. And to me, I believe that when you believe in democracy, when you're a Democrat, you play by the rules. Don't detect. Anything he starts detecting, I will unfollow him. That is me. Oh, Let you. the things play by itself. Okay. Um, thank you. Yeah. Um... Uh, Ferrari, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you all. Um, I just, I just want to be very honest with you all. How much do you guys really know about uh, Nigeria? I mean, current Nigeria, Nigeria in the past. How much do we know? Yes, we come down here, we push this argument, we push that argument. Let me first of all say, yes, I am on Omoye's side on the fact that we are men and we come here, we talk every time we're not doing enough. I agree with that. I don't think uh, people like KJ and the rest doing a pushback to that statement should do that. You know, we shouldn't be. That's our problem. Every time there's a general comment, each one of us individualize it. And that's part of the Nigerian problem. Then I want to ask you guys all want this question. You come here, how much do you know, apart from people's behavior, our politics, the transactional nature of our politics, how much, how much do you guys really know about Nigeria? Nigerian problem is historical. What do I mean by that? If none of you go back and read in details, we were not born when these things were happening. What is happening now is just a repetition and re echo of stuff that had happened in the past from 1950 something to now. 
you know, before independence, then during independence, the fourth six, six years of independence, then the civil war. You guys, we got to spend time to educate ourselves to go back and read about the Nigerian situation. What is what is going on in Nigeria? We come down here, we re echo the same debate we're having now, guys. Let me be let me break it down to you all. The same debate. What year is this? 2024, April. They had it in 1954. They had it in 1959. They had it in 1963. They had it in 1966. And that 1966 song was the saddest one. The events that occur from January till August of 1966 was a combination of the nature of who we are. Who we are as Nigerians. You guys got to go back. I beg of you. Let us hold on all discussion until you go back and read a little bit more. There's good books out there. There's that guy by that Ogun guy, Fatherless People, that gives you the prelates of our existence when the, with the colonial masters, how we inherited this problem we are dealing with now. And then if you go back, please go and read why we struck. You can't get it on Amazon. Get it from Nigeria. It's cheaper from Nigeria. Read that book from page to page. Then you will understand. We uh, are, Ferrari, can we, we, can, we, we can, can we try to keep with the masters, calling people masters? Um, you know, young people are watching. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the colonial masters. So what, the way I describe Maybe it is mas that, the masters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, masters. I got you. I got you. Let me go on because I will lose my thought. The, the problem is that our generation, all of us here talking, we are the Mongo Park generation. Mongo Park discovered the Niger generation. That needs to go. We need to open up our head, our brain, take that garbage out and fill it with the right stuff. That's number one. Number two, I swear to God, everything they've told you about our Nigerian leaders from 1960 to the present are nothing but lies. Lies. And so when you grow up on lies, defending lies and defending these leaders as being there for you, you continue to make the same mistake. And that's why we are so ethno and religious, ethno religious. That means the issue of tribe, we overdo it. The issue of religion, we overdo it because we just never understood that past history. And when you don't understand your history, there's no way you're going forward. You won't have the right strategy. Nigeria is purely a business set up by the British. And then a lot of our children, I mean, our fathers, continue that business on behalf of the British. So I don't want to go, you all know those stories, but please go and read, read, read more. So now back to the present situation. Here we are arguing, Obi should do this. Abiola should have done that. Obi should uh, this, that. We all know the problem. At least we know the skeletal shadow nature of our problem. Do you understand? Before you can solve this problem, which has been there since 1950 or 1960, you understand? You need to see what you are dealing with. Sometimes it amazes me and I wonder, I swear to God, and I meant this sincerely, if the OB understand what he's dealing with. That was why I asked him a question, who are you? A revolutionary, a reactionary, or a progressive? Um, I don't mean this in a bad. Please don't yeah, interrupt. Ferrari, please let me land. Can you let me land? Hold on. I, why I, I, do you I do this? Why do you do this? Sorry, do I'm not trying to inter inter why, interrupt. What's the you? point now? What's the point? I, I, I let think me finish. Then ask your question you after. Made, because you I will lose my thoughts and I won't make my point. And then calm down, Ferrari. Calm down. Calm down, bro. I'm trying. Please calm down. I like some of the points you made before regarding sensitizing the people. Um, I think. In the end, that is what needs to be done if we are going to change uh, the country peacefully. 
Thank you have you. to sensitize people to realize those things. And Thank I agree you. with you on that one. And the question now is how we do that. And I like the question Thank you put forward to Peter B, whether he is willing to like find, find uh, create media houses to sensitize people to these things. Thank and you. how we can do that is a challenge. But I, I think I was on a panel with somebody that actually created a radio ch channel recently, this year, in Nigeria. But they wanted to talk about historical stuff and uh, not necessarily studying people about current affairs so yeah. that is oh, the kind let, of stuff let, we have let to me do just land and then you can continue from there because you're making me lose my line of thought now you see so if we don't understand what we are dealing with how do we go forward so people like obi and i wanted to add shogore shogore yes he's trying doing, doing all that galala yeah i respect him anybody who can oppose the system, I respect them because I myself haven't opposed the system that much except lately. You have to say, I respect them, but there's one thing. Who is Shogore? Until you all answer that, please don't follow anybody. Don't follow B. Don't follow Shogore until they tell you who they are. Are they reactionaries? Are they revolutionaries? Are they progressive? If Shogore, even though he's been claiming to be a revolutionary, if he was a true revolutionary, or a true progressive, he will put aside his pride and work with Obi to move that country forward. That's a slight on him for now. You understand what I, where I'm going with this? The same thing with people like Obi. You can't be a revolutionary progressive. You can't be. You can't. You can't be on two sides. You got to be one. Do you want to save this country? Like was it where somebody asked, "Are you a mechanic or a driver?" First of all, you can't be a driver if the car is not running. So you see? So everybody now on stage is trying to drive a car that is damaged. That is, the engine is not, that's not running. So what can you be at this stage of our life in Nigeria is that a mechanic. That's the pragmatic reality of our situation. The people, 90% of them, they don't do the writing. They don't follow law. The educated ones don't do. So why would you, anybody want to drive a car that's not moving or that has no wheels or no engine? It yeah, depends. So it depends. If you are being, if the arm robbers are very close, you, you might move. Um, if the car's tire is not working, you might no, want to roll it. Don't make a joke out of this. <laughs> I'm trying to going. say that. that no, no, but it's really one scenario. I'm, I'm, I'm not making a joke out of this. It's actually and logical. I'm thinking as I'm putting this. Uh, yeah, this but I am I trying to. Parameters I'm trying, don't make a I'm, joke out of it. Take I'm it not making a joke out of it. It's actually logical. Because sometimes you could want to nudge things forward, even when you are in a precarious situation. That's what I'm trying to highlight. Yeah. Now, without serving as a defendant of those who staged that nasty first coup, they saw that the car, the way it was going, the engine was going to knock, which was why they claimed they struck. Do you understand? So the question is, who were they? But when they did that, there were a lot of reactionaries who stopped them. You understand? And what subsequently what we got after that became lies upon lies upon lies upon lies until we are now in this massive pool of ocean of mess. Let me stop there so that others can contribute and take out of what I'm saying or add or whatever they want to do. Let me just stop there. But you guys got to think about it. Why would you want to drive Thank you. a car that is not running? Thank you. If that's um, what Obi wants to do, why does he want to do that? Oh, um, uh, Ferrari, thank you. Um, Orome, I see you there, and um, I know you have been going in and out. I'm not sure I've seen you here before. Um, have you been here before? Yeah, for Father. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm so happy I, to see you. Are, are you in Nigeria? Yeah, I'm in Nigeria. Uh, I, no, I mean, are you in, in Nigeria right now? No, I mean, I mean I'm in Congo. Okay. Ah, Hmm, that's going to be interesting. I've got no, no, I don't think we've had anybody from Congo before. Um, is Ed next? Okay, Ed, thank you for joining us. I'm not sure I've heard you say anything at all today. Thank you. Um, welcome. Oh, yeah. Um, since Arome has been going off and on, I think it, it could go, it could go uh, first. I, I was gonna say Ar Arome is in bad A when I saw the light behind. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even in Nigeria. Is he? He no, seen. I'm not in Nigeria. Here we have uh, 24 hours electricity, and uh, for as cheap as 
Maybe what? 24 hours electricity where I live. Okay, where you live. It depends on in Nigeria too. If you live in VI, VI and Wuse and all those areas, you do get good power supply, to be fair. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, so, what do you think about the conversation so far about the interview with uh, Peter Obiano? Yeah, um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. And uh, I'm really uh, impressed by the contribution of every one of you here. I've heard uh, our our first lady who just left. I've heard uh, Ferreira. I've heard Mazi, California, and and some of you very brilliant ideas. And I must really commend all of you. So I'm so sad when I think of my country, Nigeria. No matter all the effort we are we are making abroad, we always feel like we are attached to where we come from. And if Nigeria does not work and I leave this earth, I will never be happy with myself. That means I've lost it all. So we all have collective idea. We see how countries work. Every country is owned by citizens, not those who are ruling. Those who are ruling, they are just there to serve, not to lord it over anyone. So we have lost it right from time when we allow these uh, unscrupulous elements to feel as if they, they own our life, they own the country, and uh, we work hard, we bring all these dollars home and they take it back and send it abroad, buying houses and all that. If that, if we can't stop that, then we are, it's like someone going to the river to fetch water with a basket. So I start with the elect uh, electoral reforms in our country. There's nothing to write to me about. We don't even have an election. So even though anyone come out and is a good person and is very determined to change the country, he wouldn't be able to do anything if that system is not totally scrapped and something new comes up. So uh, all the effort PO is doing and all of you guys in diaspora are doing will be in vain if we don't have a very good electoral system. So I think this is what I want all of us to think about. And we must make sure that this works. Mm. Thank you. Mm. You know, the electoral system that we had the last time was almost good to being perfect to an extent. Uh, because we had the opportunity, all parties had the opportunity when, after they cast the vote, to take a record of what the vote was and take a picture of it and hold it. So it's Nigerians that just disorganized it. And that, that really scares me because almost anything that you put again, they will find a way to f screw it up. Because how can you, even, even opposition parties that were surrounding it, how can they not say, okay, let's band together and all take a picture of this so that it's proof of what just happened in every single polling unit so that no matter what they go and do elsewhere, the proof is there. Because there was always that moment where everybody's present, they take that picture. But somehow, we find a way to screw it up. Um, so thank you for your listening and I really wish when you get a chance come in because DROC is, is something that a lot of people talk about and people want to understand what is going on there um, you now saying that you are living in 24 hours power supply you know in, in most people's mind they think DROC is you don't, you don't receive beating before you don't receive they're not beating before they don't ever beat you before why, why? Now they for take now they for beat you, eh? What do you, what do you, I'm taking, what do you think? I'm taking a lot of beating here, not to mention in real life. What do you think is happening? I'm taking beating every day now. Um, so I really appreciate um, your coming in, and please uh, try to be joining us because we really want to know a lot about um, the country you are in. Um, so I think is it Ed or Paul? Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's me now. Um, okay, Ed, please so, go ahead. So, yeah, thank you. Um, well, I think. Uh, Everybody has kind of um, said things that, I mean, if, if you were to weigh them, everybody has made sense, you know. Um, but I I mean, when I come on this panel, I just try to analyze what everybody's saying. You know, it's, it's very much um, a learning experience to me just as much as it's also an opportunity for me to make my opinion um, heard. Um, so I haven't said that. The idea of Mr. Peter will be, um, you know, not being as, you know, um, as hard 
hitting as we want him to be. I think it's just like it's it's a two-edged sword in in a way. You know, in one way it seems like you know we're telling him to take full reins of a party that he came to meet, right? He's not won an election in the party personally, right? So it's hard for him to, in that sense, be a lead, as in a leader in the sense of pulling all the strings in the party. I, I don't know if you get me. So if you, if, 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 you, if you start pushing him to that point, it's like, yes, we know that Labour Party has the goodwill it has today because of Peter Obi, but then it is a mutually beneficial kind of relationship. He needs the party if he's going to stay there just as much as the party needs him. So in that sense, it I, I think it, it might just um, be best for him to you know tread wisely until he has an alternative. And that's why I asked him the question: If things really go from push to shove, are you willing to jump ship and probably go to some other party? I don't understand the points that people like Shim and um, KJ are making about him. You know, coming out and you know. Because the whole idea of when you're asked questions about your party and you you you're not aware of it, I mean, even when you're asked questions about thirty thousand um, dollars um, being taken by your, your 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 senators, and you know, it's it just it just doesn't um, tell it. It doesn't inspire. You know, um, it, it's not inspiring to hear your leader say that. But having said that, I think we should also be willing to to also cut him some slack. The reason why we can talk about Mr. Peter Obi is because we know he's willing to hear and to respond to us, right? So you don't expect that with someone like a Tinubu. You're not going to expect that with someone like an Atiku. And, you know, it's not just because, I mean, where I'm from, they say you don't kill the person that's powerful just because he's willing to answer all your requests or all your responses, you know, you just, it's like we're trying to build a perfect man, you know, this guy has his personality, he has also his weaknesses. So in that sense, I think there's a need to cut him some slack um, while also um, taking him to task on, on, on these issues. Um, also, there was something I wanted to ask, but I just, I just wondered how controversial it would come across when I asked. I just wanted to know what the relationship is between him and um, not just the national chairman of Labour Party, but even Dati Ahmed, because so far I've not seen that guy in in um, in the public, you know. And they used to be like, you know, always going together. So it's just, it's just I, I don't really know. And I wanted to also see, um, or probably just hear from him about what 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 that relationship is going to look like going into twenty twenty seven. You know, because definitely you need someone from the north, and who, who, who are you gonna who are you gonna be presenting in that in that case? Yeah. But so far, I mean, all all around it was was a pretty good conversation. One thing you, um, at most of us have acknowledged here is that um, he is very accessible, and that's something you want from a leader. You know, I can you know I can understand where someone like Prince might come from, like, you don't need to keep hitting this guy hard because the same things that we want to say because we want accountability, those things might be taken again as, you know, points by the, by the opposition in quotes, actually the ruling party. You know, it's like we are, we are kind of rehashing the points they use against him, even though we know that they, they don't really have a point, you know. So it's like you might be demoralizing people in this camp, asking those questions, uh, but if, uh, but even at that, you know, everybody has the right to demand accountability from someone who they who they invested in, you know. Um, so, I mean, pretty much a very a very good conversation, and um, I, I I really enjoyed it, and I look forward to um, make, um, the future ones that we'll probably have with him. You know, it's 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 really going to be a tough one for him in 2027. That's that was something I really I want to see how well he's going to inspire hope in us, the followers. That's why I asked him. You know, you you're up against people who were not even incumbents the last time. You know, but they were still able to snatch this thing and grab it from you. So what are you going to do now when they have you know firmly 
you know, embedded themselves in the system. You know, now they control everything. You've talked about the whole idea of state capture. So for me, I wanted to know, this is your opportunity to kind of give us an elevator pitch, something to encourage us, something to inspire us as we wait for 2027. Because it's like, if you yourself, you're agreeing that this there's, there's state capture, would this be worth our emotional investment as we go into 2027? Or should we just maybe think of some alternative um, person or even alternative way to, you know, get the country working? So, but, yeah. Th thank you. Thank you, um, Ed. <laughs> Regarding um, governors, have we ever had a governor or ex-governor here before? Um, for for, for, us, for us, please, one um, observation. Um, please follow the rules, right? Uh, Mr. Dagon, please sit up, right? Thank you very much, please. Hmm. We don't like them um, in our conversation. Yeah, um, fair, fair I, point. I'm standing up, or no, you're not, sir. You're, you're lying down, please. That, that kind of standing up is uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm begging you. I'm begging. I'm that begging kind of standing you. up is uh, this is you know what? Uh, you know, uh, you want to have to give it, give it to a uh, local, you know, he does keep an eye on rules and all. So I appreciate <laughs> that, local. Yeah, I, I, I think to be more involved in the conversation than. You know, I, I, I thought he was going to say follow the rules. It's Jagun's turn. That's what I thought he was going to say. And I just accepted. Mm. Uh, no, no problem. We are coming to you. Have we had a governor here before, or is P2B is the first governor that has ever been here? Wow! If that was the case, that's quite. Um, yeah, he, he's he made himself accessible from that point of view. Um, okay, uh, who is next? Is it uh, Paul? I think it's Paul, or is it? No, Paul? I have not spoken. But well, what Pereira. happened with Pereira? Pereira jumped spoken. over me. No, I have four got... people jumped over me. You were spoken. Typical it was Ferrari. Time though. after you, I got I got jumped. No, over I didn't speak. Or, I didn't speak since I've come back. But you know, Pe no, Ferrari. You, basically, all of you have spoken. Uh, uh, tense of review of Peter B. Every one of you when have spoken. When did I speak, Paul? Everybody has no, spoken I, I, many no, times. No, I said. I said. No. Me? No. I didn't even interview B. So I didn't Let's even follow, follow <laughs> Paul, 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 can, Paul can, go can ahead, we, bro. Can, can we, Paul, um, go ahead. Um, Tone, we are going to come to you. Tone doesn't talk for long anyway. So, um, so Paul, please go ahead. Then we'll speak to, uh, we'll go to Tone. Okay. So I want to say, uh, Tutin, um, when we talk about um, opposition, we talk about incumbents, what Ed is saying. Sometimes, when you take power, you work against you. It's not only when you are in the ruling party. Because if you are in the ruling party, you have advantage. Yeah, you may have advantage in terms of raising more money to do more aggressive um, campaigning and the likes. But if you don't use your term very well, it work against you tremendously. Since I became citizen in America, I'm an independent. But in as much as I, I, I'm an independent, if they pick Biden and Trump, I will vote for Biden. But I can tell you for now, if this next election will be only Biden and Trump, I will vote for Trump. Not because I like Trump, because Biden failed me. You understand how it works. So because I now I've seen so many things that will have reasons not to vote Welcome, for Biden. Paul. I love that. You know, I've seen so many reasons not to vote for Biden. Paul, Paul, I still, Paul, I will please, not sorry, for sorry to interject you, Paul. Um, you know, Nigerian election is not just about money, and Nigerian election is not about really performance. It's really about power, I, struggle. I know, I know, power, power, and struggle, and the likes. Remember all the Yoruba people that are crying today. You understand? They are very aggressive people. You, you take it, you leave it. Yoruba people, you give it to them. They play politics very well. They are the ones that comes out to fight government from the. You want to make sure the Nicola Pokuti family, you want to make sure Ghani Fawyem, you want to make sure Femi Falano, you, you, you can't let we will cancel so many of them, even when they are own, they'll stay opposition, they will fight and the likes. So you give it to them. So think all these things that Tinubu is doing. Think well, could, it be, could, it be, man. Paul, Paul, could it be proximity that Lagos was the capital and they were, you know, that's basically Yoruba area. So it makes it easier. No, it, for it's them. not like that. Remember yeah, Article 1 in our two states. Remember Article 1 in our two states. Tinibu didn't lose only Lagos. Tinibu also lose Oshun State to Atiku. You understand? They remember PDP again. Also, you know, so it's it's it's, it's varies. 
that's what I, that's what I'm saying. We I understand we are not there, but with the way things are going in Nigeria, things is so tough that somebody will just look himself very well and said, "Oh, let me just play the tribal politics with what Tinubu has deal with them." And if Tinubu keep continuing to deal with them, I don't think it will work to some extent. But let's leave that part alone. Then another part with Peter will be uh, uh, Osita answer one of my questions that I want to ask uh, will be like I argued before the interview uh, started in terms of follow-up questions and other things. I think to some extent, OB is not economical with the truth. You understand? He tried to play around it, but he is not saying the truth. Look, maybe so many people don't really understand. Federal governments don't conduct local government election. It is states that conduct local government election. Who is taking the governor that is supposed to conduct local government election? It's like Tinubu now 2027 will say they are taking him to court, so he will continue no election. I would have follow up and asked would be that question. That's exactly what he's saying. So he is not being truthful. He saw a very rotten system, and he himself benefited from it. He might take the proceed and said, Oh, I helped this local government, I built their local government secretariat, I built this other local government secretariat. Well, it might be like the story of the Piccadilly cycle. But that, but that doesn't seem fair, though. He said something that I didn't know was true. He said local governments get money directly. I didn't local know that. Local government, see, let me explain the law to you. The law is clear. The law is that every local government gets their own money from Abuja. Remember, every local government allocation is different according to your size and level. The biggest mm. local government in Nigeria is a limousine local government. According to your size. So local government can get as low as... 12 million and so look some local government is getting as high as 120 million that's why a state like can could get 44 local government just to rack more money and the likes but what we are saying is that the way the constitution spell is spell it clearly every local government get their money the governor oversee they don't say control the yeah, but then why, why people have been saying that the governors are blocking local governments from getting money or this one? No, the governor muzzled the money when the money comes. And any, every chairman is so scared of saying anything. You say anything, you are not winning. Because it is governor that conduct election. And also remember another funny thing. In this. No, 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 no. The sorry, sorry. Let's not go past that one. The money is in the local government account. How does the governor get a hold of it again? It's a joint account. But the local government already knows its own money. Clearly, as the money is coming, it's a joint account. You understand? That's why that's why the governor can oversee what you are doing with the money. But while your money is coming from Abuja, Ajerobi local government know that my money is 65 million. Apapa local government know my money is 72 million. Ali Mosho know my money is 90 million. So they already know their money. Governor just oversee so that they won't abuse it. Or governor is the one that conducts state election. And state election is three years, not four years. So governor have the opportunity or that leeway in between any time, governor will always conduct an election. So if you don't fall in line with the governor, the governor will kick you out. This is how oh, they started it and everything. It is governor. Local government election has nothing to do with INEC at all. It is state governor that conducts election. It is hmm. state governor that will elect state neck uh, chairman, like as we have Mahmoud. It is the state governor that will elect state neck chairman that will take to the status of assembly that you all, all know that the status of assembly is also rubber stamp so mm. you already know clearly and that so the Nigeria governor is, is putting federal. his own person there so but, when obi is saying that obi is not being truthful he may use the money very well but he still break the law what did the law say he also break the law he is also what we call an accomplice he also benefited from the rotten system you understand whichever way you want. Look, people but, 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 when, but, but when you say benefited, though, I, I benefit, don't understand. Benefited, How did you benefit in, ben, benefited in the sense that now Obi will campaign to you now that I built seven secretariats, seven local government secretariats. It's not your duty to build. If they have their money, let them do whatever they want to do with their money. It's like it's like a person just sees Lagos State uh, money, and a person just said, I did all the old road in Lagos State. And you seize Lagos State allocation that is coming. No, the world person will hold, withhold Tinubu's money during Tinubu's time. That is wrong. It's not your place to do that. So, if we want to talk about the constitution and the law, OB also did the wrong thing. Like every one of them is doing yeah, the but, wrong but thing. Benefited so, seems to imply that he personally benefited from it, but it was for the people. Benefited who is that. 
poor father, poor father, my, because of my father sent me to school, my father cannot earn my salary. Now, I'm the one that will still earn my salary. Yes, my father may send me to school, he may suffer, he may wear one pair of shoes and send me to school. That does not give him the impetus to earn my salary. What the constitution said is clear. You, the governor, who is taking you, governor, to court to conduct the election? If you, if you also appoint a state uh, electoral uh, chairman, the state House of assembly ratified, and for them to conduct an election, who will take you to court that there should not be any election? You understand? So if okay. you said so, like I oh, said, if you said so, let me you ask can do the same thing. What has been said understand. was his reason for not allowing the local governments to do what they did. He That's said they he said they were taking him to court. They were going to court. They were going to court. Did you conduct state state electoral chairman? You understand? Did you conduct that? That they have the state electoral chairman? Did you conduct that? And they say they want to go for election. Did did, did you did they conduct any election that people will say we conduct this we contest this election we go to court that the election was rigged. The election was flawed. The election was this. Did you do that? Because then why, why did they go to court then? The committee. No, no. What I'm saying is that if you had already do it, that is when people can even go to court. Like Obi himself went to court. Guess what? Which means they even conduct the election. And he, contest, he is contesting the result. And he said, I'm going to court. But did you even get to that level that these people say, oh, no, they read my election. I'm going to court. Did you do so? Or you just simply follow what everybody is doing today, appoint caretaker committee. Hmm. That's that's my take. You understand? He didn't do that. He didn't do that. You understand? He follows suit like everybody is doing. Caretaker committee, caretaker. even Lagos State that will cost Tinubu so much. Lagos State is one state that don't even do that caretaker committee. In as much as we know the local government chairman is more or less like an appointment. You understand? But I, 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 I that, agree with you. That the fact is that they still follow the constitution. They still conduct an election, and somebody still won an election. It may be rigged, but they still follow. But we did not even do that. Like many of them didn't do that. You understand? Mm. So he cannot play around. And say, oh, they go to court. No, you're in charge. If you say so, like I said again, then Tinubu can also say, oh, Mahmoud has problem here and there. People are taking Mahmoud to court. So let's postpone the election. Like what the president in the Senegal almost did. And the court said no, it won't work. So we did that. You are you are asking you are accusing Peter Obi of uh, of violating the constitution somehow. But fair point. Are you, fair? you, you, you are allowed well. to have your say, but people that know better, I don't know too much about the in-depth uh, details about this. Uh, Tone, please go ahead. Um I fair you I think your it's quite compelling. I've learned quite a bit from your submission about local government um, oh, structures. Um yeah, hi everybody again. Um, mm. Paul, I think some of your submissions were not entire. I, I, I don't think you got all the facts right, but it is it is it, it's okay anyway. But what I'm trying to say, what I said to be, and that was what I was. So I would love to learn. I would like you to educate me on that. Tell me anywhere that I that I did no, we'll, wrong. We'll I would come, love we'll to come, learn. We'll come. We'll, yeah. we'll, I will come back to that because, uh, as far as I know, the National Assembly people actually sued him to court so that he will interfere in the local government election. The, he, but that was a long thing. But, but what I wanted to talk about is, and that is what everybody seemed to uh, have forgotten. If Tinobu, without being the president, was able to influence this uh, judiciary and the, um, the uh, electoral commission, now he's a sitting president. And Tinobu is not just, um, he's not just um, another campus and he's very dynamic very strategic when it comes to this sort of things he's got, he's got the election in his bag if mr peter Obi, from what i heard this evening with all due respect to him i still respect him as he still has my support if they are going to if they are going to go with this approach that everybody should be orderly i know that i'm not saying they should go out and start destroying property or anything but with this approach it's not happening it's not happening, and a lot of people are just going to are just going to leave. Like what uh, um, uh, like what my brother said as uh, as uh, 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 said to him, Ferreira told him about the radio station, and I said, "Well, Rudolph is all, is already doing it." That's, that's 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 not the kind of response I I wanted to hear from him. That's not the kind of response I was. Um, I, maybe the man does not even understand the depth of what Ferreira was trying to say to him. So the thing is, uh, with that even for some time now we've not been hearing of him we don't know what's going on 
it could even be that he's even is on his way out of uh, Labour Party or is already his heart and soul is already out and all that we until one day it will be announced. So for me, him sitting docks uh, with, uh, with Labour Party, this present Labour Party, is he's not doing himself any any any, um, any favors. If he's got that number of votes that 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 is being um, uh, that has been portrayed that he has that number following him, then why don't you go on? You know, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of there are a lot of non carry uh, non uh, 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 card carry members and all that. They should start, um, you know, getting people to carry to to be official members of the new party that he he will be forming, and 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 then go for it. So by by all these things and all that being a listen, you cannot be a gentleman in Nigeria. I'm just putting your hands in the pocket because you're dealing with criminals. You are dealing with criminals. Look at what happened in Lagos. The, the if another election happens again, Omo, see the last one that happened will be a child's play. MC Oloma, is he not is he, is he not working about like a celebrity flying pri private jet going into uh, um, Astro Rock and coming out as 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 he wishes? Another elections happen again, they are going to do the same thing. And there's nothing any of us are going to do. Actually, is it me or you that will go and, and and shed our blood blood in a in Nigeria just like that? The only thing that will get these people out, and I keep saying it, is something dynamic. You can interpret it whatever whatever way you want to interpret it. Except something dynamic happens and all that. These people are there. Or or that Nigeria has gone so bad that out of shame, they will just all of them will just abandon ship and just run. Maybe by the time a currency goes to five uh, eight thousand to one or nine thousand to one, it becomes a Somalian money at some point. Mm, they will just right. throw, throw their hands in the air and say, Listen, Omo, we didn't know that this was going to be hard. I give up. Is it then that will be wants to take over an economy that is already in not even comatose, is already dead? But, but, uh, man, I, I I just don't know. I, I just don't know the see the Labour Party, the Labour Party, I believe Abure is one of the uh is one of the dodgy ones we, we know. I know there are a lot of people. If Abure is there and he was voted for, then that means there are a lot of people of Abure's character and share the same sentiment with him that are still in the Labour Party. But, but tone though. Oh, bitch. But mm -hmm. tone. The mm -hmm. vast majority of the people that voted for Peter will be uh they, they are many of them are not even registered in the Labour Party. Maybe what they need to be doing or what we need to be doing is regi registering for the Labour Party because in the end, the Labour Party is owned by the members, not by the leadership. And and then you can I agree with you. I agree with you. The most majority of the people that didn't that voted for Peter Opi are not comfortable with the likes of Abure and other people that we don't even know their faces. That's right. Yeah, no but the thing to do is get in there and remove them. No, that's not the How thing. How do you remove why? them? You cannot because play. Listen, let me tell you why. The of the members. No, no, no. Let me tell you why. Let me, let me, let me, can I, get, can I, I, I support what Tony is saying. Let me tell you why. You see, there's a current rules of engagement that doesn't go with what Obi is claiming to stand for. So Obi needs to separate himself from that rules of engagement and what, start collecting his own people who believes in his own rule of engagement and collectively they would have a purpose. If you're still playing in the Rofforofo fight with these people and you don't want to get into the Rofforofo, you will continue to lose. That's a fact. But, but, but you have is, to stand up and I, say, I don't look, understand I'm how, wearing what you're white. Saying. I've I'm been putting my hand up for eh? And I'm not going to get in this I, I think you're in the fight and, with you. Uh, then you okay, yeah, yeah, you're next. Other people and who local. likes whites, and that's until now you get to a critical number that you can now do face to face with them. If you have two and they are nine, you can't do that. If they are six, and so you but do you four, agree that P2B supporters should join the party and remove these good. people? What party? The Labour party? Party. party. What do you want to party? Friend, is, my it, is, it, is, it, is the party we voted for? The Labour party is calling the Labour party. Before you stop putting, I go say. In the end, the party is about its membership, and the idea that Labour party that 
the, the, the old Labour Party got 5,000. Hold on, membership. hold on. Don't they select hold on. for all hold the on. parties? Wait in the end, that, in the end, that's what parties come it, down to. See, is this the, type of let me let me make my point now. Let me make my point. The last Labour Party election in 2000 and uh, before Peter B, 2019, got 5,000 votes. So it means there are barely even 5,000 members in that party. Then Peter B comes in. He's got over six million votes, and you don't think the the the, the P2B supporter cannot just go in there and flood the party and take yeah, over the whole place? And it doesn't yeah, even have to do it in a rough way, really. Place. It's just bargaining. It's simple. I, 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 I mean, I, I, exactly. From I, where I, I was listening to you, Ferreira, to find out where the rules are in terms of the party engagement, because there is um, different levels of any political party in terms of how they're constructed. Now, P2B has come from PDP into the Labour Party. In doing so, he has been rallying a lot of followers. Now, once you've got an infrastructure, uh, or at least a party that doesn't have such a strong infrastructure, but you have a following, you're supposed to use that following to the best of your negotiative best. Because if you're registering people and you're asking people to register behind you, then practically you know how many people are actually going to vote for you. You would have that in the bag. And once you've got that in the bag, knowing to yourself because you know how many people have signed up under the Labour Party auspices, then Peter O'B should be going to organise that Labour Party. He has to. Otherwise, you're, you're, you're a man, instead of you whipping the horse to drag the, the mechanism uh, ahead, you are dragging the mechanism. Now, that's that's not a, a good way to go forward. You see, you see this John thing he's doing in the North? This is what I expect uh, Dati to be doing because that is more dynamic. No disrespect to Peter Obi. I, I, I don't agree. I don't, well, agree I don't know that what's going more, on. I don't agree because necessarily that that is more dynamic. That is is more aggressive. Not necessarily yeah. more. Peter Obi is dynamic. He's a strong man. He's a serious man. He's got serious ideas. However, you know direct. what? You know what we missed out. Please. You know what we missed out. Peter Obi said twice, actually. I don't know if you caught it. He said, I am part of the elite. And we all know this, but somehow we want to ignore that statement. Now, when he said that, that's a serious thing that we need to understand. He's saying to you, I'm going to walk in a certain way because I know these bastards are around me. That's what he's telling me. I know who's around me. So I'm going to walk in a certain way. Really and truly, I, and I've seen it for a long time, I, 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 when I looked at Peter Obi, I felt that this is a man I can actually work with as a as somebody within a nation. This is a president that I can work with. And that's what we have in someone like Peter Obi. But I Same don't know time, necessarily... Without Dati, though, without things. Dati. Wait, bros. I don't know necessarily two things. One, if Peter Obi is confident of bringing the rally cry, the real rally cry of his people, and when I say his people, I mean the so-called obedience and bringing these numbers to a, a swelling mass, one. Two, the important thing is for him, what he has to do, what he what he's telling you he's ready to do, he's ready to go into the mire of, of, of leadership in that country. And from when he starts, he's going to start breaking things down so we can go forward. Now, we would like him to go backwards and pick up some of the dirty bastards that have been playing stupid games. But I, actually, it, it's not worth his time. What's worth his time is going forward, knowing that all this crap is behind, but you're forging a political, economic, and social uh, strategies to bring the company out of the mire. Because that the country has to work economically. It has to. If Nigeria doesn't work economic, economically over the next five years, Nigeria is over. And I keep saying this. The, the reason why I asked him the question I asked him is because we don't have a lot of time. We don't seem to realize that we don't really have a lot of time to gird ourselves, to guard ourselves, to protect ourselves. We don't. The whole world right now is shaking because of so many imbalances that are going on globally. The, 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 only, the only areas that really have money is the Middle East, China, a little bit of Russia. These are the only places that really have an economy in the world. America's economy is gone. Europe's economy is, is gone. It's not here. We're just printing money. 
We're printing money, which is what the Nigerians have learned to do from these uh, Western people. So whilst there's no economy in the West, Africa that has all of its economy under the ground, we better hurry up and forgive ourselves all for all the bullshit that we do to each other on a day-to-day -day basis and get ourselves organized. Because all the squabbles that we're doing, they pale into insignificance in terms of what's really in front of us. And what's in front of us is, 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 is like winner takes all. If we're not part, if we don't carve out our slice, we are going to starve, literally. So I want to say a lot more than, than what I said as regards P2B, but I, I feel we the people, especially in the diaspora, as tough as it is in the diaspora, I take nothing away from anybody in the diaspora because I know how tough it is. Even if you're, even if you're comfortable, it's still tough. However, given that if we don't, if we don't organize to organize Nigeria, to organize Africa, we're lost. Nigeria has Dragon, you listen to Obi very well. What what have you got to say on what he said about you know setting up a media house like Tone was just saying? Does again, that sound bro, serious? Again, like that's what I'm is ready it's for not, a change? He said Rudolph well, is already doing it. Are well, that's a good an wait, that's a good wait, answer. Wait. How no, is no, that no, a no, good no, answer? No. Yes, let me, let me help you. Let me help you. Bros, bros, I tell you what, what happens to Nigerians. I tell you what happens to us. A lot of us have plans in our heads, good plans, and we don't really know to whom we pitch this particular plan. <laughs> Obi can't do what you're asking him to do, bro. He, he just cannot, and he, he can't largely because that's not he's that's not necessarily how he's thinking about his game. I like what Osita has said before he left that I don't think Obi. What I see, Obi, he has now pushed this fight as far as it would go, as far as his presidency. So that is behind him now, and he is comfortably looking at 2027. What engagements or plans he's making, we don't know. All I'm saying is that 27, 2027, for Obi to come in at that time, I reckon it's too late. I think if we don't take this government, out of power this year, this year. I, I, I think time is gone. It's going to be 2025, 2026, 2027. Well, well, do you think that what I, I do you think what is going to remove this government from power may be something as simple as kind of pissing the nut off <laughs> with one of his policies <laughs> that, that he loses quite I, you a lot know, I, I, you know I, I'm so sad uh, for father yeah. to tell you the truth in that I don't I, I really do not believe Nigerians have it in them to protest to the end I don't think we have it in this man I, I don't think we're organizing that way we're not structured in that way we can be pushed to the wall we're not going to react Nigeria should react. Some people are not happy with him making a. Uh, but we also forget uh, something. Uh, FCC you know, chair. You know, you know, you know, the North is making a lot of noise that they don't like now. You know, so they may, may come person. at him. You see, what we haven't seen, what we haven't recognized, what we haven't recognized is that when Nigeria is concerned, the power base that was there in um, Abbas and Joss' time has gone. The power base that was in Abbas on Joe's time, that kind of disturbed uh, uh, Jonathan's time. Jonathan was trying his best to create his own. He, unfortunately, he wasn't strong enough to take it to the end. By the time Buhari came in now, he was being bullied and jolted all over the place, but he sat down on his laurels. Now, Tinubu's government has locked into power. They're locked in. There is their power base. But okay. right now, as you speak about his age and his frailty, you also spoke about the fact that Tinubu is a strategist and he's strate strategically locking himself in for eight years. Now, if we don't ease him out, because he can be eased out, you know, we talk about the cabal and those people are involved, but they're all in a mess. If you look at this, the, the, the situation carefully, see, but, you can but, see they're but, all but in but a Jagun, mess. Though, Jagun, if, I don't understand. P people say Tinubu is a strategist. If Except he was the one that planned the demise of PDP, the way PDP imploded. Mm. Otherwise, if he wasn't the one that planned it, 
It's the other parties that completely imploded. They are so inept that they couldn't even hold themselves together. And even when they imploded, I think we couldn't even hold the side that, <laughs> that has been split. I, I, I think together. you're correct. I think you're correct. I think the, the, the massive thing that happened with PDP um, for them to collapse in the way they did was uh, strictly Peter Obi moving. If, strict, if Peter Obi was there, they would have remained quite a strong evidential candidate for presidency. If, if even, when Obi, Obi, know, even when Obi, if Obi yes, Obi, yes, Obi, did not manage himself. Yeah, the G5. If, if, if Atiku wasn't so egotistical, he would have known that Peter Obi was carrying the sway. He would have known. But also, also, this is the power of media that they are talking. Him. If you look all the time from the time of Zeke, he had his own media house. Awolowo has his own media house. Tinubu has his own media house. Trump today, as we are talking, they all have their own media that they control. Jonathan quickly tried to use a rise that we are quoting today in his own time and ever everybody. Who's on his articles it, one now? Uh, that's that's where you get that's where you don't have anyone. You don't sell yourself very well. Well, doesn't have anyone. No, Atiku that's has, why Atiku is not a strategist. Atiku, Atiku just have full bag of money to dish out. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> he Atiku just has, has money no, to dish no, Atiku out. Has a, he has a media house. Which one? No, he, no, which he one? Started, he started a media house at the center with Tinubu, but his own what is not successful. What we are saying is that if you don't need to have, even though to some extent, you take one mainstream media I'm telling you, he and has. You take good control of it. You understand? This That's is right. what they, strat they strategize and everything. This is what Abacha right. has to try to try to strategize even with AIT before the demise of Abacha. When Abacha yeah, wants to but, push it to but, the people. But is it the media house that won the election? I, in the, if you ask me, if you look at the dynamics that happened in this previous election, it's just internal party dynamics that won the election. They, no, 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 they no, 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 killed no. themselves. That's that's why I will agree with you that Tinumbu is not a strategist as people tell. But whenever you win election, you understand every winning team is smart. That's how people want to see. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> no, I, I'm not looking at it lose. like that. The way I look at it, <laughs> yeah. The way I look at it is that uh, uh, Rome, come, what, I, what I'm trying this. to put. Yeah, you, you know. In, in terms own, of Pete, uh, uh, of, 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 Jago, uh, Jago, Jago, please let's allow Arome, Arome say something. Don't worry, he's gonna, you are gonna go next. You, you know, um, when when Tinubu went to Ogun State and said that it is his turn, I heard uh, the former um, APC chairman was saying, "Oh, we we'll discipline him. Why must he downgrade or, or speak ill of the president?" But at the end, what happened? He went there. He cleaned the ticket. Everybody was silent. Everybody bowed to him. Yes, sir. So you, you can you can see from then when I see that I know this is the next president of Nigeria, no matter what we do. Yes, sir. And that yes. happened. Yeah, he almost lost though. The thing is he lost. He lost, he, he lost but he, unfortunately, he, because he, of the corrupt system that we had, and that was he, that's he, why we are him, it's, we it's, had. that's his system. He strategized to make sure he won. Firstly, he should not he should, of uh, APC. He should never have been the candidate, but he put himself in a candidate, and nobody disturbed him. Really and truly, they should have found an evil candidate somehow. If not, uh, this other guy, what's his name? Uh, what's I his think name? Is, is a southwestern that's, governor. That's probably that, what that they should have done. That Tinubu won. The southwestern governors really lined up behind Tinubu. And uh, they made sure that he won the this thing. And besides, he did uh, uh, this thing. What's his name? Uh, Boare favor that the, that Aero Five felt they needed to pay back. He said it uh, publicly that they needed to pay um, uh, Tinubu back for what he did. Uh, who, who is that? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I, I think Augustine has to speak, but let me just quickly really chip this in. When, oh when yes. We try, when we try to compare Tinubu and Peter Obi, um, I think we're not being. I mean, we're not um, considering all the factors. Tinubu had. A lot of time to prepare in terms of you know developing his war chest in terms of his information oh. management which is through the media he came up oh. with um which peter b does not or has not does not really have that luxury of time so that's where probably we need to do more community organization that builds into that on our own not to just i think we're you know we we we're putting all of this on him as if he can chest everything. So maybe there's a place where we as a people 
need That's to right. come together and say, well, we, we will need media to prosecute this issue, right? Because yeah. every every government or every political party has to go with a system of propaganda too. So just putting everything at his feet. Of course, I, I was not really enamored with his response as to, oh, and that's where it's, um, someone like Dr. Damage just comes in. I, I feel like there is a better way he would have put it in such a way that it brings all of us into doing it with him, as opposed <laughs> to... Ed, Ed, funny enough, that's exactly what I accused Dr. Damage of doing to other people last week. Where, whenever anybody says to say Dr. Damage, you would like, um, you know, you can do it. <laughs> you can do it. You can go ahead and do it. That's exactly what we do need to eat today. Um, yeah, yeah. But, but it, came across, it came across <laughs> as a little bit too, um, it, it was too, what's the word? But it, 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 didn't, it didn't inspire the kind of confidence that. It was too quick. It, it, yeah. But, yeah, but but they, yeah, yeah. Let me see. You are going, are going next. Oh, sorry, sorry, Augusto, you can you can you can okay, speak. Please, oh, sorry, please, can I can I weigh in on that area of media? Yeah, please we go all ahead. know how the government has a stronghold on the media in Nigeria. That question is not what you expect him to just give you a clear cut answer. He can't do that. He might have some strategy he intends to use if he's running for the next election, if there's going to be an election. You can't expect him to start saying, oh, we plan to set up a media, oh, I have some um, some men or group that I'm working on in uh, putting up a robust media strategy to counter the government or to enlighten Nigerians more. He can't do that. If he does that, these people, they are looking for every little way to go after him. See what he's, he told us when he came, that even people, he was with in his private life before he, 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 he got into politics because of how Nigeria system is wired. They don't even pick his call sometimes. They don't invite him for their family get together or birthday, but they later call him even through another person's phone line. That, that thing, didn't you, I was expecting one of you to even weigh in on those areas. Didn't you see how deep the rot is in the country? That these people, once they grab power, they are trying to cage everywhere. They can concoct all kinds of um, allegations against somebody. Okay, oh, oh, he has been a businessman all this while. Probably they've been going after his books and they've seen that the way he does his business has been very clean. If they notice anything against that, that he has done that is not proper, they will, they, will, they will blow it up. Have you observed recently now, Daniel Boalia comes to Arise or Shanes almost every week and other spokesperson descend all just after him. So it's not an easy thing. Like that, that's why for me, I said the question I asked him was about the bit, the bitterness and hatred that is deep in the country, and he explained that is the elitist problem. But yes, we know. But it has caught up with the ordinary man. If you go to the east or go to the north or even the southwest, you see divergent opinion. Some of them speaks from, from some of them speak from bigot angles. And it's a problem that it, it didn't start today. Ferrari, I was with Mayego as well when he was reading some parts of that Why We Struck. I've had some of these things before. You can see that our problem is very deep. It didn't start today. You can see how these people who are in power, they want to twist every opinion to, to, the, to themselves, to favor them and use it, against, use, use, use it against their opponent. This man is probably the man that has been playing politics different from the way it used to be. And all of them are amazed. And they are all almost in agreement, finding a way to, to pull him down. If we are talking about next election, next election, next election, is it under the same system that we know that this man that is in power now, we know how he, he likes to have his way. He did this even as a candidate, although a candidate of the ruling party. Now that he's in charge, it is under his dead body that the INEC man will not do his bidding. Whoever is, is the INEC man, except if there is a total that overhaul, be. except there is a total overhaul of the system. But yeah, but the, the problem we, have, we are facing are now is uh, in the BC. So my 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 concern what? when we keep blaming INEC for everything is that we are not holding the parties accountable too. Because they too should have their own number, they too should have their own documentation and everything. And from what I'm gathering, that each of the party had very, very corrupt people amongst them, 
clearly we can see that in Aburia and all the House of Assembly members that are there taking 30,000 and all the rest. There are corrupt people amongst them that didn't do their job. Even many, that, many corrupt party agents too. That is that, that's the saying. problem. It is, it is the system. So it will take a long, it may not even be in the next election. It will take a long time to reorientate yeah. our people. If, yeah. if, 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 if it will even come to that. But see how they're using poverty to weaponize the system. Okay, see how things, how it's things are. It's not, it's not about so, reorienting re 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 them. Let me no, no, I'm just adding, you're going to carry I mean, You're definitely going to carry on. The thing is, why are we not punishing election malpractice? We are a democracy. The election process should be sacrosanct. Should be it's messed gone, with. Gone, you uh, keep assuming gone, we have a decent system. No, no, no it's gone beyond. Wait, 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 wait. It's gone beyond all that. It's gone beyond yeah, all that. What, uh, what, what in the BC? What in the BC? What in the BC is saying is accurate. In that, this thing is rotten, rotten. Nothing to look for in it, really and truly. If we get to two thousand and seven, we are we. If we get to 2007 mm -hmm. with the same government, the whole country is, is in the pocket. Yeah, but don't government. you think we should clean out the rot? And one of the ways to clean out the rot is to make it very, very severe punishment to mess with the electoral process. Who right. is going to make that punishment? Yeah. When are we going to do that? Crime? No, but we have not even passed the laws. So we are supposed to push for this thing. Who that's that's the whole point. This, this is what we're saying. There's nobody there to do that kind of bidding. Uh, we are here now. We push. We push people now. I think I. Uh, Mustafa is coming here next. Do you know that? Call, do you know that? Next month. Do you know that this is the first time ever in Nigerian history that people are now uh, recognizing that they have power, that they, they, the country belongs to them. There's never been a time. So it takes like since 1999 up to this moment. It's only in 2022 and 2023 that people woke up. So it's right. still early in the day. There has never been a time that people we did, have we ever fight. We did fight. We did fight a bachelor. We fought a bachelor. Um, you know, to in that one a military man. That one, it doesn't cancel the election. No. You know, you know, he cancels the election. He doesn't rig it. He cancels the entire thing. Yeah, so that, those, that's what I'm saying. Crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm saying from 1999, okay. not when people. Beyond so from generation. 1999, the spirit of Nigerians are like dead, so to speak. So there's nobody really challenging anything. So this is the first time that people have really challenged a system. You know, Arome, talking to, talking, Arome, Arome, talking to Nigerians in Nigeria, I don't get the kind of passion that we see on this panel from Nigerians inside Nigeria. At all. At all. You don't, you don't get that passion against your leaders. They, they, they Papa, you are 100% right. That is where that is you talk in Nigeria. It looks like you, you are abnormal. They tell mm. you that you don't even understand anything because they they already accept defeat. You understand? Okay. That complacency is just there. So it's 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 it's, it's gonna it's gonna take and Nigeria can't even protest. Do you we know that? Uh, sorry, we were passing like, a, check, like I was a, a checkpoint I was... and they said, Why should I bring my phone out and answer a call that the military will shoot me? Then I tell them who is the who, who the bastard is the military. Everybody in the in the public bus was against me, and I was answering my call. I said I want him to come and shoot me, and let me show him that really he is nobody. How can unfortunately, you just, you unfortunately, just imagine that is how the mindset of everybody in the bus. Yes, I was surprised. You, you see how they have. You can't. Uh, you can't. Uh, you can't. Uh, you can't make a video or or, or or take a picture of anywhere in Abuja. They say no. This place is no, you can't do that. You can't do this. What the hell mm. is that? Is this a country? Or well, a country? I, 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 I think uh, Ferrari came up with some part of the solution, which I agree with, which is part of uh, the, 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 we have to start changing people's minds. And at the same time, obviously, uh, make sure that uh, the nation is safe. Uh, NBC, carry on. Okay, like I was saying, unfortunately, from what Arome is saying, they are, they are doubling down on every way the masses can get information. So, like what we're saying here now, if the system was a little bit fair and probably there was probably power supply or the internet was freer in our country, some people can watch this our program later and maybe they will get some inspiration from what we're saying and begin to talk in their little closet like um, um, the lady that came earlier said, um, what's her name? Um, oh, oh, yes, Connor. Oh, oh, yes, oh, Connor. Yes, Connor. But this poll is like they set up their own system to wash everything to keep the people away from information 
and instill that fear. That fear we had all the way, all the many years, the 20 something years that we are under military rule, is still there now. That's why a policeman we 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 go into a place, maybe in a bar, and ask everybody to enter the bus, their bus, and say, if you talk, I will kill you, and nothing will happen. Don't do this. Don't do this. Sometimes it's not as bad as so, you think, but no, it is the people sorry, that are Paul, set the feet without the fight. What do I mean by that? Look at the level of the way somebody like Rufai criticized the APC people. The APC people, they still go to arise because they still want that voice to be heard. That's you understand? And they it's not, it's so it's not, not as I'm bad. Saying. So, no, what I mean is that if you think like that, eh, the way you're saying it, or the way people want to presume it to be, by now, Arise would have been shot down. That oh, Tinubu has come to power. They would have come up with one excuse and shot Arise down. But Arise is still up and running. APC is still finding themselves there to go make their voice heard. And guess what? Somebody like Rufai, some of them, they still scrutinize them toughly. Not like, oh, nah, APC is in power. Let's celebrate them. No, it's not like that. But it's just, it's just about the people. I'm telling you, my brother, some of let, us let, in this program choose not oh. to come to this program because yes, of yes. threatening from our no, own, put own your family, camera on the, our own friends. Say, hey, Paul, you don't this talk. is what <laughs> No call Nigeria again, though. No. That's hey, a good Paul. card there. No call. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> I love that. Let me to you. See, there's a way the media works. There's a way... See, it's a boy. They lie down there. To the media. See, this local. People who come to the media. Policeman. Can you all hear me? People who use the media. Get some coffee, man. People who come to the media, that's the way they do their survey. That's the way they do their survey before they choose the media to come to. Arise that Paul is talking about, that you're talking about. They have come to realize that many people, many Nigerians have taken Arise probably as their number one media, where they listen to events. Despite that Arise have um, personalities or um, men, people who criticize government, but they use it, it's like a, a balancing act for them that if they want people to listen to them, that is those in government, they come to arise and say whatever they want to say. Even though people like Rufai, we ask them questions, they still tolerate it. Unlike others who are just all the way for government. So that is why they cannot shut down arise for now. That is why they are, they are sticking because arise is sort of, arise has that, um, national or global appeal for Nigerians. That, that, that is why it's still that is why they, they still tolerate Arise and come to, any day they feel that Arise is now tilting more towards opposition or always against government. You see, they, they will start doing, not that they are going to ban them, they can't do that. They will look for one way to want to cow them down. But in general, what I'm trying to say is that these people, they have captured the system. They are in control of the, the so-called um, MBC. That is the that is the regulatory arm in the media in the broadcast business. They are in control of the police. They are in control of the judiciary. So how how will in a sane society judges we see some of them they came Obi and Atiko came with videos of severe manipulation, a, 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 a vote vote cancellation and all that in papers and they saw and they, they saw those things. Yet they now did what they, what they did. It's because. They have been given an order. You must do it this way. Find any way. Find any legal word or whatever you want to use to do it this way. If, even you if they are court rule in favor of a video, go to Supreme Court and spoil it. So the only thing we're, we're, I'm, I'm saying in summary is that the system needs to be taken down. And talking about next election is, is not the solution. They will still do what they want to do. And nobody will say that because they are all in good. Those PDP establishment. have all these things the, that you are talking about. And APC take power from them. What I'm trying Somebody to say has is this, to the establishment, Paul, PDP no, no, no. Have, PDP have everything. They don't PDP have everything. They power from there. They don't. They don't PDP, have everything. PDP, PDP, PDP is not violent. They operate the same way. That's Paul, what I mean. Have, PDP, PDP is not violent. That's what I mean. No, no. PDP is not violent. What I'm talking about is just do or die. The vested interest. is not violent. The vested interest. Do you know how many people are going to I don't think so. The vested interest. Do you know how many governors are going to pull out? Joshua Darie, Alamesia. Do you know how many governors... Uh, uh, don't, don't don't say that type of thing. And you need to do the same thing. You understand? But you I have think, to fight. Think, That's think, what we're saying. Paul, I you know, think you know, you know Nigeria PDP on the, PDP as PDP on the or Basujo has a different has a different coloration from PDP under good luck, Jonathan. 
So pull up. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and one other thing about Jonathan, I, I think it's not very fair that Jonathan is being seen as a, a failure somehow. Because I think if Jonathan had won the last election, he would have been the longest serving democratic leader because he would have ruled for 10 years. So yes. it seemed like there was a lot of push in it not to say no way we will accept this nonsense from this guy to come and just rule for eight years and two years uh, with uh, Yaradua. So he did serve yeah, six years. No. It's not a total failure, if you ask me. Um, okay, um, Augustine, sorry. Um, thank you for your patience. Um, what you. do you think um, about the you know the interview? I don't know if you saw the entire thing. I did. In the, in the first place, Paul, I. Paul gave information here last week, which I verified <laughs> it. It wasn't it wasn't correct about washing car in California. There are the way you put it was too direct, which is not so. And it happened within a given time when they had drought. And the rule was washing car and your car, your water flows to the street, not washing in your compound. So I just wanted to put that correct because when I said in my community, we wash car. It looks as if we are disobeying the law in my community. So I just want I can to just that. I can go outside now and show and show my front house. I'm in my house. I can go outside and show my front house so that you see. How do you wash car and water will not flow to your house when your yes. house is up like this? The, the, the road is down. How do you wash that car? Was... You get a ticket. What are you talking about? No, the, no, the, the law is not washing car. The law is what the water flowing mm -hmm. along the street. That's what the law. If you wash your car, water will flow to the streets. That's no. Street. Yeah, no. no, water will flow to the street. We have so a when you say wash my... car, look, look, I can clean my car. It's different from I wash my car. If I wash my car, water will flow on the streets. I can Paul, prove it now. The Paul, day Paul, is like, are you in on this logic? Paul, Paul, you know what uh, Augustine is telling you that they have a special gutter to catch the water. You never we have a better water. Have a law. So what is saying <laughs> is not right. We have a law. We, we yeah, have exactly. a lawn. So the water flows into the lawn. I thought you had, there was a time they banned people from even doing their lawns in the um, California. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Some, yes, exactly. Mm. During the drought. Yeah, yeah. To tell yeah. you how worse it is, even though you're long, you can't even do that. That's why everybody has mm. their the tough. No, that's during the grass. drought. There was a you're, specific no, period. See, see, listen, Augustine, Augustine, let's not play with words. If I, I have a big backyard, I can do video. I can park 10 cars in my backyard. If I wash my car in my backyard, I wonder how somebody wants to call the cops on me. But if I wash my car in my front house, it will flow to the streets. So what Come did you now. say? No, the what did you is say like this. The street you know, is like you this. Know, you know, you know that is so massive. When you say you have 10 backyard, 10 car space in your backyard, it's like small, small place compared to the UK. <laughs> so <laughs> UK, <laughs> UK, you can't boast that kind of boast to are you of the course. queen or the so, king? So I just wanted yeah. to put it straight. What is the problem there is the water flowing to the street is not washing car. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I just wanted to do. <laughs> no, nobody's telling you not to clean your car. See, I can sprinkle water and use towel to wipe my car. That is okay. not washing of car. So, which means in excess of what they are telling you, they are telling you to the extent how you can minimize in as much as you pay for it. Don't waste it. They consider it to be waste as at that mm. level. Thank you understand? You. So I can sprinkle Thank water you. and clean. I, I think so we we'll probably right. need to shift from this topic. I don't no, know what so, no, I'm, so I'm coming back to the topic. So, yeah. to be candid with you, this this obese coming today have opened my eye to so many things. Some of the things we condemn are the same thing we accept and we expect all the time. You know, forefather, you know, I have been following your logic, and you've been consistent in the kind of person you want to be our leader. And that, that, the conversation I wanted to have with you one-on-one, -on -one, if I have the opportunity one day, is outside this issue of Abacha's loot return, what problem do you have with Abacha? It's a conversation I want to have with you as a person. Think about it, read more about it. Anytime I, I can call you on phone, we discuss about it. Because personally, I don't think I have much problem with somebody like Abacha, if not this loot. Because before 1999, Go to every state. All the people in politics, we are the people that we are running away once they hear the salary or police people. Because Apache was pursuing these four one niners before he died. And the moment he died, all of them jumped into 1999 politics. And that's why we have the criminals everywhere. But today, Jagun, I have had enough respect to you because of your submission. 
in this issue. When people say about P.O.B., I have studied, I studied P.O.B. as a person. I research about him as a person. I have worked with him as a person. I know him as a person. I have discussed with him as a person. To an extent, I know what he can do. That a man comes to an interview and tells you everything I am doing is not what I'm going to say here. On the Labour Party, we are going to succeed. And somebody is crucifying him that is not frontal. He's not confrontational. He's not picking it and running with it. For Christ's sake, this guy formed Abga. That even when he left Abga, he couldn't succeed. P2B couldn't succeed in winning a vote, in winning an election in Anambra State with another party. He couldn't succeed in appointing somebody that would replace, replace him. If I tell you how Willie became the governor of Anambra State, you would understand what that guy did in building Abga as a political party. And he has given all of us opportunity to rally around him. He has given all of us opportunity to take our country, go and check his net worth before he started politics and his net worth today. That man is becoming poorer every day. They are, he, he opened his mouth to tell you that if you know what these guys are doing to my business, and somebody is also telling him to go and. Oh, invest. Father, I want to laugh for what is it? What's no, 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 because it's, it's the opposite now. Politicians get richer when they get into office, but he's. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. He's not going to check his net worth. His net worth has dropped. He is becoming poorer because he refused to compromise. And they are dealing with him. During the election, somebody offered well, Augustine, him. He made a lot of money when he was also governor because he literally put all the states, 70% of the state money, in his own bank. So he made a lot of money too when it was oh, 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 please stop this thing you're saying. I didn't say I didn't say he stole, but he take advantage of the system. It's a different thing. Which one is his bank? It's not how it happened. You don't have the information. Let's continue, Joe, please. Ask people in the states. Ask people who live in the state. They will tell you how the local government thing happens. It's not what you're saying. Don't drag the man's name in the mud, please. So don't tell me I stand to be corrected. Did he conduct local government election? He said no. And Peter Obi keeps 70% of the state funds in Fidelity Bank. And he is the chairman of the bank. I didn't say he's still, but he also take mm. advantage and benefit from it. How? It's a different thing. Okay. Now, how, how did he benefit by putting oh, oh, sorry, how did he benefit by how putting money benefit? in the bank? Did he oh, take so you're you're supposed to be an objective person. How do you mean he benefited? How did he benefit? If they deposit the state money in one bank, 70% of the state coffers in one bank, don't you think it's good for the bank? Who told you something about it? It's not a crime. It's not a crime. So it's not a crime. 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 And wait. one bank just literally comfortable what? be what? getting it, a whole state okay. funds oh, in their coffer. Why are you talking about it? Can you wait? Let me ask him to clarify. 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 Let me ask him
<sighs> before they swear you in. You understand? He was caught. So as caught, yeah, but he resigned. Peter will be yeah. immediately. Then he resigned immediately. Now he resigned from day to day active, but he did not sell his shares. He's still majority yes. shareholder in Fidelity Bank, and he's yes. still depositing the state funds in that bank. Is it not benefiting from it? From it? That, what are you talking about? He declared, he declared the asset. Now he declared everything yeah, he declared that he got it. from and, it. And 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 I'm not going to of come course. Your oh, I'm not ruling that. I'm not ruling that. We have to be quiet. Oh, sorry. Did you validate the law by not selling his shares? Did you validate the law by not selling his shares? Can you listen? Can you listen now? I said he benefits when he was governor. Now he's not making money. That is not the power. Is it wrong with that? What, 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 I, I, what, what, I think you are, you, are, you are trying to imply that he used his office to enrich himself. Of course, that's not of course. true. But so you don't, do you have any? Do you have if, any? If, if it is not, if oh, it is not can true, people, let me ask you: Do you have any evidence that the money he put in there, how much he gained from it? Do you have any evidence? Seventy percent. Seventy percent of the state funds, Anambra state funds. We are deposited in yeah, just by bank. depositing in there. Almost, the question is how much did he get from was it was deposited in Access Bank. Yes, but how much did, did he get from it himself? He's a majority shareholder in Fidelity Bank. So if his business is doing but well, is he's not benefited from just it. Just because you put money in there doesn't mean you get um, all the profit. You know how much profit the, got, the bank made that year. You know um, uh, the profit he got out of it. Poor father, so poor father. We don't, we don't when, know that. When, are saying when, that it, he when, enriched poor father, we have, poor father, we have 25 banks that meet the recapitalization 2008. That meet the re uh, recapitalization. We have 25 banks that met that, uh, that threshold. And that 25 bank that met that threshold Fidelity Bank was among the least bank that narrowly met that threshold. Mm -hmm. So we have big and uh, vibrant bank like the, like GT Bank, Zenith, First Bank, Diamond Bank was doing well with MTM funds and the likes. And the governor stand up and said, no, I'm comfortable with the small one that is struggling. <laughs> Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, please. Please, 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 please. Hold on, hold on. What did you just see there? Hold on, hold on. What did you just see there? Hold on, hold on. I don't know where the Paul, it's not fair. What you did there? Hold on. You read out all these other banks, and for the for a Fidelity Bank, for if you are saying that uh, P2B has the majority share, it's one of the few Southeast banks in that uh, region and in the same state. So you want him to just hands off when he could preserve the the bank that is owned by southeastern and not support it at all and then oh, again i still go back to the question you didn't still tell me what profit he actually made to say that he oh, father. Himself. Oh, father what are you talking about are, are you expecting me to give you numbers like i no, went no, to no, use no, to be fair like I'm i went to use freedom or, 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 like, like like i can investigate and go get a uh, peter ob no. uh, shares in fidelity bank from from sex security and exchange commission oh. Do you think well, I can have that access? What you said, said, you know, uh, what you said you know, the bank could have been distressed. I'm ready to see the brand. Poor father, poor father, poor father, poor father. Listen, listen. Let's not be biased. Let's not be biased. That one was poor father. Let's not be biased. That one was poor father. Let's not be biased. Anywhere you don't give your own business. Why are we questioning the minister of interior today? Because he's giving his own company contract. For work for federal government is that not yeah, why we are questioning one of the stress. finest the, the ministers in the government? The government is not the only company from the this in southwest. The no, company is not on that district. Oh, Papa, so Papa, I'm asking this question. The number finest minister so far, number one, his it private is the minister of interior. Private company. You understand? And is giving as a private, minister is giving his company. own company contract. If Peter B is taking a whole state funds to his own bank. It's not his own bank. It's a that's bank he has a is. share in. It's not his no. bank. He has a share in the bank. Oh, <laughs> he father, he is, he oh, oh, is oh, nobody oh. own a bank. Oh, I said oh. he is majority shareholder in the bank. That bank when you say majority, how many what percent? Is, he is the majority shareholder of no, the no, bank. You see, majority is the a very need, difficult term. Hold on, sorry, sorry, sorry. Need, okay, so people, okay, no, I, I, okay. We have to get the people okay, here. Listen, listen, listen. Over fifty percent. Or twenty percent, just the largest shareholder. You see, largest so shareholder. Is different from if he's twenty percent majority shareholder for a bank that meets mm -hmm. over twenty-five billion naira capital base, that's, that's a good chunk of amount of million. money. Are you taking profit or 
No, I'm Can just I... talking about capital base. No, but I can actually that, that, that is not his money. It's for the bank. It's, it's not his money. He's majority shareholder. We can never have all the facts. My brother, we read newspaper and we listen to news. Oh, we can have all the facts. When you tell us his percentage, because Peter Obi is the chairman of Fidelity Bank. He is the majority shareholder of Fidelity Bank. He was. But he was. I said prior to before he left. And when he he left. Can you give us he evidence did. of the things you're saying? Because you, you yeah, it's it's not, it doesn't mean fair. Fair. Give us oh. fair. Why are you people? Oh, you know, go get contract to when no, Peter will be coming to power. Hold on, hold on. They're going to scrap your name. Why are you people arguing with me? Where is Google? You people go and lie and see yourself. What are you like to prove? You go lie and see this yourself. I googled. I actually was googling. So maybe you should actually give us this fact. And the only information I had about him saving money. In Fidelity Bank was his, resign um, his letter that he gave when he was handing over, and he split the money equally across Fidelity, Assets Access. Bank, and Diamond Bank. Oh my God, Paul! And I, I, said I, saw, so I, I didn't see any other. And I said the same thing. I said seventy percent no, of the you split it was equally, that is that's that's about thirty-three percent each, not even seventy percent. No, that's a yeah, lie. That's a lie. Straight, that's no, a lie. I put a link there. And, I access, link there. and, and access Bank, Access Bank. That he keep the money. I said this is no, I'll no, find no, the I video. Put a link that there. I, I, access, I like, listen, I, I, listen, I'm not listen now. Access bank was where he even deposited more of the foreign, the dollar. Because I watched the interview in Arising. I watched the interview where Obi said it with his own mouth. You understand? Access bank is where he deposited more well, of the dollar. The so foreign, the 70, you understand? So 70% is which other percentage will be more than 70? No percentage. Because no percentage. He said, because if he says 70 in his own bank, and you're saying more in assets bank, he I said dollar, dollar, dollar. He deposited. You said Anambra state money. I said Anambra state money. Remember when Obi left power, Obi left Naira, and Obi left dollar. So Obi, the, for, the forex, the foreign, the dollar, no, Obi no, left no. them in access bank. Paul, but Paul, I, I'm you, saying you, it again. You, Paul, you can't Paul, hold this thing and watch. Paul, wait. No, no, wait. You said he left Anambra State money, 70% of Anambra State money. So when you say Anambra State money, the dollar is not part of Anambra State money. Anambra State money, yes. So if you say 70%, which other percentage? Out of 170, it is left with 30. So you're saying more dollar to Access Bank. I said, can you listen? Thank God everybody's yeah. quiet. Yeah. Obi left Naira in Fidelity Bank and Diamond Bank and left dollars in Access Bank. Obi no. left with Naira and dollar. The dollar that Obi left was in Access Bank. The Naira was with Diamond Bank and Fidelity Bank. No. But majority of the funds that Obi left was with Fidelity Bank. That is Fidelity Bank is what they use like official state bank. You yeah. understand? Where they used yeah. to pay everybody's well, salary. They used to do well, everything. Well, it's state. Well, where people pay taxes. If you want to pay taxes in Anambra State, then it's Fidelity Bank. If you are doing business with Anambra State, you are doing anything. Is with Fidelity well, you Bank. Should give us evidence of this. Well, thing. Well, 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 Naira and the dollar in the because This is a quote. This is a yes. quote from this is a yes. quote from an interview he had. He said, "I left office in this country, leaving Anambra State with investment in cash of seventy-five billion. The day I left office, we had fifty-six million dollars, twelve billion in Fidelity Bank, in Diamond Bank, fifty million dollars, twelve billion, Access Bank, fifty million dollars, twelve billion for Anambra State. So." It's equal. It does. Oh, no, an even no. split. I didn't. I didn't. I, 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 I didn't hear that. Well, I, I will. I will. I will take my time. I'll find that. I will yeah, find that be, video. Be good for us. I will, I will, look, listen. I don't want to read. I will find the video where you hear Peter will be use his own mouth and say it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. That's, yes. that's, that's the one I'm let, let me share this. Let so let so we see what he said. Yeah. You see, this is 
why we have to be careful because when we say majority shareholder, it doesn't mean over fifty percent. It could be thirty percent, fifteen percent, and all the rest. Look at what he said. Be, he said. It can be five percent. Yeah, he said I bought international breweries in brought international breweries into Nigeria, and as a governor of a state, they built they built a greenfield facility in the state, and they came to me and said, as our partner, we want you to own fifteen percent of this company, and I said to them, no right now not right now i am a governor of a state i know the future of this brewery and i want the state to own 10 percent and since I, I am no longer involved in the company they can own five percent i put in 30 million uh, dollars of state uh, money there it is now worth 100 million and 200 million dollars and it is still there no other state in the country has such an investment so you can see most of the things he is doing that seems to be corrupt. If you mm. go deeper into it, you start finding that it's not as corrupt. If otherwise, they will be using it against him all right. the time. That is good. Mm. That is good. Yeah. Edo state, Edo state, and Delta state, Edo state benefited. Delta state benefited when they bought large amount of shares from MTN and Econet. It's it's, it's a good concept. That is good. I'm not saying that. Mm. Remember the way you people are taking well, this thing when I said it. Approach, because when you say for something, for father, when I said it, when I when for father, it, it just looked like you people don't listen. It's just like we are we are just here to argue. When I said I said, um, Augustine said, Obi is losing money. That is true, and I equally said Obi also benefited when he was in power. You understand? And standard practice anywhere. You don't give your own business contract when you he are just, owning government. He just demonstrated that he made the money process. instead. Let us so tell us the truth. He so just made his state money when he could have benefited himself. Well, it, well, it, it is standard you practice. Well, this it, 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 you, you know what you said, Paul. To, to be honest, what you said, it, it, it was heard by everybody, yes, but I don't know why everybody latched onto it because it was for me. Without being rude, Paul, it was a point, but it was pointless in that. You know, in a country like Nigeria, just imagine yourself at the head of any of these state governors. I, I know Ondo State very well. Um, it's similar to uh, Edo and uh, Delta State in terms of the typography. It's, these states are green, lush, beautiful. And there's so much going on under the ground. Me, I don't have that kind of billions upon billions to do what I would love to do. So if I'm the if I'm the governor, I I'm I'm telling you I'm going to town with somehow making the state work with the state's money, and that money should feed us as a state because we as Ondo State and any possibly any other state in Nigeria can actually feed themselves, and if they can feed themselves and they can manufacture and those people have skills in that state, then you can really go to town. Now, unless you're invested in these kind of things, I mean, I, I feel that the fact of what Peter Obi did in an Amber State, which you can see is quite different today in terms of his term and the, the, the guy who's presently there. So when you look at it, you, you know that there must have been difficulties for him to engage in how to just uplift the state a bit. These things aren't easy. So by the time you know, you've taken the state government and you've done one or two things with them. Possibly you should have done it, but you know what you're doing. You're going to return the thing back. Everything is going to be balanced and there's a profit share at the end. My goodness, bro, that's a businessman. That's how a businessman thinks. A businessman doesn't think, mm, mm, no, that's not how to okay. do these things in a crazy Okay, let just say, let, let just say, all let I'm just saying, it Paul, this way. All I'm, I'm saying, Paul, okay, I'm I want to agree with you. I want to uh, agree with you. I am wrong. Standard practice anywhere. If you hold government position, do you give contracts to your own yeah. private oh, business? Oh, you're right. Uh, I understand what you're saying. I understand that question. Trump, Trump put government uh, uh, state in his own property in the New York. And he's being criticized uh, for that. Yeah, That's why yeah, you're not talking illegal. about it. What is, what is, what is, what is, is it? Like, it's not illegal. Who does criminal? Would they not have been a litigation against Trump? No, but this is... I'm sorry. Did I say anywhere that Obi stole money? I said no, benefit. No, 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 no. That's exactly does, what Trump did. Criminal does not mean that, that it's it stolen. For the criminal is that it's he a crime. It does not mean it's it's stolen. You get what I'm saying? See, fidelity and, bank and is not. And he didn't. He didn't do it for his own narrow self-interest. It's not a personal bank. 
He mm. was he just had share and became highest shareholder there, yeah. so became a board member. So the moment he resigned from there, the question you will ask is Fidelity Bank qualified to house Anambra State money? And he didn't put the whole money there. Mm. Augustine, let's use reverse psychology on this you know, case you know, now. Uh, we have somebody you know, called Alan Yema, the chairman of money. SP. He wanted to put if money Allen, out in every other if bank. Allen other Uyema, the, if Alan Yema today, no, if Alan, right. Alan Uyema today become president of Nigeria today, and you, well, every one of us know that Alan Uyema owns EPIS, or so majority shareholder. No, 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 listen, listen, no, listen, listen, you can listen, listen. of course, of course, it's of a course, of 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 course, I don't know, I don't know why you think, you no, think, no, do you think, do you think Alan Oyema, do you think Alan Oyema own uh, Epis 100 percent? That's what he's you telling us, okay? yes, if he, okay, listen, now let's say Alan Oyema own. Fidelity, uh, EPIS, 100%, or yeah. your EPIS, 20%. No, in an analogy, in analogy, you can, can use... Can you listen? Hold no, on, you can hold use on. two oh. Get an, uh, uh, Okay, I will use another way now. I want to, okay. I, I want you to agree with me. Alan Oyema owns 20% of EPIS, and he is the majority shareholder of EPIS, which means he okay. has good chunk of holdings in EPIS. And okay. Alan Oyema became, become, the chairman and the president of Nigeria. And Nigeria have our national carrier called Nigerian Airways. And suddenly, Ale Oyema started giving all government parastatas, ministries, and everything will be flying EPIs. You think it's the right thing to do? He can't do it if Nigeria has... <laughs> no. See, I'm, not just I'm, not, I'm, just saying, you, I'm just saying, you think it's the right thing to do? Can we come? Can, can, I, can I respond to you? To Your analogy is quite here. wrong. In what we are saying, one, you're saying Nigeria has its own air uh, 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 aircraft. So does Anambra State have its own bank? They don't have any bank. Okay, so Anambra no, so State don't have any bank. So let's go back to your analogy. So bring an analogy that suits. So the so 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 this is this is my answer to that question that I told you. Remember that if we have vibrant twenty-four bank plus fidelity, make it twenty-five. And you give fidelity this high preference. If you go dig deep in some of these things, why they said it's not right in standard practice. If, for example, a first bank give a quotation of say 20%, you understand they are charging 20% of whichever thing they are doing, how they are raising, they are uh, getting funds, taxpayers' money, and everything. First bank is taking 5% of the funds to, to, to get these funds together. And you fidelity know, say, you know, we're going to charge you seven percent. We're going to charge you seven percent to take the phone. Do you think? Do you think if somebody is being biased, what do you think you do? You won't give it to who is charging seven percent over oh. who you know that is very very competent that will charge you five percent. Oh, That's sorry. why they say don't do it because oh, you, be, you must be biased. When we make, when we make ignorant arguments, it doesn't make us look good in what we are doing. Ed have, read, Ed, have read, Ed have read something giving figures to three banks, which in these three figures, I don't I didn't hear Fidelity getting more than the other two banks. And you are saying Fidelity got three. You want to can you bring the evidence so that we'll start reasoning from your own evidence? See, if not, see, in, in see, fact, see. I would prefer just to stop this conversation. It's going uh, nowhere. Just no, it's, 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 it's a mute. It's a mute. It's a mute. It's not too good. From what I've seen, can I go back? Can I go back to my argument? It's not. It's not too good. It's not too good. It's not too good when we say things like that. And I made myself clear. I said it's naira and dollar, and I said this thing clearly. And I said when I when I'm saying it, I'm not saying it because of I have the video. That I will use in backing my case. That does not mean I won't look for the video. You understand? Every one of us here, to some extent, <laughs> we all have basic education. <laughs> but I stand to be corrected now. Augustine, can I ask you two plus three times five four four minus six so four? Of course, you're gonna take time to find the answer. You may get it, but you won't just give me off your head right now. Two plus three times five four four divided by three oh six. You will get it. 
So you understand? Know, but I'm, I'm saying it from somebody. I, I'm know. saying it from somebody you can't even who tell has. The that I gave to you. Of course, <laughs> of course. So, so, so you Paul, understand? Paul. But if I give you time, you will get the answer. So Paul, you understand? So don't so, don't, Paul, don't tell let, me let, what let, I know. Let, 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 let so, me let so, me. Let me conclude. Hold on, you are you are allowing to postpone the this incarnate this one. The let idea behind this is that mm -hmm. P2B reacted to a company that is in distress, and that's the only company that a majority shareholder is from the southeast, while the others I remember him actually making comment about that. Um, about those banks. I didn't even know that this is what you're accusing him about. And he didn't put all the money in one uh, one bank, he put it in other banks too. And to be implying that he did those, he put it in that bank only to benefit himself. When he joined, even saw a statement that he even did something. Not to benefit himself, but to benefit his state. And if you Father, look at to make that kind of strategy, will you this, you know, I accuse me if I said that. so? If I said so for standard practice, when I choose to, give, I am asking you, who is Tinumbu finest minister today? It is the minister of interior. Every one of us is the minister do with of anything? interior. Why is it? Why is the it only the, thing we are using because he's giving his his own company contract. Why is he the finance minister? That's a different scenario. That is not this bank is under distress and it's one of the few banks controlled by Southeasterners. I remember him making a speech about that. Papara is not under distress. Papara, we have 89 banks. And besides, okay, we have 89 banks and 25 of these banks meet the 25 billion threshold. Why are you bringing that issue? He gave others money too. Papara, Papara, you don't want to listen. Papara, we have 89 banks. Are you saying, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, Are you God. saying a Southeasterner should watch a Southeastern bank implode while he just gives all the money to him state to the other banks? Is because they are in a better health, uh, shape of health. What are you saying? I don't understand it. He reacted, you know, he, he split the money in three ways. Paul, Paul is digging himself so, a big hole. So, so, so he, re, he refuses. So, to I am asking understand. you, I am asking oh, you oh, again. I mean, this thing I mean, we oh. criticized Tinumbu. To set up Alpha Beta, and Alpha Beta is taking all Lagos State tax money. Yeah, but that is a different Alpha Beta. Alpha Beta what is are you on something else. No, let, me, let, me, Paul, let me come. Paul, let me that come. Wrong. Let me come. The finance minister you are mentioning here, somebody working in the immigration office told me in every passport you are getting in Nigeria, 10,000 naira goes straight to his account. Now tell me the money that goes straight to P2B's account from Fidelity Bank. This is a minister under how many months? So when you build the integrity, when people research around you, I don't, I don't, no, 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 no. Now you want to, you want to make us, you want to, you want to make me now. You want to put me in the way where you want me to support something that is not standard practice. What this is standard guy, practice? This, so what is standard practice anywhere in the world? In terms of private businesses, if you work in a company, if you work in a company, you are in a, what you call procurement. You don't give your own company contract. You understand? You don't do that. Not bank. It is so, not so listen, bank. listen, listen. Wait, listen. wait, Paul. You can, Paul, Paul, let me ask you a question. Mm. Let me just ask you a quick question. How long have you right. been in America? Uh, I've been Nothing. in America for so long. For so long. About 20 years, 25? Uh, not, not so much, but yes, yes. Okay. Okay, now tell me this for real, for real. Really have a good thing. If you were spending your time in Nigeria and you were moving up and up, you're a gentleman, you're still the same Paul that we know. Do you think that your mind would work in such a way that suits Nigeria and suits your own development? Just as an individual, you're not even running a state or anything like that. Just as an individual, you are in the Nigerian climes. Are you going to get engaged in slightly unscrupulous dealings in order just to move forward? Do you think so? So I will tell you in another way around. I, I may not give you the answer that you're looking for, but when humans are born, there's only two things that will happen to humans. They either die or they will grow. Just like me, and I'm growing. That's why I'm having gray hair. So in the course of growth, it brings change. We evolve, we mm -hmm. change. You understand? We change to good people, we change to bad people. We transform to become something else. That's how humans are. 
I, I'm very aware, and that's why I put the question to you because what I'm trying to get I'm, you to. I'm not sure where we are going with this. Is that on no, in balance, in, so sorry, please, guys, please, in balance, what you are putting forward against what transpired in the end, it, what you are putting forward, if we understand Nigeria for real, it becomes a mute point because what was achieved was far greater. And there are people like myself who in their minds like me, I'm, I'm an honest, straightforward guy. However, me, I go put my hand inside shit if something will come out of it golden. You understand? And that's how people think. So a man like Peter Obi, who is a businessman, he, he came into the whole crimes of politics through his business dealings. Now he sees opportunity for where he can make a, a, a turnaround. His focus is a turnaround for my state. We are going to become the top in education. We are going to, I'm going to leave this place with money in the we bank. Actually go to this. This, this was his focus. So now he, he did something which I, I, I'm speaking in his defense because I Dago, understand the mind Dago, of such an Dago, individual. Dago, there is a man called Olusegun Obasanjo. Obasanjo created Operation, uh, Operation Feed the Nation. No, 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 no. Okay, Obasanjo didn't achieve it 76, 79. Guess what? Obasanjo came back. When Obasanjo came back, when he got out from prison in 1998, Obasanjo farm was barely, Obasanjo was almost bankrupt. He was left with less than 500,000 naira. He even had to send his wife out and never that thing. Before Obasanjo left power, Obasanjo farm was 30 billion then. And when KFC came to Nigeria, KFC couldn't see people that they can partner with. KFC partnered with Obasanjo, and they are buying all their chickens and everything from Obasanjo farm. Mm -hmm. What did we all do in standard practice? We criticize Obasanjo because that's not how things work. <laughs> you understand? You don't take these things for your own benefit. Standard practice. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That's not how things work. I, 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 I don't think I understand. Father, if I may, if I may, for father, do you do you hear the okay, story? You, you just hear that story. Sorry, sorry, if I may, sorry, yeah. I'm listening to your story, and I remember the time in terms of what was happening to our bachelor's farm when it was going down. Now, I, I, you've said this story before as to the KFC deal, and I'm thinking, do you hear what you're saying? There's no other supplier in the country what should he do should should he now pour his business into the ground is that what he should do because he's the ground me i'm not gonna do that too. so so obasanjo oh, couldn't obasanjo couldn't him. create an enabling environment for his own dream that he pursued 76 and 79. if there's any other thing that will work it will only work for his own farm but we never work in other people's farm and you think that's how to grow a nation? No, that's I don't think. I, I, you see, Paul, I understand <laughs> what you're talking. Paul, 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 listen to me. Paul, no, 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 Paul, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out, real quick. All I, my brother, it was nice to see you. You've had your, you've had your this hip hop at that one actually. See, at the heart of his accusation. Let me say one thing before hold I go. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't go to sleep yet. At the no, heart of your, of your, <laughs> of, well, it's the, at, the, at the heart of your accusation <laughs> is that Tin um, P2B single reason for doing that was to benefit himself. And yes, I don't exactly. believe so. And that is that is mm -hmm. what I'm saying. You are wrong. Not not listen, listen, mm. listen. Not to, but standard practice criticize it. You understand standard practice. Oh no, because so it, 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 it could represent a conflict of interest. But even in America, oh, where they have that's to, exactly yeah, what I'm even saying. in America, when you have uh, some in industries uh, that is built out that uh, House of Congress members are they have shares in, some you just have to do what you have to do. You can't say because um, the House of Members are associated with this company, you are not going to uh, take action to save a strategic company for the for the state. That is what if, if that is the main driving uh, reason why he did it. You cannot say now that you accuse him of being trying to benefit himself. 
you he made argument that that was the strategic reason most of eastern has done own banks most of them are owned by people in delta where they were even calling them a uh, delta mafia or something like that so he this one wants to go bankrupt he had an opportunity to benefit the father uh, the, is not yeah. going bankrupt don't keep saying this word no no he, 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 no, he didn't you know not bankrupt he it's was not. in distress he was in distress he's not in the, distress it's what, not in distress okay, don't correct yourself you, what was it when no, Soludo no, introduced, when Soludo introduced a uh, major and recapitalization from two billion to twenty five mm -hmm. billion, two thousand and eight. So when um, so, no, was it two thousand and eight? Yeah, it was no. two thousand and eight. No, or less than two thousand and eight. Not two thousand and eight. Two thousand and three. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. When Soludo introduced it, now we have eighty nine banks. Oh, don't tell me a whole story. Just give me the word no, 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 that the no, no, bank was no, no, going no, no, to. No, no. Just I, one I, time I needed. Though. You want to tell me a whole for story? Father, for father. Okay, okay, okay. I'll shut it down. Just one now, time. Fidelity met the 25 billion threshold. You understand? Fidelity met, but they were among the list, but they met the 25 billion, which means Fidelity can stand. Out of the 89, Fidelity can stand. They are already there. So now, Normal, norm, norm in a in a in a sane society. If you want to give contracts that are all bigger, bigger place that can, you know, the bigger a business, the lesser they charge you compared to the smaller one because they I have all the resources. In some they cases, are, the opposite. In, in in some cases, that is true. Anyway, that's like, how in some comes. cases, is this is an institution. Institution is by, by, by construction. Institution. Big construction companies tend to charge more. Of course. So let me go on with my, my my position. So one thing we don't do here is to listen. Because what I said, and I was clear when I said his net worth. So the question would have been, what is P2B's net worth after being a governor? P2B moved from 800 million to 230 million. So where, would he, where did he get the benefit? 800 million what? Million dollars to two hundred and thirty million dollars. This guy is uh, that's a lot of money. Oh, you know, big who money, has big money. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> how am I so poor? Eh, this is all, that's unacceptable. Eh? Mr. Uh, Paul, Paul, please, 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 can I say if something? You money around. No, you but every station, no, you know, uh, hold on, Augustine, hold on. Yeah, Augustine, Augustine hold when you also say that, remember, because of the way our naira is losing by the day. Everybody up to Dangote at Denuga, they, 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 they all drop. Peter Big can open a radio yeah. station, he has enough money to open radio stations. Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Papada, please, can I say something? No, um, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 our, guy, our guy from DRC. See, let's yeah. change the topic now. Let's change the topic. I, I really wanted to know yeah. more about DRC. Mr. Papada, let me just say something here for this. I beg, I beg Why? you. Which vine are you coming from? Are you so, coming from uh, a divine vine? What do you mean? <laughs> oh my okay, okay, divine, of course. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I was so I was so you know pleased with uh, Mr. Peter B and uh, I was so pleased also with Mr. Forefathers. Your question was very apt and he answered it very well. I'm on your side now because you really be behaved yourself today. So, you know, what I just want to say, I'm so proud, you know, of you guys and what we all are doing. You know, I, like Mr. Paul just came one kind of argument. That's what brought me. You see, sometimes <laughs> when you come with this kind of argument, it's like we are not even serious as a people. Because when you if you want to put yourself now as you are mr paul on if you want to x-ray you do you really think you can measure up to all these things you are throwing around so basically so basically it's reasonability if in the history of nigeria you know for me from my from recent history this mr p2b is kind of very different from what we have the man is reasonable you know let us support him Let's not just, you know, because we are going to lose him and we, uh, 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 down the road, we, say, ah, we had wished a president we never had. Mm -hmm. Just like we are, just like Awolowo and the rest of them, we say, ah, 
that is what people that is how people were antagonizing them too people that were close to them now because the man has made them so simple now we want to like take him for granted sometimes because he comes to our programs in he mixed with us it's part of us it's one of us you know so let's leave all this like this, this thing you're talking about about the bank issue you don't even have the concrete evidence imagine if you're accusing somebody who is innocent have you thought about it that way so that is irrelevant and it, coming from the context of nigeria you know the man is is like uh it's like a saint compared to what we are used to in nigeria so let us support let us pull behind this man you know tomorrow it might be you it, it, the man is, is aging too tomorrow it might be you so we all we'll, we'll run around you and we'll say okay let's push it, it might be four fathers so let's just leave all this because I mean, if you support me if you don't support me, him, don't throw me, don't throw me into that arena. <laughs> no, it could be you tomorrow, and we are going to push you. I, 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 I won't support him. People like me are too lazy. I like to be in the background. So now, <laughs> so you know, for me, I support him, and come 2027, 2007, whatever is the date, I've forgotten. The next election, all things being equal, I'm going to cast my vote for him. If I support him, and you come here, you make all this argument. Let, you, you are exposing, you are giving. A lot of ammunition for him for people to people that don't like him to attack him and pull him down. You know, we should try and bind together and pursue a common cause. It's just even if he's going to be president, he won't be there more than 88. It can be you the next time, it can be you too. You know, this is a good man. So I don't know what this this uh over rationalizing, analyzing yes. everything, just put finding for by all means. It was enough. You know? You say what? It, it amazed You're me correct, that though. I think you have yeah. said that thing because mm -hmm. we were in the track of something mm -hmm. and something was said. I heard it, but I didn't latch on. I didn't want to latch on to that. But there's no need to latch on, on it because yeah, if you I latch on, on if you latch on, on every yeah. small thing, we we'll move yeah, forward. Even if the conversation Trump. was too many, just no? stop. Let's not be pushing the necessary things. The man is not a murderer, he's not a thief. He's not he has not been found wanting in any criminal court. So why are you just overemphasizing on things that is not very necessary? You know, just leave that issue about if you support him, support him. Don't don't give provide ammunition for people to at, be attacking him because he's receiving he's receiving a lot of attack. He, he, when you come and say I support you, it encourages him. You can see what he's saying that even his children, his wife, you know, we were just chilling in this America, just chilling and just. You know, these people, they are in the heat of the whole issue. And people say, when uh, KJ was KJ, you know, I was so mad at KJ. Because he answered KJ's question, but the man was philosophical. He said he has left the past. And people, when people come here, they, th they think they know it all. Today, I respect for father because he really acted like a leader. At the heat of the moment, he, he showed himself that he's truly a leader. But people like KJ, where I thought were even, they have qualities. The man answered your question. He said... In the courtroom, that the fact the evidence were there, but the judges just chose to ignore it. And he said he has moved on. And you just come here and just begin to blah blah blah. Say, what do you want the man to do? He, 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 some people say he should go and start like he should go and start a, a revolution. He should must be man. He must be strong. So whatever you are pushing for, not everybody can is is destined to pull this kind of this, uh, this kind of following. It's and not because, about. Because just, don't you think that sometimes his followers have to try to question things? Because there are some things Paul said now that made me understand Peter B even more. Like I didn't even know that he took himself out of uh, fifteen percent of uh, that brewery's deal and gave it to the state. That the state made hundred million dollars from. I didn't know that. So sometimes when you discuss things, you go get deeper, and you even discover the depth of the man to an extent. You see what I mean? Of course, so, it's good. It's good. The, the problem we are having is that most of the people who have led Nigeria over the past years mm. were have been in the system, corrupt system. There's no one from outside who has made his money and joined the politics to develop their state or the country. Most of them came, they are just uh, like a parasite on the country. So that's the reason why we are surprised to see somebody who have at least a little dignity like p2b to run for a president maybe the last time we have someone like that maybe abiola who never made it and he was uh, 
he was he, he was killed and we never have that opportunity mm. all the people Mr. Fokoda, see, wait. All the people that are in government now, mm. they, they, they were they were saying they were pushing Abiola. They were the ones that betrayed him. You know, that betrayed him to the military junta, and they pushed him and they killed him. Once they killed him, they all came out now and they are forming they are forming Democrats. You are right. I'm telling you, if you if you if you, they open the can of worms, you will be surprised. They exactly. sold him, they pushed him, pushed him, sold him. I, imagine canceling uh, uh, Abasha and canceling Abiola. You know, because the both of them were cancelled. Why would you cancel an Abiola rather than saying cancel Abacha, you know, and reinstating re Abiola? You cancel the both of them, and that was an agreement that they entered for peace. What kind of a peace is that? That is a piece of the graveyard. They are now masquerading as, as Democrats, as progressives, now in Nigeria. So let us leave this man to just do the ones, the, what, what his destiny is. You know, let's not just push him and push him so that he, he, he you know. I respect this man. I didn't want to come in to ask him. If I wanted, if I had a question, I would have asked him how he made money. Because a man, would, you know, you, the liberation he had by making genuine money. He was able to use his money to travel around. He's not begging anybody. You know, he's not running around looking for donation. I, I doff my heart for him. I want to make money to that level, but I, I, I want to do something. I don't need to, you know, run around, you know, seeking help. So, so let us do our best for me. He has my support. He has my support, 110%. You know? And because of that, I have to join you. I have to join you. Just in saying, if I can. You can take anything from any of us. Whenever people talk, he never like uh being uh, defensive he's always eager to learn no, from he's a very nice gentleman the thing tomorrow. for me for me oh, you sorry, see, Jago, Jago, I want to find out tomorrow, it's just just uh, real quick when we are having uh, this i was, trying, I was trying to interject before uh, my man let me just find out because uh arome is from drc and i want to learn how long have you been in drc 18 years Ah, you see, you are local now. So I want to have you give us an idea of what is going on there. Well, Tell I think, him the time tomorrow is by this yeah, time. Around this time, just uh, <laughs> after yeah, Omoye Kona is done with our interview. So you can Thank come you. in any time after that so that we can discuss some of the things going on in uh, the uh, DROC with the M3023 and what is going on there. Because there's a lot of stuff we hear that I'm not sure how accurate they are. Yeah, of so, course. Yeah, it would be it be great. You, uh, mm. Nice one. Fact. Yeah, that would be great to see you here. Um, okay, so good should we take everyone. a topic? Yeah, good night. Thank you for spending time here with us. I appreciate you staying just a little bit longer. Right, you, you know, guys. you're welcome. Good anytime, night. come, come anytime. Um, should we take a topic because we might be heading to a world war here. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> we might be heading to a world war. I when you're here having conversations. Okay. Oh, 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 okay, maybe they should talk about uh, the. The state, the state, um, local government election. No, no, where <laughs> Fort Father, where, where Fort Father was going was where we need to go. Uh, the, the, the whole thing is heating up in the, the world. Uh, Iran has decided that they are going to throw a lot of rockets uh, into Israel. And all right, guys, I have to leave now. You guys take care. Thank you, thank you for joining yeah. us. Um, uh, and Israel, nice Israel is uh, asking for the UN to intervene. <laughs> Israel asking you for UN Security Council. <laughs> that is very funny. Ah, is there, I never is thought that so was stupid. I never saw that how, one coming. How would they, the UN that they never listened, that they say anything exactly. about the UN, they're all lying. The even Al Jazeera was like, I'm surprised about that. They don't even believe in the UN. Why are they going no, to the UN no, Council? No, no, they want to make they want to make UN bad people. So that by the time US will react and everything, they'll say they call for UN. UN didn't do nothing. But guess what? No. That's UN a, will react. That's a diplomatic statement. That's correct. UN will react, and UN will react in the sense that they know how to do peace. <laughs> you know, that's it. They'll preach peace. Mm. So, Father, can we pause and ask local to share the dream with us? He's, he's just finished dreaming. Yeah, let me just share this quickly. So, <laughs> well said, bro. Gang, gang <laughs> That okay, guy, you don't think uh, on your power, on your power. They want the Security Council to issue a condemnation 
of Iran's uh, uh, retaliatory strikes on Israel. Uh, it's unclear if the Security Council will issue any sort of statement or take any action. They're not obligated to do so, but it certainly will give all Security Council members a platform uh, to publicly explain their country's positions on Israel, uh, Iran's uh, retaliatory uh, uh, drone and missile uh, strikes towards Israel. So certainly we'll be watching. You see, very interesting stuff that is going on about this is that after the attack okay. that Israel attacked uh, US consul, uh, Iranian consulate in uh, Damascus, um, Iran waited for about 13 days or so, or if I'm not mistaken, maybe less, for the U.S. Security Council to condemn Israel Gentlemen, for doing that. Yeah, thank you for joining yeah. us, the NBC. I really appreciate your time here. Until uh, next time. So, the Israel, the Iranians waited more than about 13 days for the U.N. to condemn the act because that was an attack on Iranian soil. You're not supposed to attack embassies. It's something that is known. So, yeah. But because they didn't do it, Iran was like, okay, since you don't want to do it, I'm going to do this now. So, and it's going to be hard for Israel to go to UN and expect UN to criticize um, uh, Iran because Iran will be like, yeah, you saw them bl bl blow our embassy up, killing 13 people, and you didn't do anything about it, and you want us... Because Iran said if they had condemned it, they will have a reason not to attack Israel. And for further, that's but, but thing is, Even Israel themselves mm. don't even come out to say, we did it or we didn't even do it. Mm, exactly. You understand? Know they didn't even say anything. All they just do, they just follow the rhetoric of America, threatening that if you do, we'll do back. You understand? Yeah. Like, you know, it's just so funny and everything. I, I don't really know where Israel is going with this. I don't know where Joe Biden is going with this. It just get me tired, you understand? And it's causing a lot of problems. It's causing yeah. a lot of problems. Young people now, everybody, young people in America now, apart from the extremists, all young people now hate politics in America. That's mm. why you see the Republicans are trying to push, they are pushing the young people, and these are the extremists. You understand? Mm. And anything extremist come with a whole lot of races. And this is a country where, where it's like it's an immigrant country. You understand? So it's it's just so bad. All we have now in America is just far left, far right. I, I never knew, I, in my in my wildest dream, Joe Biden, that was vice president for Obama, was going to be this terrible and toxic as a leader the guy is horrible to africans he's horrible to black people in america and at the same time he's horrible in the middle east it's like what is I, this one is mad. I, I don't know if you guys and saw, in ukraine too before this time looking at biden when he was vice president did you not see how he used to treat young girls yeah, you know, we're saying that old man. No, it's now. not funny, old. This, this is, the, this is the, the depth. This is where these people are. You, you, you know, somebody spoke earlier about uh, to get to know who these people are. You, you, we really have to know who these people are. They're not playing on our level at all. You know, we voted, fair enough. But we really have to stand back sometimes and take a look. You see, what you described about America has already more or less happened in Europe. As far as the government and the people are concerned, there are polar opposites. There are those that have the metrics of the of government, and there are those who have kind of come away from the government paradigm. They just know the government is the enemy right now. That's oh. where we whoever That's comes in. Now they are who, saying that, 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 that Biden is uh, looking to have a meeting with the G7 leader Sunday to coordinate the response. What response are you going to attack Iran? If that is an excuse, if they are going to attack Iran, they're going to get into it's trouble. It's part of the plan. Mm. These people are bankrupt and they still want to have the reign of the world. They know Russia and China are about to eat hopefully, woefully. They want to make Africa um, the Armageddon. Africa in itself better be careful about politics and make sure that politics is played outside of the continent. Because once they come too far into our continent and they want to play... Power to stop them, huh? That's a mistake. We don't have any power to stop them. I'm I telling know. you. 
You know, what Africa, they, they use Africa, Africa to not yet in the all over the world. Whenever they like, they, they do it to us. Uh, <laughs> they say, Open your leg, we open our leg. They say, Close it, you close. No, no, I mean, no, we just, anyhow, for father, for anyhow. Father, what, what, I, what I just don't know when you look like a part now, this lobbyist thing and everything in the history of America, Joe Biden is the one that collected the highest money 11.5 million. You understand, Joe Biden is the highest, so he collect money here, collect for this lobbyists and and you know mm. as powerful as america can be when you see the meat is so funny so you hear pentagon 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 but they are buying this weapon from contractors you understand oh. the likes of lucky mm. martins and the likes so to them it's just business they give you money for your campaign for your election which means you have to do everything possible for them to sell weapon so because of you want to take money for campaign you sell weapon and you don't want to buy weapon and you are not using it you understand? Instead of you to use weapon the right way, sell weapon to other countries. You know, we don't need to be going to war, war, war. Like you mm. said, forefather, this country they need to go rehab. Over this, they're fighting, they're fighting things. It's getting <laughs> one too many. I, 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 I said it before. Now, when I was saying, when I was saying, you were thinking as a joke. They need counseling, war counseling. Father, yeah. I want to ask yeah, a question. They, they calm down, calm down with I, this war need for. I want war. to, I, I want to ask a question. When we we'll call Africa. In do we call Europe? Do we have a front Europe? Do we have a front America? Do we have a front Asia? What do you mean? A front? What do you mean? There's EU, uh, uh, there's uh, the United Kingdom. So, so, no, what we mean Europe? Do we do we, do we have a coming together of this continent the way we we we, we talk about Africa? You speak like that, even though to their monetary policy, they speak together as one, mm. up to their monetary policy, even, everything, yeah, EU, up to France, policy, everything. Is that what you mean? I thought you meant a defensive front. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, they have a defensive front, which is NATO. Mm -hmm. um, well, NATO. I, I thought you were asking if Africa has a defensive front against no, these so countries. So why? Because if, asking, we, if, they, if, if we, we have, have alliance with them. If we have this group, can we say that we are not yet a people? Is that so demeaning to say it? We we don't. That's the that's the that's it's, the most funniest it's, part it's, of it. It's, it's we sad. don't. I hope it's sad for us to say it in public. But to be uh, honest, we, 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 we never start now. We never you know we never start, my brother. You know, we speak about pan Africanism mm -hmm. in Africa, it never really took off. You know, some governments had it in their mind. Some of our founding fathers had it in their yeah. mind, but no one else did. Where we talk about Africa, we have enemies who are Arab or whatever they are in North Africa. Mm -hmm. Them, they don't like us for nothing. And that land that they're they're holding is not their land. In terms of, it's a long time, but we we have it cool. We understand that there's Islam and there's Christianity. And Africans have been split within these uh, um, arenas. Then so, there's the you know, right there. Then yeah. there's the right there, right next to us. So anything that takes place there can easily pour into Africa easily. So do you know why I say? Do you know why I say this? The idea that sometimes I feel that what our people think is because we are Africans, we should think in one direction, believe one thing, and accept one thing. But if you look at this. In other continents, they get the key things they want to focus on and discuss on those key things and bind themselves around those things and those things control them and decide they decide commonly on those things. Aside those key things they brought out, they allow the individual states to do their things the way they want to do it. Correct. Can I tell you, can I tell you what China would have done if okay. China was West Africa? Yeah. If China was West mm. Africa, by the time they got their independence, what they would have been thinking about was their full emancipation away from the Yolimbo, the same way that the African Americans and Caribbeans were thinking. In that, they would have stretched for their people. They would have gone to make that area their market, which is how I've always believed Africa should have done. But we don't make these kind of moves because we don't think like that. We don't think like that. We've only begun thinking like this over the last five to 10 years where there's been a little bit of growth in that area. It's not been deeper than that. It's not been any deeper than that. I remember going to uh, Nigeria when I was young, Man, speaking Augustine, to them, Augustine, speaking to them about all these kind of 
uh, philosophers that we have within the African-American context. And why mm -hmm. I understood is that ah, these people, they know you, you go past we all. We, we best learn from them what they've suffered. Instead, we separated ourselves. Um, for, for, these are the problems have, that Django, we have. Django, we haven't what begun. What we haven't Django, even begun. Django, from what I can tell, in the 60s, maybe sometime in the 50s, 70s, there was a movement going on. Like yeah. during that time, they were fighting apartheid. They were um, Zimbabwe was fighting Europeans, um, the Algerians. I think that was the period they were fighting the French too, and they were fighting. Yes, the, the problem is that we didn't fight. We just discussed, and they just handed kiss no, 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 the people no, no, no. that were governing with them. They are the ones they had. Remember, if this country that fought the Europeans when they left. What, what would have happened was that those elite class that was collaborating with them, they would have, the ones that fought them would have gotten rid of those ones. You mm -hmm. see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but the ones that collaborated with them are the ones that they handed power to in, the, in the, on our own case. So, yes, so, right. so, Fofana, so, Fofana, do you see it from that point? I see it from the point of continu um, uh, uh, continuity and strategic. I felt that when, like you said, in the 60s, 70s, there was Imagine Africa. So I, I'm seeing the point that the, the Western world, the Asian world, they saw that Africans were going somewhere. They started recruiting by enticing some Africans. And when they enticed these people, they recruited them and changed their mindset to start... And, 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 and because they could... And why were why were they able to? Because this would like in the case of Nigeria, we didn't have, we didn't we feel it was optional for us to be united. Mm -hmm. We didn't feel like it was essential for us to push back and be strong as a people. Because if you if you went through what the Chinese went through or what the Japanese went through or was North Koreans, all those other people, if you oh, went yeah. what they went through, they, nobody needs to tell them. They know they have to work together. They they they, they, are, they have seen what it's like when you don't work together. But for us, ah, you know, man. Fofara, ah, eh, Fofara, you know, I will say some. Fofara, I will say something that a Ferrari said, uh, Alaba said about Peter B when it comes to the media. You see, this also another way when we, when you can understand how powerful the media can be. There is a findings that it gets mm -hmm. that um, China is giving all Africans money with very decent percent interest rates. Now they discover that. What is China looking for? How will China benefit from this loan? Apart from they are bringing the manpower and the lags, only for them to discover that China now want to play the type of politics that America played for many years. So China is literally giving 54, want to give 54 countries in Africa loan. All, Two and the, half percent return. all the biggest no, condition, the all the biggest condition that China is giving them is not the interest rates. China is giving them the condition that when we go to UN, all of you support me. Of yes. course. You understand? All of you support me. But mm. that is a good thing. But you know the funny part of it? The power of the media, the way the West keep weaponizing Russia is the devil. Russia is the devil. China well, is the devil. China well, is the devil. Well, if you, it's if just you're hard for us this, to take stand. Well, if so you're we get confused. This, mm. Well, if so, you're saying this, hold on, you... hold on, let me just land with this, please. Right. So hold on, let me just land with this. So we get confused with where we stand in terms of certain things, like Augustine is saying. Strategically, certain things that we want to fight, we want to kick against the West. You must kick against one strong allied. You understand? To form another strong no, Father, alliance, let me there, another strong is there ally. Outside you. You there, understand? There. Uh, let me see. You must you must form an alliance with another strong ally. You don't just him. stay. It's, not there. Mm. it's okay. Yeah. So you don't just you don't just you don't you you don't just float and everything. You must form an alliance with other strong allied and everything. So, but when you see we Africans, we want to we want to claim this our funny smartness. One minute we want to deal with certain things with Russia. The next minute we want to deal with the US. We want to deal with China. It makes every one of them just look at that. Okay, the three of them said, we will look themselves well and say, let's just fool these people. These people, they are not really ready. America has been promising, promising, promising. They never they never keep to their promise. You understand? They only keep because to their promise. Because we are not ready. 
We are not ready. <laughs> if our people look them in the eye, like the way um, uh, uh, this thing, uh, Mao Zedong looked at uh, Khrushchev and told him, we need that nuke, man. We, we, we need a nuke. Uh, the, can you imagine? That, that is the most advanced technology Russians had. And he was asking them for it. And he expected to get it. And he did. But our, our we don't, Tukano, we had to beg them for Tukano. And because our leaders don't understand. I said it the other day when I saw the British uh, official, uh, defense official came to Nigeria. He was nervous and telling Nigerians, tell us what you want. Tell us, tell us what you want. And our leader, our defense, uh, uh, chief of defense staff said, uh, we, need, we need that, we need that um, caterpillar. That training, we need, we need training. training. Like, <laughs> why would they My take us seriously? Training. That's what we are doing. Yeah. They will never take us seriously. It's our fault. Yeah. That's exactly that kind of what are Indian is doing. Us. Indian is taking advantage of America having all this problem so, with China. So, so, and America no, wants to build a no, formidable no, uh, force with no, Indian no, just to no, take over no, the West no, uh, no. Asia. You understand? No. And Indian is asking for a lot. You understand? I never thought they are getting, get Africa, they are getting if, a lot. Japan got a lot of this today. So we Africa, if individual country can get it, come together. For further, if you can still talk to part of EU, you understand. But one Remember minute they kick Turkey out. They need mm. Turkey when it comes to military strength. Yes. Okay, when it comes to this area, we need you there. That's why yeah. they can bring Turkey in when it comes to EU, Schengen, oh, other things oh, in no, EU. No, no we, we don't, don't want, want you. you. Mm, you're too much. You're too much. All these, all these Muslims. The, the less you we bring you to the EU, you take over the EU with your, with your Muslim religion. And, and you, you saw how Turkey held on to allowing Sweden and the others to join uh, NATO because they wanted yeah. F-16 jets or something. Like that. And America didn't want to sell it to them. While they were selling it to Israel like uh, like water, they were giving it to Israel. And America didn't want to give Turkey. Turkey were like, okay, Turkey, you want, you Turkey want Sweden punish to join. them. It's not happening. Punish them. And that is why it's good to be part of these organizations. If only Africans, like in, even Western, you know, when I said in the 60s, 70s, um, Africa was on the move, Nigeria, that was when we created ECOWAS. We, we were trying to That's do right. things, but we just didn't finish the job. If, Af if, if, if Nigeria had. We're, we're like that. Defense, we're starters, yeah. we're not finishers. That's how yeah. we are. Chief we have to understand. If we had just made it a defense pact, most of all these schools wouldn't be. Ross. By now, I'm telling you, I've had this part. picture in my head, geographical picture, where those, all the Francophone countries mm. and the rest of us are in that pact, an economic pact that we are, it's the Naira or the Eco, whatever they want to call it, mm. and that is the Eco zone, as it were, where that part of Africa has mm. really come together economically. We're close. They just didn't finish the job. We're close. They I wonder who stopped close. it. It would be interesting to find out who slowed the echo was down because I think it was just after. Um, uh, well, it's not, you see, Buhari, Buhari was trying, but Buhari didn't have energy for the, the job at hand, it seems to me. Mm. Because uh, between. I don't know, they were busy uh, going to Mecca. I think the, uh, one of them was in Mecca when they took him out of office. Where they were busy. You see how. It was. Uh, it was uh, yeah, he went to Mecca. Born, yeah. We're busy going yeah. to make that you have a country to run, you're busy hatching. Yeah, now you see you're hatching your, 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 your whole future. <laughs> that that be careful. That's that's another ah. new phrase. Don't let it come for you. I'm <laughs> telling you, bro. They, I don't even know what that is a requirement, even. Uh, they are just calling then they come back and uh, you know in, it's only Nigeria or I don't know what is Africa that they call people allergy. They don't do that in other parts of the world. Though. I don't know, I don't know. No, they don't do that now. If if you, very Nigerian. They used to the professor that they mm. interview in it, uh, Arise TV. He said uh, some people are psychologically down. Some people can even commit suicide. That they save and save and save, and they have almost twenty five percent. So it's for federal government to support them with seventy five percent. Then people say federal government should not so support them. That they can even commit suicide. They are they can be depressed and everything. Does these things make any sense? With everything that the country is going through, you still want to go somewhere. Tell me where will our Christians go now to go pray in their own time with this war that is going on in Israel and Palestine? You no, understand? Let, this is not funny. That's not what we need. Let, let me show something. These are all things that I'm seeing here. It, it be confuses me sometimes. That some of our leaders, it's not like they are not hearing the truth, but you don't see as much change on the ground as you should expect. Let, you know, this video is about uh, the Sierra Leonean president's wife. 
saying yeah. some of what just hear what she said, right. and I, I find it was one of the most fundamental corruptions of the social contract in human history is colonialism. Yeah. And it's that mechanism that some states have used to extract resources from other places, such as Sierra Leone. That deprives countries of the resources they need for government services, for education, for health. So I was hoping you could reflect a little bit on what those forces have done to Sierra Leone and what kind of accountability we might be able to think about just to imagine a way forward from where we've begun now. When you, you look at what Sierra Leone have to offer, when you come to our mineral resources, the kind of mineral resources we have in our country is enough to take care of everybody in that country. We should not have a single per person in Sierra Leone. But unfortunately, we are not given the free will to make decisions on our own mineral resources. There's always Big Brother who decides and when you fight and say no we are not going to do this they use the system to stop you it's either they set you up with the opposition and they will be supporting the opposition against you from the back or they cause unnecessary chaos in your country so that you are not able to even govern your own people they will do things to make you not to uh, be functionable and of course, any country that don't have peace cannot develop. You have to have peace before you talk about development. I'll give you a simple example about Sierra Leone. Every mining company that is in Sierra Leone today is owned by a foreigner. Every mining company. If it's not the Chinese, it's American, it's the British. I'll How long I can play this for? Um, <laughs> I just wanted to share that anybody can find it is uh, I think I've Fatima Bill. Yeah, so, so what I'm curious part. about is they know these things. How can they not break out of it? And why are they not saying it more openly? So what is going on? So for father, for father, this is the power of the media again. This is the power. See, remember they use gold, they use diamond, they use these things in America. People started causing some of these big gold miners that oh, they don't want to buy their gold because it's black gold, they kill people for it and everything, they cause them. It is time for us to use the media the right way. There is nothing wrong mm. for country to also buy airtime in most of this media space. Bring it back home and shame these people. Think how much the Qataris invest in Al Jazeera to say their own side of the story. You understand? Because you must tell your story. When other people keep telling your story, it will never come out right. That's true. That, that's, you understand? Uh, that, that, that is, is one. one. That, that is one. Then another thing again, when you look things like this again, our so-called African leaders too, in as much as they use opposition, if you are doing the right thing, you make it hard for opposition to survive. But our leaders too, they also make themselves too much of a detector, too much of this, too much. They threaten you once more, threaten you, dish out military to go and kill people. Then they start thinking of taking you to the aid. You don't want to leave power. You don't want to do this. You yourself also respect your own people. You know, play the American type of politics where we can cause the president for all we care. You understand? But they will do whatever they want to do. Anyway, yeah, maybe like the say, outcome you are seeing is the one they want. Those are the kind of candidates they prefer to be. For far, no, so, so, for far, for far, for far, like as you now will support a bacha, that a bacha didn't mm. steal no money. But it's just hard for you to say during a bacha time. The killing was everywhere. Everybody knows that. Do you get my point you now? There's killing yeah. now. No, during Abacha's time. You understand? Yeah. Uh, what is the band? Uh, Sergeant Roger. You understand the killing, there, the MKO's there is wife. more killing now. You just that the people no, he was so, going after where they could. So the that's exactly it is, it is, You are still helping my case. What I'm saying is that, in as much as the West is criticizing you, just let the people, because the West use the media. This is how many of us get informed back then. Oh, we hear this news from BBC. We hear mm. this news from VOA. Yes. That's how we grow up. It is still That's the true. power of the media. You understand? How mm. are the government using the media? Then when they also use the media for people to protest and everything, just let the people have their say. You know the what? funny, the common phrase they said, minority, we have their say, but majority, we have their way. So, governments, have your way in violence. 
That is when you become dictator. Play that politics right. But, but you, can accuse, you can accuse a bachelor of not waking the people up to the truth. If you look at the way Traore is playing it, Traore is waking the people up to the truth. That is the thing I fear our leaders don't do enough of. They don't tell Correct. us what our true problems are and how we are going to get out of it. They just, Abaja was too high up. That is true. Can I, can I come back? Can I come back? Yeah. You know, yeah, here we, we celebrate diaspora remittance. But nobody is talking about the amount of money our politicians are fleeing out of the country. <laughs> One of the things I know that Indians had as a policy is no matter what you steal from that country, you cannot take their money outside. <laughs> is that what they did? Yeah. How did they do that? I don't know. I mean, you can do it because they track on you. You can steal it, but you must invest it in their country. So mm. imagine a governor will be a governor of a state and go to another country and build a hospital, build an university, and he will move to Senate and be sitting down there. And have a world class <laughs> hotel in another country. This is somebody that couldn't <laughs> afford to build nursery school before he became a governor. He became oh. a governor and he has an, a, a standard hotel in Dubai. Mm. And after that, he moved to, and people, the, the financial investigators, they know all this. And there is no policy holding these people down. Yeah, mm. the black beauty, right. You see, when Africans, when I cannot die for my community, if mm. I can betray my community to be powerful, there is no way the white will not be the Western world. It is about interest. Like, no matter what you do between America and uh, Israel, both of them are looking for their interest. Mm -hmm. We have leaders that don't have the interest of their people. Because they don't understand it. And that's my concern. These leaders don't understand it. It's like we, we they, they were, they were they are, that elite class were groomed. Like I said, if you fought for your independence, what do you think the, one of the first things you do is to fight the enemy? Then you mm -hmm. fight your collaborators that are fighting, working with the enemy. That's can how I it tends to happen when you are struggling. But because we didn't fight, those collaborators are the ones ruling us. Can I, can I, can I, can I just add on to that, forefather, which is to say that uh, what is happening in Africa has happened before with Africans outside of Africa, namely in the Americas. When you check the 400 year history, you know quite clearly that this slavery didn't act actually need to last that long because of the amount of revolts that were taking place. But many revolts that took place were stopped by these very same slaves that were trying to emancipate, telling the overseers what was going on. This kept happening. It's our people. We don't even understand this history. You know, Haiti, 1820 something, they they emancipated themselves. Yeah, from France. From uh, beating France, Spain, England, and America. It was a long, drawn out war. And then because France wanted to keep warring, they said, look, we're, we're still again. coming here. So they banged them with uh, uh, 100 million loan that they have to yeah. pay back mm. so they locked that country up and then it kept quiet meanwhile slavery is still going on all around the world so we now are about to enter into the second slavery i've been saying this since i was mm. a child i don't i've been since i was a child i could see it and i used to tell my people that this is what's going to happen if we don't care, mm, I, I, if you carry on, I think if you carry on watching that video, you, you saw that she went on to say something about how the Security Council members are collaborating among them. That's that is very scary. They are collaborating among themselves to exploit us. That means China, all of them, they technically are all working together hand in hand to Bruh. exploit us now. Because so, we don't cut no deals with anybody. Mm, they don't know. And, so far, and they it, never mm, collaborate. But we don't cut no deals with anybody. So Nobody. We, we think we are like open. Okay, I think that's a very important. You, you brought me to the point that I made um, with the question that I asked uh, uh, this P2B today about why we are not secure. But I gave the example of Switzerland. Switzerland in 1812 or so decided that they're going to be neutral. They're not going to go to war with anybody anymore. 1812, 200 years ago, more than 200 years ago, they did that. 
and they went on to become one of the most secure countries. They have more bunkers than they have soldiers. That Nigeria has soldiers, and their their military to population ratio to, to today. These are people that are part of NATO. It's not only that, that's the standard they one. Europe. And yet they have I, mean, the ratio I know of, many let me, just, let me just put it. The ratio of um, one soldier to their civilian is one soldier to 50. Why Nigeria is uh, one soldier to more than 1,000? And we have been enslaved, colonized, and people have been getting kidnapped all over the place. And they refuse to react. Poor father. Switzerland. Again, the Swiss people. people. The Swiss, wait, 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 wait. The quiet, Swiss quiet. people, each one of them, each one of them is trained, trained to be a soldier. So whilst it's 50 to 1, those 49, all of them know how to have Imagine, they do all of them. Service. Yeah, they military service. Yeah, military service, they do it. Years. Who, 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 do, who does that? You've not been at war for 200 for, years, for and father. you are still preparing for war, like as if war is around the corner. You know what's in there inside their country? That the whole world, the the whole world go there inside their country now. <laughs> For father, <laughs> talking of Switzerland the, and the way they run their country with their multi ethnic group, yes. if we want to use the Nigerian, uh, I like that system. And that's one of the now. Look, look, look at look at Switzerland very well. Do you know if you do a survey now, if you want to ask 100 people what is the capital of Switzerland, nearly 95% of people will fail, will not even know the capital of Switzerland. <laughs> They're confused. That, it's that's everywhere. how funny it is because we know Zurich very well, we know Geneva very well, mm -hmm. but you'll be so shocked that the capital of Switzerland is there. Ben. You, you understand? That. Yeah, it, I don't it's know just that. there. You, you see how funny it is? Mm. Because you know why they developed the country in respect of trying to take side. Do you understand? So lot of is, I think Switzerland is the most advanced democracy we have in the world. Very the well. Has, and I think in, in the case of Nigeria, we should even have a more advanced version of what they've done because they give their people so much power in the state and uh, the way they run their country is the country is so healthy it's ridiculous they, but, they, but you they, know, they, even offering oh, father, you know Switzerland is like the, united nation it's like united nation in new york every day in switzerland people keep protesting and you laugh you say what are you people protesting you people are so okay <laughs> what are you protesting for <laughs> But, always, but, there, there's always a referendum going on. They, they but, know, know, every something. day. But, but for father, you know that what the point you just made now is very wonderful. What of if we say in Nigeria all the ethnic groups, you just get torn to real to, right. to take care of the country. Sense. When you finish, we now examine what you did. The way you handle your own turn will determine. No, what they did, you see, what they did was they don't. Everybody has like they have seven presidents at the time. At the time, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So everybody gets their own president. All the team groups get their own president. Yeah, you know, so it's yeah, like yeah. Re, it's like regional. No, the presidents work together. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, like regional, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like it's not like regional. regional. They, no, 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 no. I understand. The presidents are appointed from each region. And mm -hmm. then they work together. They, they don't work with their, directly with their people. They work together to govern the country itself. Then the people themselves have the, the right to pass laws and uh, make laws themselves. So they do a lot of referendum in Switzerland. So they can, they can pass their own law. They can revoke law that the government passed. So the people have so much power to control the state. And I think oh. in the case of Nigeria, you will bypass the chief, you will bypass the imams, you will bypass the pastors, you will bypass all this, you will give the pass straight to the people. And that's what the Swiss did. And I believe that because of the way the Swiss did it and how successful they have been, I think it's something that Nigeria can learn from. And, and every even, day, so even, when you mentioned about, even when you mention about their military, that is as, as the exact thing Israel does. At yes. the age of 18, you are being enrolled into the military. Compulsory three years. Mm. 18 to 21. Compulsory. At least you can understand why Israel is paranoid. Switzerland mm -hmm. hasn't been into war for 200 years. And there's, no way. And, there's no way. World and there's no way. And there's no way you will. And look at how yeah. secure they still are. Uh, uh, and they are, and they are no number you one negotiator in the world. They nego and there's literally no way you negotiate that every war. You're not patriotic about your nation. Oh no, if you oh. are from that country, you are like yeah. in heaven. You are, the, the country, the mountains have bunkers in there. They, they have guns hiding in the mountains. They are pointing guns everywhere. <laughs> it's like <laughs> they want peace, but they prepare for war. For that war. is what ensures peace. They are even more paranoid than the UK <laughs> in terms of security. Because if you look at the UK ratio, it's not even that high. 
But yet, look at I believe Switzerland because they have nuclear power plants and all the rest. So if they want to go nuclear any moment, they can go. They they have 307. For me, I still find that in, unbelievable. 277,000 bunkers. Hear me again. 277,000 bunkers. How do you do that? For that is the whole the, that means the whole country, the whole country has whole. <laughs> and, and this state that is again, crazy. They still, they, they, still stand their, years. they still stand their ground. They are using their own currency. They still don't want to don't use. They still don't believe on the euro. What a remarkable country! I think that country is. They still one of stand the their ground. They use their own currency. I want. Mm. Uh, for, who has ever heard about the budget of any of our local governments? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. But I'm surprised they are getting the money. I thought the the, the governors, although Paul has explained how the governors mess with the money, so that that's it. Well, why, the why don't they separate the account, though? Uh, see, you know the funny part of it. Buari tried to do it. You understand? The uh, old governor threatened Buari. The Buari did it. The old governor threatened Buari. Buari back out. But is that would that you have understand? changed anything? As long as the governor have the power to run the elections. It wouldn't no, change all you just all oh, Buari just need to do is they pass it yeah, and everything. Just need to do let the local government get their money directly. Why are you telling the governor well, to your reason the governor, your reason in Paul they, was that the reason why the governor has power over them is not because he, he has access to the money is because he can call an election and influence the outcome of that election. Also the money comes in joint. The money comes together. No, the money comes in joint. But you already know your own amount clearly. Mm. So in, yeah. in as much as it come in joint, you know your own amount clearly. But just even listing what Peter yeah, said, you can't, you I build this secretary, you, you I build this secretary. It's not your place to even do that. Let the person do whatever I want to do. You maybe you are dating to find out that the person used the money for the right purpose. But it's not your place. You see, like nearly all the glory that um, we can say, I did this, I did this, I did this. Most of these projects are local government projects. Remember, River State is waterlogged area. So they need bridges everywhere and mm. every other thing. You know, most of these well, are, are local government projects. But he take all your glory now. People will say, oh, we can perform. Ordinarily, you know, you, if things get to work the way it's supposed well, to be, you know, those Paul, projects are not supposed to even be the governor's project. Well, Paul, even I, I hate when people don't consider necessity in and for me if you live alone and you go and build 15 bed bedrooms I don't oh see, you I don't just see, remind me augustine yeah i don't see it as i don't see it as being uh, strategic most of the most of the flyovers we can built in portacourt were not necessary <laughs> are you sure they were showing they were showing one um aero space of nigeria yeah, in, in a, sorry, sorry, real quick. Yes. Mm. I saw one flyover and the road following. The flyover just went straight back into the road. It was completely <laughs> neutral. But did you know what's going on? I need a flyover. Huh? Ridiculous. <laughs> just, for, just, for traffic. just for traffic. Oh, yeah, it, it, it's a four, four, five, it's a four <laughs> way road. So they put flyover so that just to, <laughs> to, to reduce traffic. Things that don't make any sense. Yeah. No sense yeah. at all. Just to widen the road now. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just like I don't know. I've like not been this. there because River City is full of uh, all kinds of weird waterways and all so, the rest. Yeah. So far, I just look at this money. Federal government wants to use to build a new road. What of when they use this money to maintain all their roads? Hmm. Augustine, Augustine, um, when when you said you grew up in uh, Potakot, you said. Yeah, did they grow up there around what yeah. time? It was it like in the 1870s, 60s? Sorry about that. <laughs> I mean, uh, 80s, 90s, 90s, 90s. Yeah. Yeah, 80s, 90s. During those days, but that guy was very enjoyable. I, oh, I yeah. but I learned yeah. that somewhere along the line, that's when it was Garden City now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 